I just won first place in a game, which scared 8 billion netizens worldwide, causing various mysterious organizations and fugitives to stir. The Dragon Kingdom mobilized its army, navy, and air force to protect me. Just because I wiped out 90% of the players in the melee battle with just an AWM among thousands of players, the enemy's eyes were full of fear when they looked at me. Even the game organizers were shocked and speechless, but I didn't know it was actually a real war. Just half a month ago, I was still a drifting overseas small anchor, worrying about food every day. One day, when I was watching short videos in the bathroom, an advertisement for experiencing real guns for 800 yuan suddenly popped up, and I curiously clicked on it. The next moment, someone knocked on my door, took me into the car without saying a word, and soon arrived at the training base. When I saw soldiers holding real guns on both sides, I felt a little excited. At the same time, I took out my phone and started live streaming. Soon, more than a dozen people entered the live stream room. Where is this? Could the host have been kidnapped? Oh my god, it looks so real. Is that a real gun? Ha ha, host, be careful with your waist. I smiled and walked while live streaming, all the way into the base. And under Moro's lead, I arrived at a warehouse, filled with all kinds of firearms and weapons. Looking at the boxes of weapons in front of me, my eyes lit up. Bro, what kind of guns are these? M14, Groza, new mechanical rifles, and more. I casually picked up an AK-12, and there's even an AWM. Oh my god, foreigners are so awesome now, they can even play with new rifles. Anchor, try it quickly, I'm so anxious. Damn it, this is the true romance of a man. While I was fumbling with the gun, the popularity in the live broadcast room soared. Morrow patted me, how about it? Didn't lie to you, take you to try. In just a moment, I can master the basic skills proficiently, pick up the gun and aim at the target. Bang 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 as the bullets fly, the live broadcast room instantly boils. Oh my god, the anchor is so awesome. I thought it was a toy field when I just came in, but it turned out to be a military base. Calling the anchor, I am a hand stretching party, can you mail me a chicken dinner? The one upstairs, this is not what you want, I think you want to go to jail. Seven days passed in a flash, during which I not only experienced various rifles, but also sniper rifles and rocket launchers. Just when I was in a great mood, the alarm outside suddenly went off. Bro, what's going on? Why is everyone running out? I was taken away by Marala without understanding the situation, and I couldn't see clearly with rows of military vehicles parked next to me. After a while, I was also fully armed and put on bulletproof vests one by one. Marala casually picked up an AK-12 and handed it to me. Hey, why do you give me a rifle? Bro, the training is over. When the event starts later, Hold it and shoot at the NPCs in the second hair military uniform. It was then that I realized, it's actually real life CS. How thrilling. Later, I followed Morrow onto the same transport vehicle and turned my head to see the helmet Morrow brought, which is a special high-tech VR equipment. Wait a moment to the place. It can assist you in simulating the real battlefield environment. Simulate killing effects. And this VR can be connected to your phone. So when there is a picture, your phone can see it. I nodded excitedly. Too awesome. Bro, it can even connect to the phone. Just then, a strange voice sounded. Ding, congratulations host, bind the god level military god system. I heard this sound and was confused for a moment. Then a panel appeared in front of me. The host is binding for the first time, now extracting three talents. Congratulations on obtaining the talents, perception, investigation, and proficiency in all firearms, even in the darkness. I can only see this panel, not Morrow next to me, but judging from Morrow's reaction, he probably can't see this panel. In an instant, I understood what was going on. Oh my god. Awesome. This VR even comes with system assistance. Bro, I got three talents right from the start. Am I about to take off? I shout excitedly. Several soldiers cast strange glances. Even Morrow showed a puzzled expression. System assistance? What system assistance? But after a moment, he still gave a positive tone. Right. We are using the most advanced technology. When you get to the scene, you will know how real this thing is. As the two were talking, the military vehicle began to slow down. And after getting off, I started the live broadcast. However, as soon as the live broadcast room opened, a large number of users flooded in instantly. This century has been too long. Long time no see everyone. Let me see. What good stuff has my phone dad sent again? Hey, where is the anchor this time? How did he end up in the forest again? Wait, did I hear gunshots? I explained, family. These are all VR generated effects. Before long, the whole team entered the city one after another. Suddenly, gunshots rang out, and the two sides began to fight, with both armies fighting everywhere. Damn it, 
There are two Mao soldiers lying in ambush ahead, predicting that there are eleven people. They outnumber us. Find cover first. My team and Maro's team were attacked by two Mao soldiers while advancing. One person died in battle halfway. I looked at my fallen teammate with eyes full of surprise. Is this so real? And blood plasma? The soldiers across the street were all delighted to see the situation. They only had seven people left. We have the advantage. Let's go straight over. At this moment, Maro leaned against a slab of stone. His face pale. He did not expect to be ambushed as soon as he entered the city, without even a chance to escape. But I was excited. It was time to show my strength. After obtaining the VR system, I clearly felt some changes in my body. I could instantly see how many people were on the opposite side and where they were positioned. And holding the gun in my hand, there is a feeling of unity between man and gun. On this side, a soldier named Irmo saw the advantage and quickly turned around, raised his gun, and started shooting. Unexpectedly, in the split second when he exposed himself, I suddenly raised my gun, pulled the trigger three times in a row, and in the shocked eyes of the enemy, the three bullets hit the man's forehead directly. He collapsed on the spot before he could react. What? Not only the second Mo soldier was shocked, even Maro beside him looked surprised at the front. A third Mo soldier was shot in the head accurately? It only took three shots. Oh my goodness. I didn't even see it clearly. It was a real headshot. Report the anchor for cheating. What else could it be if not auto-aiming? Laughing. Where is the black mark? The black mark is talking. All right. I admit the anchor is too powerful. Let the anchor do more. I will send gifts to the anchor. I took a look at the live stream, leaned back against the stone pier contentedly. This auxiliary system is amazing. It just feels natural. Pick up the gun and aim. And inside the live stream room, the gifts are getting more and more. So I might as well thank everyone for the gift support. Then I'll perform a solo wipeout of the team. Hearing this, not only Moros, but even the other few big hairy soldiers were confused. Don't be afraid. All of you. There aren't many of them left. I'll go first. There's still cover in front of us. We'll advance against the cover. He can't hit us. The header Mao soldier was also furious when he saw his teammates being killed. With a roar from him, a few people immediately got up and started to raid. Lu Chi didn't dawdle either, and raised his gun in a headlock. One shot, two shots, almost shooting bullets in a point-blank manner. As a result, in the next second, the Irmao soldiers who showed their heads one after another fell to the ground. Without exception, all of them were killed by a single shot. Watching his teammates fall one after another, the squad leader on Irmao's side was dumbfounded. That's a rifle, right? How did he use it as a sniper? This is the first time I've seen this. The anchor 666 ah. This dam must be open okay. Several consecutive headshots are. What heavenly shooting. Opposite is an actor? Don't tell me. The host is definitely looking for an actor. Bosses. Don't brush. Eh. Anchor thunder over. Quickly dodge ah. The opposite side is obviously also anxious eyes. A few thunder directly towards the Lu Chi this piece thrown over. However, Lu Chi, who possesses the talent of detection, had already sensed the grenade's ejection a step ahead. He rolled over during the change of ammunition, giving Maros and a few big hairy soldiers a show of what it meant to use two minds at once. Do 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 do. The last few rounds were fired, and the few remaining Ermal soldiers were once again killed through the head in seconds. At this point, one squad of Irmao soldiers was completely wiped out, witnessing Lu Chi's one-man annihilation of a class. The few big hairy soldiers present were dumbfounded, and Maros didn't even know what to say. In Lu Chi's live broadcast room, the gifts were brushed continuously, and the earnings broke a hundred in a row. God brother, this is too exciting. The special effects of this thunder thrown over. I can actually still feel the heat. Lu Chi turned back to Maros to discuss, and he was the only one having fun at the scene. And when Maros heard this, he mechanically turned his head to look at Lu Chi. Ha, forget it, let's save the people first. Not knowing what to say, Maros decided that he would first help stop the bleeding and bandage the two injured Daimao soldiers. Lu Chi also had to sigh at this, too dedicated all, acting simply too realistic. As for the battle situation here, the commander of Irmao's side also received it. As the commander of Irmao's 88th regiment, Valiant received an unfortunate piece of news. Whom, the entire 133rd squad is lost? The Irmao company commander who delivered the news nodded his head and reported it in a nutshell. All right, I'm aware of this matter. The 133rd squad may have died or gone missing in mass. Send someone to look for them. Also Moss base is our strategic location. Strengthen the defense. We will hit the great Mao army hard in Avgyev. Understood. Regarding the loss of connection on the battlefield, Valiant was accustomed to it and did not take it to heart. Because in this case, the probability was that the enemy had completely annihilated them. After all, 
it was very difficult to run away on the battlefield. So for this, Valiant wasn't prepared to report it at all. But soon, he would regret this decision of his. On Lu Qi's side, under his leadership, the journey was almost unimpeded. The Irmao's multiple squads came to block the way, and they were all killed in seconds through the head and lost one after another. The big hair soldiers who followed behind, looked at that in a daze, and at this time, Lu Qi's team, also with another big hair team lucky to meet. Comrade, the road ahead is difficult. This time Irmao has brought at least three times more heavy weapons than my regiment. We just went deep into the front line and ended up being ambushed by their rockets and Irmao soldiers. The squad leader of this team was talking to Moros. Their team's sacrifices were tragic. Half of their team members were killed in action, and a smaller half were all wounded. Hearing this, Moros was equally at a loss for words. Right now, with this severe shortage of heavy firepower, if they wanted to capture Kessa's military stronghold, they could only use human lives to pile it up. Even if they won, it would still be a disastrous victory. But suddenly, Lu Chifa's current team actually had a sniper rifle? Or to be more precise, it was a sniper with a wounded shoulder, holding an arm. In an instant, Lu Chi was overjoyed. He had wanted to try the sniper rifle for a long time, but when he arrived at the warehouse, only the rifle sniper rifle was finished. Older brother, let's discuss a matter. Change it. Lu Chi immediately came forward. The big hairy sniper froze for a moment. Older brother, look at you. You're injured. You must be having trouble moving. This rifle of mine is more suitable for you. I'll take the rifle and exchange it with you. Saying that, before that big hairy sniper could react, the sniper rifle in his hand was switched by Lu Chi. Then as soon as he turned around, the group of people saw Lu Chi stuffing the rifle into his hand. Crowd, ha, huh? wipe, happy to death. How the anchor still cheat people weapons ah, ha ha ha. No, anchor you're still playing with snipers? Are you going to hold a press conference? What do you mean? My small fry's real name is not convinced well. I must be included in the press conference. I don't think there's anyone from the village here. Though, the audience flirted on, and neither did Moros and a squad of big hairy soldiers. The squad leader of the other side, even more confused, looked at Moros. To know, snipers are not everyone to can. That must be after special training. Lu Chi with play like, said sniping sniping, but also snatched the human gun over? Oh, he just likes to joke. Don't care. Moros said perfunctorily. Brother, let's set out to find a high ground. When we get to the high ground in a while, Anchor will show you a handful of dump snipers. While talking to Moros, Luchi also didn't forget to make program effects in the live broadcast room. There was no way around it, and both classes looked at each other in disbelief at the words. The other squad leader felt that staying here really wasn't an option, and that they could be shelled at any time. It would be better to find a place to repair and survey the enemy's position before advancing. All right comrades, then we'll find a high ground first. Moros nodded in agreement. Most of the city was currently filled with collapsed buildings, and there was very little slightly higher ground left. But luckily, there was a taller building near the two teams. It's nice here. This building has been bombed and is on high ground, so it can be repaired for now. After the opposing squad leader finished surveying the taller building, he was ready to lead his team into it. But at this time, Luchi suddenly stepped forward to block them. No, there's an ambush inside. Ha! Huh? Moros and the other squad leader looked puzzled and carefully glanced inside at the entrance. Luchi didn't say anything, but immediately reached out and pulled out a grenade from his backpack. He skillfully pulled out the carabiner and threw it directly from the entrance on the first floor. Only in the next second, the grenade exploded in response to the sound, accompanied by a rumble of several dull thuds. It's a landmine. Hearing this sound, the opposing squad leader understood at once. The grenade shouldn't have exploded in a chain. It was the grenade that triggered the mines inside. Moros was equally incomparably surprised. At this moment, they looked at Lu Chi in amazement, not knowing at all how he had discovered it. At the same time, the sound of the mines exploding seemed to have caught the attention of the Irmao soldiers inside the building. The mine detonated. There must be some big Mao soldiers coming in. Hurry, hurry, they must be injured. Let's go. From the stairway on the second floor, several Irmao soldiers quickly rushed out, ready to apprehend the opposite side. The big hair soldiers who realized it also rushed to fire with their guns. There really is an ambush. Shoot. Do 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 do. Bullets flew out in a brainstorm. The Irmao soldiers who thought they had ambushed the other side had just come out and had a bunch of bullet holes opened up in their bodies. I super. How are they okay? Wow. How is it possible? What had been a thrilling ambush was easily diffused under Lu Chi's gift of perception. I'm really happy ah. The anchor also said did not open? I can't help it. I can understand the anchor headlock. How can the anchor still have perspective? Finished. This time the opposite side is not dead in peace. 
Touch the anchor this hanging wall pure bad luck. The first time I've seen this, I've seen a lot of people who have been in the same boat for years. Agreed. The first time I've seen this, I've seen a lot of it. Lu Qi's face overflowed with a smile. He had to admire the technology on the side of the big hairy country. This VR glasses. It was like it really had perspective. Walking to a certain range would allow him to sense where there was an ambush. Or detect how many people or weapons were on the opposite side. Relying on these things, he walked on the map. Completely humanoid infrared. Even more anticlimactic than infrared. There's no more ambush in the building. Let's go upstairs. After Lu Qi finished speaking, he took the brunt and rushed upstairs. Seeing this, the big hairy soldiers behind him didn't dawdle and quickly followed Lu Qi's footsteps. On the top floor, two gaps had been blown open here, and the two teams finally had some respite. They sat on the ground, bandaging their wounds while replenishing water and food. Lu Qi, on the other hand, stood at the position of the gap, and looking down from above, he could overlook a large area of the ground. The ground was full of big hair and ermau soldiers who were facing each other. The gunfire was messy, and the shouts were prolonged. He could even see rockets and missiles constantly falling from the sky. Luchi come over here and sit down for a while. You take a little rest as well. Moros, who was leaning against the wall, called out to Luchi. Next to him, the sniper who had already forcefully choked out the bullets and bandaged his wounds moved forward obediently. Luchi, thank you for helping me with my gun along the way. I've almost bandaged my wound. Now give me the gun and I'll come and fuck two more Irmau soldiers. Along the way. The two teams had each familiarized themselves with each other's names as well, only to see that the other sniper was ready to come over and get his gun with a giddy look. Previously, it was during the sniping process that he accidentally lost to one of the other party's snipers before he was hit in the shoulder. Now that he felt able to move around, he was ready to take over the gun and take revenge on this group of two-haired soldiers. However, he didn't know whether Lu Qi didn't hear him or didn't want to give him his gun. Just like that, Lu Qi had already crouched down and raised his arm putting his eyes on the lens and started aiming. Wait, you, before that sniper could finish his speech, Luchi had already locked onto a hostile soldier in front of him with a shake of his head. Boom, the sniper rifle shook, and bullets flew out at a speed unseen by the naked eye. At the bottom, two teams were fighting, but it was obvious that his side had been cornered. An enemy soldier seized the opportunity to raise his grenade, ready to blow them all up at once. Just then, a bullet passed through his temple, and without waiting for him to react, the grenade, which had just been pulled through the ring, fell into place. His teammates were dumbfounded when they saw the scene. I'm super, not good. Run, rumble, one sentence off the top of his head. The place exploded. Several enemy members failed to run away and were all killed by their own people. At the lower head, the friendly troops who observed the current situation, looked across the room in confusion, and scanned the tall building. Instantly, their squad leader understood. It's our snipers coming for support. A few other soldiers also showed their heads, their faces full of shock. What an accurate shot. Awesome. Say, does our regiment still have this kind of character? Thank you so much comrade. Above the tall building, more than a team of friendly soldiers were shocked, and the sniper next to them was directly petrified. Just didn't see much. Then Luchi raised his rifle, looked at the mirror, shooting plus headshot in one fell swoop? The sniper needs to go through a lot of special training, right? Six ah anchor, sniper headshot? Did you all see that? You said the anchor didn't open it, but it's open in the open. Anchor, if you're a vegetable, you should practice more. Don't scream if you don't have the strength. Too abstract. Now outdoor anchors are rolled into this? The real life CS is still open? Comrade Lu Qi, you this. Have you participated in any training or practiced sniping before? Whirling around, Kirill asked Lu Qi incredulously, his voice breaking, as one of the few snipers in the regiment. He had gone through all sorts of devilish training. Unfortunately, Luchi just shook his head after hearing that. No, I've only slightly played sniper a few times before during my training. With these words, Kirill was even more dumbfounded. Training? Played a few times? He twisted his head numbly and looked at Moros, who was lying motionless on the ground. The latter's throat rolled for a moment, then slowly nodded his head. This time Kirill was completely tense, and the corners of his mouth twitched as he moved back a few steps. Moros and the others realized what was going on and got up to support him from behind. No, what's wrong? The group of people looked at him and then at the gun-wielding Lu Qi, and Moros vaguely sensed that Lu Qi had done something else. After all, that gunshot just now came from Lu Qi's hand. He, he, Kirill pointed his finger at Lu Qi, his voice trembling. Boom. Unfortunately, without waiting for him to finish, Lu Qi instantly fired another shot. The crowd were all attracted by this shot and immediately dropped Kirill to come forward to observe. Surprisingly, 
Lu Qi's shot hit the gas tank of an armored car on the street below, causing an explosion. The several enemy members who were driving the car were killed by the explosion on the spot. Oh my god, is this member of your squad also a sniper? The opposing squad leader asked anxiously, and Maros was directly speechless. Ha, huh, you guess? And at the same time, the popularity of Lu Qi's live broadcast room was also rising. Big hundreds and hundreds of people flooded into the live room. And within a few hours of starting the broadcast, several thousand viewers had gathered in the live room. The most crucial thing was that the viewers didn't want to leave after watching. In addition, it seemed that Lu Qi had triggered some platform mechanism and was pushed to a certain recommended position. This move caught the attention of many viewers or peers, and even the platform staff. He words, was the Tiger's Tooth platform's employee and superintendent. In the afternoon when he was fine, he liked to touch the fish and run to various live rooms to hang out. It's not likely that he can make any female anchor freak out and come with some kind of leg exposure benefit or something like that. As a result, today, he swept around, but suddenly in the outdoor category, he found a pretty interesting title. Real CS, immersive experience of the thrill of engagement? Kind of interesting. Just like that, he Xiang clicked into the live broadcasting room as a superintendent, but he didn't know that everything that happened next would completely change his worldview. Guns, grenades, cannons, snipers, and rockets streaking across the sky, and real people spewing blood on the ground? The most outrageous thing is that the anchor in here has a perfect headlock with a rifle. He can even see where the mines are buried. All this stuff, and you tell him it's real life CS? What's more outrageous? The famous five-star General MacArthur once said that if Lu Qi was playing real life CS, then the battles he had fought were just like playing house. Having seen this all along, He Xiang hurriedly reported the situation in the live broadcast room to the top management of the company. Of course, he wasn't trying to block Lu Qi's live room. On the contrary, he felt that this live program was very unique. If you can give training, get a union, or increase traffic support, you might be able to get another explosive outdoor anchor. For example, Tong Tong, the angle of view turned and returned to Lu Qi's side once again. With his superior sniping skills, Lu Qi had currently sniped last 10 hostile soldiers in a row. Everyone, small gift walk, let's upvote alright, send beer if you want to see the anchor dumping snipers, and a glow stick if you want to see the anchor pressing on with one hand. 10 minutes, upvote upvote upvote, Lu Qi shouted, and the live broadcast room was hot for a while. Brush, bosses give me a hard brush, I want to see the anchor dumping snipers, anchor don't not be able to do it at that time ah, ha ha, must be one handed pressure ohm. I have long wanted to see the anchor so play machine gun. Good point. Don't say it next time. Beer asterisk 66. The atmosphere in the live broadcast room was cordial. But Lu Qi's words made a group of friends next to him stupid. Especially Kirill. Do you want to hear what you're saying? Dumping snipers plus one-handed pressure arm? You think you're playing peace warmer? Although they didn't know what peace warmer was. It was just outrageous. Damn it. Take cover. There are snipers on the other side aiming at us. Two squads have been wiped out. Roger that, we've contacted the top as well. There are our snipers heading to the neighborhood. Luchi held the arm at his end, changing bullets and firing at the same time, hardening it into a burst gun. The enemy troops on the ground seemed to have sensed the danger and also began to take cover. Luchi looked at the live broadcast, the voting just now was very effective, and the gifts skyrocketed more than that. Sunglasses asterisk 1, beer asterisk 66, glow stick asterisk 88, sports car asterisk 1, oh. Thank you boss for the sports car. Seeing the sports car occupying the screen, Lu Qi immediately spoke out in thanks. Anchor, the sports car named to snipe that kid in the upper left corner. I'd been unhappy with him for a long time. He's been hiding for half a day. He must be true to his word. After staring at this pop-up, Lu Qi first frowned, and then immediately shifted his sight to the upper right corner. Sure enough, behind the cover of a stone wall, there was a Ermao soldier squatting, still quietly probing this way. Luchi thought for a moment that this was a good method. Gift named sniping. Alright, gift the boss ahead. Just after saying that Luchi aligned the screen and then quickly aimed. That Ermao soldier still had a fluky expression on his face. Hoomph. Punch punch punch. What's there to punch? What a stupid ah. That sniper even if it's more powerful. You guys hiding can still hit you not? Really? He had a leisurely look. And then prepared to probe to see if the shooting had stopped. Who knew that at that very second? The bullet bang drilled out of the barrel of the alms gun. The speed was so fast that it was hard to react, and it pierced through the stone wall with a thunderous force, hitting the brain of the Ermao soldier along with it. After only a few moments, a man on the side of the stone wall fell out crookedly. At this sight, the live broadcast was astonished. I've said it all. Just practice more if you're a vegetable. 666. 
anchor this hand across the mountain hit the bull, is really to me whole will not, show to me, six flipped well, but this NPC acting is really good, a poor and not squeak, I told you, college students have a good physique and fall asleep, acting NPC still have to us college students to come, Lu Chi C live effect is very good, then again take the initiative to speak, family members, a sports car designated sniping target, hot air balloon insertion, if there's an airplane, directly fuck the armored car, under Lu Chi's mobilization, several sports cars quickly swept across the screen, he looked at the two eyes straight, this one sports car is 50 oceans off, although he has to share half of the platform, but so much to the hands of the big several hundred, okay, let's see, it seems like the votes for dumping snipers are higher right now, then let's show everyone a hand of dump sniping first, saying that, Luchi directly let his eyes leave the scope and turned to hold the gun with both hands, the upper right corner of the anchor, that one at the top, feels a bit loaded, he's the one, fuck him, after reading the pop-ups, Luchi immediately turned his sight to the upper right corner, looking at it from an overhead angle, behind a few scrapped cars, the Urmao soldier who was named was full of seriousness and was giving orders to the soldiers behind him, all hide your positions for me, don't show your heads, bastard, where the hell did the snipers come from on the side of the great Mao army, what an abomination, the man was still issuing orders, unaware that Lu Chi had already locked on to the target, so right under the stunned gazes of the broadcasting room, including the crowd of people at the back, he chose to put his arm in a horizontal position, in the next second, both hands were powered up, and the whole gun was thrown out halfway to pull the trigger, at a distance of nearly a thousand meters, there was no aiming, no positioning, and all relied on a random shot, but the most shocking thing to the real person was that this shot didn't have any deflection, and actually pierced through in a straight line, heat waves burst open, the air appeared ripples, that Irmao squad leader was instantly killed by a headshot, how, how is this possible, Kirill's face was filled with an unbelievable expression, as were Moro's and the others at the back, even the Irmao soldiers, noticing that their own squad leader had his head blown off, were so scared that they hugged and hid one after another, monster, this was the unanimous feeling of several Irmao soldiers, and even a few people on the big hair side, this accuracy was already outrageous, right, can't even say accurate, his sniper rifle is like having GPS positioning, as if it can 100% lock head, but only Kirill understood that GPS positioning was impossible, this was a real ability, or a strength that ordinary snipers and soldiers, could not understand, perhaps only the man the former Harry Bear called the king of snipers could compete with him, oh, oh, my god, oh, my god, the anchor really shot his head off, oh my god, god bless me, it's not on, it's not even off, I'm the clown, I can't stand it, I can't take it, I can't stand it, the one in the center of the anchor can give me a second, ha, no problem, seeing the pop-ups, Luchi wasn't ambiguous either, he feels that he is now holding the gun especially stable, really have a kind of casually dump can hit the feeling, did not expect really hit, of course, he didn't know if the NPC on the other side was cooperating with him, if so, Luchi can only be silently moved, this world is still more good people ah, subsequently, Luchi once again raised his gun and started flinging it, during the process, more and more Irmo soldiers fell under Luchi's gun, Moros and Kirill and the others, who were watching from the back, were so dumbfounded that they were already almost numb, and as the enemy soldiers continued to be killed by Lu Chi, the pressure on the big hairy soldiers here decreased drastically, our snipers are strong and have already helped us dispose of a large number of enemy soldiers, everyone, we can't afford to drop our chains either, charge the warriors, Ola, the speed of the army's advance accelerated, and Irmao's side was slightly defeated, the Irmo leader, Valiena, received one message after another, causing him to frown, what, class 32 is lost, class 73 is lost, class 98 is lost, in total, adding up, more than one company has been lost, how is this possible, the Irmao company commander's face was unsightly as he reported in real time, it seems that it's a sniper from the great Mao military that's aiding them in their battle, that sniper is very strong, the frontline reports that no one can hide within a thousand meters, hearing this, Valiant's forehead veins rippled, clearly disbelieving, are you kidding me, we have at least three times as many heavy weapons as the other side, and more people than the other side, being beaten senseless because of a sniper, that Irmao company commander bowed his head and didn't dare to speak, theoretically it was true, but there were always accidents, then he thought carefully and still solemnly made a suggestion, captain, I suggest heavy fire coverage, use our rockets to sweep the buildings targeted by that sniper, this suggestion, too, was the best way to deal with the sniper, but unfortunately, Valiant clearly didn't want to pay attention to it, 
although we have a lot of heavy weapons, we don't use them casually. It's just one sniper. Where's Crick? Wouldn't it be better to let him go over there and take care of it? The Irma company commander paused for a moment and reported. Crick has already gone over. But, all right, he'll be fine if he goes over there. He'll be able to take care of the opposite side soon. Irmo side of the strategy finalized. But Luchi is still playing not happy. This real life CS is really cool to him. Playing also played. Round Sun also earned. Just like in a dream. Now he is like a man with a gun. No harm done. However, when he was playing, Luchi suddenly felt as if he sensed something. And immediately rolled over and got down. Whoosh. Sure enough, the next second. Only to hear the sound of breaking wind. A sniper bullet cut through his head. Then Luchi raised his head fiercely. Not far away in front of the window of a building. There was actually a lens reflection effect. There was a sniper standing there. Wearing goggles and looking at him with a provocative mouth. Crick. Kirill. Who was crouching aside. Instantly recognized the person in the building. He had fought against a Irmo sniper before and was hit in the shoulder. And the guy he lost to was this guy. Crick. The famous sniper god in the Irmo army. In the previous match. He could be considered to have comprehended it. Even he. The outstanding sniper in the Irmao army, couldn't take advantage of his opponent's hands, and instead almost lost his life. This made Kirill realize the gap between people, and he quietly observed Lu Qi, worrying about whether Lu Qi could compete with him. After all, both sides were experts, and it was hard to predict victory or defeat. And after Crick hit a shot, he intentionally let the reflection of the scope expose his position, which was obviously a provocation. When Lu Qi probed again, the other party had already hidden in the building and started looking for the next sniping spot. What the hell? What just happened? The bullet almost hit the anchor? It's a bit interesting. Did the anchor meet a player? This is a real life CS. There should be more than one player. The opposite side is a bit strong. It's a bit strong, but actually took the initiative to expose the position. Arrogant ah. Anchor quickly dry him. Sports car asterisk 3. Anchor take him down. I'll have a sports car triple. Obviously. Crick's arrogant approach also made the live broadcast room stir. Lu Qi was also able to sense the provocation of the other party. Of course, he knew that he was definitely not the only player in the real life CS, and there was no chance that the opposite party could really be a local player. Don't worry everyone, to solve him, I'll just use one shot, Lu Qi guaranteed. But when he heard this, Kirill, who was still worried about Lu Qi next to him, was confused. Crick was Irmo's famous sniper god, and Lu Qi was also very powerful. That was why he felt that a duel between strong men usually had to last dozens or even hundreds of rounds before a winner could be determined. Lu Qi now actually said that one shot would do? Lu Qi, this man's name is Crick. He's the one who hurt me before. It's better to be steady. This person is very strong. If you don't pay attention when fighting him, you'll probably lose your life. After Kirill's reminder, Lu Qi only smiled slightly. Suddenly, two more bullets flew over from the distance. But these two bullets were as slow as if they had been decelerated tenfold in Luchi's perception. He pulled Kirill down to climb as fast as he could and easily dodged the two bullets. As for Crick, he then once again created lens reflections to show his head from beside one of the windows. The corners of his mouth rose with a teasing expression, and he greeted Luchi's side with his middle finger extended. Cut. In a flash, when he turned around to flee once again, Luchi's live broadcast directly exploded. My god, so crazy? This can still be tolerated. Anchor. Hurry up and kill him. The anchor will show him what it means to hang on the wall. This kid is too crazy, right? I'll give you an airplane if you kill him. This middle finger gesture was naturally seen by Kirill and a group of big hairy soldiers. The big hairy soldiers were indignant, but Kirill pulled Lu Qi with a hand. Lu Qi, don't be disturbed by his agitation. This is his usual trick. Once he gets overly emotional his hands will shake and it will affect the actual battle. Kirill said so much, but unfortunately Lu Qi didn't take this matter to heart. Instead he looked unusually calm. On the opposite side of the building, there were again sniper bullets constantly shooting towards them. But just like Lu Qi said, seconds he only needed one shot. There was no need for anger. Oh, time's up. Viewers, the final voting results are out. It seems like it's a one-handed pressure arm. So the anchor will show you guys right away. That's right. Lu Qi was mainly waiting for the voting results and then deciding what show effect to spike him with. It's really out? More than a hundred votes ahead ah. Okay. Okay, I'll trust the anchor okay. Anchor hurry up. I'm going to Tiger's Tooth to recharge right now. Anchor, fuck him to death. Seeing the high emotion in the broadcast room, Lu Qi changed the bullet by hand. Changed to use one-handed gun and give up the scope. Kirill's expression next to him was stunned. Really come to one-handed pressure Ama? Or against Crick? He wanted to dissuade Lu Qi from being more prudent. 
Crick was very strong and might lose his life because of it. Nay, Lu Qi was already preparing to get up, and across the building, Crick was raising his gun and weaving continuously, looking for the next sniping spot, firing several shots in a row and taunting the opposite side but not seeing the opposite side make a move. This made his confidence grow. The chief said that there is a powerful sniper here, who has hit our troops with heavy casualties, and asked me to take care of it. Ha, huh? doesn't seem like much, it's not even as powerful as the last one. I beat his head so much that he doesn't dare to show his head. Forget it, let's find a chance to give them a total wipeout right away. The headmaster really loves to make a fuss too, Crick said, revealing a smile. At that moment just ahead, a window that had lost its glass burst out with brilliant white light. He instantly brightened up. This position was the best sniping spot. Solely Crick accelerated his speed, lifting the gun and releasing it plus aiming in one go, locking it to the top floor of the opposite side at the fastest speed possible. But the next second, he saw the most horrible scene in his life. Luchi single-handedly holding a gun, in a condescending position, has long been a step ahead of him to lock the window. Boom. The speed of the bullet was so fast that Crick just probed not to mention reacting. He didn't even have the chance to blink. Eh? His expression stalled. And in a trance, he removed his military cap with his left hand, hurtingly realized that both front and back revealed two bullet holes, still stained with blood, the harsh sunlight thus shone in. Just like that, Crick incredulously looked up at last and stared into Lucci's flat eyes. With a snap he eventually collapsed, not even understanding before he died, how could the other party be that fast? Or, one-handed? I'm super 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 super, the anchor simply went against the grain, it's too explosive. Don't you really need to aim? You really don't need to aim. You can just press on with one hand and give him a second? I really can't spray this. The anchor's strength is definitely ace. What the hell? What the hell? Are you belittling the anchor? I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to do, but I'm going to be able to do it. And I'm going to be able to do it. Abstract. Abstract. This studio is too abstract. I'm so glad you found this room. Luchi's one-handed pressure on completely stirred up the live broadcast room. Kirill, who is following on the side is also looking at a face full of uncertainty. After Crick fell, he made a special effort to wipe his eyes to confirm that he hadn't misread it, including the crowd of big hair soldiers behind them. They were already numb to Lu Qi's approach. Crick is just gone? Kirill blinked his eyes, mechanically twisting his head as if asking himself and Lu Qi, the two-haired sniper god who had crippled him, an elite sniper, and caused him to be in a sorry state, had been killed by Lu Qi's one-handed arm in a single shot? Kirill laughed too strange. Miserable laughs as he felt that the world must have gone mad. If he wasn't dreaming, it must be that he had been headshot by Crick before and was now just dreaming. That's right. It's not real. It's all a dream. Sports car asterisk 3. Airplane asterisk 1. With the sound of an airplane engine ringing out, there was a plane coming from Luchi's live broadcast. Oh, thank you boss for giving out one airplane. Witnessing the white flowery rounds coming into his account. Luchi should thank the guy called what's his name Chris for bringing good people just now. Without his heroic sacrifice, he wouldn't have been able to have such a good show on his own. It was true that there were still a lot of good people in the world. Immediately afterward, Lucci informed the audience in the live broadcast room. Folks, right away the anchor is shifting positions. Anyone you see on the road who wants seconds, or the sports car is locked. First come, first served. Lucci finished, and then looked at his comrades behind him who were petrifying. Obviously a period of rest had allowed them to adjust more or less. It was the spirit that might be in a bit of a trance. Ha, huh? oh, the other squad leader got up first, then called out to all of them. Let's go. We're pretty much done resting. The Kess base must be taken. There's no room for a little delay. The big hair soldiers who reacted also rose in unison. I'm almost done adjusting. I'm also ready. Then let's go. Ola. Just like that, the group of people followed Luchi's footsteps down the stairs. But this time, I don't know why, but everyone actually subconsciously followed Luchi as if he was the officer. The imagined rain of bullets didn't appear either, following Lu Qi's steps. Instead, it was surprisingly calm. Not to say that he couldn't see any enemies, but the enemies in the surrounding area were almost all shot by Lu Qi. The Irmao army began to gradually collapse due to Lu Qi, and the counterattack of the Big Mao intensified. With the incessant artillery shells, the Big Mao soldiers were on the verge of Kessa's military stronghold and launched a big charge. Comrades, our snipers, have opened the way for us. The Kess military base is right in front. The Irmo soldiers are completely resisting. Charge with me. Ula. Take the Kess stronghold in one fell swoop. Ola. Facing wave after wave of big hairy soldiers sweeping in. The people on Irmo's side were in agony. They had to prevent the enemy from attacking. Dodge artillery shells. And most importantly, 
Avoid sneak attacks from snipers. It was the one sniper that popped up on the big hair side that didn't know who it was. Using a sniper rifle, he completely broke their defense line with a single shot. On the other hand, Luchi and the others, they didn't know where to go around as they fought. Originally said to be attacking the Kes military stronghold. It turned out that because of the bosses sniping by name, Luchi went further and further away. But it didn't matter. Where to fight wasn't a fight. It was just real life CS. At this moment, he found that within the streets, two groups of people were in a fierce firefight. Ermao's side was driving an armored car. And there was even a machine gun on board. Let's drive through. Don't stop strafing. The infantry is following. Ready to fill in on the side at any time. The Ermao commander driving the vehicle commanded. Not good. They're going to ram through. Damn it there's no way out. You guys you hide behind the bunker. I'll fight them. The people on Damao's side were trapped in the alley. A squad leader directly pulled out a grenade. Preparing the other side as soon as it crashes over. He will pull the bolt and die with it. However, just as the vehicle started to launch its charge, a bullet shot over from the distance. Hitting the armored car's tires with precision. What's going on? How did the vehicle lose its balance? The Ermal commander was alarmed. And the Ermal soldier sitting on top and driving the machine gun. Also one of them didn't hold the machine gun steady and swept it around. Then the whole armored car went askew. And finally crashed hard into the wall and rose up in flames. The big hair squad leader at the bottom realized and immediately revealed a look of joy. It's snipers. There are reinforcements coming to support us. Quickly, throw a mine over towards them. Saying that, he immediately pulled the mine and threw it over. Rumble dash. An explosion rang out and the armored car blew up in response. Let's go. Then, the big hairy soldiers swarmed over. Irma's side disorganized itself and was soon taken away all by a raid. When the enemies were dead, the big hairy squad leader walked up and scanned the surroundings. Although he didn't know where the snipers were, he returned his thanks. Thanks for the rescue comrade. Good luck. At this point, the big hairy soldier in the back was particularly puzzled. Squad leader, where did this sniper come from? I seem to remember that our regiment doesn't have any snipers, right? The big hairy squad leader paused, then spoke affirmatively. It should be another regiment coming over to support. I didn't expect that in this situation where the war for everyone is tight. There are actually other regiments willing to come and support us. Let's go quickly as well, and grab the military strongholds on our side. After the man finished speaking, the soldiers quickly nodded and re-advanced. That's right, the city of Abdiev had many military strongholds. On Damao's side there was a clear division of labor, with each regiment responding to a military stronghold, such as the 1323rd regiment attacking the Kes military stronghold, and at this moment, Moros and Kirill, among others, had already realized that they had stepped out of the realm of the Kes stronghold and had entered the positions of other armies, nay, Luchi didn't take it seriously, as if he didn't know anything, and kept shooting indiscriminately, a few people originally wanted to discourage Luchi, or inform him, but they thought about it and let him be. After all, at the moment, the Great Harry Army has an absolute advantage over the military stronghold of Kes, and it is estimated that it won't be long before they can break through. This all depends on Lu Chi, so going to support other military strongholds didn't seem to be a problem. As a matter of fact, it was really like this as well. As time passed and the gifts were swiped from the live broadcast, Lu Chi's support became more and more motivated. Many of the big Harry teams were assisted by Lu Chi, and team after team of second Harry soldiers were killed in action. Thank you comrade for the support. Say hello to your regiment for me. Thank you comrade, we won't be left behind. Move forward. Ula. Of course, due to the fact that many Daimao soldiers had been rescued, news from the frontline battlefield eventually reached back to the ears of many of the regimental commanders. In the strategic command center, several of the regimental commanders were particularly moved. I really don't know which regiment sent them. At a time like this when the war is tight everywhere, they are actually willing to send such a strong sniper from their regiment to support us. Check. Quickly go and check which regiment sent them. We should at least thank them in person. The 879th Regiment's regimental commander spoke to the company commander within the Daimao regiment to the side. Understood. There were also other local regimental commanders that did the same. It's true that a friend in need is a friend indeed. I didn't expect that there are still regiments willing to come and support us. We'll definitely report this matter when the mission is over, so that the main commander of the group army can take credit for it. Understood. Regimental commander, the head of the 345th regiment, who greatly appreciated this incident, was eager to meet the warrior sent by which regiment? Luchi's tactic of running all over the map and randomly guerrilla attacking, unbeknownst to him, had already caused a huge change to the battle situation. After all, he was really accurate. 
no one could do anything about him at all. At the same time, the 1323rd Regiment's leader, Nikolai, had also received a good battle report from the front line. Chief, the Kess stronghold is in a good close now. It's almost breached by our regiment. The Irmo army's defense was unfavorable and suffered heavy damage, thanks to the assistance of a sniper from my regiment. Deputy Regimental Commander Rada reported while his face was overflowing with joy. Hearing this news, Nikolai was equally surprised and delighted. Originally, he thought that with the lack of heavy weapons, he would have to suffer heavy casualties if he wanted to take down the Kess military stronghold. He didn't expect that he would break through the enemy's defense line so quickly. Wait, did you just say that it was a sniper from my regiment who assisted? Lada nodded affirmatively and said, According to reports from the front line, it was a sniper who aided in the advancement of my regiment. I heard that he alone, disposed of a large number of opposing soldiers including heavy weapons, even in the Irmau army, the one known as the sniper god, Crick, seems to have been killed in action as well. What? Nikolai's entire body almost stood up when he heard that. You're saying it's possible that Crick has been killed in action? It was my regiment's sniper who did this? Uh, Lada paused for a moment and said, to be precise, it's definitely been killed in action. When those words came out of his mouth, Nikolai's eyes filled with intense shock and joy. That was the famous sniping god in the Irmau army. He had once set a record of killing 12 snipers of Big Mao in the Irmau army. In a large-scale battle, he had delayed the Big Mao army for three days by sniping, resulting in having to use heavy weapons. Crick was killed by our snipers. Then who was the one who sniped him? Kirill? Or was it Reese? That's not right. Do they have that kind of strength? Seeing this, Lada took a deep breath before slowly saying, It seems like neither. It's, it's a new recruit from my regiment. It seems, it's an Asian face, named Lu Chi. Asian face, Lu Chi, Nicholas was filled with confusion. However, as the head of the regiment, he was still quick with his hands. Forget about that for now. Let's first find out which country he's from. Creating this kind of feat, we must properly honor him. Good. On the other hand, Due to the fact that the Ermau army in many places had suffered heavy damage, the Ermau command post there was in complete disarray. Regiment, regimental commander. We, we've lost contact with nearly 30 more squads. And even, even Creek has lost contact. According to the frontline survey, it should have been sniped by the enemy. A company commander of the 88th regiment was trembling as he reported the battle situation to the regimental commander, Valian. At this moment, Valian's entire body was confused panting heavily. What the hell is going on? Who did all this? Crick was sniped to death? How is this possible? The Irmau company commander lowered his head, looking at a piece of information in his hand. Captain, it should all be the work of that sniper on the big hair side. According to the battle report coming from the front line, our regiment was unable to break into battle at all because of him, and had to stay on the defensive. Chief, I suggest that we immediately use heavy firepower to bombard that sniper. Valiant felt his mind spinning when he heard this news. The sniper that he didn't care about before had actually posed such a great threat to their army? So much so that Crick stepped in and was sacrificed in Avgiev? Was that reasonable? It didn't make sense. But now, he also had to believe this fact. All right, I'll authorize a heavy fire sweep. So where is he now? Eh? The Ermal company commander awkwardly lowered his head. He has shifted his position. It's unclear for now. At this moment, Valiant instantly cocked his head. You're not clear you say you? No. I have to hurry and report the frontline situation to the group commander. Once the Kess military base is lost, all of us can't afford the responsibility. After saying that, Valiant picked up the communication phone, ready to call the higher-ups on the spot to report. Nay, he wasn't the only one who had the same idea as him, so much so that Valiant couldn't get through after calling for half a day. The Irmal leaders in other places had also suffered from Luchi's persecution and suffered heavy losses in the local battlefield. They all picked up the phone and reported the situation to the commander-in-chief above. At this time, the phone of Yak, the commander of Irmau's second group army, had already been busted by the people below. The intelligence they sent out was exactly the same. All of them were that their positions had been attacked by an enemy sniper and suffered heavy losses, and that they were about to lose a strategic position. Valiant was now very confused. He had fought for half an hour without getting in, and it was not easy to call in once. The army chief finally answered the phone. He was excited to begin to report their own battle situation. Who knows that the army chief seems to be in a bad mood. After listening to it, he was furious. What the hell do you all mean? You guys mean to say that because of one sniper, the entire strategic location of Avgiev was lost? Valian was given a lecture before he realized what was going on. What was going on? Wasn't it just his side that had problems? 
How come the legionnaire said that the entire strategic location of Abdiev was going to be lost? On the contrary, Legion Chief Yak's face was slightly red. He didn't know what the people underneath were up to, suddenly calling together. Some were saying how badly they had been hit by a sniper. Some were saying they were completely outmatched, and others were coming to ask for heavy weapon support. One sniper? You took out the entire strategic area of Abdiev? What's the difference between this and Tai Shan Lao Jun reporting to the Jade Emperor that the Monkey King stole 100? 000 tons of my elixir? He's a monkey, can he eat that much if he eats to death? But having said that, Yak still took the matter issue seriously. As a strategic location, Avgiev was a city where accidents could never happen on Irmau's side. Damn it, where the hell did the snipers come out from? Quickly go check and find out his information. I need to formulate a countermeasure immediately. Because of Lu Qi, all parties had exploded and were busy with their hands. However, Lu Qi's side was just like a vacation performing all sorts of fancy headshots while collecting batches of gifts in the live broadcast room, staying in a building, he took a look at today's income, well, directly fell into the eyeglasses, just half a day in the account of several thousand, if this were to be in the past, it was money that could not even be earned in half a month, Moros, Kirill, I just received a transfer from the top, the Kespe Sermal army has suffered a great defeat and is almost unable to support itself, the higher-ups have asked all our companies to assemble and take down the Kess military base in one fell swoop right away. At this time, the big hairy squad leader, who wore an earpiece on his head, elaborated on the mission to a few people. For a while, all of them came energized one after another. Our position. It's not too far from the Kess base. We can go. It's about time we put on a show. Luchi saw them conferring and similarly understood what was going on. It looked like the stage was coming to an end. I'll go too. Naturally. No one refused Lu Qi's request, and no one had a reason to refuse. Subsequently, the two classes organized themselves and rushed towards the Kess base. And with a turn in perspective, the main force of the 1323rd Regiment had already hit the front of the Kess stronghold. Do 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 do. Here, fire was splattered. Gunfire swept across the field, and the firefight was unusually intense. Rockets, bring up all our rockets. No way, the West Gate is about to fail to hold. The opposite side is attacking too fiercely. Bastard. Have you contacted the regimental commander? Hasn't the support from above arrived yet? A company commander here in Irma was unusually anxious and was angrily scolding the intelligence officers around him. The west gate was about to be broken. And the big Mao army was about to come in. So it could be considered a firestorm. However, it was obvious that Wallian had not applied for assistance from the higher-ups. Damn it. Then bring out all the armored vehicles. If we really can't defend, we'll have to fish out of water. We, unexpectedly, this Irmau company commander was only halfway through his sentence when suddenly a bullet passed through his eyebrow. Unbiased and precise. It collected his life. What? Ambush? The intelligence officer was shocked. But in the next second, he had only moved two steps when a bullet also pierced through his brow, taking his life. Thousands of meters away in the short building, Luchi retrieved his arm with one hand. His face relaxed. The anchor fought beautifully. I can't. I like the locks the anchor opened more and more. Suggested anchor to sell hang. Maybe can get rich overnight. A piece of flirting voice in the live broadcast room. Now, Luchi is responsible for remote assistance here. His other comrades all ran down to participate in the war. Facing the base side, Luchi once again raised the arm in his hand. As he continuously pulled the trigger, the bullets from the arm continued to fly out at precise angles. At the bottom, the Irmau soldiers who were maneuvering the mortars or howitzers were pierced through their heads and died. The big hair soldiers were riding high with his assistance and the multilaterals had entered the interior of the base. Throw away your guns and surrender without killing. Hands up. Resist and we'll shoot. The Irmau army's defeat was irreversible, and it simply couldn't withstand the frantic attack of the big Mao soldiers. Finally, the several Irmau company commanders who were still holding their positions received a message from the regimental commander. At once, their eyes lit up. It's a retreat signal. The regimental commander has ordered to abandon the Kess military base and evacuate backward. After the several company commanders had gotten through, they immediately made a strategic arrangement and then conveyed it to the soldiers under them. Retreating. The entire army is ready to retreat. Throw away everything you can. Destroy everything you can. Grab the retreat. The reserve regiment army will come to meet us. Retreat. Luchi was still sniping nonstop. As he fought he realized that he was almost out of bullets. However, not long after, the big hairy army side had also achieved a victory. Only from his viewpoint. There was a big explosion at the Kess military base, and the chain reaction involved the entire base. Instantly, fire raged in the sky, and many supplies and equipment were drowned in the sea of fire. 
The only remaining Urmao soldiers also fled the base through tunnels or by car, migrating to the rear. And when the fire abetted a bit and the big Mao soldiers arrived at the scene thoroughly, they found that most of them had basically fled as much as they could, except for the captured soldiers. At this moment, the entire big Mao army was thrown into a frenzy. The Urmao army has withdrawn en masse. They gave up the Kes military base. This battle is ours to win. Our mission is complete. The Kes stronghold is occupied. Ola. Lu Qi gazed at the scene below and wiped his sweat slightly. He didn't expect it to be quite easy. Immediately afterward, Big Mao soldiers from all over swarmed into the base and planted the Big Mao national flag in every corner of the base. Lu Qi simply ran downstairs as well and followed to rush over to join the troops. Elsewhere at the same time, a similar situation occurred. Only slightly later, Zack's base, Norton's base, the Irmo army had been undefeated and started to withdraw, and the Big Mao soldiers drove in and occupied one strategic place after another. They planted flags all over these places, proclaiming the victory of the Big Mao army. Of course this was something that couldn't be helped. According to the judgment of Yak, the commander of the Ermao group, this situation could only retreat. If they still fought to the death, there was a good chance that the whole army would be destroyed. Soon, the news of the great victory everywhere was sent back to the strategic rear of the Great Mao. A group of Big Mao's top brass were excited. And Kadri, the first corps commander in charge of the attack on Avgiev, was even more filled with joy. With the major military bases occupied, in the Avgiev region, Irmo was completely deprived of strategic supplies. Next, when the repairs were perfected, the main force could be mobilized to launch a general attack on this area and take Avdiev in one fell swoop. However, after the battle was over, Kudri also received a joint military report from a number of regimental commanders, which seemed to have come to claim credit for one person. HM, who is this one? A new recruit, named Lu Qi? This face, it seems to be Asian. Kudri flipped through the information sent by the intelligence officers wanting to see what he had done to warrant the chiefs claiming credit for him. As a result, when he flipped the information base down, what Lu Qi had done made him instantly stare in disbelief, almost one without sitting still. This, on the other hand, 1323rd Regiment Nikolai's place had also received a number of thank you calls. Head Nikolai, thank you for your regiment's support during this occupation mission. Without the assistance of your regiment's snipers, I'm afraid that even if our regiment took the base, we would have to kill many people in battle. Captain Nikolai, I've already reported this soldier named Lu Qi under your command to the group commander for you. On behalf of the soldiers of my regiment, I would like to express my gratitude to him. If it wasn't for him, our army would have inevitably suffered heavy deaths and injuries in this battle. And those who survived, it can be said that they were all saved by him. Listening to the calls that kept coming in from the various regimental commanders, Nikolai's mouth couldn't close for a while. It was only after Avdiev. The multi-base was captured that he realized that the sniper in his regiment who had sniped Crick, Lu Qi, not only did he make great achievements within his own regiment, but he also divided his hands to help other regiments. Although this was something he didn't report, the result was very praiseworthy. So much so that now, even he followed the light and was called by multiple regimental commanders. Of course, Lu Qi's matter was also reported by Nikolai to the group commander. When the war credit came down, he couldn't wait to meet the sniper god within his own regiment. Immediately after Lu Qi's side, he also rejoined his teammates, Kirill and Moros. Thankfully, their company's commander, Bori, was still alive, just not in very good shape, having lost an arm in the battle. Received briefing from the regimental commander, the Irmao army has retreated all the way back. Our regiment will be temporarily stationed at Kes base, waiting for news of a general attack from the top. For the next period of time, everyone just recuperate and adjust. There were still half a dozen people alive in the entire company. But everyone was relieved to hear this news. A brutal battle of offense and defense was finally over. Brother, this mission of ours, it's considered complete, right? Luchi sent a question to Moros. Today's Moros had long since lost the brisk aura he had at that time. How to put it? He hadn't even expected that Luchi, who had been brought to the barracks by himself, had actually done that kind of horrible thing. Thinking about it now made him feel fearful. Ha ha. Yes, our mission this time is considered completely accomplished. But we still have the next mission. Moros lowered his head and patted Luchi on the shoulder in a pretense of depth. Just take a good rest during this period of time. The last two days should be fine. Luchi nodded. He remembered what Moros said before. But it was a three month live fire experience. Looking at this battlefield, there was definitely a second stage of the mission. No chance that the tanks and airplanes would come in the next stage. Understood, brother. Saying that, Luchi turned his viewpoint to the live broadcast. Then, viewers, I'll start with the summer wave. Thank you all for your company today. 
and tomorrow I'll give you a real-time live stream of my daily status here. Don't forget to click a follow before you go. Goodbye, everyone 886. Give the anchor attention. The future fun all depends on the anchor. After finishing everything, Luchi waved his hand and turned off the live broadcast. Today's real CS is really for him to play tired. Running around, the number of microblogging steps less to say 10. 000 up. However, the thought of this year's earned round, let Lu Chi exceptionally excited. He clicked on the background to see, nearly $5,000, which is still a day's income. I chow. This $800 spent is also too worth it. Lu Chi felt that most of the reason was still this real life CS. The fact that he couldn't see such a realistic scene in the country allowed him to find a novel live broadcasting effect and a chance to get rich overnight. If this is broadcast for a few more days, maybe a month is a few hundred thousand into the account ah. Thinking about it, Luchi is also ready to go and have a good sleep. After a busy day today, rest is essential. But before that, Luchi still took a video and sent it on fire tone. Brothers, today's battle is over. God of War Bureau Anchor carries the entire field. As soon as the video was posted, it provoked a lot of comments. At the scene, the anchor deserves the name of God of War. Manual Dog Head, the front row occupies the seat. But also the anchor ah. The anchor still owes me a head. Don't forget it. Raises eyebrows. After Luchi browsed through the comments and replied with a dog head, he stretched out and prepared to go to bed. Originally, he wanted to take a shower, but he was told by Maros that there was no place to do so. The reason was to simulate the effects of a real battlefield. Luchi felt very copyable. This is the flavor of the real battlefield. After the Kess base was occupied, the Damao military department sent people to defend it in shifts. This time, Luchi slept quite peacefully inside. However, what he doesn't know yet is that the battle report of yesterday's victory has already been passed on to the outside world by the Big Mao military. At this time in the Seed Flower House, short videos and media were reporting on this matter. News agency, according to reports, since the conflict between Great Mao and Irmo, just yesterday, the strategically important Avgiev multi-location base was lost, and Great Mao may take a general attack on the area. Military intelligence, the Great Maoist side reported that they have an ace sniper in their army. That's a good guy. One person has penetrated the army of the Ermaoist army. Globe, rumor has it that the Ermo sniper god was sacrificed in Avdiev, and that a new generation of sniper gods from the Great Mao was born, or will be unveiled in recent days, and further advances will be implemented in the Ermo positions. The battle between Big Mao and Ermo has been followed quite closely all over the world, especially by the rabbits who have a better relationship with Big Mao. So to the naked eye, the battle spread so widely that even ordinary people had heard about it slightly. This sleep Lu Chi slept very well and didn't get up until almost 11 o'clock. And when he got up early in the morning and swiped his cell phone, he finally saw these news that were exposed yesterday. My god. Awesome. What's this Ermao sniping god? Big hair sniping god. The title is a bit cool. Eh? The one called what's his name Chris, who seems to be called what's his name sniping god, can't be a fan of this person? Lu Chi saw these news and couldn't help but associate them. Generally only military fans would participate in this kind of real life CS. So it made sense, but he also had to sigh. Real war really wasn't something he could imagine. He could only play some kind of real life CS. After all, even Irmao so and so sniping god over there had died tragically in a certain position. On the contrary, it was his own fan who actually at himself under someone else's video. Solid hammer. This person is the anchor. Laughing, I can testify okay, I was there at the scene. Shocked at the scene strange. I am the anchor of the bullet. The anchor then put me from the gun. Reply upstairs. You say ah. How you do not say. Is not love to talk? Luchi looked at the tears and laughter. And did not reply one by one. Solely next. He does not look at the phone more. Ready to get up and wash first by the way to eat a lunch. This what military base although bombed. But the internal rest area is still retained. Barely able to live. At lunchtime. Everyone was gathered to eat together. Luchi marveled at the fact that the organizer of this real life CS was really powerful. In order to realistically recreate and integrate the players into the scene, they even directly let the military cards come and deliver the supplies. Ha, huh, are you like this? Me too eh? Yeah yeah, that's the one. I was cornered into a dead end. A few Irmo soldiers surrounded me. As a result, a sniper bullet suddenly flew from the sky. I didn't even react, and the Irmo soldiers were gone. My god, I was in the same situation. At that time the armored car blocked the road you know, as a result of that sniper bullet. While they were having their meal, the big hairy soldiers discussed with each other the shocking scenes on the battlefield and were glad that they survived. Eh Lu Chi, did you encounter the situation at that time? Really, at that time, I felt like I was finished. It touched me badly. Just then, 
Someone suddenly asked Lu Qi if he had ever been saved by a certain sniper's bullet. The previous seven days of training, coupled with the last two days of getting along, everyone was familiar with each other. Even though Lu Qi had an Asian face, no one ostracized him, but instead, they seemed to be very cordial. Ha, huh? oh, oh, there should be. Lu Qi replied perfunctorily. He was fiddling with his cell phone at the moment, rushing to mention the money he earned yesterday from the backstage to his card, but he didn't have time to brag with them. And seeing that Lu Qi wasn't interested, the other woolly bear soldiers didn't ask any more questions. On the contrary, it was Moros and Kirill and the others who were sitting on the sidelines who inadvertently revealed a bitter smile. Oh, just quite a bit of fun. After a while, Lu Qi's face flushed with joy and immediately opened the app to inquire. It's in the account. A whole $5,000 entered his account. At this moment, Lu Qi felt elated like never before. This belonged to the highest income in a single day since his live broadcast. But suddenly, not long after the expenses had arrived, Lu Qi realized that Xiao Ling had popped in with a message. Poke poke poke. Omega. After poking, the other party sent an expectant emoticon. Lu Qi flipped the chat page and snapped a reply. What's wrong ah? Nothing ah. Just want to come to care about you. Asking if you're comfortable traveling, eating well, and sleeping well. Seeing this string of words, Lu Qi thought for a moment and aimed his camera at the abundant single soldier rations. With a click, he sent the screenshot over. My side is pretty good. The cost is not only cheap, but there are more programs you can play. Look at the meals. After Lu Qi replied, the other party returned another envious emoticon. Oh being told by you. I want to go out and play even more. It's a pity that there's so much work in the institute. It's exhausting me to death. And our place is so remote. It's so troublesome to even get to the city for a meal. At the end of this sentence, a hamster emoticon lying on the ground was sent out. Seeing this, Lu Qi had no choice but to send an outburst to comfort him. So did you eat at noon today? Well, not yet. Our institute's food is so bland. I suddenly kind of want to eat hot pot. Seeing the hot pot, Lu Qi replied again. Your place? It should be quite far from the walking street. Why don't you order one to be delivered? Oh, oh. I also want to. But it is too far. Point a delivery over delivery fee then hot pot is still expensive. Lu Qi gave a slight beat. After thinking for a moment, he switched the screen to the red envelope interface. WeChat red envelope 1314. Omega? When the first red packet was sent out, the opposite party was directly confused for a moment. But immediately after, Lu Qi continued to input. WeChat red envelope 1314. WeChat red packet 1314. WeChat red packet 520. WeChat red packet 520. Omega? Ha! Huh? Obviously. This series of transfers, the genus gave her a whole won't. Lu Qi, where did you get so much money? You wouldn't have robbed the big hairy bank. Lu Qi replied with a string of ellipses, then naturally replied. No, I've been live streaming well lately, and I've made slightly more billions of points. You take it all. Don't condescend yourself to save money. T to the power of T, touched. At the same time, right inside a domestic mechanical research institute, Song Shirling stood in surprise looking at the transfer records in front of her in disbelief. She was draped in a white lab coat with a high ponytail, and today, she wore a white knit shirt on top and a pair of jeans underneath. Suddenly, Yu Meng Meng, who was also a research colleague behind her, passed by and saw the transfer records in her cell phone at a glance. Wow, Ling Ling, who transferred this money to you? Still all 1314 and 520? Your boyfriend? Is your boyfriend so rich? Yu Meng Meng quickly came forward and stared with a gossipy air. Although it was usually just a joke, Song Shirling was indeed the previously recognized flower of the academy in the institute. As a senior student who was not only good looking, but also extremely accomplished at a young age, she could be considered the object of many single young men's pursuit. Unfortunately, she had said before that she had a boyfriend. Yu Meng Meng also took it as a deliberate statement in order not to be harassed. I did not expect it to be true. Finished boyfriend or big money, light one day to transfer a large few thousand dollars over. I get it. So Ling Ling your boyfriend is big money ah, no wonder you can't see other boys. Song Shi Ling twisted her head, just in time to meet the gossipy Yu Meng Meng. Xiao Meng don't guess, and don't you follow me. She hurriedly hid far away, and also kept replying to the message while doing so, but Yu Meng Meng behind her was in hot pursuit. Don't go ah, let me Kong Kong, let me Kong Kong ah. Lu Qi didn't have much hesitation about transferring money to his girlfriend. When he first became an anchor before, there was basically no one around him that he trusted. And it was only Song Shirling who supported him and even gave him salary assistance. Now that the live broadcast is up, of course, it should be paid back or have to be paid back. But unsurprisingly, at the end of the day, 
The other party also only received a 520, and she said that she alone autonomous, do not need Luchi so much money. Luchi knew that she had a strong nature and didn't like other people's help in the past, so she didn't send any more. Then next, get ready to start the broadcast. Although the mission hadn't started, the broadcast was still live. With that, he first sent a video to warm up, and then he went live to broadcast his daily routine within the base. And by the way, he took the live viewers to see the weapons. But when he went live today, Luchi realized that his popularity had grown even more rapidly. At a glance, in the outdoor anchor field, he had directly dried up to the top one position. When the end of today's live broadcast, looking at another small thousands of gifts into the account, Luchi heart satisfied. This is only the beginning stage. The subsequent growth will be faster. But suddenly, there was a person who added Luchi's contact information the first time after he went off the air. Who is this? He talk? Flipping through his friends list, the reason why he talk had added his friends was written as he was an ultra manager of the Tiger's Tooth platform. Lu Chi remembered. It seemed like the two previous live broadcasts did prompt that the super tubes had entered the live broadcast. Please regulate the code. Lu Chi is a bit panicked. Will not own play too true. Super tube to find trouble, right? Or should he be invited to drink tea at the police uncle's place and severely investigate the three generations of his ancestors? Agreed. Soon, the friend ad through, but Lu Chi did not send the first time. Instead, across the room, the message popped up in no time. Hello, I'm Tiger's Tooth's management ho talk. May I ask, is this account run by Mr. Lu Chi himself? Seeing the message, Lu Chi replied, Yes, it's myself. Oh, that's good if it's in person. He spoke with an excited expression as he began to step into the thick of things. It's like this, I've been observing your live broadcast for a few days, and I think that your live broadcast content is very innovative. So, I would like to talk to you about the route of subsequent development. And by the way, I would like to invite you to join Tiger's Tooth. Join Tiger's Tooth? Lu Chi was puzzled. Yes, our platform is willing to provide traffic tilt and resource assistance to help you grow bigger and stronger. By the way, can you accept to interact with this site? Or outside anchors? Looking at the line of information that popped up, Lu Chi seemed to be reading it. It turned out to be his live broadcast that had caught the attention of the platform. So the platform sent someone to try to carry out cultivation on him. You have to know that many big anchors nowadays are contacted by major platforms after they first emerge. And then various benefits are tilted to finally bring them to the top. It was unthinkable that one day, he would be able to have this treatment as well. I haven't thought too much about the subsequent development route. I'm willing if the platform is willing. As for the anchor connecting and interacting and such, this I have no opinion. He said at first glance. I didn't expect Lu Chi to be able to agree so quickly. Generally by the time he reached this point, he himself would come with a lot of traffic. Faced with the olive branches of the major platforms, the choices became more, and it wasn't easy to sign this kind of anchor. Good, Mr. Lu Chi is willing. Then we can electronically sign the contract today. Keep in touch in recent days. We, Tiger's Tooth, happen to be having an event with Bean Fish, and have invited the head anchors of both sides to interact and connect. Similar to PDD, Decima Dull Little Sister and other anchors also to increase the heat of each other. I'll notify you when the time comes okay. No problem. Not a moment later, He Xiang sent the contract, and the electronic signature was completed. Being able to take down Lu Chi smoothly and quickly made He Tang quite joyful. He immediately bounced a call to the upper echelons of the company and reported the situation over here. On the other hand, Lu Chi, after signing the contract was also like a dream. Tiger Teeth side of the monthly base salary reported 30, 000, and said that the follow-up will slowly upward. Just now, 30, 000 base salary has been on-site to Luchi account. Without the slightest delay, get this 30,000. Luchi now completely opened his rich road. At the same time on the other side, the strategic command post and the merit recognition approval also finally came down. The head of each regiment was responsible for personally gathering the entire regiment to recognize the personnel in the name of the group army commander-in-chief. Slowly, for two days in a row, Luchi stayed very peacefully within the base. But suddenly, during a meal one day, company commander Bao Li approached him and made a high-profile announcement to the entire company. Stop. Everyone stop for a while. I've just been informed by our regimental commander that for our regiment's outstanding performance in the war, the regimental commander has already reported it to the group army chief and applied for commendations for some members of our regiment. In a moment, the regimental commander will personally come over to honor everyone. So everyone get ready. Bali said with a rather happy look, and when they heard this news, the group inside the base also instantly reacted, their faces full of joy. What, the regimental commander personally honored us? 
or the head of the regiment applied to the superior army chief. The gold content of this commendation is very high. Great. Usually when you get a commendation, even the lowest third class merit will more or less rise in rank. In this way, won't I be able to become an officer as well? Ha ha ha. The more the big hairy soldiers talked, the more excited they became, itching to sing a couple songs. Lu Qi was staying with Maros and Kirill at the moment, and as he listened to the company commander's speech, he couldn't help but turn his head to look at Moros. Brother, what kind of recognition is this part of the tour? Moros felt tired but spoke calmly. Of course, I've said it's a full set, so I'm sure it's all about experiencing everything. Lu Qi nodded, understanding. Next to him, Kirill was already speechless, thinking that this was some kind of communication method unique to them, but gradually not a moment later, the head of the regiment, Nicholas, brought the deputy head of the regiment, Lada, down from the airplane. 1323rd Regiment is assembled. The regimental commander has arrived. Roger. Yes. Let's go. Thus, amidst the base wide shouts like thunder, the big hair soldiers ran out one by one from different places. They all assembled on the square in front of the base, lining up in formation, with each company in charge of the company commander of each company, waiting for the chief to give the word. For his part, Nikolai, with his hands behind his back and carrying a document, arrived at the scene one after the other with his deputy regimental commander. Lada, coming, coming, the regimental commander is here. I wonder, will there be me inside the merit list this time? Kind of looking forward to it. The big hair soldiers whispered, nervous. Nicholas, who had arrived at the scene, swept the entire field and nodded his head at the well-organized team, quite satisfied. Soldiers, I'm sure your company commander has already informed you, between your excellent performance this time, on the battlefield. The group commander there approved and is ready to give you temporary commendations. The big hairy soldiers all looked upbeat, standing straight with their heads held high. Nikolai's smile grew stronger when he saw this. I'm proud of your performance. It's an honor for you. And this time, within our regiment, we have a special honoree. I feel very gratified to have such a soldier. The big hair soldiers were unusually exuberant at the moment. But when they heard the headmaster say that the regiment had produced a special commendation officer, they were shocked in unison. Wait. What? Extraordinary recognition? Really? No way. In our regiment, there's actually an extraordinary commendation officer? This, the big hair soldiers looked at each other two by two, and for a moment, they all saw incredulity and strong shock in each other's eyes. It wasn't that they were making a big deal out of it, but an extraordinary level recognition could be said to be completely unheard of. Special level, without a doubt, was the highest level of recognition within Big Mao the highest honor that could only be obtained if one had made a great contribution to the great Mao nation on the battlefield, or even an act that changed the course of a battle with the power of one person. However, it wasn't that this kind of honor was completely absent. It was just that those who had obtained this kind of honor had basically all died on the battlefield. Only a handful of them could truly come back and get their hands on this honor, and that was what shocked them the most. It could be said that it was a living myth. Unexpectedly, they had such a myth within their regiment, and they were able to let all of them see it? I remember that the last person who got the extraordinary honor was still one of our big hairy chiefs. He led the team to wipe out eight opposing regiments in a row in a desperate situation, 11 years after the fact. This is also exaggerated, isn't it? A living myth, right next to me, within our regiment? To be able to get this honor and still come back alive, that's a true ruthless man. Who in the world got this honor? Could it be that sniper on the battlefield before? My god, are you saying that sniper is in our regiment? The Daimao soldiers in the regiment discussed it recklessly, no longer caring that the regimental commander was there. Their eyes were filled with horror. Even company commander Baoli didn't expect that there was actually a special class hero within his regiment. It was still a special approval from the group commander. There was absolutely no way it could be fake. On the contrary, Nikolai, seeing them in this state, merely smiled and shook his head. Good, now I'll start reporting from the third grade. Everyone be quiet. After saying that, Nikolai took out the list he was carrying behind his back and began to report the names of the honorees one by one. The soldier who had followed him was carrying a tray full of medals in his hands. Third degree, carrot, turf, and. The soldiers in the companies were still talking as Nikolai signed up at the top. Kirill, you're a sniper too. Reveal it, is it that guy? At that moment, a big hairy soldier inquired towards Kirill. Kirill crooked his mouth and laughed softly twice, not wanting to answer this question of his. The other big hairy soldiers also looked over, then seeing that Kirill didn't say anything, they could only look helplessly at Lu Qi and Moros beside Kirill. Lu Qi, Moros, I remember you guys were with Kirill at the time, right? Did you see that sniper from our side? 
Is it from our regiment? What? Lu Qi was puzzled. What sniper? He didn't see the sniper ah. Uh. Ha, Moros, on the other hand, just like Moros, didn't give a damn about him. I super. You guys instead answer ah. Uh. In the end who is it? Anxious me whoosh dash. Yes, say ah. Uh. Which person ah uh, so hang? Not only him, the other big hairy soldiers were equally expectant. Immediately after, in front of Nicholas reported reported. Third class Merrick report finished. The should go up all went up. As for the second and first class merits, the number of people was small and most of the personnel who had received the commendation failed to return. Finally at the end, there was only one medal left for special merit. Nicholas picked up the medal next to him and swept his gaze across the room. At this moment, all the Daimao soldiers were holding their breath, all very much looking forward to who it was for fear of hearing the wrong name. And suddenly, Nikolai's eyes stopped and locked onto Lu Qi. He smiled faintly at Lu Qi. Finally, the only special merit recipient. The group army commander in chief's special authorization. Lu Qi. In a flash, the moment the voice fell, the entire room went silent. The few Dimao soldiers beside Lu Qi even turned to him with a nearly explosive gaze after hearing his name. The company commander of their company, Bao Li, also looked puzzled and twisted his head. Ha! Huh? Lu Qi heard his tour guide calling him and poked his head out with a confused expression. At that moment, Kirill immediately poked Lu Qi, signaling for him to go up quickly. Hurry up and go up. Calling you. Lu Qi paused for a moment, then hurriedly took a step to hurry up. Under the shocked gazes of all the Ermao soldiers, Lu Qi arrived all the way to Nicholas' side. Deputy Head Rada sized up Lu Qi, his eyes filled with admiration, and he couldn't help but nod his head. It's him, company commander Bao Li said incredulously. In the next second, the entire company was up in arms. Holy shit, the special merit was obtained by Lu Qi? How is this possible? What did Lu Qi do to earn a special merit? That's not right. Lu Qi is not a new recruit. How did he get a special merit? No one had thought about it, especially the few big hair soldiers who were more familiar with Lu Qi. They had wondered for half a day that the recipient of the special grade merit was right beside them, and at this moment, Lu Qi didn't figure out what the situation was. He saw Nicholas holding the medal over and turning to Lu Qi directly in front of him one step at a time, without waiting for his reaction. The medallion was already worn on Lu Qi's chest, surging and flashing. I think everyone should be familiar with it. Your comrade in arms, Lu Qi, with one man and one gun, changed the battle situation and saved many warriors from the fire. Therefore, the group army commander has given special approval to grant him a special honorary title and the rank of lieutenant. After a few words, some people below were shocked, some were envious, and others felt incomprehensible. Kirill and Moros were fine. After all, they had followed Lu Qi from early on. However, those who had been saved by Lu Qi and were still quite familiar with him, currently only felt that their worldview had collapsed. Wasn't Lu Qi a new recruit? How did he become a battlefield sniper god? Or is he the one who saved them from the fire? On the contrary, Lu Qi had a series of things that didn't slow him down for a while. Brother, what's the point of giving me a medal? Because of following Lu Qi, Kirill had also barely earned a third class merit and was standing on Lu Qi's side. Hearing Lu Qi say this, he could only grin and explain. Oh this ah, a souvenir. Before, you had an excellent record in the real life CS. The official specially gave you a souvenir. No one else has it. Ah, so it's a souvenir. Lu Qi instantly reacted. Of course he knew that his previous record inside the CS battles should have been very excellent. Not to say that he had won the first place. At least the top few places should not be a problem. So it seemed reasonable for the organizer to send out a souvenir. But Lu Qi didn't realize that he acquired the rank of a lieutenant. At once, from a lowly recruit, a leap up to lieutenant. Bowley directly people are silly. To know, the rank of lieutenant, basically can already be a company commander position. He is now only a lieutenant. What's worse, Lu Qi is still so young. In other words, as long as he developed steadily, he could definitely become a company commander within half a year at least. It was unimaginable for such a young company commander to be on par with him. Heavens, Lu Qi's leap from recruit to lieutenant is simply unprecedented. Is this a military genius? I heard that Crick was killed in battle. Lu Qi should have killed him. Can't compare. Can't compare at all. Too terrifying. With a glance, the big hair soldiers sighed in pieces. The position of lieutenant was a position that many soldiers needed to climb for at least six years, or even ten years upwards to reach. It could be said that Lu Qi's position with them now was completely different. He was already an officer. An officer who could command a company in the future. Alright, then today's commendation ceremony ends here. With heavy hearts, we honor the memory of our fallen comrades who were even more heroic. After the recognition ceremony was over, 
Nikolai observed a small moment of silence before the regiment prepared to disband. He also grabbed his way back. There were still a lot of things to take care of. Immediately, after all, the general attack on Avdyev was about to begin. But before leaving, he didn't forget to find Lu Qi. Lu Qi, you did a great job. Nikolai patted Lu Qi's shoulder, and Lu Qi's expression froze slightly. In response, Nikolai didn't suggest too much. The group captain is eager to meet you. I hope you'll be safe. After saying that, Nikolai turned around and prepared to board the plane and leave, wearing Lada. But this time, without the need for Moros to explain, Lu Qi seemed to instantly understand what it meant. If it was in the mode of a passing family, with the position representing the identity, then there was a high possibility that it was the official top brass organizing this reality CS who wanted to see him. This is to let Lu Qi associated with a brand new development route. You can contact with the senior management for the future of the live broadcast to pave the way. Their own live broadcast to bring them traffic. They get more new venues. After all, once the three months were up, Lu Qi was the one who was going to leave. So wouldn't the live content be gone by then? This is a good idea. Lu Qi felt that he was really a genius. Immediately after, he took down the badge he had just obtained, placed it in his hand and took a picture of it, uploading it to the Fire Voice short video as a souvenir. Hey, brothers look at what I've acquired. Real life CSI single game KD explosion. Official souvenir small badge. You guys don't say this souvenir workmanship is quite texture. After sending a string of text, Lu Qi was satisfied and turned to the comment area. Now on the Fire Voice platform, Lu Qi had already gained a huge amount of traffic. And in a short while the pop-ups brushed up, you don't say, Anchor the souvenir is quite real ah, worthy of being a prize for real life CS. I don't know what to do. Do you have any more? Can you send it home by parcel post? This is a good question, but I am an elementary school student. I think the anchor should send me one directly. Smaller, smaller pattern. I was just born. The anchor should send me 10. Upstairs, it's true that I was born. Looking at the comments, Luchi selectively replied to a few, and then exited the fire sound platform. At this time to return to the base inside, many people look at his eyes have changed. There was worship. There was awe. But most of them were still grateful. After all, quite a few of them in this regiment were saved by Lu Qi. But right at this moment, Lu Qi received a friend ad message. Whom? Who is this? He clicked on the backstage to see that it was a cute girl's avatar that wasn't labeled with an incoming message. Just as Lu Qi was puzzled, he talked suddenly popped up with a message. Mr. Lu Qi. I've already asked Dahl to add your contact information, so just agree to it. Dahl, Lu Qi sniffed and remembered in just a few seconds. Previously, he said that the two platforms were going to hold some kind of event between them, and they had found head anchors to string each other up for program effects. Now that the live broadcast industry was in a bad boom, Lu Qi could understand. But according to the above to speculate, he said this Dahl, is not a Dahl little sister? Thinking of this, Lu Qi immediately agreed to the friend request. On the other side, He Tang continued to pop in with a message. After adding dull little sister's friend, you guys just chat amongst yourselves first, and you can discuss what to broadcast in the linkup. I still have things to do here in the background. I'll push someone over to you later when I have time. Good. After he spoke, Luchi replied. With that, he took the chat interface and switched to dull little sister's side. Hello brother, this is dull little sister. A message popped up, and from the circle of friends, it could be seen that it was indeed Dull Little Sister herself. And Dull Little Sister offline was almost the same as the live broadcast. Also greatly grinning, first Lu Qi one step before sending a message. But Lu Qi had only just graduated from college not long ago. How could he call his brother? Hello hello, I'm Lu Qi, but I'm post eggs. Calling me brother might not be appropriate. Lu Qi's paragraph didn't seem to have any problems. But when Dull Little Sister saw it, she was directly happy. What does this say about her? Doesn't this say she's old? He he, you're the one who can play the stunt. Whatever, let's talk about each individual dash. I call you brother you love to call as much as you like. Being accustomed to being flirted with by the water friends old are flirted with. And now dull little sister had long since developed immunity. Then, she shifted the question to the center. I heard from the platform that we have a collapsed connectivity event in a few days. What kind of content do you do anymore? Let's exchange ideas. Oh, I do outdoor content. Outdoor anchor. Seeing that Lu Qi was doing outdoor content, Dull Little Sister pondered a little. Previously in the circle, she was completely unaware of this anchor. She had heard that it was a new outdoor anchor from Tiger's Tooth side, and she didn't know if it was the same as Tong Tong, doing outdoor pickup content or something like that. One said, this kind of live content is now long gone, and she herself is doing the game. Thinking about two people connecting, the live broadcast effect shouldn't be too good. 
but it couldn't be helped, since the platform had arranged it, chatting and interacting was still possible, anyway, if we connect, let's get interactive or something, any PK, bets are fine, Luchi snapped his words one step ahead of dull little sister, dull little sister nodded, which was exactly what she had in mind, alright, then I'll wait for the platform to notify me first, and we'll connect when you're broadcasting, Luchi replied with a good word, and everything was agreed upon, unexpectedly one day, he also had the opportunity to interact with the big anchor line, or a variety of the site outside the head of the station, this is also a big step forward in his live broadcasting career, subsequently Lu Chi daily send video, love to do whatever, waiting for he words to give him to push the next person, time flies, another two days have passed, and the battle on the side of Big Hair or Heo is something that the media mainstream reports, for example, the occupation of many places in Irmo of Jelv, and an impromptu recognition ceremony two days ago, it spread across the countries, on the rabbit side, short video and media platforms, there was just as much information, mom, I'm all right over here, you don't have to worry, aha, uh -huh, I know, I'll take care of myself, don't worry, inside the mechanical research institute, Song Shirling was currently leaning against the wall talking to her own mother on the phone, Ling Ling ah, say you now, how is it going with Xiao Qi's side, you're not too young anymore, it's time to think about your own lifelong matters, on the other end of the phone, Song mother Zhao Xian carefully inquired, upon hearing this, Song Shirling sighed helplessly, Mom, Lu Qi and I are still early, we've only just graduated not long ago now, we still need to prioritize our careers, is it necessary to be in such a hurry to get married? Alas, you are not in a hurry, but mom is quite anxious, what about Xiao Qi, what did Xiao Qi say? Song Shirling thought about it in silence, then replied, Lu Qi is also quite good now ah, we both prioritize our careers, his recent live broadcast is flourishing, he transferred a lot of money to me at once. Zhao Xian sniffed, propped up her chin and nodded her head, inside a hundred square meter house, she was currently sitting on the living room sofa talking to Song Shirling, as for her side, there was a middle-aged man, who bore a slight resemblance to Song Shirling, also crossing his legs and eavesdropping with his side ears, mom is quite happy that you guys are in a good relationship, but you still need to make more plans before marriage, shout she that live broadcasting industry mom specially learned about it, in the end it's not very stable. Have you asked him if he's quasi prepared to do something else? Song Shirling furrowed her brows and smiled gently. She knew what her own mother was worried about. The older generation all thought about having a secure job for fear of accidents after marriage. Previously, she was busy studying at the university and didn't have time to fall in love for four years. Zhao Xian anxiously thought that her daughter had a problem with her sexual orientation and was almost ready to find her a blind date. The key is to find a variety of teachers, doctors, lawyers, and other professions. Mom ah, I think Luchi now is quite good, and do not need to find a side business or something to do, don't worry, the two of us together have completely enough financial resources, Song Shirling explained, but when the words came to this point, Zhao Xian on the opposite side of the table suddenly looked as if she had remembered something, eh, mom remembered, Ling Ling have you asked Xiao Qi if he has the will to enlist, if it's possible, your dad would come in handy, when these words came out, Zhao Xian and Song Father Song Zhuoming quickly glanced at each other, Enlisting in the military is not only stable, the pay is also high, and the future promotion route is clear. Have you seen that recent news? It seems like a recognition ceremony was held on Dimao's side. Let's not say we'll learn from others and get a special honor, a step to heaven. It's just that if we have the chance to get a third class merit, that high and low can also become an officer. Song Shirling froze when she heard this. To be honest, her family really want to talk about it. Also high and low is considered a real military family. Her own father. Song Zhuoming, is a major in the army, and will soon be promoted to lieutenant colonel, soon to be the head of a regiment, because of this, Zhao Xian used to want her to find the other half as the military, even for Lu Qi, they had also repeatedly sidestepped and subtly asked for his opinion, mom, Lu Qi he, your father has been promoted very quickly in a row this year, it hasn't been long since he got to major, and he'll soon have the chance to be promoted to lieutenant colonel, Xiao Qi is now abroad, right, when he comes back you ask, if he is willing, if he's willing, your father will personally promote him, it won't take two years before he's promoted, before Song Shirling could finish her sentence, Zhao Xian came back up and spoke a whole lot more, in the end, she also turned her head and hastily looked at Song Zhuoming, signaling him to speak a few words as well, eh, that's right that's right, Song Zhuoming immediately came over to the cell phone, dad thinks Lu Qi is good at everything, but he's just too skinny, how can he protect you in the future? When he comes back you tell him to enlist directly in the army, with your dad around, 
in three years at most, we can make sure he gets promoted to warrant officer. As a soldier, Song Zhuoming likewise wanted his son-in-law to be a soldier. Otherwise, if he was skinny and had no position, what would he take to protect his daughter in the future? Not to say that he would reach the rank of major or even lieutenant colonel at his age, but at least he would have to be a lieutenant. After all, Song Zhuoming is still quite proud of this. A major at his age was already a height that many people couldn't reach in their lifetime. Plus being promoted to lieutenant colonel right away and serving as a regimental commander wasn't something that just anyone could do. So he didn't expect too much from Lu Qi, and only thought that if the young man was willing to work, he would bring his son-in-law up the ranks. On the other hand, Song Shirling's expression was a bit speechless. Soldiers are indeed very good, but she likes Lu Qi as a person, and she doesn't care what the other party's job is. Forget it mom and dad, I won't talk to you anymore. I like Lu Qi anyway, bye. Saying that, she decisively chose to hang up the phone. Zhao Xian heard the whimpering sound coming from her cell phone and could only shake her head helplessly. This child, ugh forget it, when Xiao Qi comes back next time, I'll personally talk to him. After Zhao Xian finished speaking, she turned her head to look at Song Zhuoming again. Old Song, are you going to make another trip back to the army recently? Song Zhuoming sniffed and took a deep breath. Yes, this time I'll be going back for a longer period of time, so I might have to break contact again. I'm preparing to be promoted to the position of lieutenant colonel this year, and I'm also grasping to pave the way for our son-in-law. All right, then you should pay more attention to safety outside. Okay. Meanwhile, on the other side, Lu Qi had just finished a simple live broadcast, when He Xiang popped up a message. Also popping up was a friend request from a sad mailhead. Lu Qi, Tong Tong added you. So agree first. Lu Qi quickly flipped through the backstage and saw Tong Tong. Tong Jin Chang, at a glance. This avatar was too recognizable, causing Lu Qi to instantly recognize that it was the Grandmaster. When the friend request passed, the opposite party also immediately sent a string of greetings. Brother, brother, hello hello, I'm Tan Jincheng, hello you proud, I'm Lu Qi, meeting his ancestor in person. Lu Qi was slightly excited, then the two of them chatted about the content of the live broadcast, after all, they are both outdoor anchors on this site, and the platform is also the most concerned about the connection, but said chat content, that is, bragging, when the time is basically all improvisation to create the effect of the program. Do 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 do. After chatting with Tong Jincheng, Lu Qi just took back his cell phone, but an alarm suddenly sounded outside the cast base. Bring all the equipment. Gather up. Gather up. The car is coming. The whole regiment is ready to board the car. The disorganized shouts stretched on and on. And company commander Bali also quickly rushed to his company's stationing area and began to gather his company's soldiers. Seeing the big hair soldiers pouring out from their various positions, Lu Qi also stood up obediently. Moros and Kirill, who were next to him, instantly understood what was going on. Brother, is it the start of the second phase of the mission? Lu Qi inquired. Moros nodded gruffly before telling. Yes, it should be the start of the second stage of the mission. Let's go. We'll follow. Kirill took the two of them with him and got up, and the familiar green troop carriers were parked outside the base. This time, Nikolai's armed forces arrived on the scene once again, and he stood in front of the group and announced loudly. All 1,323rd Regiment at your service. At present, the great counterattack on our front line has officially begun, and the Kess base will be taken over by other troops to advance. Due to the reduction in numbers, my regiment will be sent to the front line and temporarily merge with the other regiments to march with the large army. The big hair soldiers stood straight, their eyes gleaming. On the contrary, Lu Qi, after hearing a new mission in the ranks, showed particular anticipation. After staying at the base for so many days, he guessed that the organizers were preparing the venue, and now he guessed that it was finally ready to be used. Lu Qi's hands were itching now, and he couldn't help but get ready to start slaying. And in the end, the head of the group, Nikolai, gave back an ultimatum. This time, our army's great counterattack will definitely be met with the full resistance of the Irmao army, and even NATO members. According to reports from the front, there are already heavily armored synthetic brigades intervening in the battlefield, and even the air force will be deployed. However, this battle cannot be lost, we must take Avdiev. As the words fell, the few Daimao soldiers at the scene were all energized. Must take Avdiev. Ula. Everyone present knew how vicious the frontline battlefield was. This position they were in was just a marginal battlefield, and the other side didn't even have many heavy weapons. And once they entered the frontline battlefield, tanks, armored vehicles, missiles, and even airplanes would keep appearing, and nine deaths would be the result. Maybe in the entire regiment. Lu Qi was the only one who felt excited. 
Knowing that the other side has tanks and airplanes, then they must have tanks and airplanes on their side as well. Luchi had wanted to play with these things for a long time, but because the regiment had never had them before, and the other regiments couldn't find them either, he hadn't touched them. Now it was good. Immediately he would have the chance to see it. On board. On board. Led by the company commander. The entire regiment began to get on the troop carriers one after another. Lu Chi, Maros and Kirill were in a car, and just as soon as they got on the car, Lu Chi skillfully put on the VR glasses. Brother, when we get to the place, do we still need to connect the VR or something? Don't say. Without this VR I feel the scene is not real. Maros saw the situation. This did not do defense. Just returned a thumbs up. Of course, in order to simulate the real scene, VR is inevitable. All right brother. Luchi sniffed without hesitation and prepared to put the VR on immediately. However, just at this moment, a string of sounds suddenly rang in his ears. Ding. Congratulations to the host, successfully completing the first stage of the mission. Ding. Congratulations to the host for obtaining two draw opportunities. Ding. Congratulations to the host for acquiring the gift of artillery proficiency. Ding. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the talent. Driving proficiency. Right in front of Lu Chi's eyes. The familiar panel presented itself once again. Causing him to be startled. Lu Chi glanced over his head and observed the reactions of Moros and Kirill. Who really looked as if they hadn't seen anything. At this moment. Lu Chi was even more certain that this was the system that came with the VR. Awesome brother. I gained two more talents. And this VR system actually comes with mission rewards. Lu Chi said towards Moros who twisted his head to look at him in confusion. Well, got used to it. He he, our VR system. It's taken the most advanced technology. This kind of thing is only considered infrastructure. Lu Chi nodded, and then immediately took out his cell phone and shot a video. Brothers, the anchor is about ready to open the second phase of the mission, aiming to take down Avgiev. Just as the troop carriers started, Lu Chi smoothly sent the video to Fire Voice. Ha ha ha, the anchor is going to play with the stunt. And it's still up to the anchor to hit Avgiev all right. Have a say. I really doubt that CS is a gimmick. The anchor is actually participating in the war. Front row seat. The anchor is actually guilty of war crimes. This side suggests that the anchor quickly surrender. Confess from leniency. Resist from strict. To you play understand belongs to is. Manual comical. Seeing the comments brushed out one by one. Lucci incidentally booked a lifetime. And released an announcement that this live broadcast will be different from the past. The comments section perked up at once, while Luchi put on the VR and prepared to start connecting his cell phone. The troop carriers were traveling on the road and were rushing towards the frontline battlefield, and at this time, the frontline battlefield was unusually fierce. When Luchi and the others' convoy was still in the distance, they could hear all kinds of artillery fire. Even though it was pitch black before Luchi's eyes, with the ability of perception, he was still able to roughly detect which area a few missiles had smashed into. Gradually, two hours passed. The convoy on Lu Chi's side had a chance encounter with the convoys of several other regiments and merged onto a road at the same time. The size of the team gradually became larger and more intricate. The big hair soldiers sitting in the car each had a tense look on their faces, and only Lu Chi suddenly jerked his head up after traveling for some time. Brother, how much longer is this VR connection? Moros frowned and opened his mouth slightly when he heard Lu Chi's serious tone. It should. Actually almost done. You can take it off. Upon hearing this, Lu Chi immediately nodded and prepared to pull the VR glasses up, but just as he was about to do so, suddenly the vehicle shook violently for a moment, and immediately afterward, it began to drift in an unexplained manner. What's wrong? What happened? What's wrong with the driver? Why is the car shaking? The big hairy soldiers inside the car woke up in shock and braced themselves to sit up. It wasn't just Lu Chi's side. The same thing happened to the other convoys as well. Not good. Air raid. It's an air raid. Quickly take shelter. The air raid is coming. At this instant, roars like thunder came from outside the car. Then only a second later, the sound of bombers traveling at high speeds breaking through the air was heard directly above the convoy. Luchi quickly raised his head. He had long ago sensed ahead of time that something was flying over from the sky. But unluckily, by the time the others realized it, all the bombers had already arrived overhead. Rumble dash. In an instant, the missiles fell in a vertical straight line and all the troop carriers began to travel at high speeds to avoid them. Nay, the bombardment was so dense that a large number of troop carriers were destroyed in just the first wave of the attack, or exploded, or arson, or overturned. Jump off the car, jump off the car. Shouts rang out as the Damao soldiers tumbled down from the troop carriers one by one. Luchi was the one who reacted the fastest and jumped off the vehicle with Moros and Kirill. As a result, in the next second, a missile fell straight down. 
completely destroying their personnel carrier. The sweeping impact also bounced the three as far away as possible. But at this moment, looking up at the missiles falling from the sky, Lu Qi only felt incomparably excited. True, simply too real. The official was also able to go as far as blowing up troop carriers. This special effect, if placed in the game, high and low is also considered a beautiful CG beginning, but did not wait for Lu Qi to see a few more seconds. The rear followed by the bomber continues to sail, followed by the troop transport vehicle brigade to drop missiles. Lu Qi could not wait any longer and immediately took out his cell phone to shoot a video. As the saying goes, when in distress, first send out a fire tone. He then directly started broadcasting and recorded the entire airstrike in its entirety. Brothers, the anchor has suffered an air raid. I'm Isla Bean. What did my cell phone dad send me into again? This is the Syrian battlefield. Just came from the fire. What's the anchor's job? What the hell is this? Are these real airplanes or fake airplanes? Why is the sky full of them? True. Too true. Old fans reporting for duty. The anchor has started another job. I'm super. The anchor is not deciding to send out fire sounds first. Let me see the calmness of the old generation of artists. Lucci is still on the air. Because of the air raid, the heat of the live room a big rise. Just opened the broadcast even soared hundreds of people. But he was not ready to go. But suddenly a sound of a truck speeding. Ringing in his ears. At some point, a battle damaged version of the personnel carrier appeared behind him. The people in the troop carrier yanked him up and brought him inside in one go. What's the point of freezing? Don't want to live. Hurry up and drive. It was only after a shout that Lu Qi came back to his senses. The big hairy soldier in charge of driving slammed on the gas pedal. And the troop carrier changed direction. Traveling at high speed under the furious bombardment. Inside the vehicle, the one pulling him was a big Mao soldier who looked to be almost 40 years old. Lu Qi tried to poke his head out and scan around. It turned out that because the vehicle was blown up. The people who jumped out of the car and were still alive chose the car that was still intact, and temporarily started to flee in all directions. But there is a problem. His game guide Moros disappeared ah. Even Kirill did not know where to go. How else could he pass the mission? Contemplating for a moment, Luchi thought about it. Anyway, he also probably understood how to play this real life CS. Recruit, what's wrong with you? You just dazed for half a day? Do you know that a moment stays on the battlefield is likely to cost you your life? Lu Qi had just calmed down when the middle-aged man beside him started outputting at him. Lu Qi turned his head and blinked at the man. According to his knowledge, there were a large number of NPCs present inside this real-life CS, or it could also be said that the staff were more like accompanying him. The player, in the game, thinking about this, Lu Qi suddenly felt that there was a big chance that the middle-aged man in front of him was the tour guide for this stage of his arranged mission. On the contrary, the middle-aged man was already very dissatisfied with Lu Qi's previous behavior. He was a veteran who had served in De Mao for the last 10 years and had walked onto the battlefield more than once. Therefore, he understood the cruelty of the battlefield better than anyone else, and a casual rushing of the mind to froth would cost him his life. Looking at Lu Qi's Asian face and young age, the middle-aged man already understood that Lu Qi was a new recruit. He hadn't treated new recruits before because they would always make some low-level mistakes. You know what? Without me pulling you up just now, you would have been missile blown up. With that kind of ability, how dare you run into battle? Oh, that's quite a thank you, Lu Qi replied. Currently, it should be the CG stage of a similar game, and since the NPC was here to lead the plot, then Lu Qi pondered that he must be right to speak along with his words. The latter, on the other hand, sighed heavily after two seconds of silence at Lu Qi's words, with a look of hatred. As a veteran soldier, he already had a bad impression of dangling recruits. Lu Qi stumbled upon the bombardment and had a stunned look on his face, which really made him feel worse the more he thought about it. Alas. There really are all kinds of recruits nowadays. Lu Qi didn't say anything, but could tell that the other party seemed to have a strong opinion of himself. However, he took it all as a plot necessity and pressed on. Instead he was still a bit happy. Oh, Anchor this is being scolded by the NPC ah? A bit interesting ah this NPC. I want to know Anchor scolded back will be how. Palatizing, Anchor this real life CS is too much fun. Large map, all kinds of facilities. I would like to be called the pinnacle of open-ended free exploration games. Oh, the key anchor this is not a game. All real people play NPC is very powerful. The pop-up screen. Lu Qi with a cell phone to probe out of the green curtain. To observe changes in the outside world. At this moment, although the air raid is still continuing, but all the bombers are chasing the large force. The people who had picked up their cars and drove away to escape, even though they didn't know where they had gone, at least the bombers weren't following anymore. Lu Qi thought about it. It seemed that the communication system was still working. It was just that the signal was a bit bad right now. When they got into the city center, 
They could try to contact Moros and Kirill. Driving on, the troop carrier had plunged headlong into the city center. The chaos here was in pieces, and the tragedy was far greater than the Kess stronghold. The drive was also thrilling, with whatever missiles and artillery shells fell from the sky from time to time. There were also Irmo and NATO members shooting to stop them, and several times they nearly made them overturn the car. When the middle-aged man saw this scene, he'd scared hard. The NATO mercenaries had really come after all. Lu Chi, on the other hand, quickly contacted both Maros and Kirill after entering the city center. It's too chaotic here. I'm not sure what bearing I'm in right now. Don't panic yet. Find a regiment to follow first and wait for the higher-ups to get in touch. Maros said to Lu Chi. Paraphrasing over, Lu Chi understood. Guessing that the first stage of the mission was to follow the team first to let him get acclimated. For this mission, he would be able to fly solo on his own. Understood brother. Then I'll go on my own. Saying that, Luchi directly cut off the call. When Moros, who was sitting in the car at the opposite end, heard this, his face immediately stagnated. I told you to follow the team. Who told you to let yourself go? You guys look to the left. Is that iron lump a tank? I'm going. It's really a tank. There's a real one coming. Look to your right. The organizer has brought out the real thing. The tank is coming your way. With the discussion in the live broadcast room, Luchi also saw a tank slowly coming out from the alley on the right side of the troop carrier. And in the blink of an eye, the tank's gun barrel had locked onto them, and a shell boomed over. Bzzz. The troop carrier made a sharp turn and accelerated instantly, only to see the shell brush against the rear vehicle and blast straight into the opposite building, exploding and collapsing. I'll be damned, did you guys just see that? A heat wave, there's a heat wave. I doubt the organizers are serious. I saw the heat wave pass in front of the camera. I can't stand it. Watching the anchor live is more fun than playing with a sledgehammer. Anchor, counterattack, take out the plug-in and blow up that tank. Sports car asterisk 1. So just a little while after starting the broadcast, the first order of the day came. In the gap between the troop carriers escaping, Lucci backhandedly took out the already loaded on behind his back. Thanks for the sports car boss. Wait, what are you doing? The middle-aged man was startled. Lucci ignored him and instead raised his gun to aim at the tank. But of course, he couldn't have blown up the tank. Lucci was just aiming up to the top. The commander who was operating the machine gun. Boom. The bullet flew out. Piercing through at an extremely fast speed. Half of his body was outside. And the commander who was protected by the machine gun steel plate looked safe. However, the sniper rifle's armor piercing effect was excellent. And Lucci's accuracy was considered external. Just like that. The bullet pierced through the steel plate and shot the commander down right in his vitals. What? The moment he tumbled down from the tank. The entire tank also suddenly came to a halt. Apparently the drivers inside were dumbfounded. The troop carrier took advantage of this gap and immediately accelerated to get out of the other side's attack range. The middle-aged man next to Luchi froze slightly for half a second when he saw that he had solved the opposite commander with a single shot. This marksmanship. A bit powerful. Ha! Huh? He murmured. In Luchi's live broadcast room, he also immediately brushed out pop-ups. Anchor this gun playing, or that flavor ah. Comfortable. Not to see the anchor playing gun I simply cannot come out. Upstairs against the heavens. This year's magic guide is yours. Oh my god. It's really hard not to watch the anchor hanging all day. I'm probably sick. I'm probably sick. Or I'm gonna be sick. The good thing about the offset. Next time don't offset it. After getting out of the dangerous category, Lu Chi is shrinking into the car. But it is at this time. The front of the big hairy soldiers in the open troop carriers. Suddenly probed and shouted. I can't. The car can't be driven anymore. Our tires are busted, and the engine should have malfunctioned as well. Hearing this, the middle-aged veteran soldier's demeanor tightened and he stuck his head out. Without a moment's effort, the entire troop carrier was forced to stop. Alas, there's no way out. It looks like we'll have to walk on our feet next, that big hairy veteran said. The fact that the troop carrier was scrapped and they didn't know where it was now was the most troublesome point. Lucci nodded and could only follow the veteran as he prepared to get off. At the front of the troop carrier, the big hairy soldier who had been driving the car, opened the door and quickly jumped down from it. The three of them were heavily armed and gathered together. Lucci observed that the big hairy soldier who had been driving the car was not very old, and was estimated to be less than 30. Two comrades, the damage to the vehicle is too severe, and with the terrain of the scene, fixing it is impossible. We don't know where it is right now, and the site is also signal blocked, so we can't use positioning. In this current situation, we can only go ahead and try to rendezvous with our troops. After meeting the two men, the younger Daimao soldier elaborated on the current close situation. The two men sort of listened and nodded their heads one after another. I have a suggestion. The three of us now. Let's form a battle group for now. My name is Lev. 
I'm attached to the 123rd Regiment, the middle-aged man said, generally on the battlefield. Soldiers followed their regiment, and if the soldiers who were left alone could find their own kind, they would temporarily form a battle group to fight. Well, that's good. My name is Zack, and I'm attached to the 661st Regiment. The two then turned their eyes towards Luchi in unison, and Lev even frowned at him for a moment. Whom? Luchi looked back and said, My name is Luchi, from the 1323rd Regiment. 1323rd Regiment. It's a new regiment, right? Zack pondered. Yes, 1323 is the new regiment. Hearing Zack ask this, Lev chimed in affirmatively from the side, and Lu Chi didn't deny it. 1323rd Regiment, that is, the new regiment. But Zack thought about it. New soldiers were new soldiers. In this situation now, one more person is one more force. Even a new recruit is better than no one. All right, then let's go forward along this street first. Zack pointed to a street in front of him, and both of them were fine with it. Or rather Lu Chi didn't care at all, because just now, He Xiang sent him a link. It said that it was ready to be connected, and asked him to operate it to connect to the backstage of the live broadcast first. Ha ha ha, tell a joke. The anchor is a newbie. Which child cries every day? Which recruit wears the head every day? I don't know if it's over the plot, or if it's an NPC improvisation. Anyway, the last person who said that was already stupid. At the scene, the anchor god of war strength real single-handedly burst head. With that, the three began to go on the road. Luchi simply hung his cell phone on his chest. However, the street hadn't gone for long, when suddenly an armored car actually appeared at the end. Wait, you guys, look ahead. What's that one? Lev pointed his finger forward. After the three of them looked at each other, they immediately ran over. It would be, until they got closer that they realized that it wasn't an armored car at all, but a solid main battle tank. How could there be a tank here? Was it abandoned? Zack quickly stepped forward to check it out and from time to time tried to stroke the iron plates, and at this moment, after realizing that it was indeed a tank, Luchi acted especially exhilarated, the tank he had been dreaming about for half a month had finally appeared in front of him, how is it, has this tank been damaged, could it contain a bomb inside, Lev asked as he stepped forward, Zack moved to jump onto the tank and realized that the hatch was open, in fact, with sheer perception, Luchi knew that the tank had no bombs and was no longer a threat, but after Zack checked it out, the answer was still given by him, to tell you the truth, I'm a member of the 661st Regiment's active tank company, and I got separated from my company because of an air raid, this should be our army's T-80 main battle tank, it looks like the former member escaped in a hurry and didn't have time to destroy it, which means that according to my judgment, this tank can be used normally and there won't be any problems, receiving this reply, Lev's face instantly lit up with joy, having a tank that could be used, what did that mean, it meant that their safety, would be greatly guaranteed, even having a heavy armored force that could fight against Irmao and NATO soldiers with just a few people. Great, I operated something like a tank a few years ago. I'm out of the company now, but I haven't forgotten the basic common sense, so I'll have no problem operating it. Lev spoke. No way. The anchor really found the tank? Good. I've wanted to see the anchor drive a tank for a long time. Anchor take a picture of the internal structure. But is this tank so realistic? It looks like a T-80 main battle tank. Can we experience this? No. Who remembers that the anchor signed up for Real Life CS for 800 bucks? Remember plus one. There are times when I suspect that the organizing official has a relationship with the Great Mao military. Lu Chi at a glance. Know that this tank is good to drive. Solely he immediately opened his mouth to the live broadcast, brothers. The anchor is also ready to drive on the tank well. A moment to let you guys look down. The first view under the tank. Lu Chi roar after a throat. Live pop-ups directly screen. Small gifts more and more. Then Lu Chi did not wait too long, fast pace ready to board the tank, but at this time, a problem arose, Zack pondered for a moment, said in a deep voice, generally driving a tank, divided into four positions, the driver, the gunner, the bomb filler, and the commander, which is the one responsible for observing the map and controlling the machine gun, when Lev heard this, he instantly understood what it meant, there weren't enough of them, the bomb filler could be dispensed with and the three of them could operate it by relying on the automatic bomb filling device, but Lu Chi, as a new recruit, shouldn't be too good at operating a tank, so driving him would definitely not work, but the problem was that the commander was the most dangerous position because he had to operate the machine gun with half of his body exposed, with the highest risk of death, in this case, the distribution of positions is not negotiable, how about I, Zack opened his mouth and was just about to say that he was experienced enough to come and take the commander's position, but the next second, Lev interrupted him, 
Forget it, I don't feel comfortable letting you youngsters come. You go be the pilot, Luchi will be in charge of the gunner's position. As for the commander I'll do it. Don't underestimate me, I've been on a real battlefield more than once. It's all my skill that I've survived until now. Zack opened his mouth again, wanting to say something, but finally swallowed his words back. Apparently, he understood a certain truth just as well as Lev did. However, upon hearing this, Lu Qi, who had been silent, suddenly disagreed. That, I say, why don't I become the commander? What? For a moment, hearing this, both Zack and Lev were stunned for a moment. They didn't expect that in this situation. Lu Qi would actually take the initiative to say that he wanted to be the commander? One should know that besides the fact that commanders were physically exposed and instantly killed by shelling, sniping, and bombing, there was another fatal factor. The commander can see where the enemy is and is equipped with a radar system, the core responsible for reporting points to the team. So almost all the soldiers' fight tanks are the first to kill the commander. Many times a battle was fought, the people inside were unharmed, and the commander's body was rotten. Lu Qi, the position of commander is very dangerous. The death rate is the highest without the protection of tank armor, Zack persuaded. Unfortunately, looking at Lu Qi, he seemed unimpressed. It's fine, I'm not much of a tank driver anyway, and I probably wouldn't be able to shoot well as a gunner, so I'll be the commander. I have confidence in myself. You, seeing Lu Qi's words, a look that he had already refused to turn back. Lev's latter words were all stuck in his throat and couldn't be said. At this moment, Zack also stopped talking. However, in the eyes of the two men looking at Lu Qi, a little admiration appeared, especially Lev. As a soldier, even if he hadn't learned how to drive a tank, he had definitely learned how to fight a tank. Therefore, Lev believed that Lu Qi was surely aware of the danger of the commander's position. But even so, he still had no choice but to take the position of commander. Having thought that new recruits were all wimps, he didn't realize that Lu Qi could have this kind of fearlessness, and Lev suddenly felt a twinge of guilt. This was something he hadn't had in many years, a whole new perception of new recruits. All right, two words later, Lev heavily patted Lu Qi's shoulder. He then exchanged a glance with Zack and jumped inside the tank without looking back. On the contrary, Lu Qi, the corners of his mouth rose slightly, already unable to stop the anticipation. How did he know that Lev and Zack had thought about it so much? In fact, he also wanted to be a gunner. As for why not do it is very simple. There is no panoramic view inside the tank. He needs to live ah cell phone to bring in, even if you hit the person live room cannot see, although it is regrettable, but I really cried to death, the anchor actually for my sake, I was wrong to blame the anchor, I thought the anchor hang no dare to drive, black to pink, this time I want to guard the world's best podcast, even the word disgusting heart, but then again, the anchor really did not consider letting NPC busy generation broadcast, obviously, the audience in the live broadcast room also saw Lucci's intentions, making him incredibly pleased, However, when he saw the last comment, Lu Qi froze slightly. Seems like it makes a bit of sense, forget it or not. He thought about it anyway, let's just broadcast for a while, and then change positions when the fight is almost over. So immediately afterward, Lu Qi also mounted the tank's machine gun platform. As the entire tank started up, the display on his right side lit up with colors. Lu Qi look, cannot help but sigh absolutely high tech, but unfortunately his humanoid radar, more accurate than this thing is useless. Tank armor piercing rounds, sufficient high explosive rounds, running well, ready to start, Zack shouted from inside the vehicle. Immediately he began to maneuver the lever and the tank tracks mixed and slowly backed up. Right live viewers, let me tell you something. The new content that was previewed last time will start soon. The anchor participated in a platform event and linked up with an anchor from an outside station. Everyone can now guess who it is. The moment Luchi said this, it immediately set off a wave in the live broadcast room. Really? The anchor even participated in a platform event? You guys don't say. I heard Huazai say that there seems to be such an event. Oh, it's still a cross-platform connection. And the anchor actually participated in it? Crying again, I watched the anchor step by step. And now the anchor has become a big anchor. Mom is so pleased. Luchi was surprised to find that there are actually female fans in his own live room. It seems that his live broadcast inclusiveness is still very high. But there was no time to pay attention to this for now. Luchi was ready to connect. It was just that the scene was quite chaotic, and Luchi could see missiles sliding down from the sky every now and then, as well as airplanes rushing by. It's a bit noisy. Rumble dash. Luchi endured the noise and sent a message to Hitang first. Meanwhile, on the other side of the room, in the live broadcasting room of Douyu, today, dull little sister was live streaming as usual, sitting on her knees on a pink gaming chair, wearing beautiful makeup. On her body, 
She was wearing a small halter, and because of her bent knees, a small section of her calf was exposed. It's the most enjoyable time of the day again. Finally I can see the old woman live. The old woman's choice of clothes today is good. Finally not wearing that student outfit. Unfortunately, the old woman is still missing something. This garter is really bad. Hey, brothers, I'm not good at English. What is the first of the 26 letters? Dull little sister looked at the rolling pop-up screen in the live room, smashed his mouth and mocked. I'm really convinced that you guys have a day in and day out. As soon as I start broadcasting you guys are triple A. What else do you guys do every day except for pairing A's? Can't you examine yourself more? Girlfriend found no. Wages rose or not. There is no serious work ah. Uh, 666. Anchor I am really broken defense. Anchor don't say it. Oh right that's what. You just out of the pair of a few to come? The first thing you need to do is to get your hands on a pair of pairs of cards. I've got a pair of aces here. Abstraction is too abstract. Nerdy little sister was directly exasperated. Speechless to the point where only her eyelids were fluttering. Forget it. I don't want to argue with you guys today. I have an event today. And I have to connect with others. Ah, old woman what activity ah, how come I don't know? No way. The old woman is going to mic with someone. Which anchor is it again? Jihoon? No. No. Dumb little sister replied. The platform recently organized an event to connect to other platforms. It's a young and handsome little brother over at Tiger's Tooth. Doing outdoor live broadcasts. Dull little sister finished. And revealed a few smiles. I'm super. Old woman connecting to little brother? No. Is that you want to connect? I think that's you wanting an old cow to eat young grass. I can't stand to watch. I feel sorry for our male compatriots. Boys must protect themselves outside. Or else they will be scourged by the old woman. But the old woman in the end even who ah. Tiger's teeth do outdoor is not a child child? Ancestor is not young ah. Are older than the old woman. Have a say. The old woman quickly revealed the content of the live broadcast. Seeing the pop-up screen is obviously very anxious. Dull little sister instead smiled triumphantly. Want to know? If you want to know. I won't tell you guys. Just wait slowly. Who knew that as soon as she finished speaking, a big rocket suddenly rose in place. Do. Rocket asterisk 1. The live streaming room was slightly stunned by dull little sister. And then her tone switched in a second. I'll go. Thanks. Thanks for the big rocket one from the boss. Thank you boss. She used a whiny tone and automatically compared her hands to a love heart. Boss confused. Boss confused. A piece of the pop-up screen brushed down. Dull little sister waved her hand. Rather helpless. No. Although but. I haven't seen people live either. The outdoor content. Well. It should be similar to Tong Tong. Anyway. I heard from above that the little brother is quite handsome. So you don't have to think about the content. Right? If you don't understand. Ask. Is the content of the actual battle? The upstairs statement is a bit strange. Is it the kind of actual combat content I'm thinking of? Against all odds. My grandmaster didn't even have a real battle. But others still want to have a real battle. Reasonable. Is not the ancestor of the hitch I do not read. Feel even worse than the door sauce. Support. Support plus two. Dull little sister shook her head and proceeded to look through the backstage. Okay well. That side of the connection invitation is also sent over. I'm ready to go on the microphone. At this moment. The live broadcasting room pop-up screen is still a piece of little brother run. Finished dull little sister also a smile. Hands operating. Immediately after a while. The connection finally succeeded. But when the full screen was maximized. The moment Lu Chi that live content popped up. Rumble dash. A missile cut straight through the front of the screen and smashed into the roadside moments later. The dust kicked up by the explosion swept over against the screen. The sound deafening. I'm going. Splat. Dull little sister didn't hold back and was so shocked that her head was thrown back. And her whole body almost fell off the chair without sitting down. Ouch. 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 She hurriedly sat up and gazed at the screen again. On Lu Chi's side, missiles streaked across the sky, and the sound of airplane engines shook in her ears, and the live broadcast screen was towards the front, apparently on a moving tank, and a machine gun, only one picture, dull little sister people are looking dumbfounded, she even have doubts that she is not connected to the wrong, as for the pop-up area of the water friends, which still have time to flirt with dull little sister fell down, but also have exploded pot, the second world war, I'm traveling through time and space, Right? Just now is not a missile. In front of my eyes flew past? Fighter jets? I saw fighter jets. I'm not the one who's been to Syria. Am I? Is that a tank? What do you call this fucking outdoor anchor? Luchi scanned the screen and could already see the scene on the little sister's side. So it should be connected. So he came forward and retracted only his middle and ring fingers to make a gesture. Can you hear me? Hello hello hello? Dull little sister's lips quivered as she slowly sat upright. 
Brother, brother, are you Lu Qi? At the sound of his voice, Lu Qi poked his head out. He was wearing a bulletproof helmet, goggles, and headphones, his outfit was properly standardized for special forces. There was also a sniper next to the key. After connecting to dull little sister, Lu Qi's side of the live broadcast room also detonated. What the hell? What the heck? The anchor is connected to the dumb little sister? This is my old lady. How to connect with the anchor? My god. What kind of advanced work is the anchor doing here? No. Look. The old woman was scared by the anchor. It's so comical. What an epic link up. It's me. It's me. Lu Qi opened his mouth to reply. Dull little sister, who had already sat upright, hadn't yet adjusted her emotions when she witnessed the missiles that flew over Lu Qi's live broadcast from time to time. That, brother, didn't you say you're an outdoor anchor? Lu Qi's expression froze as he pointed across the room and then pointed at himself. Outdoor anchor. No problem. There were times when one really wanted to call the police, and dull little sister had completely broken her defenses. You call this an outdoor anchor? Rumble dash. Just as she finished speaking, another rocket exploded straight onto the side of the car, setting off a huge fire. Dull little sister subconsciously shrank back, the bangs on her forehead skimming off a few pieces. Ha ha, this is the first time I've seen an old woman like this. It's too six. I can't. It's like a world famous painting. I'll take a screenshot and save it first. The old woman's expression now is really great. What's going on across the street? I'm going across the street to see if there's an emperor in the last days. I seriously doubt Tiger's Tooth is sending troops to intervene in the Great Irma War. Damn. What a vicious commercial war. This wave of connectivity between Lu Qi and Dull Little Sister fired the heat in the live broadcast room towards a climax. As Lu Qi's popularity increased rapidly, He Xiang was especially happy to watch in the live broadcast room. Wasn't this the effect of the two of them miking together? I didn't expect the traffic to start stringing each other up just as soon as they started broadcasting. Ha! <laughs> At this time, Dull Little Sister laughed miserably twice and hurriedly disliked her face. No ah brother, where are you? What's all this here? She reached out and pointed randomly, her smile with a little bit of dismay. Brother you people will not be abroad, right? Cause real world war too? Seeing dull little sister laughing while staring at her wide-eyed appearance, the live streamers were happy to take crazy screenshots. Lu Qi turned his head as if he knew what she was asking. Oh, this ah. Lu Qi carried a heavy machine gun and said, It's all props, real life CS. Real life CS? Dull little sister's eyes went black like a mute who was roaring in anger. The missile that just blew down. You tell her that this is real life CS? Can a ghost believe it? As Lu Qi finished speaking, a pop-up screen appeared at the bottom of the live broadcast. The old woman that came over. Newcomers do not understand. There is no understand brother explain what the anchor is doing? The scene is so realistic. Is the anchor really playing real life CS? I'm here. Don't let the newcomers upstairs be fooled by the anchor. The anchor is actually fighting in a real life CS game in Irmo. I'm not sure if you're a real person, but I'm a real person, it's all an illusion. The anchor is actually almost in Kiev. Anchor, I don't know. I'm just playing real life CS. How can I be convicted of war crimes? No, it's really more fun to be a newcomer to the live broadcast. I finally understand how happy I was when I first entered the live broadcast. Accompanied by pop-up screens, after explaining to dull little sister, she temporarily chose to remain calm. But as far as this scene was concerned, it was hard to believe that it was constructed out of taking VR. Brother, brother, so was the missile just now real? Is it also a prop? Luchi nodded and gave a thumbs up. Not really, it was a prop. It should be a special effect simulated by VR. Nerdy little sister turned to the other side again. What about the tank? This tank is also a prop? Oh this ah, said props also right? Are being VR modified? Luchi's voice was sincere. Not at all like he was telling lies. Dull little sister heard two answers in a row and just froze in place in confusion. Oh sorry, it seems like an enemy is coming. Wait a little while for me to fight. Lu Qi suddenly said. What? An enemy has come? When dull little sister was still searching with a bewildered look on her face, Lu Qi had already raised his machine gun and aimed it at the right side of the road. Sure enough, as the tank was slowly traveling along, a group of Irmao soldiers holding rifles rushed up from the right side of the aisle. It's an enemy tank. Give me grenades. Quickly give. The leading Irmao soldier had a jolt and was just about to reach out for a grenade. As a result, before he finished, Luchi greeted him with a pike. Do 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 do. The bullets poured out. The Irmao soldiers wanted to dodge but were one step behind Luchi. The bullets kept sweeping on their bodies, causing them to stumble. And after the bullet holes appeared, a stream of plasma was spewed out. At this moment, dull little sister was watching with her mouth wide open, her eyelids twitching wildly, and she stood still in a daze. Done. Luchi wiped his sweat. 
Nice job Lu Qi, you're really quick with this reaction. Inside the tank, Zack was talking to Lu Qi with the only contact device. In the tank, dull little sister's eyes rolled. Although she didn't understand Russian, she could probably sense that it was Russian. So, we're saying that this is also a prop, or a VR effect? Dull little sister reached out, pointing at the body that had fallen in front of her right side and was still bleeding. At that, Lu Qi just nodded at the camera. Right, the NPC acting here is so real. It's falling asleep. Dull little sister didn't move. Just opened her mouth slightly and looked sideways. Ha ha ha, the code stacks are killing me. Look at that expression on the old woman's face. Super ah too comical. There is a beauty similar to the name. Talent ah opposite anchor. To the old woman are looking silly. You call this props? I feel if I were me also have to be stupid. Which rail see as fighter planes flying all over the sky. Missiles fall all over the ground. Finish to gun out also burst plasma of? Upstairs you want to go to graduate school ah? No let me laugh first. Dull little sister silence from the bottom of her heart. Belonging to the creation of the classic famous scene. On the other hand, Lu Chi live room. There are constantly next door people pouring in. He words in the background to see the scene. Excited tightly pinched the palm of the hand. Lu Chi Lu Chi? At this moment, a message came from Zack inside the car. I've just contacted our leader. And he said that the scene is currently chaotic and he can't locate our position. But he said that if there are any tanks, he'll let us go all the way south. And we'll soon be able to join up with our troops. Hearing Zack's words, Lu Chi immediately responded with a yes. Naturally, he hadn't forgotten the mission of this second phase, to take Abdiev at all costs, as long as the Ermao army and the NATO army were completely routed, causing them to completely withdraw from Avgiev would be considered a victory. However, the intensity was different this time, and it seemed safer to go back to the team. On the contrary, dull little sister had already recovered from her shock, with her forehead bangs draped down. She smacked her lips and looked at the spoof screenshots that kept brushing through the live broadcast. Dull no doubt, screenshot. JPG, dull stout, screenshot, JPG, speechless, greatly speechless, never mind, she turned her attention to Lu Qi, no more fooling around brother, let's talk about playing something, this live broadcast content of yours, it's not very good, as soon as the words left her mouth, dull little sister realized that the live broadcast room, suddenly flooded with proposals, 10 years old fan here, suggest that the old woman and anchor bet on the number of heads, never cheat, ha ha, Anchor human body tracing line. Believe me anchor definitely lose. I would like to take the honor of all the water friends to guarantee that the anchor cannot hit the people. On the play sniper half a day only to kill two people. There are still a lot of good people in this world. The old woman's live room is very wrong. There's a ghost. Terminate the deal. What the hell? I read less you guys do not lie to me ah. Dull little sister stared at the screen for half a day and finally squeezed out a smile. Splat. Fine fine. I'll believe you guys alright, she slapped the table once and said, how about betting on heads then? A hundred heads, everyone in our live room is counting, the time limit of one hour is too little, how about two hours, and then some punishment mechanism. Once Lu Chi heard this, he decisively returned a nodding gesture, can can, this proposal is quite good, eh, then the punishment mechanism, feel free to come up with some when you lose, just jump a gatling, dull little sister finished snickering, I lose, you decide. Gatling, Lu Chi jumped more or less a little shame, but Lu Chi didn't have a problem with it. Who said he must lose? Then look at the pop-up screen has brushed crazy. Good ah, the old woman took the bait. Quickly let the old woman change clothes. Must change a horse forkworm. Anchor, I'm really hungry. I'm really hungry. I'm starving. I want to eat something good today. Anchor, beer, sports car 5, airplane, Lu Chi live room gift brush burst, even the opposite side of the run over. To this Lu Chi readily agreed, then change your clothes. Dull little sister sniffed, not impressed that Lu Chi could agree so readily, and after feeling that she had taken advantage of the situation, she compared it to an okay gesture. But as she scanned the pop-up screen, she had a confused look on her face. What do you guys mean, making it seem like I'm set to lose? It's not like I haven't played Rayal Life CS before. Can this thing kill a hundred people in two hours? Saying that, dull little sister directly headed to the reclining chair and chose to watch the show and Lu Chi didn't dawdle, lifting the heavy machine gun with his left hand, his right hand picked up the sniper in a smooth manner, ha, huh? dull little sister clasped her hands on her chest and frowned, at this moment, Lev's voice came out, Lu Chi, there seems to be an armored car, coming from in front of us, watch out for their machine guns, hide yourself I'm going to give him a shot, Lev hurriedly loaded his gun and then operated it to aim it directly in front of him, sure enough, the sound of scuffling tires approached rapidly, 
and in the very next second an armored vehicle leapt out. However, Luchi directly pressed the sniper with one hand, and with a bang a bullet instantly flew out. Without waiting for the vehicle to stop, the bullet pierced through the bulletproof glass and hit the other driver's head at a tricky and precise angle. The live broadcast screen rotated along with Luchi's rotation, and this scene was seen by everyone. For a moment, the dull little sister who had just laid down immediately sat upright. Lev, who could see the changes in the outside world, his eyes also snapped open. Ha! Huh? The two inside and outside voiced almost simultaneously. Immediately after that, the armored car, which had lost its operator, crashed into the wall with a rumble. Without waiting for Lev to fire, the machine gun in Luchi's left hand had already opened fire. Do 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 The opposing machine gunner had suffered an impact, and his entire body hadn't slowed down yet. Who knew that when he turned his head, along with several NATO soldiers around him, all of them were pierced through the body by the bullets, as if they were locked with precision, the trajectory was without deviation. Before he died, he saw Lu Chi, who was operating the machine gun, and glared deeply at each other, as if to say, machine gun as you play like this? Shouldn't it be a heavy fire coverage? Relying on the number of ammunition to exhaust the opponent? Rumble. In the end, after Lu Chi fired a volley of shots, the armored car's fuel tank was also hit and exploded on the spot. Done. Ha! Dull little sister once again slightly side-eyed, and Lev inside the car also half opened his mouth. Ha ha ha, it's a classic. It's a classic. Seeing the old woman's appearance, it's as if I've seen myself at one time. Very like Luchi's live broadcast of a sentence, ah, the old woman bites the hook. So don't even think about running. I'd really die of laughter if I didn't see the three arts of the Kai family. They just don't deserve to be fans. Wear head. Casually. Perspective. At once dry out too haha. Dull little sister at this time looking at the live screen. A moment to cry a moment to laugh. Expression cloudy. She kind of understand. She got on the water friends of the set. Also believe their ghost words Luchi human body tracing. This bullet is faster than the GPS is also accurate. With her said human body tracing? There is another point. She has not not played real CS. Why sniper rifles can be one handed pressure. Sniper rifle is so play? I'm really convinced that I bought into your bullshit. There isn't a single good thing in the live room. All little black people. Dull little sister ruthlessly stroked a handful of bangs on her forehead with a puffed up look. Ha ha, the old woman won't be unable to play, right? Anchor, still, if you're a vegetable, practice more. If you can't play don't scream, took down four people at once. Feel the terror from Lou, hanging, Kai, wall. Dumb little sister laid back down again, with an expression of get me killed. Lev, who was inside the tank, blinked hard. He had seen Lu Chi strike once before, and at the time, he had just thought it was an accident and didn't care. Now that he saw it again, it was a bit outrageous wasn't it? This is also, also too accurate, right? This is the marksmanship of a new recruit? Zack, who was lying down in front of him driving the tank, also opened his mouth with slight excitement. Asuma Lu Chi, I've never seen a machine gun that can shoot so accurately in our tank company. My previous commander, as soon as he saw the enemy, he just opened and dodged haha. <laughs> Zack seemed to be in a better frame of mind than Lev, and with that he continued to drive his tank south. Tanks are very fast when traveling in a hurry and can crush small cars along the way in a rampage. For half an hour, Lev, on the other hand, gripped the regulator tightly, ready to adjust the altitude and blast the opposite side with a single shot. Unfortunately, along the way, he didn't find an opportunity at all. A group of Irmau soldiers rushed out on the right side. He didn't have time to fire his cannon. Luchi greeted him with a pike in dual-wielding state. Still the same scene, a fall down a piece, sleep extremely peaceful, ahead of the high-building sniper mirror reflection. A sniper is ready to snipe them. Leva Happy is ready to open the gun to collapse the building. The result of Luchi mentioned sniper is a shot. Bullets burst out, penetrating the head of the instant the silhouette of the high building tumbled down. Impartial fall under the tank was crushed. Just half a small. The number of people who died in Luchi's hands continued to increase. A few, a dozen, and then to dozens. Lev also gripped the regulator for half an hour, his breathing becoming more and more ragged. Originally, when Lu Chi took the initiative to say that he wanted to take the position of commander, he was still thinking that the other party had made such a sacrifice, and that he, the gunner, had to show his strength, not to say a hundred shots, at least he had to let Lu Chi understand that his sacrifice was not wrong. The result? Has been open for half an hour. He as hard as shell did not hit out. This made Lev a bit skeptical. Are all the new recruits so fierce now? And dull little sister, who was eating in the live broadcast room, was halfway paralyzed by this pendulum swing? She finished shivering a mouthful of powder and gave another slightly manic grunt. 
about to go numb. Watching the old woman having a seizure is indeed the most pleasurable. I can see that the old woman's spirit is close to breaking down. I feel like I'm about to black out. Said good two hours it. This is only half an hour. The anchor has already even wear dozens. I say really cannot give up at xing fay. Feel can go directly to dress up ha ha. Dull little sister scanned the pop-up screen. Took a deep breath and ruthlessly put down the powder in her hand. You group of black fans. Again want to set me up to give up. No way. One more thing. I'm not called xing fay. Nor xing d. Nor xing way. I'm called g xing way. Your whole family's name is gg fay. Finishing her sentence in one breath, dull little sister blew up her skimmed bangs, but seeing her break the defense, the live broadcast room was even happier. Half an hour of seconds for more than a few dozen people, breaking 102 hours was absolutely stable. In order for Lu Chi to fail, it could only be if he was seconded by someone in the middle. The key to him a sniper, a machine gun, who see him not be seconds, how to seconds him. But right at this moment, dull little sister was about to resign herself to her fate. The tank traveled for some time, but then a sudden turnaround occurred. Goodu goodu. The same tracking sound as the T-80 rang out in the square nearly 200 meters in front of the tank. Zack and Lev also realized that something was wrong and immediately called Lu Chi. Lu Chi pay attention to the front. It's Ermao's tank coming. Be ready to jump. Zack was the first to vocalize. With that, the two vehicles avoided all cover and had already traveled to opposite positions, seeing each other 200 meters apart. Seeing the situation, dull little sister who had long felt hopeless, suddenly sat up. Tank to tank? There is a drama ah. Armored cars and soldiers can't do any damage to Lu Chi. But what about tanks with range damage? Lu Chi couldn't penetrate the tanks. But the tanks were able to kill them with a single shot. So isn't there a chance? I'm going to go. What a coincidence. It's a head-on collision. Anchor, jump out of the car. You're going to get blasted. Don't let the old woman win. At this point, all eyes are on Lev. Can only rely on him. It's Ermao's T-84 tank. Watch me do it. Lev's face was full of exhilaration. Finally he got the chance to fire his gun. He was now like a thirsty child, quickly operating the gun to align. The live feed was staring at the naked eye, but it was obvious that Lev's reaction speed was a little higher across the room. Boom dash. An armor-piercing bullet was the first to hit. Nay. It was also because Lev was in a hurry to make his move ahead of Lu Chi. The muzzle of the cannon was not aligned to the best position. And this cannon hit crookedly. Rumble dash. The armor-piercing shell exploded straight next to Ermao's tank without causing a single damage. What? Lev's expression was dumbfounded. He actually hit it crooked? But it was too late to be shocked, as it was soon the opposite side's turn to fire. No good, Zack echoed. As a veteran and a member of the tank crew, Lev Ho Zack naturally knew it well. The battle between tanks and tanks was often between one cannon. Whoever fired this cannon fast was basically whoever won. And Lev's first cannon hit the wrong way. It was obvious that they were going to be finished next. Dull little sister took a look and instantly widened her eyes. But suddenly, just as the two were already discussing their preparations to jump out of the car, Luchi raised his sniper with his right hand and a sniper round was thrown out. As a result, the only exposed commander of Irma was instantly pierced by the bullet and fell down from the tank. Coincidentally, the opposite side was also quite a rookie. And although they weren't hit by the shells, they were shocked. Although they were not hit by the shells, they were scared to death. The commander was killed by Lu Chi in seconds, so he started to retreat and didn't even try to open fire for a while. Lu Chi, on the other hand, raised his machine gun and began to fire violently. Da 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 dash. Hurry up. Dull little sister raised her hands, as if she was just waiting for the shells to hit and Lu Chi to be seconded so she could start fooling around, and Lev turned his head to load the shells, rushing to prepare for a new round of shooting. Finally, after half a day of anticipation, an armor-piercing shell was sent out from the gun hole of Ermao's tank. Who would have thought that with a rumble? This shot also missed. Lu Chi was speechless at his opponent's maneuvering, and he used his sniper as well. However, he didn't shoot randomly, but aimed at the opposite side's fuel tank. At the same time, the other side also needed to change the ammunition after this cannon was hit crookedly, facing the bullet swept by Lu Chi in disarray. With the sound of goo 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 goo, the tank kept falling back and swaying from side to side. The bullets that flew out popped sparks on the tank's deck, causing the driver's eyes to blur. Lev's hands were fast, and he managed to stuff another armor-piercing bullet into the gun hole, adjusting the gun's muzzle in preparation for firing. Who would have thought that suddenly, the tank that was continuously swept by Lu Chi exploded? Rumble dash. A flame rose from within the tank, completely submerging the entire tank and turning it into ashes. Immediately afterward, a sigh of relief finally came from the live broadcast room. Ha ha ha. 
What the hell am I worried about? I told you, it's just a tank. Why would I doubt the anchor's ability? This time the real hammer. The anchor not only has perspective hang, lock head hang, absolute wall and armor piercing hang, super. The anchor is against the heavens. However, in addition to the live broadcast water friends, the few people present are all confused. Lev, who was holding the regulator handle and preparing to fire the gun. After seeing the tank being exploded, his throat rolled hard, and his hand movement stopped completely. He had begun to wonder if he was blind. What had Luchi done? He had blown up the tank with a machine gun? How the hell did he do that? Similarly, even Zack, who was always in a good frame of mind, had to suck in a breath of cool air. As a member of the tank company, could he not realize how unbelievable this was? Machine guns could only blow up tanks by pointing them at the opposite side of the tank, and they had to be hit by each and every one of them. In this situation, it was impossible to get the strongest commander of the entire tank company to come. On the other side, the smile that dull little sister had just raised gradually disappeared from her face. She laughed to herself and ended the powder next to her again. Yardstacks, laughed me to death. Old woman this cyber face conversion. Simply excellent. Ha ha, sure enough the smile doesn't go away. It's just transferred to someone else's face. I've already taken a screenshot, and I'm declaring these two pictures can be in the canon. Okay? Nerd's excitement, screenshot. JPG, nerd despair, screenshot. JPG, two screenshots were thrown out. One with dull sister revealing an expectant smile, and one instantly speechless. In an instant, the two highly contrasting pictures in the live broadcast went viral, and dull little sister broke her defenses on the spot. This beaver? This unreasonable ah. She had thought that Luchi was gone, but the machine gun blew up the tank? Why can a machine gun blow up a tank? I don't sisterly ah. Luchi, Luchi, why can a machine gun blow up a tank? Dull little sister turned on the ranting mode. At the same time, in Irmao's temporary command post, Yak listened to the frontline battle report and was also feeling pressurized. Report, our army's multi-line positions have been breached, and the ground troops have suffered heavy losses. And according to the frontline battle report, multiple companies on the opposite side are advancing extremely fast and are about to arrive at our army's main mine grid heights. These companies are, Daimao 334th Armor Company, 556th Infantry Company, 114th Tank Company, an AT-80 tank that seems to have lost its way. A series of numbers came out, causing Yak to take a deep breath. As the commander of the 2nd Army Group, he knew very well that Avdiev was now nearly routed. It was obviously unlikely that he would want to hold off Daimao's attack. However, this battle absolutely could not be lost. We haven't lost yet. The Regal Heights, guarded by a tank company formed by our allies is a steel defense. Let them come. As long as they dare to come, they will know what terror means. After saying that, Yak suddenly asked another question. By the way, does the front line have any information about a soldier named Lu Chi? The messenger shook his head after thinking carefully at his words. No, not a single bit of news. Yak frowned. He found it very strange. But on second thought, it was right. The general attack on Avgev could be different from the previous military stronghold grab, so there was no need to worry. He is a sniper. Can he change the battlefield again? Well, this time the old woman is considered to have completely broken the defense. I declare, from now on, Anchor is my best comrade in arms. We're both awesome. You say one thing, I say another. Sooner or later, the dumb girl will cry. How tie, AI ting, applause. Dull little sister flicked her bangs hard to the top, then forced herself to calm down. Can't let Blackie get carried away again. And after this battle, the next side of Luchi was even more unimpeded. Luchi had just one sniper, plus a machine gun, and swept almost everywhere he went, beating the other side to rout. Nearly an hour into the process, the cumulative headcount is about to reach 100, seeing Luchi kills indiscriminately. Dull little sister has felt a little numb. Play a real life CS also open hanging? Really hanging wall. Of course, the same feeling of numbness, but also more than dull little sister a person. Lev, who had held the regulator for half an hour was in a slight trance, an hour has passed, he really only fired a gun, the key to that one shot was still skewed, Luchi didn't need any assistance at all on the road, and he was even able to use his heavy machine gun to blow up the tank on point, so much so that every time Lev tried to make a move, he realized that the other side had already laid down a piece, with this approach, Luchi looked like he was stupid, originally, he had sworn to change positions, and Lev had wanted to show off his strength, as a result, he didn't even have the chance to make a move, and Lu Qi alone killed through the opposite side? This made him seriously doubt that Lu Qi wanted to command the position not out of sacrifice, but rather, he was emboldened. However, along the way, 
Zack felt a hint of strangeness, we've come all the way here, aren't there more and more enemies? It can't be that all the other fronts of our army are collapsing, so the enemy army is making a big counterattack, right? Zack wondered, Lev thought about it and shook his head. The main reason was that no matter where he went, the enemy was instantly seconded by Lu Qi, so it didn't feel like there was any pressure, and it didn't feel like the enemies were increasing. It doesn't seem like it, didn't we run into friendly forces along the way? Maybe if we go a little further, we'll be able to join up with the larger force. Hearing Lev's words, Zack also felt that he was overthinking it, and simply nodded affirmatively. All right, then let's move on. With that, the vehicle continued southward. Luchi also rescued quite a few members of his side in the process of swiping heads. Some were surrounded by armored vehicles, and he helped point blast them. Some were shelled by tanks, and he still chose to point blast them. This resulted in many members of his side being stunned to see a speeding T-80 divine vehicle drive by. Not long after, with the last hostile soldier being pierced through the head, the entire hundred kills were completed. Last one. Full. Luchi immediately put away his gun and said to the live broadcast. I go. It's full. It has indeed broken a hundred. Good ah. Old woman quickly get ready to change clothes. I want to see the horse forkworm. Every day in the live broadcast room playing cards. All give me hungry faint. Thanks to the anchor sent to the big benefits. Airplane asterisk 3. At this moment, the corner of dull little sister's mouth twitched. As she sat upright from her chair. Good good good. I'll change I'll change. I'll change okay. You little black fans wait. She pointed fiercely at the live broadcast room. Then got up and went to the room inside. For a while, the live broadcasting room LSP was collectively excited. Luchi was equally excited as he witnessed the white flowery gifts coming in. He hadn't counted it. But today's income was definitely the highest in history. And it was estimated to have long surpassed the day before yesterday. What was meant by getting rich overnight? He had experienced it. In addition, while waiting for dull little sister, Luchi also got in touch with Maros. The two happened to be not far apart. And the tank was short of a bomb filler position. So the two of them met up in front of a short building. When Moros boarded the tank, he was also incredibly exuberant. Asuma Luchi, you actually got a T-80 main battle tank. He then finished his surprise and greeted his teammates in the tank. Hello guys, I'm Moros from the 1323rd Regiment. Hello, I'm Zack from the 661st Regiment. Zack responded. Lev, however, was unmoved, but not because he was still looking down on the new regiment. It was just that he hadn't gotten back to his senses a bit. Immediately afterward, Lu Qi proceeded to contact Kirill. Don't worry about me. I've found a company of our army and I'm with them now. This company is very strong. You guys continue onward. We'll rendezvous when we capture Avgev. Learning that Kirill's side was still normal, Lu Qi didn't have much to worry about. A few moments later, the dull little sister finally showed up on the screen. Lu Qi moved his eyes back to the live broadcast room. The picture was too beautiful to look at only to see the dull little sister a short Chong Sam. Legs also wore a black silk, from the room curling out. I went to go. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oops, you're testing the old cadre with this? You think I'll fall for it? I can't see. Don't show it to me. If you do, I'll get angry. Gentlemen, I have a plan. Let me go first. I can't stand it. It's urgent. Hurry. Upstairs. You'd better say it's urgent. After a few steps, the live broadcast room was completely boiled. Then she pulled open the gaming chair and proceeded to sit up in a bent knee sitting position, revealing a small section of black silk calves. Ha! Man! Just this? Seeing the appearance of the live streaming water user, dull little sister immediately issued a taunt. However, she was feeling unusually unconvinced right now, and directly approached Lu Qi again. Lu Qi, still here or not? Let's play another hand. No way. The old woman hasn't lost enough and wants to come back? Don't lose so much that your live room will be blocked by the supervisor. The old woman is going to break the defense again. With so many gifts coming in, Luchi naturally couldn't refuse. Come on then, what are you playing this time? Switch to tanks this time, dull little sister said with certainty. 10, oh no 15 tanks. One hour from now, play less than. You sing biggie 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 eat chicken tonight all over again. Just after the words were said, dull little sister couldn't help but laugh out loud. I super, the old woman's move is so ruthless, 15 tanks in an hour, this is to make the anchor lose his reputation, you're invincible kid, I remember private laughter again, all the old players hanged, I'll stay with you until you're old, I've searched the island, I've searched the desert, but where are you guys, where the hell are you guys, heartbreaking, what's going on, why is the live broadcast room abstracted all of a sudden, one hour, no problem, then if you accomplish your goal, 
Show the brothers your talent. Lu Qi also replied immediately. Wisdom teeth. Must be wisdom tooth anchor. Fifteen tanks in an hour. I'll really cry if the anchor gets in with his body. Gentlemen, I promise I won't take any screenshots if the anchor can't finish. Splat. Dull little sister excitedly slapped the table. Full of mouth, no problem. I directly dance. She just didn't believe it. One hour Luchi couldn't scrap 15 tanks? Not to mention whether or not he could fight that many. He wouldn't necessarily be able to find 15 tanks even if he looked for them. She had just traveled for about an hour and hadn't seen a few tanks. So 15 tanks. Either Luchi is unable to find, or it is halfway to be dry waste. At this moment, the contact device was still on. And when she heard Lu Qi say that he wanted to scrap 15 tanks within an hour, Mrs. Lei was almost petrified. He also pulled out his ears, wondering if he was deaf. Moros, who had arrived for the first time, on the other hand, suddenly went up and patted Mrs. Lai's shoulder. He was an old man, and was more or less comfortable with Lu Qi's bombastic words. But just then, Lu Qi suddenly contacted Lev. Lev let's switch. I want to think about trying out the main gunner's position. Upon hearing this, Lev didn't even think about it and subconsciously agreed. Uh, okay. And so, Lev, in a state of confusion, took the commander's position, and Lu Qi temporarily handed over the cell phone to him for safekeeping, so that he didn't care about anything, just be responsible for holding up the cell phone to record. Anchor what is the situation? How to run in the tank to shoot the gun went? Upstairs you say clearly. What is the anchor playing? See Lu Qi into the tank. Live water friends have been uproar. Dumb little sister side. And even fans specifically run to the Lu Qi live room. The main player you can not ah. Run tanks to do what ah? Hey. This you do not understand. People do not brave once. Do not know how much they are clowns. Don't get hit by a cannon and get killed by a cannon. If you want me to say. If you can't do it. You'd better withdraw. It's not so shameful to admit defeat. That's right. A sentence or two someone just gun. Someone ambush is not over? Seeing the people on their side go over to interfere with Lu Qi. Dull little sister snickered out. Just very ness. Unfortunately, Lu Qi couldn't see it and had already finished loading the armor-piercing bullets. The tank flew over the various streets and roads, the dust swirling up and wrapping the tracks on both sides. Suddenly in the distance, a burst of machine gun fire rang out. Drive into them. Can't let them fire. Passing through a neighborhood, one of Ermao's tanks came into view. Directly across from it was another big hairy jeep. A big hairy soldier racked his gun and fired frantically, while one drove his car forward and slammed into it, seemingly to die with it. Snipers, quick, watch out for hitting their gas tanks. The big Mao squad leader driving the car shouted. There was another sniper exposed on the building on the left side, gripping the sniper rifle in his hand extremely nervously. This scene, however, was discovered by Lev the instant. It was only then that his eyes widened, but he couldn't open his mouth in time and the gun barrel began to turn as if it was scripted and operated. Lu Qi then pressed the open button without hesitation, and an armor-piercing bullet shot out with a boom. With a set of operations running smoothly, Lu Qi realized that he had reached the point of perfection when it came to operating a tank. This was perhaps his gunnery proficiency, coupled with his driving proficiency, which could be described as a man-vehicle combination. Rumble dash. Unsurprisingly, the next second the armor-piercing bullet hit the enemy tank squarely and impartially. How? The Ermao commander tumbled and crashed down, his face showing fear. It was too fast. Just as the sound of tracks appeared in his ears, the shell had already arrived. There was no time to react. The fire suddenly rose into the air, drowning the entire tank. In an instant, everyone on the scene was silent. The jeep that was charging came to a sudden halt, and the sniper upstairs was stupefied. The live streamers who had just been taunting Luchi closed in unison, and Lev even opened his mouth wide. Ha ha, what's going on? Black talk ah. Just called so high. Why now no sound? You are born not love to talk? Now we know who the clown is. There can be countless clowns, but there's only one wall. In the face of sweeping pop-ups, dull little sister really gave a look of joy. There is a kind of beauty that can't be helped. She has not seen clearly. A tank is gone? No ah brothers. This now open hanging or open in the open? The distance is almost a hundred meters. Right. Really do not need to aim directly bombing? Dull little sister chose to break the defense. Old woman don't scream. I told you that the three arts of the Kai family are invulnerable. Nope. Now it has to be the Kai family's four arts. Head piercing. Follow through. Perspective. And then an armor piercing. Anchor. How many times do I have to say it? If you're not good, you should practice more. If you can't play, don't call. Anchor. How many times do I have to say it? If you're not good, practice more. If you can't play, don't scream. Answering machine plus one. 
Dull Little Sister's live broadcast room was screened by a series of practice more if you're a vegetable. She breathlessly pointed at herself, and then pointed at the screen, and finally chose the play that had the most pop-ups and had a seizure. I really can't take it anymore Ayaha Dash. On the other hand, Lev couldn't say he was shocked, he could only say he was greatly shocked. He had lived for almost 40 years, and this was still living set trade ah? Luchi's cannon was flung around, the same as the game script lock. It can be said that the strength of the two, simply not on a level, this is also worthy of being called a new recruit. At the same time there was a scare for the big hairy soldiers and others, eyeing the tanks that had just finished firing their cannons speeding away, with nothing but awe and amazement in their gazes. Awesome ah, this completely refreshes my perception of tanks, the big hairy squad leader muttered. The snipers upstairs had the same expression at this moment, it was too fast, he aimed with his sniper scope, but only saw the remnants of a shell streak by, then the Ermau tank exploded, there was no time to take a shot, I wonder which tank company's convoy it was, but thanks from the bottom of my heart, the Ermau squad leader watched the tanks go away, of all the people, it was still Maros who had the best mindset, or maybe he was already numb, unless Lu Chi could shoot down an airplane, what was the other thing? A mere dumping of cannon seconds on a tank? It wasn't like he hadn't seen it before. It's already won. There's still time. Zack pulled the horsepower to the max. Let's speed up. Lu Chi shouted. Zack sniffed and also immediately nodded his head, directly accelerating to the fastest possible speed. Lu Chi, your cannon accuracy is unheard of. Most likely, you're the tank genius our company commander was talking about. Seeing the maneuver Lu Chi had just performed, Zack was equally overwhelmed. He had heard his company commander say that there was a class of people who were born to drive tanks, even if they hadn't studied at all. Their accuracy was 10 times better than normal people. This kind of person could be called a genius. You know, tanks can rarely be used one-on-one. -on -one. They are more suited to working with infantry firepower suppression. But as long as they are there, even if the other side has a platoon of tanks on a narrow road, there is still a chance that they can be wiped out. So next, Lu Chi also showed his unrivaled dominance. Maros moved extremely fast. Sending a steady stream of high explosive and armor piercing bullets to Lu Chi. The tanks never stopped along the way, always traveling at top speed. But on the way, Lu Chi didn't fire a single shell. Seeing that the friendly troops were raising their guns to fight with the armored car, Lu Chi's gun barrel rotated. And in the process, he fired a cannon. Rumble. The explosion rose suddenly, and the armored car was directly blown away. The big hairy soldiers, who had survived, witnessed the tank driving away in a puff of smoke their eyes full of dismay. This, what the hell? Is it a tank? Could it be our vanguard troops coming? But why are the tanks so fast? And why are they here alone? The members of their own side looked at each other two by two and were momentarily incredulous. Afterwards, the tanks continued traveling and met the hostile soldiers who were coordinating with the infantry and tanks, heavily hitting one of our tanks. And Lu Chi didn't say much. He still quickly turned the gun, as if it was scripted to lock. Boom a cannon shot. Hearing the sound of the cannon. The commander standing on top of the tank had just turned around, and had already seen the shells flying in. Tank? Why so fast? Rumble dash. Without waiting for him to finish, the explosion sounded again. The entire tank was instantly engulfed in flames, and the strong impact bounced the infantrymen as far away as they could, and they all died of serious injuries. Inside the tank, the commander was the first to be stunned. Then he saw the only smoke left behind by the T-80, and the three members of the tank did not care that the tank was still on fire and hurriedly drilled out together. Already gone? How can it be? Instant aim? Instant launch? Did you guys just see it? It was too fast. I only saw the barrel turn in seconds, and the tank blew up directly after one shot. The friendly soldiers were shocked. It was hard to imagine that the one who just passed by was a teammate who belonged to the same tank soldiers as them. The abilities of the two were simply not on the same level. In the end, which tank company's comrade? What a strong operation. Luchi was operating in such a way that he was passing by and giving a shot in passing, and he was able to annihilate the enemy with a single shot. After walking for nearly half an hour, although he had only annihilated three tanks, the armored vehicles and members of the hostile forces had suffered a lot of casualties. Likewise, the advancement speed of his teammate's side had been greatly increased, and Luchi's perversity didn't stop here. He was even able to accurately predict the landing of anti-tank mines, as well as missile bombardments. Luchi had repeatedly called Lev and asked him to throw mines at a certain place. As a result, when he threw one, the land immediately exploded, obviously triggering the anti-tank mines. Seeing these things, the water users exploded, and Turbine Dog swiped the screen piece by piece. And when Dull Little Sister saw this, she marveled at Luchi's heaven-defying operation. The tank was traveling at the highest speed, and every time a target appeared, 
there were only so many seconds of aiming time. However, Luchi was able to accurately turn the gun every time, hitting the other side with a single shot without any deviation. What's more, even the anti-tank mines buried underground, as well as the landing points of the missiles could be accurately calculated by him, dodging them every time? As for Lev, who was standing on top of the tank as the commander, he had the exact same feeling as dull little sister. Let him come up and don't do anything. Just watch. I did not expect. Really is up to watch ah? Completely do not need. There is no opportunity for him to do it. Luchi C who was a cannon seconds. Why did you give me the gunner's position before? Lev wanted to growl. But he still had the task of holding up his cell phone. So he had to hold back. But having said that. Luchi had only hit three tanks in almost half an hour. Even though dull little sister marveled at how awesome Luchi was. With half an hour left. How could he possibly complete the challenge? That's why. Dumb little sister was almost sure of this one. After all. If you can't find the target. You won't be able to play. Ha ha. Half an hour has passed. How come the anchor only played three tanks? There's still half an hour to go. Can the anchor do it? I say the anchor give up. Half an hour and twelve tanks. Can't even find them. Let alone fight them. Reasonable. Anchor admit defeat. I promise not to record the screen in a while. Soon. The rhythm of Luchi's live broadcasting room is up again. All the people who stayed at the little sister's place ran over to brush the pop-up screen. However, Luchi, who was directing the battle, was not concerned, because his perception had become clearer and clearer. Luchi, there seems to be movement in front of us, Zack suddenly shouted. Luchi sniffed and immediately observed the front through his lens. Sure enough, smoke was rising from many places ahead, as well as bullets that kept pouring down. Fixing his eyes on it, a NATO armored team consisting of two tanks, as well as several armored vehicles, was in pursuit of a friendly tank. The team only had two tanks here, and the vehicles were all damaged, and were constantly bursting into flames. Keep accelerating, keep accelerating, crank the speed up to the max. I can't company commander, the power unit is damaged, it can't go any faster. Damn it, run as far as you can, I've already contacted the top, there will be a convoy coming to support. A company commander sat in the gunner's seat and shouted at the pilot. At that moment, his eyes hardened and his hands began to quickly fiddle with the regulator. If we can't survive, we can't make it easy for them. Boom dash. A shell was shot out from the barrel of the gun. Nay the tank's rotating lever was also a bit out of whack. The shot was so crooked that it just managed to explode on the right wing of an armored vehicle, causing a tire slide. Something's wrong with the swivel lever. Kirill, it's up to you. Watch out for popping their tires. The company commander quickly passed on the message, and Kirill, who was sitting in the tank commander's position, was now nervously aiming with his sniper rifle in hand. He was staring at the tracks of a tank, and his hand was still shaking as he was about to pull the trigger. But right at this moment, Kirill suddenly looked startled. Rumble. Out of nowhere, an armor-piercing bullet shot straight over, instantly detonating one of the enemy tanks. The angle was tricky, the accuracy was horrible, and it even crossed the blockade of the surrounding armored vehicles. Kirill turned back violently, the movement just now also attracted the attention of the tank soldiers. At this moment, under the short slope in the distance, a T-80 main battle tank slowly unveiled. The barrel of the gun is still smoking hot air. I go, the anchor encountered a convoy ah? There are actually two tanks coming down at once. The anchor has a chance this time. I want to see the old woman break through the defense. I want to see the old woman break the defense. The pop-up screen was brushed up at once. And dumb little sister found that the fleet also immediately came forward. But on the contrary, Lu Chi's teammates, each jaw dropped. He actually hit the enemy's tank convoy head on. Not only did the infantry and tanks synergize, but there were also several armored vehicles escorting them. But the most crucial thing was that just now, Lu Chi had actually blown up a tank with a single shot? The explosion of one of the NATO's tanks had clearly caught the attention of the entire team. In an instant, the entire fleet of armored vehicles began to turn around. There's actually reinforcements on Big Mouse side? Eh, just one T-80 tank? What an insouciance. It actually dares to come over for support without authorization. Turn around and focus fire on it. With Big Harry's commander's order, the convoy's attack target changed. Noticing this scene, that company commander of the Big Mouse convoy also immediately jumped onto the top of the tank. You guys, move. They're a NATO armored company's team. You guys can't stop them. Run to the back and contact the upper levels. He was shouting loud enough that Lev heard him despite the distance. However, he didn't know whether Lu Chi didn't hear it or just didn't care about it at all as if he had. Even Zack was headbutting with it. Boom dash. Suddenly, a cannonball hit. Under the horrified gazes of a group of big hairy soldiers on the opposite side, the shell hit the NATO tank again and set off a big fire. How is it possible? 
At this moment, the crowd said in unison, not only the big hairy soldiers even the NATO soldiers were shocked. The commander who was shouting just now, died in battle in the next second? Simply too accurate. However, the commander's death did not make them feel fear. The armored car formation had an orderly arrangement. In an instant, they formed an irregular formation and rushed towards Luchi and the others, the machine guns above their heads firing wildly. Company commander De Mao wanted to say something, but he saw that the T-80 continued to speed up, and the bullets could only hit its tail. In the next second, the gun barrel turned and blasted out another shot. Accompanied by a rumbling explosion, an armored vehicle toppled over and turned into a pile of debris. This, Big Harry Company commander man was dumbfounded. At high speeds, why is it still so accurate? He couldn't believe it. The gunner of the T-80 tank on the opposite side fired a total of three shots, and the guns exploded all over the place. It was even more of a shot, and it knocked out two NATO main battle tanks in a row. I told you there was nothing to worry about. Not only is the anchor locked up, but so is the vehicle. Kaija's magic. 100% hit. The armored cars behind us are probably stupid. Not only can they miss, they can't catch up, and they're being shot at by the anchor. Blow up the tanks, smash the armored cars, and banish the world. The tanks were fast, and although the back was on fire, at least there was no major damage. On the contrary, it was a different story on the side of the NATO armored vehicles. One was destroyed by Luchi's high explosive shells with a single shot. Yardstick how is he so accurate? It's obviously moving at high speed. Why didn't a single shot go blank? This is impossible. I'm going to jump out of the car. Ah, rumble. Explosions rang out again, and what had been several armored vehicles turned into three at once. Seeing that something was wrong, they quickly turned around and fled. Luchi seized the opportunity and blasted out one last shot, destroying an armored car once again. Run away. Accelerate, the NATO soldiers shouted. By this time, Kirill had already moved his head away from the scope his eyes dumbfounded. The big Harry company commander was also completely dumbfounded, looking motionless as if petrified. How could the NATO convoy that was just chasing them be wiped out so quickly, and repulsed the enemy's T-80, but also quickly drove to the two big hair tanks this side? The big Harry company commander realized and hurriedly jumped down from the vehicle. Quickly, extinguish the fire, extinguish the fire first. Immediately following soon after, both sides of the tanks stopped the flames were all extinguished. Obviously after this battle although slightly damaged, but the main body of the tank can still be used. It can be said that the damage is not great. However, after the few people in the T-80 came out, Kirill recognized them at once. Moros, Lu Chi, it's you guys? Kirill excitedly came forward. The big hairy company commander on the side was slightly surprised to see this. Kirill, you know them? Kirill hastily nodded. Well, we were in the same regiment before. Like I said at the time, we were hit by an air attack so we all got separated. Receiving this reply, the big hairy company commander understood. Hello guys, my name is Pushkin and I'm the company commander of the 114th tank company. He shook hands with Luchi and the others one by one, but Lev suddenly froze after hearing the name. 114th tank company? You're the tank company that's directly under Chief Elena? The crowd could tell that Lev's expression was actually somewhat uplifted. It was rare for him, a veteran soldier, to show this kind of expression. Even back then when he was pulled into the car by the air attack on Lu Chi, he had a steady face. Ha, that's right. Pushkin scratched his cheek. But we are also quite humiliated to be chased by a NATO armored team. Lu Chi saw that Pushkin wasn't very old, probably just under 30. So he asked Lev. And Lev gave the answer that the 114th tank company was a tank company with many honors. They shone especially brightly in a group of tank teams, having taken over the Irmao strongholds many times in a row with their own strength laying many foundations for the victory of the Great Mao. For this reason, this tank company was given a heroic name. The commander of the tank company, Pushkin, became the commander at a young age. Even more so, with the rank of second lieutenant as the company commander. This kind of thing was rare in the army. After all, the lowest rank of the company commander was basically a lieutenant. Truly speaking, even I actually have to call him sir. Lev gave a pertinent comment. Lu Chi nodded, probably understanding. But Pushkin, at this moment, felt a bit ashamed. We are ashamed of the name of the hero company. But it's you guys, who was the gunner just now? And it was too accurate and too fast? At these words, several people looked at each other. Zack was the last to get out of the car because he had to check the interior of the car. And just so happened to be on all fours with Pushkin just as he came out. Zack, you're here too? Pushkin? Obviously. The two knew each other as members of the same tank company. No way Zack? It's hard to believe that the gunner who just fired was you? Pushkin was filled with excitement. Murphy, 
you've already taken that step too. Zack sniffed and his eyebrows suddenly furrowed. Uh, not me. I'm the pilot. With that, he pointed at Lu Chi, who was standing beside Pushkin. It's Lu Chi. This one beside you is the gunner of our convoy. Ha! Huh? Hearing this incredible news, Pushkin quickly turned his head to look at Lu Chi. He hadn't even paid much attention to this man just now, but now he took a closer look. It was too young, and with an Asian face? Lu Chi, you're the gunner who just fired the cannon. That's me. Nice to meet you. Hello. Saying the last sentence, Lu Chi even used a special Mandarin. Pushkin couldn't believe it. The person who had just stopped a god from killing a god and almost wiped out the NATO armored team with a few cannons was actually the young man in front of him? Hello, he also awkwardly returned a Mandarin. Nice to meet you. My name is Pushkin. Well, now Lu, Hanging, Kai, Wall, has another fan. As I said, there are only two kinds of people in this world. Those who've seen Lu Kai, Wall, Hang and have become fans. And those who haven't seen Lu Kai, Wall, Hang. The only anchor who can't even beat Kryptonite. The two sides proceeded to discuss a bit more. Lu Chi and the others learned that Pushkin's company was preparing to head to Grace Heights. As a result, just as they arrived there, they were ambushed by a NATO armored team. Some of the team members were sacrificed, and they ran separately. So now the group was all separated, and they didn't know where they had run off to. I suggest you guys, never go to Grace Heights. There's one of NATO's strongest armies stationed there, and we were beaten back after just a shallow entry. I've already reported it to the rear and I'm guessing it's either going to be plowed with missiles or we'll have to have a huge army to take it. Pushkin sighed and reminded gruffly. He was halfway down from Grace Heights, and had expected to be able to rely solely on the strength of his own convoy. Can follow the example of the previous to take Grace Heights again, for the army to gain an advantage. As a result, he didn't expect that the power of this NATO convoy was not something they could even imagine. In just one photo, the so-called heroic convoy collapsed. On the contrary, when Lu Chi and the others heard what he said, they also each had a deep expression on their faces. Lev had heard a little about this place, and had heard that it was Avgiev, one of the most important strategic locations. They were supposed to rendezvous with the large troop, so they really couldn't wander off to a place like that. All right, we understand. After saying that, Luchi and the others were ready to get back on the road. Once they sat down and chatted for almost 10 minutes, Luchi had 20 minutes remaining and still had to destroy a whole 10 tanks. Kirill, are you coming with us? Moros asked. Kirill shook his head and waved his hand. No, I'll just follow company commander Pushkin. There's no room in your tanks anyway. Right, so don't worry about me. Kirill was in a much better frame of mind now, and was only slightly shocked to learn that Lu Chi was a gunner. After all, if it was Lu Chi, making anything didn't seem to surprise anyone. Seeing this, the few people could not be dissuaded. So they all nodded their heads. All right then, we'll go first then. The few people hoofed it onto the tank and resumed their seats where they belonged. This was all they had. Knowing that there was a scary place nearby could not go and get killed. It was better to hurry up and join up with the larger group. Thinking so, Zack jerked the tank and continued to drive at high speed towards the south. But Pushkin, who watched them leave, first smiled slightly. Immediately after watching Luchi in the other's vehicles, actually driving towards the south at high speed, he slightly narrowed his eyes. In the end, the smile completely disappeared and turned into a touch of shock. Wait, where are you going? That's the south. Stop, we're almost at Grace Heights up ahead, he shouted with a run and a jump, taking quick steps to catch up with the tank, however, the T-80 was traveling so fast that his voice Lu Chi and the others couldn't hear him at all, Lev, on the other hand, thought that Pushkin was saying goodbye to them, and waved goodbye with a smile on his face, at this time, Kirill, who was sitting next to him, was also dumbfounded and quickly stood up, Lu Chi and the others drove to Grace Heights, just one of their vehicles? Pushkin eyed their faraway direction and couldn't help but clench his fists. Looks like they didn't listen to advice in the end. Pushkin could even feel exactly what the other party was thinking, because that was what he was thinking before. Because of his many victories, it was inevitable that his heart was high and proud. So he directly went and challenged the strongest defenders on Grace Highland. And then what? The results spoke for themselves. He understood that Lu Chi possessed that kind of strength. And as the main gunner was definitely in the same mindset now, but they were just one vehicle. It was a bit too arrogant to do so. No way Kirill. Let's go contact backup support. If we move fast enough, we might be able to make it before Lu Chi and the others get blown up. Pushkin said solemnly. He had seen his comrades die around him. So he didn't want to see. Lu Chi and the others make unnecessary sacrifices again. Nor did he want Lu Chi. To go through what he had gone through again. Good. Kirill agreed. With that, several people quickly boarded the tanks and either turned around to look for their lost team members or went to look for assistance. On the contrary, 
Lu Qi's side was running out of time. There's still 20 minutes left. The anchor still has 10 tanks left. Anchor is really not in a hurry ah. Once the time is up the anchor is going to send it ah. 20 minutes. An average of 2 minutes a tank. This is no hope at all. Right? Seeing Blackie's constant rhythm, dull little sister was also relieved. This second hand counted. She finally did not lose. It's okay okay. Speaking in terms of Lu Qi's perception, it seemed to him that there were tanks right in the vicinity. And very many of them. This was a bit strange. Lu Qi wasn't sure if they were friendly tanks? Something's not right. Suddenly Lev snapped. What's wrong? Zack said as he drove. We're in a place that seems to be close to the edge of the city, and the terrain is getting a little higher. Is this the direction of the rendezvous with our forces? Lev felt strange. Logically, near the edge of the city, one should be able to run into many friendly troops. After all, this location was most likely where the Daimao soldiers were entering. But nowadays, not only did he not see a single friendly army, even the enemies seemed to be much less? When you say it like that, it's a bit strange. Wait, what's that sound up ahead? Meanwhile, on the other side, in De Mao's strategic command post, the heads of the regiments were gathered together and were discussing the frontline attack. That NATO tank company is considered one of the strongest and is now stationed above Grey's Heights. I've heard that the equipment they're equipped with is the finest available today. On the tabletop, a panoramic map of Abdiv was spread. The head of the 434th regiment was, at that moment, pointing at a place called Grace Heights. How about it? Guys, how long do you think it will take us to capture this place? He he, now that Abdiev is routed on all fronts, it's only a matter of time before we take this place, the leader of the 834th tank regiment said. I do think that this piece of land is an important project to test our army. How about we have a competition? Oh, the rest of the regimental commanders heard this and became interested. Seeing this, the 834th regiment's commander continued to speak. Let's use Grace Heights as the target, and compete to see who of our soldiers will hit it first and take this piece of land. This, is a bit interesting? Ha, ha ha, you don't say. It's really something we can try when we put it this way. These words ushered in quite a few people's concurrence. Good, I think this is good. If whoever loses whoever buys the winner a drink. Suddenly, the leader of the 771st tank regiment popped out. This, obviously, was Zack's regimental leader. He was seen to be broad and fat with two divergent eyes and a mustache, and his age was probably close to 60. Eh? Up south and down north. Most of my tank company is in the north. You guys compare with me? If you lose then don't say I'm cheating. The other captains frowned at this. You're confused. Up north and down south. Ha! Huh? Head 771 was puzzled. Forget it, they're all about the same. Do you guys still have any more participants? With that said, the crowd turned their eyes to the right again. Head Elena, are you coming to participate as well? At the opposite corner of the table, Elena was standing there with her hands clasped over her chest. She was dressed in a large woolen military uniform with a white cap on top of her head, and her long blonde hair like a waterfall was draped behind her head, yet even the heavy military uniform only barely covered her proud figure. Ha! She sneered twice and skimmed her head. So you guys are just trying to trick me into buying a bar? Now who doesn't know that my 114th tank company, lost near Grace Heights, lost all of its main force? but you all drink and drink every day. Can you drink over me and keep dragging me to drink? Being disliked by her. Many of the captains present were speechless. Elena, as a rare female head of their army, didn't look old, but her style was really wild. Previously, at the celebration banquet, she alone had hardened a bunch of captains and drank them all down. But forget it. But Elena suddenly changed her words. I'll bet with you guys. Pukinchi has contacted me, and support will be here soon. He's closest to Grace Heights again. And when the support comes, the one who takes Grace Heights the fastest will definitely be my 114th regiment. Elena tapped her finger on the desktop, and the several captains were quite happy to hear that. Good, good. It's only fun when there are more people. Let's all have some sense of competition. I'll go inform the people of my regiment to enter Grace Heights as soon as possible as well. He he, you can't beat me. I've already taken the lead in notifying them. Watching them bicker, Elena shook her head. She had already gotten through to Pushkin and the support troops would arrive soon. When the tanks pressed in, Grace Heights wouldn't last more than an hour under her hands, and it would be taken down completely by her. Meanwhile on Grace Heights, a military base belonging to Irmo was stationed. Many weapons were stored here, and it was also an important supply point for Irmo and NATO soldiers. As far as the eye could see, many soldiers were stationed here, as well as one of the strongest tank companies from NATO. The entire company was equipped with 10 Eagle Sauce M1A2 main battle tanks which were distributed in different locations on Grace Heights in case of any enemy attacks. But just then, 
The sound of a fierce firefight rang out in the distance, and it seemed that even heavy machine guns were being used. Company Commander Robert? Company Commander Robert? I'm in. In the position of the main gunner of an M1A2 tank sat a blonde haired youth. He was the company commander of the entire tank company. Robert. Company Commander Robert. Our side has detected that there seems to be another enemy entering Grace Heights. HM, which regiment of Big Mao is the one that entered Grace Heights? Robert queried. No, no, it's not a regiment or a company. Instead, it's a Big Mao T-80 tank, and it's damaged? Hearing this, Robert first frowned, then gave a flippant laugh, clearly not believing it. Are you kidding me? Are you sure you're reading this right? A damaged T-80 tank that entered Grace Heights alone? Absolutely right. He was traveling fast when he started. He should have been heading for Grace Heights. Receiving an affirmative answer, Robert only pondered for a few seconds. I really don't know if all the people on Big Hair's side are not thinking too well. I was expecting some kind of big force to come, but it turns out that the one that came this time is even weaker than that tank company from last time. Really out of their depth. Robert said and gave the driver a look. Forget it, let's rally and grab over there to blow him up. Understood company commander. After saying this, the M1A2 that Robert was traveling in moved. Meanwhile elsewhere, summoned by Robert. All the tanks started up together to rush to the firefight point. Gray's Highland wasn't that big, so it wouldn't take long to reach the destination. And just in case, once they met the enemy, the entire tank company would be mobilized. On the other hand, Lucci's side had been continuously obstructed by many Irmao soldiers and NATO armored vehicles, but without exception, they were all crippled by Lucci's cannon blast. What's going on? Is this T-80 equipped with a positioning system? Why? Why can he be so accurate? Wait, it's coming again. Rumble dash. The armored vehicles that Irmao and NATO that had come to block the way were unable to dodge at all, and were scrapped one by one. But again, the further he drove, the more Zack felt something was wrong. What's going on? Why are there more and more vehicles and soldiers from Irmo? Is this our army's territory? Brothers this place is interesting ah. Anchor this is deep into the enemy NPC lair ah. There's too much to fight. It's completely overwhelming. It seems that this time it's impossible not to rush ah. There are still 15 minutes left. Anchor, try harder. There are so many armored cars in this place, but not a single tank. After playing for half a day, I didn't see a single tank, so I'm in a good mood. The time is running out, but the fact proved that the water friends are all crows. They just finished. The distant hillside resounded with a sound of tracks. Oh uh, wait, did you guys hear something? Brothers, speak of the devil. Look at the hillside. With the alerts from her friends in the live broadcast room, dull little sister also noticed the hillside. Suddenly, everyone on the site sensed movement. Irmo and the NATO soldiers there were even more greatly energized. It's our tank company coming. Great. Quickly pull back and let the opposite side see the strength of our tank company. A voice roared me. All the Irmo and NATO soldiers all retreated. Lucci and the others followed the direction from which the voice came. Only to see. First a burst of smoke rolled up followed by AM-1A2 main battle tank coming at breakneck speed. Wait, tanks, 10 tanks, and all of Eagle Sauce's M-1A2 tanks? In the commander's position, Lev saw it most accurately. The M-1A2 main battle tank, but one of Eagle Sauce's strongest generation tanks, and now 10 of them appeared at once? That's not right. Where the hell are we running from? Wait, I said how come the further we go, the more enemy troops we encounter? We can't be running backwards? After Maros and Zack finished their discussion, the two of them were immediately startled. If it was true that they had run backwards and had met a tank company consisting of 10 M1A2 tanks, then it meant that this was Grace Heights. In just a moment, everyone in the car realized, this tank company in front of them was one of the strongest tank companies in NATO. As Pushkin had said, and as the 10 tanks appeared, it seemed that more and more armored vehicles, too, were encircling from different directions. Seeing this, no matter if it was Zack or Lev, there was only one thought now. Run! There was no way to win. Not to mention, here were 10 fully equipped M1A2S. Let's just say that even if it wasn't an M1A2, it was impossible to have a chance with just an ordinary Irmo tank. As Zack said, even the best driver or gunner couldn't be one for 10. And that was the case with tanks. Lu Kai, we're ready to go. Up there is the strongest company of tanks in Grace Heights. If we go fast, maybe we can still survive. Zack said, drawing right to the top with a kick of the throttle. The tank swerved for a moment and began to accelerate to escape, leaving the large force in front of them unresponsive. But upon realizing that the T-80 was starting to escape, a rain of bullets took the lead in covering it. Ha, huh, running away? What a bunch of cowards. The last one at least had some backbone. Robert teased. With that, he gave an order and launched a pursuit. One, two, two, 
three, four. Don't count upstairs. There are ten tanks on the other side. What kind of game is this? I suspect that the anchor is operating in the dark. Why did he come across ten tanks at once? Ha ha. Ten tanks is indeed the completion of the mission. But the key is whether the anchor can be ten tanks. Ah, this thing is all together. The anchor will be blown away in one shot. Right? Suddenly appeared ten tanks. Luchi also just short of ten units to reach the standard. Dull little sister almost all scared confused. But a little thought seems to be nothing. Ten units appear to be appearing. After all, they appeared together. Luchi cannot fight off is still a question. Perhaps if there was a firefight, he might have to be blown up himself first. So when he thought about it, Luchi still didn't have a chance to complete his mission. And being that the tanks were running away, Luchi also knew that despite the other side coming in strong, it was absolutely impossible to walk away. The many tanks he had sensed should be this team. And now the time left was just right. Zack, there's no need to go. Just take care of driving in the direction I told you. We can take the opposite side. Luchi discouraged. Hearing this, both Lev and Maros were stunned and looked at Luchi like he was looking at a ghost. Zack, at this point, also clearly didn't trust Lu Qi's words. It was true that his cannon shot was accurate, but their side was brittle, and getting hit was just a matter of one cannon shot. What's more, there were still a bunch of armored cars assisting them, so there was no chance of them hitting ten. No way. Lu Qi, this kind of dense encirclement, if we are hit once, we will be directly destroyed. In this situation, it's better to go first. Zack finished speaking and accelerated the tank once again. Nay a strange situation happened. He was about to drive out of Grace Heights when he suddenly realized that the tank was running out of fuel. How could this happen? Zack's eyes widened, his face full of confusion. But on second thought, this T-80 was originally picked up from the side of the road. How could it have more fuel when it had been driven by someone? Coupled with the fact that it was running wildly at full speed all the way, directly crossing half of the map, it was also obvious that the oil had bottomed out. But it is at this time, the back of the large force followed closely. The remaining amount of oil that saw red was simply not enough for them to completely escape from the pursuit. Zack, turn around. This remaining amount of oil is enough to wipe them all out. Luchi said with certainty. The few people in the car at this moment, all knew the critical nature of the situation. They simply couldn't escape. Zack was stunned. And after thinking about it, he felt as if he had no choice now. The gas was at the bottom of the tank. And there was definitely no way to leave. But even if they couldn't take down the NATO company, they had to at least die in style. Yes, thinking of this, Zack turned around without any hesitation, and then pressed the gas. I'm going, the anchor turned back. The anchor is preparing to do it the hard way? There are almost two or three companies on the opposite side, right? Can you do it? Don't go back and get blown to death by the opposite side. I can't believe I'm not going to die. I'm going to eat Ollie upside down. It's reasonable to a company A. Can when I stand on my head and eat Ollie give? Luchi this turn around. Not only the live broadcast began to start the rhythm. NATO company side also faced surprised. Oh, you're actually rushing back to send them to their deaths? Then let's fulfill them. Give me a cannon knot. Boom. Before Robert finished speaking, suddenly an armor-piercing bullet sailed past the right side of his line of sight. In a flash, an M1A2 on the right side exploded instantly. Robert. He twisted his head in disbelief and looked to his right through the observation mirror. Without a doubt, the tank company consisting of 10 tanks was just now. Attenuated by one. Witnessing his comrades instantly blown up, Robert could not believe his eyes at all. He turned his sight back to the front, his forehead veins surfacing slightly. At this moment, the T-80 was charging in a straight line this way, white smoke still lingering on its muzzle. It was obviously him who had just fired that shot. The accuracy wasn't like a human at all. Even the live broadcast room and dumb little sister's place were slightly cleared. But next, what was to come was Robert's tyrannical fury. All companies adjust their positions. Fire for me. With Robert's order, the remaining nine tanks spread out, their guns aimed at Luchi and the others, and most of the armored vehicles didn't linger either, crashing head-on towards Luchi and the others with full horsepower. Boom! Right at this moment, an armor-piercing bullet shot out from the M1A2's gun barrel. Seeing that this cannon angle is tricky, a group of water friends including a few people present feel that it is going to be over, and there is no way to avoid it. But Luchi suddenly vocalized, turn left. Zack blinked his eyes and woke up. Hearing Lu Qi's words he did not believe in the first time, but think about it now there is no chance. Immediately turned the joystick left. The next second, a miraculous scene happened. The tank crashed into a boulder on the ground. At the moment of crushing the boulder, the tank also lost its balance and drifted, and the armor-piercing bullet happened to pass through the side. This, Zack couldn't believe it. Really, dodged it? And at that moment, the pop-up area exploded. 
I'm going to go to go to go. This operation is awesome. Who the hell can tell me when a tank can drift? Is this QQ speed? Palletizing appeared. The new wall hanging. The carrier is flying. My keyboard only has 9 left. Because it's already 6 flips. What kind of divine operation is drifting to avoid cannonballs? At this moment, dull little sister also propped her hands on the table. Letting her face dislike the front of the screen, her eyes full of amazement. The tank dodged the cannonball? And just in the moment of drifting to turn to the front, another armor-piercing shell was shot out from the muzzle. This round was still impartial, hitting one of the M1A2S with a boom. On Robert's side, he had unconsciously opened his mouth wide as he watched the two tanks die in front of his eyes. What just happened? How did the opposite side dodge it? He didn't see it clearly, including the group of members around him. Everyone at the scene was dumbfounded, and Maros and Lev were even more dumbfounded. Tanks could still play like this? But among them, the one who was most excited was Zack. What kind of heaven-defying operation did he just do? On the other hand, Robert was really cranky this time, and he ordered the whole group to shell continuously. However, after dodging one of the shells, Zack's eyes widened. Not only did he lose the cowardice he had just shown but he was also a bit excited. Right pirouette, Lu Chi shouted. Got it. The tank drifted again. The right pirouette easily dodged the armor-piercing bullet, followed by Lu Chi's backhanded shot. Not surprisingly, another tank exploded on the high slope. No one dared to imagine that the T-80 was currently traveling at its peak speed. But it was at this speed that Lu Chi was still able to easily hit 100%. You know, the reason why tanks have to stop and aim at each other is because it's harder to hit each other in a moving state instead. Like the M1A2 tank company. It is because of this point just quietly stay in place to shoot. On the contrary, Lu Chi's approach was simply beyond common sense. Many consecutive precise dodges. Coupled with Luchi's almost perverted accuracy. At this moment, Lev also felt a surge of hot blood. He raised his machine gun, a hint of excitement spreading across his face. Come on, bomb them all. Da 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 dash. In an instant, the muzzle of the machine gun was ablaze with fire. And the bullets that poured out hit the incoming armored vehicles indiscriminately. Some exploded midway. And some drivers were inadvertently hit and fell. Causing the vehicles to crash. Fire. Fire. Seeing this, they also immediately organized a counterattack. Love understood that Lu Chi couldn't even be described as a pervert anymore. He was like a monster. One that was even more advanced than an artificial intelligence. On the contrary, the current Lu Chi, all he had to do was to gently close his eyes. And all the wind and grass around him could be reflected in his mind. Where there were rocks, where there were trees, where there were sunken mud pits. Combined with his unrivaled driving proficiency, he could dodge any shell with a perfect landing. On the battlefield. The T-80 drifted in a left pirouette, arriving at the tree the instant the missile blasted right into it. It then continued to pirouette right and hit a rock. Because of inertia it was bounced into a left pirouette while the missile landed on the right side. The entire tank company started with a full 10 tanks, but unfortunately missed, completely missed. Under the dense rain of shells, only the rocks that were blown up even touched the T-80. Robert's eyes were already bloodshot as he watched another armor-piercing shell come in and destroy the fifth tank in his company. No way. He's only one tank, why can't he just hit it? Robert shouted. He disbelievingly loaded the gun himself, and then adjusted the muzzle to aim at the T-80 that was speeding left and right below. As the strongest gunner of the ace tank company, he was never willing to believe this result. Blow it up for me. Boom dash. The armor-piercing bullet shot out, traveling in a straight line direction. But just as it was about to hit the T-80, he amazingly changed direction, switching to traveling in a straight line. He also happened to hit a stone pier in the road bouncing the entire vehicle back and easily dodging the shelling. How? Robert was completely stunned speechless. He was sure to win a cannon. Was dodged? So in the next second, the shell had arrived, and the oncoming fire grew grander and grander, completely obscuring Robert's vision. Boom dash. The M1A2 tank Robert was waiting for exploded, and he was lost forever. Seeing this, the members of the remaining four M1A2 tanks could hardly contain the fear in their hearts. They felt that they must have overworked themselves and therefore hallucinated. The other party only had one battle-damaged version of the T-80, but actually destroyed six of their M1A2S in a row. And even the captain was killed in battle. Until this moment, the live broadcast room has long been completely silent, which still dare to say Lu Chi a word of no, including dull little sister. The whole person open mouth froze in place, as if to doubt their own eyes. Lu Chi, we're almost at the bottom of our fuel. Yeah, and the armor-piercing bullets are gone. Only the high explosive bullets are left. At that moment, Zack and Moros said separately. For Lu Chi, it wasn't a problem because the battle would be over soon. As for the high explosive bombs, 
It was still possible to destroy an M1A2 tank with a single hit even if you bombarded the fuel tank. Zack, you can speed up and rush over. Hearing Lu Chi speak like this, although there were still many armored vehicles in the surrounding area, he still chose to move forward without any hesitation. Not good. The opposite side is rushing up. Their tanks have been damaged. We can just ram through. Right, crash through to block their route. Seeing Lu Chi and the others rushing in, a piece of armored vehicles organized themselves and prepared to surround and encircle the T-80. However, when bullets poured into the tank's body and began to ignite flames, Lu Chi remained unperturbed. Zack, reverse, Lu Chi shouted. Watching an armored car crashing in, Zack pulled the lever backwards without thinking. Then the next second the armored car stepped directly on an anti-tank mine and exploded in front of Lu Chi and the others. Appeared, it has appeared. I'm super, really appeared. Perspective hang back again. Master Chung back. How did the anchor know there were anti-tank mines in the area? The mines they planted blew themselves up. And the other side was probably dumbfounded by the explosion. Under Lu Chi's operation, several people in the car were equally shocked. Moros had seen a lot of Lu Chi's stunts. But this time, it was one of those stunts that refreshed his knowledge. Even anti-tank mines were able to figure out where they were. As for Lu Chi, he blasted out a cannon with his backhand, destroying AM-1A2 tank once again. The remaining three tanks seemed to be feeling unbeatable, ready to turn around and leave. Seeing this, Luchi of course would not give them this opportunity. Accelerate, Luchi barked out in order. Zack violently pushed the lever. And the tank, wrapped in flames, was like a fire horse flying away from the reins. And the two sides came one after another, ready to encircle the T-80 armored car in inattention. On the spot head-to-head -head collided together. Then a variety of drift again. There are crashed in the tree armored car. There are boulders tripped over, and stepped on the anti-tank mine explosion. As far as the eye could see, the field was already like a hell on earth, with ashes and debris everywhere, and fires burning continuously, and transferring to Lu Chi's side, the positions of the two parties had been completely reversed, he became the pursuing side, and once again, he blasted out a cannon, and one of the tanks that was fleeing was scrapped in an instant. Which one of Big Mao's characters is this? How is it possible? This is operated by an AI right? Is this human? One vehicle wiped out our regiment. We can't get away. No way. Turn around and crash directly into it. When there were only two cars left, they knew that they couldn't escape and were already completely undaunted. Immediately after their discussion, they turned their heads in unison and started charging with their guns aimed at the T-80. Boom. Another high explosive bomb was fired. One of the two remaining units exploded. The fuel tank was broken and caused a fire. The last of the two remaining units regardless of the fact that it was already pulling its horsepower to the maximum, crashed head-on into the T-80. It took time to change the ammunition, so when the distance approached, everyone seemed to hold their breath. Nay, of course Lu Chi wouldn't be foolish enough to collide head-on with it. With a word from him, Zack backhanded it with a left pirouette deflection, and the last M1A2 brushed past the crowd in the process. Surprised, regardless of the enemy, all of them were jaw-dropped at this moment, and when Maros finished delivering the shells, the moment the muzzle turned to the rear, a high explosive shell was also shot out, without deviation. It accurately hit the M1A2's fuel tank, causing an explosion and fire. Gradually, the T-80 kept rotating and then braked. The body of the vehicle was at a diagonal side angle, aimed at the short slope and the messy battlefield below. There were traces of burning everywhere, and broken copper and iron were spread all over the ground. The bet was timed to the last two minutes, and everyone in the car was breathing heavily. Zack was in complete disbelief that this was what they had done, or more accurately, it was Lu Chi who did it alone. In just 15 minutes, a single cannon crushed 10 riders and completely annihilated the enemy. It was nothing short of a miracle. Zack had once naively thought that Lu Chi was merely a genius. However, until he saw the current scene, he realized that he could not use the word genius to measure Lu Chi. It should be said that he was simply like a god, the god of tanks. I'm going, the anchor is a god. Is this the greatness of the hanging wall? He's beating up a tank company by himself? And he just managed to finish the mission in the last two minutes? Do I remember that someone said that the anchor would eat Ali upside down if he beat them? I'm laughing my ass off. Why are people cheating everywhere? Where's the guy who just spoke? Why don't you say anything? Are you not a talker by nature? When the battle ended, Luchi's operation caused the entire live broadcast room to clamor. The first time I saw it, I saw the gifts pile up in batches, and it was always a sports car to start with. On the other hand, dumb little sister couldn't believe her eyes. It's really heaven and hell in an instant. In the first 15 minutes Lu Chi was still short of 10 tanks, and in the second 15 minutes he finished it. Is this something that humans can do? Meanwhile after the battle ended, 
Lu Qi jumped up from inside the tank. The entire tank slowly moved forward as Lev, machine gun in hand, began to clear out the remaining dime a dozen infantry in the vicinity. And when Lu Qi picked up his cell phone, the dull little sister live broadcast room was invaded at once. Ha ha, the time is just right. Old woman get ready to put on a show. Old woman don't freeze. Your eyes rubbed rotten results are also correct. It's still a fucking anchor. Kill the old woman. Seeing the pop-up screen, dull little sister smiled. Smiling a little weirdly. She had already lost two in a row. The first was pitched even if. The second out of such a tricky task can still lose. In a flash, dull little sister once again chose to break her defense. This hack can you lose too? No ah. Uh, just short of the last two minutes ah. Uh, two minutes. Lu Chi. What kind of hang are you on? Why can tanks drift? See dull little sister broken defense. Water friends a comfortable screen. To dull little sister see more angry. This is if the game inside. She must be hard to report Lu Chi hanging. Are so not sealed? But in the end, she could only ruthlessly flick the bangs on her forehead upwards. Well well well. You guys are the ones who will be on the verge. I'll dance for you guys alright. Dull little sister stood up at once after saying that. Then walked towards the room. At this time, the water friends in the live broadcast room couldn't sit still. Quickly, 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 the old woman is going to perform. Spread the news quickly, calling the messenger. Where is the messenger? The messenger has gone. He's really gone. Luchi looked at the pop-up screen in the live broadcast room and wondered what his friends were doing, but the gifts he brushed over made him incredibly happy. So far, it had broken 10,000. This time, the activities of the two platforms had pulled the traffic to the highest level allowing Lu Qi to directly earn a fortune. Underneath, the tanks were still traveling at the lowest possible speed, and with the large group of troops destroyed, the remaining Ermao soldiers were not enough to resist. Facing Lev's heavy machine guns, they quickly fell. Lu Qi and the others also finally saw the military base located in the center of Grey Highlands. Is this? Is this the military base stationed on Grey Highlands? Oh my god, we're actually here. Seeing this, Lev, including the two of them, including Zack, both had expressions that looked incomparably excited. Who would have thought that they were originally a group of soldiers who had been separated by an air attack? As a result of joining together, they actually captured Grey's Heights and came to the central base here. This kind of deed in the past, even if Lev was a veteran with excellent experience, he wouldn't even dare to think about it. And in the live broadcast room, dull little sister took the props and finally walked out from the room. Only a light veil was draped over her shoulders. Her eyes were slightly flirtatious and she took a graceful step with a single turn. In the next second, music suddenly sounded around her, matched with a dynamic rhythm, and water friends swiped the screen. What is this? Too bright. I can't. Thank you for feeding the anchor. I feel like I can't take it anymore. What are you all doing? Silly Dachuan quickly take out your right hand ah. How can you punch an old woman? I'll laugh for the rest of my life at anyone who flushes an old woman. Typing with both hands to show my innocence. Typing with both hands to show my innocence. At this time, the dull little sister is not much to dilly-dally with. First of all, the right leg up a hook. Thin black silk in the legs to support more and more transparent. Immediately after she encircled a circle. Legs on the gaming chair. The camera also began to quickly pull shrink. The pop-ups in the live broadcast room went straight down. Luchi adheres to the identity of a family man. Is determined not to see. But he couldn't help the gifts in the live broadcast ah. He didn't want to see. And as a result, a sound of rockets scurrying to the sky rang in his ears. Phew, rocket asterisk one. When Lu Qi saw this, his eyes instantly widened. A rocket had actually appeared in his live broadcast. That was a thousand oceans. And there was still 500 even after cutting out half of the amount given to the platform. Thank you, boss, for sending one big rocket. Lu Qi voiced out. Across the live broadcast room, as the screen contracted, dull little sister slowly twirled while spinning in circles. She danced this dance, giving the live streaming water friends all a straight look and straight eyes. The right anchor woman dance performance, coupled with the left tank prospect, is an extremely strong contrast effect, resulting in a crazy influx of newcomers into the live room. He Xiang watched the number of people surge in the background and couldn't wait to dance a section himself. The first time I saw this was when I was a kid, and it was a very good time for me. Everyone help report report report, calling super tubes. The supervisor has three minutes to reach the battlefield. It's not the anchor. Don't dance. Your father is coming. But at this time, Dull little sister has not jumped two minutes, but the pop-up area suddenly popped up a sentence. As a result, dull little sister got close enough to take a look, and was so scared that she immediately took a few steps backward. What? My dad is here? Without saying a word, she immediately found a black curtain from the side and draped it on. Ha! Huh? Holy shit! 
My father-in-law is here? How long did it take for my father-in-law to arrive? Please pay your respects to Xiao Su. My father-in-law's here just in time. Get your ass out of here. I don't think that's an intentional typo upstairs. After a short while, the pop-up area was flooded with lazy people. This picture. Luchi also silently took out his cell phone. Topped with a big name and avatar ran to the beanfish platform to send a pop-up screen. Luchi, good day father-in-law. Ha ha, the main anchor of the god. Not at anchor also come to join in the fun? It's the anchor in real life, isn't it? The anchor how also with us to steal people. There is no justice. However, at this moment, at the bottom of the pop-up area, an account made up of digital gibberish posted a comment. The young man on the left is quite handsome. Likes, JPG, seeing this scene, dull little sister, who had taken the black robe and wrapped it around her body, was truly flustered. Quick, management is there or not? Management come out and kick my dad out of the live room. She shouted, and sure enough, within a few seconds of the management appearing, the garbled account was kicked out of the live room. When the water friends saw this, they were in mourning, and there were even those who were condemning dull little sister's filial death. Who knows that the garbled account was just kicked out of the live room. The pop-up area ran out a subtitle. Reminder to the anchor. Please anchor regulate their clothing. Civilized live broadcast. Please do not expose sensitive parts. After this string of words appeared, dull little sister immediately opened her eyes wide and reached out to point at herself with a face full of disbelief. Super tube? Not me? On what grounds am I? Ah, damn super tube sick right. Opposite the bullets flying no one care, but also burst plasma. I dance a dance you damn warning me? I fucking. Pro, the anchor's live content is suspected of violating the law, and is now in the process of rectification. Dull little sister did not finish her sentence. The screen went black in a second, and this paragraph appeared instead. Super 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 super. Damn, this time is really laugh not live. Grandma's about to give me a laugh into the big exciting. Good niche live content ah. Ha ha ha. Father-in-law to the end of the super tube to come. The old woman does not break the defense or sorry for this wave of operation. We are saying that now really anxious dead me. The screen is black. I want to see the old woman storm the look. In fact, I don't like to laugh, but I can't hold it in unless I really can't hold it in. Ha ha ha. At this moment, a scream came from somewhere inside a high-class housing building. Luchi saw the screen and admitted that this scene was really hard to strain. He could only silently give a nod to Beanfish's super tubes and be thankful that he was the anchor of Tiger's teeth. Otherwise, he would have had to enter the factory midway before the first emperor started his business halfway. He words from the backstage gaze to the dull little sister side was blocked. Do not know how to say is to want to laugh. Can only say that the opposite super tube is a talent. But the live broadcast is still to broadcast. He had to laugh while going to contact the platform. The first few regiments, which had conquered their own positions one after another, were advancing towards Gray's Heights. Ahead is Gray's Heights. Ha ha, my regiment must be the fastest this time. Capturing Gray's Heights is a second class honor for high and low. Speed up your pace. At this moment, a company commander within the 434th regiment was pointing and yelling in the direction ahead. At the same time, a company commander from the 834th tank regiment was leading his team close to the edge of Gray's Heights. Gray's Heights is close at hand. The first one to take them down must be our regiment. Let's go. All speed up. Let's take Gray's Heights with a bang and make a name for our regiment. After saying that, all the tanks in the tank company began to accelerate and scurry forward. There were also soldiers from what was the 771st tank regiment, the 332nd armored regiment, and so on, driving towards Gray's Heights one after another, vowing to take Gray's Heights with their own hands before the others arrived. But unfortunately, all of them were one step behind the 114th tank company. The tanks of the Elena Reserve Tank Company had already been deployed to the 114th Tank Company. Pushkin and Kirill, who had adjusted their condition, returned to Gray's Heights with 10 tanks, ready to accelerate. Pushkin shouted. In an instant, all the tanks pulled up to maximum speed. It's just ahead. It's almost there. Robert, I won't lose this time. Pushkin furrowed his brows, his eyes becoming unusually determined. Receiving Elena's order, the entire army of Grey Hair would encircle Gray's Heights and come to a match. Of course Pushkin wanted to win the match and bring honor to his regiment, and likewise he wanted to avenge his previous defeat. However, the two men also had to feel worried for Lu Qi and the others. After such a long time has passed, I hope Lu Qi and the others are alright. Don't worry, Lu Qi and the others can't fight, but running is probably still possible. Maybe now, they have already run out of Gray's Heights, Pushkin comforted, but as long as they're not dead, even if they're captured, there's still us to rescue them. Keep accelerating. A word came out of his mouth, and the speed of the tank company was still soaring. 
Kirel also felt a bit of panic and silently looked into the distance from his command seat. Just like this the tanks were moving unimpeded on the avenue, and the tank company of Pushkin and Kirill and the others, did not have a little accident, but the further they went on like this, the more strange it made Kirill feel, we've already entered Grace Heights, haven't we? This time, how come no people from Irma or NATO came to stop us? Kirill wondered, through the contact device, Pushkin also took a special look at the radar, there's really no enemy reaction in the vicinity, and it doesn't seem to be detecting anti-tank mines, not an ambush. What's going on here? Feeling puzzled, Pushkin also paid a little more attention, but the tank drove on and went uphill, coming to a position off-center of Grace Heights. Pushkin there, also suddenly received a communication from a member of the tank crew in front. P. Pushkin Company Commander. Hmm, what happened? The big hairy soldier trembled, his eyes looking straight ahead through the lens. Look, look in front of us. Ahead? Pushkin frowned as he skimmed his head and also looked through the lens, squinting at the front. However, this glance alone caused his entire body to freeze in place, his pupils continuing to dilate. This, how is this? Similarly, Kirill, who was sitting in a high command position, had long since become bewildered as well, and his heart was even more shaken. The 114th tank company was currently on a flat field, and all around them, including in the distance, were fires spreading and burning, the charred and blackened bodies of the Ermau soldiers, the crushed and broken armored vehicles, and the tanks that had long been destroyed with black smoke. This picture, like an inferno on earth, was unreservedly presented in front of everyone. Pushkin momentarily hard to believe. Here in the end what happened? Could it be that there were other regiments that had arrived first to have launched an offensive? Not true. He immediately jumped out and made his way to the top of the tank. Company commander, drive forward, Pushkin ordered. Upon hearing this, the group of drivers from the tank company gritted their teeth and continued to pull the lever allowing the tank to move slowly, passing by the fire, he looked at the grass and trees here, the battlefield was a mess, Pushkin observed the ground in disbelief, track marks, he even jumped off the tank in excitement, running his hands over the intricate track marks on the ground, obviously, speaking from his years of experience in driving tanks, this was from one tank, not multiple tanks, and this was the tank that had done the almost impossible variety of turns here, immediately afterward, Pushkin returned to the tank, and the tank company continued forward, passing by the destroyed tanks, even Kirill, a layman, could see that every tank here was an Eagle Sauce M1A2 main battle tank, moreover, there were just about 10 of them, what does 10 M1A2S mean, it means that this is a tank company, and it also means that they are the legendary company in Grace Highland, and now, the legendary company, but the whole army was wiped out, at this point, when Pushkin turned over a tank and found a charred body, he all understood, the whole person has also been unable to say half a word. Pupils are even more shocked, amazed, and a touch of thick awe. Pushkin Company Commander. At this moment, Pushkin didn't reply, but just silently pulled out his walkie-talkie and contacted Elena at the rear. As soon as Elena heard the communication coming from Pushkin, a smile spread across her face. How's it going Pushkin? Is it hard for you guys to believe that you've already taken Grace Heights? There was a hint of anticipation in her tone. Unfortunately, Pushkin just spoke extremely woodenly, took it, oh, really, you guys acted that fast? Receiving the shortcut report, Elena's face was delighted, but next, Pushkin laughed, and his laughter became especially miserable, oh, yeah, taken down, by one person, the viewpoint switches to somewhere else, after Pushkin's tank company arrived, the rest of the regiment entered Grace Heights one after another, however, just as this group of big hairy soldiers finished taunting each other and were excitedly preparing to charge into Grace Heights for a big kill, all of them were startled. Members of several regiments entered Grace Heights from different locations, but the sight before their eyes made their jaws drop. The tragic and dilapidated battlefield was filled with the smell of smoke and death, and there were iron armor wreckage and soldier corpses everywhere. Such a scene, even the battle-hardened Demau soldiers would not be able to help but feel frightened. They all lost, and no regiment present was victorious because at this moment, all the enemy troops on Grace Heights were annihilated. Many company commanders contacted their rear regimental commanders at the first opportunity and informed them of the situation here. And upon receiving this appalling reply, a group of regimental commanders felt equally unbelievable. What the hell is happening on Grace Heights? Chekhov, are you sure it wasn't you who sneaked into Grace Heights and wiped out the NATO tank company? Roll on roll on, of course it wasn't me. I'm confused too. Then who was it? Did you do it, Arnie? How could it be? If my group did it, why didn't I say so? Then what the hell is the situation with this Grey Highlands? It wasn't annihilated by any of our regiments. Can't it be that it's still a friendly army from the Allied countries? 
Big Hair's group of chiefs discussed with red faces, but realized that amongst them, there was no one who admitted that they had routed Grace Heights. Elena, on the other hand, was leaning against the corner, her brows knitted together. When she contacted Pushkin earlier, the other party ended up saying a bunch of unknown words and hung up the contact after that. This made Elena unusually strange. He would never dare to do something like this before. Coming coming coming, the frontline battle report has been checked out. Suddenly right at this moment, a Daimao intelligence officer hurriedly arrived at the Daimao Reserve Command Post, and his words instantly attracted the attention of a group of chiefs. What's going on? What did you find out over at Grace Heights? Yes, it's... That big hairy intelligence officer gasped for air and said in a trembling voice, it was a T-80 main battle tank that entered Grace Heights. Then, with just one vehicle, it annihilated all the enemy forces on Grace Heights. Hearing this, all the captains present stared wide-eyed, as if to say do you see me as a retard? Why are you making up novels for me to listen to every day? What do you mean? Are you kidding me? You're telling me about a tank that wiped out all the enemy forces on Grace Heights? One of the grumpy captains just spoke out, but was pulled back by the person next to him. Wait don't rush first, let him finish. In the corner, Elena also curiously came up. These are all frontline battle reports. There's absolutely no mistake, the big hairy intelligence officer affirmed. The ones driving the T-80 tanks are Zack from the 771st Regiment, Lev from the 123rd Regiment, and Maros and Luchi from the 1323rd Regiment. Among them, Luchi of the 1323rd Regiment is the main gunner, and the success of this battle should also be maneuvered by him. Upon knowing the answer, all of the captains present chose to remain silent. They looked at each other in disbelief, and they all saw a look of shock in each other's eyes. Who would believe this kind of thing when it was said? A big hairy T-80 tank that actually penetrated deep into the rear of the enemy army, wiped out all the enemy forces on Grace Heights, including the M1A2 tank company. That is known as one of the strongest companies in NATO. But, in fact, just when we contacted the company commander under our command, the other party had already reported many things. For example, judging from the traces at the scene, there was indeed only one tank passing through the area. In other words, the intelligence reported by the intelligence officer was 80% true. Who is this soldier called Lu Qi? Why have I never heard of him? With his leadership, he was able to wipe out all the enemy forces on Grace Heights. How did this happen? The regiment leaders were shocked. But just then, someone had a slight impression of Lu Qi. Eh, I have a slight impression of this Lu Qi from the 1323rd Regiment. Wasn't he the only special grade merit winner in the previous stronghold clash? You mean the one who helped our army take down multiple Lerma strongholds with his own strength? Wait, I have an impression too. It's him? How is that possible? That is to say, this is the second time he's done this kind of anticlimactic thing? Talking about this, quite a few of the chiefs remembered the name. And even Elena had a few interests in it. No, this matter must be reported to the Legion chief. It's a matter of great importance. I even want to personally meet this soldier called Lu Qi. In an instant, a group of Legion chiefs argued together. Elena frowned and thought, she seemed to have heard Pushkin mention this person. This also made her, in her heart, silently memorize this name. Undeniably, Pushkin was definitely considered the pinnacle of the pinnacles within a group of tankers. But even he wasn't a match for the M1A2 tank company, and that soldier called Lu Qi was able to take the victory by himself. Someone who could do such a thing was worthy of Elena's record. And the route of Grace Heights didn't just affect Ermao's side. At Ermao's rear command post, Yak's entire body was about to explode. What did you say? What the hell did you say to me again? He was angrily reprimanding one of the Ermo messengers, who, as always, bowed his head and dared not answer. You mean tell me, Grace Heights, a full dozen armored vehicles, 10 M1A2 main battle tanks, and a host of our soldiers, and yet, they were wiped out, completely, by a dime a dozen T-80 main battle tank? When he said the last few words, Yak's eyes widened and his voice trembled. Grey Heights, but Irma's biggest strategic location in Avgiev. Once it was taken by the enemy forces, it would also mean that Avgiev was completely lost. He had countless times thought about the scene of fighting back and finally failing, but how could he not expect that the army would be completely destroyed by AT-80? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Commander, the frontline battle report is absolutely not wrong, and we've also found out that the one who caused this incident was a recruit from the 1323rd Regiment in Dimao, named Lu Qi. At these words, Yak slightly skimmed his head and looked at him with an almost strange look. Lu Qi, wasn't this the last time, with his own strength, he had captured multiple strategic locations for Damao, the one who not only seconded their ace sniper, but also caused them to suffer heavy losses? Damn it, why him again? How did he, 
a new recruit, know how to drive a tank, Yak was completely taught, what a thing to say, he could only feel his face burning now, can't, send the air force, go mobilize the air force for me, carpet bomb Grace Heights, and by the way, bomb the military base as well, hurry, Yak made a serious decision after deep thought, he was going to carry out an airstrike on Grace Heights, this was the last strategy and the strategy of last resort, of course the most important thing was to make sure that he blew up Lu Chi, this was because Yak sensed that if he didn't eliminate him before it was too late, at some point in the future, he would probably become a difficult opponent for his side already, back on the side of Lu Chi and the others, they had parked in front of the military base and entered it to scavenge, the people realized that there were really a lot of things in this military base, and there were even a variety of heavy weapons, however, Lu Chi wasn't paying attention, he was still messing around with his live broadcast, after dull little sister's side was blocked, she contacted the platform staff and quickly unblocked it again, the two then did some maneuvering and prepared to go live again, the old woman is back, the old woman is back, what the hell, what's wrong with the old woman, why is she still cozying up to the snake haired banshee, you're laughing at me, goddamn snake haired banshee, shocked, brothers, I'm shocked to see a snake haired banshee across the street, the identity is not yet known, as soon as the two sides were connected, the water friends started singing again, at this time, dull little sister was a cloaked figure, one of her hairs was tossed aside haphazardly, and some of them were twisted into twists, how to put it, it was like Sadako who had just crawled out of the TV, and when she saw the pop-ups, she once again tensed up, it's the snake-haired banshee across from you, your opposite side is full of snake-haired banshees, annoying as hell, ultra ah, how directly to the old woman dry degradation, I don't care about this, I'll take the blame, I can't do it, I think the old woman's brain might be damaged, is this a workplace injury? Dull little sister took a deep breath to keep herself calm and smoothed her cloaked hair upwards. After being messed up by these two sets of Luchi, she had really broken her defense, but she wasn't convinced. If she lost once, why did she lose every time? The most critical thing is, after losing, she still has to be punished. After the punishment, the super pipe still comes. What kind of sins have been suffered ah? Luchi, is Luchi here? Let's play another round. I'll be damned. The old woman hasn't learned her lesson. She still wants to gamble? What's the old woman thinking? She's lost two bets in a row and she's still coming? If you like to dance, why are you being so coy about it? Lu Chi heard this and immediately turned the screen on himself. Yes, what else do you want to bet on? Lu Chi felt that this live broadcast was absolutely effective. So of course it was impossible to refuse. On the contrary, when dull little sister heard Lu Chi agree, she immediately brightened up. Bet for another half an hour. How about shooting down an airplane within half an hour? If you complete it, feel free to make any request you want. And if you can't complete it, feel free to make any request I want. When these words were uttered, the water friends brushed up their pop-ups. I go, old woman this what task? This is not purely difficult to people? Half an hour to shoot down an airplane. I feel that the old woman is not light angry began to say nonsense. Ha ha, the anchor is a tank. How can a tank hit an airplane? Can't you use a gun to hit it? There's one thing to say the anchor can't hit the plane, I can hit the plane ah, that, in fact, I can participate in this bet, knowing this mission objective, Luchi was also a bit surprised, as he looked around, there really wasn't anything that could hit an airplane, similarly the live streamers felt that this mission was complete nonsense, to shoot down an airplane in half an hour, not to mention whether or not you can find something to shoot it down, it's a question of whether or not you can meet one, after all, the airplanes were all flying in the sky and were simply invisible to the naked eye, but Lu Chi thought about it, but agreed immediately, one airplane in half an hour, that's fine, when these words came out, the water friends in the live broadcast room were puzzled, really, anchor promised, half an hour in airplane ah, no, what does the anchor take to hit the plane, there is no airplane here, yes, not even an anti-aircraft gun, how can this be shot down, even the little sister didn't expect, she just casually said something, Lu Chi actually really agreed to it, for a moment, she felt extraordinarily shocked. There were neither airplanes nor anti-aircraft guns or anything like that here. It could be said that it was a completely dead problem. And no matter how the whole thing was done, it couldn't be accomplished. Dull little sister wondered if Lu Chi had intentionally let her do it once. But it doesn't matter. It's good to win. She only hoped that Lu Chi would send it quickly so that she could experience what it means to win once again. As for the other side, Pujanashi was working with Kirill, heading in the direction of the central base. Everything that had happened along the way had long since made Pushkin realize what had happened. He hadn't expected that Luchi had actually wiped out all the enemy forces on Grace Heights with his own strength. Originally, 
He was still worried that Lu Qi and the others would not return once they went to Grace Heights. As a result, the facts proved everything. Pushkin, as the company commander of the heroic tank company, at one point thought that he had no enemies. In the army, is also the existence of everyone can be admired, can be said to be compared to the rich and handsome. However, when he met the M1A2 company, he was beaten to the bone and could only lead the team to withdraw in a mess. But Lu Qi and the others do not need a tank company. Only a T-80 main battle tank, or battle-damaged version, actually will M1A2 company completely annihilated, together with the soldiers. The gap between the two, words are not enough to show, also let Pushkin for the first time, feel how small he is. Even his scorned opponent Robert in front of Lu Qi, perhaps just a passing NPC. As for Kirill next to him, he felt deeply, as early as when he knew Lu Qi, he had been shocked by the other party once. Himself, an excellent sniper in the army, was like a baby in front of him. Crick, who was treated as a strong enemy, was killed in seconds by Lu Qi's one-handed pressure sniper. Ugh, the two of them sighed, practically feeling sorry for each other. Ah 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 But suddenly, an engine roar sounded as the company traveled on its way. Pushkin's thoughts were interrupted, and he subconsciously looked in the direction from which the sound came. In the clouds? Not only Pushkin, Moros also detected the sound in the clouds. Immediately afterward, this sound was getting closer and closer, and seemed to be whistling right in front of his ears. This sound is, no good, it's a bomber, Pushkin suddenly shouted, resulting in the next second several bombers swooped in from the clouds. The crowd understood that it should be the other side that had learned the news and sent bombers over to try to swing Grace Heights as a way to minimize losses, pull up the speed to the maximum, head towards the middle of Grace Heights, there's a base there where we can temporarily hide. At Pushkin's command, the pilots started to increase their speed one after another. Although they understood that the base there was a key bombing target, the rest of the place had no cover at all. Without running towards the base, the risk of death would only increase. With that, the bombs dropped by the bombers had already fallen towards the ground. In just an instant, the ground was bombarded with explosions. Pushkin's tank company weaved through the rain of bombs, desperately moving forward against the thick smoke. Elsewhere, soldiers from various regiments had also moved into Grace Heights, just not deeper. But Irmo had dispatched dozens of bombers this time. Carpet bombing Grace Heights, not even sparing the fringe locations. So when the bombs fell, all the regiments on Irmo's side suffered large casualties. Damn it, Irmo's bombers have blocked the back road. Call for backup support first and request assistance from our air force. All companies follow my orders. Follow me forward. There are bunkers at the central base. The company commanders were in a hurry and led their respective companies to prepare to run to the central base. With the back roads locked up. Only the central base had stronger defenses and could briefly block the bombers and wait for the air force to rescue them. On the other hand, the Big Mao Reserve Strategic Command also received the news from Grace Heights. What? Ermao sent bombers to bomb Grace Heights? Bastard. Our army's main forces are now all concentrated in that location. Quickly go call for air force support and rush to Grace Heights immediately. Several regimental chiefs acted quickly and had already quickly contacted the air force. There were also several other captains who stepped forward and stated that they wanted to make a trip to the front line. Wait, I'll go with you guys too. At this time, Elena walked out, and the chiefs who were about to go to the front line looked at each other, then nodded in unison. All right, on the contrary, the central base where Lu Qi and the others were located was similarly attacked by bombers. When the sound of breaking air rang out, the waterbenders were shocked. Is this mouth of mine really enlightened? There won't really be an airplane coming. Brothers look at the sky. It's not just any airplane. I'm super. That's a bomber. Right? Are they dropping bombs? In the clouds, three bombers suddenly showed up and started dropping bombs towards the central base. Dull little sister was once again dumbfounded. She now suspected that Lu Qi still had some kind of luck hanging over him. Before, halfway through, he hadn't even encountered a bomber attack. As a result, as soon as he said that he had hit an airplane, the bombers flew over right after he finished. However, it wasn't until the bombs fell that Lu Qi and the others realized that there were actually bombers coming over. Quickly enter the base, Lev shouted. With that, Lu Qi and the others dove headfirst into the depths of the base. Bombs poured down around the base, and explosions continued to ring in their ears. Damn it, why did Ermao and NATO's bombers suddenly descend? Is there a possibility that Ermao's side knew about the situation here and sent bombers to try to level this place? During the time that several people were discussing, the building outside had already begun to collapse in a big way. Good news, the airplanes have really appeared. Bad news, it's a fucking bomber. Hard to bandage. This also play a Koen Mawa. Anchor is not intentionally let the old woman's. Now seems not to be able to bring down the plane problem. 
Is the anchor out of the estimated to be bombed to death it? Finished ah, will not finally give the old woman to win a game, right? I don't want to let the old woman win a game. I might as well kill me. This scene was so exciting for little sister dull. She had actually thought about whether or not Lu Chi would come up with another heaven-defying maneuver. But in this situation, he was blocked in the doorway. Once he went out, he had to send, let alone shoot down the plane. And no equipment. It is difficult not to take a gun to fight not? We are blocked inside. This central base won't last long. Sooner or later it will collapse. We can't take the tanks out. We'll be used as a live target. Quickly find out if there is anything in the base that can be used. Moros and the others, dove headfirst into the base warehouse. But at this time Lu Chi thought of something. Help me find if there are any armor-piercing bullets. All types of armor-piercing bullets. Find them all. Hearing Lu Chi's words, a few people were first stunned. But after a little thought, he immediately agreed. Good. As time passed, all parties had been getting closer and closer to Grey Heights, or the Grey Heights Central Base. Elena and the others' jeeps had already arrived not far from Grey Highlands. As she squinted slightly, she could vaguely see a layer of dark clouds, and bombers hovering in the sky. There were also fighters from her own side, already drilling into Grey's Heights airspace, and on Pushkin's and Kirill's side, both observed the outline of the Central Base. Quick, that's it. Let's accelerate over there. As for the backup army, it was equally tight and slow, following closely just a kilometer behind Pushkin and the others. Time passed quickly, and it wasn't long before the 10-minute countdown to the mission was underway. Over the central base, the pilot of a bomber wore sunglasses on his head and was full of pleasure. Yes, what an easy mission. Ha ha, they can't hold them off any longer. The three bombers took turns bombing, but they were unaware that Lu Chi was already properly prepared. Lu Chi, what do you need armor-piercing bombs for? In the base, all the armor-piercing bullets were placed in front of Lu Chi. With a casual sweep, he knew which armor-piercing bullet was applicable, and so he immediately loaded the bullet onto his AMW. Then, the crowd watched in confusion as Lu Chi turned around and walked towards the outside of the base. At this moment, no one had reacted yet, but in the next second Moros directly stared with wide eyes, full of dismay. He can't be going. Obviously, when looking at the other two, Zack and Lev also realized what Lu Chi was going to do. He was going to fucking shoot an airplane with a sniper rifle. Lu Chi, wait, the crowd hurriedly followed. What, what is the anchor going to do? Ha ha, the anchor won't really use a sniper rifle to shoot airplanes. Will he? Sniper rifle to hit the airplane. Good work ah, there is our northeast Shenyang that got us style. The live streamers are still flirting with each other. And there are some people who brush up the question mark. But it is obvious that they are not clear that Lu Chi is really going to do that. Even dull little sister was only slightly tilting her head with a confused look on her face, only to see that the moment Lu Chi stepped out of the base, he obediently handed over his cell phone to Moros for safekeeping. He himself took a few steps forward before setting up his sniper and aiming. In an instant, this action stunned everyone in the live broadcast room, including dull little sister. Really? Lu Chi actually really want to use a sniper rifle to hit the airplane? At this moment, the water friends all feel that Lu Chi is mostly crazy, or they themselves are crazy. But the sniper rifle to hit the airplane is not impossible. According to Lu Chi's understanding, during what was once World War II, the snipers in the Orange Cats family had tried shooting airplanes with sniper rifles. It's not unfeasible, but it depends on what bullets are used and how much difference in accuracy. And at that moment, Lu Chi's actions caught the attention of the other pilot. Ha ha, a bit of fun. With a turnaround, he was ready to dive over towards Lu Chi's side. Who would have thought that Lu Chi had already finished locking on? and with his finger gently pulling the trigger, an armor-piercing bullet shot straight out. The bullet cut through the air, and a heat wave rose up around it, wrapping it forward. The powerful penetrating force was precisely aimed at the bomber's fuel tank. At this moment, Pushkin and Kirill, as well as many of the Great Mao soldiers had arrived at the scene. Under everyone's almost shocked gaze, the bullet hit the bomber's fuel tank and quickly penetrated through. In only a few moments, the airplane's wing burst into flames and tilted over along the right side. The pilot was horrified. No matter how much he pulled the plane to turn, it was still crashing towards his teammates. What? There's a hang up. Oh, no. Rumble dash. The two airplanes crashed together in flight, and a strong explosion played in midair, blossoming into a brilliant firework. Immediately following the parcel of fiery flames, the main body and wreckage of the airplanes fell from high altitude one after another. When this scene actually appeared in front of their eyes, no matter if it was the water friends in the live broadcasting room or dull little sister, all of them were dumbfounded. She stared at this unbelievable scene with her eyes fixedly open. This is, really hit down? Pushkin and Kirill, who had rushed to the scene, 
were even more dumbfounded. The filler in the tank who was responsible for loading Pushkin's ammunition couldn't stop poking him with his finger. That company commander, are you sure that this is the person we're rescuing this time? Pushkin didn't say anything, not because he didn't want to, but his face froze completely. What had he even seen? Lucci took a sniper rifle and shot the airplane down? Was he not awake himself? On the contrary, Kirill, after two seconds of immersion, shook his head as if relieved. He then smiled lightly, not bad for him ah. As a fellow sniper, it wasn't that Kirill wasn't excited at the moment, just the opposite. He was already so excited that he didn't know what to say. After all, only those who were in the same profession could best understand the ability of the same profession. If this scene was to be compared, then in Kirill's eyes, it would be equivalent to someone imitating Nuwa mending the sky in front of him. It could be said that the impact of Luchi's shot was too great. The ornamental pull was full and the practicality was huge, directly preventing the destruction of the central base. So much so that all the surrounding big hairy soldiers, with their mouths wide open in unison, even forgot that there was an enemy plane flying above them as they watched. Also far away beyond Grace Heights, Elena and the others also saw the scene in front of them. That's what one of the leaders said in a trembling voice. Elena narrowed her eyes slightly, waves likewise rising in her heart. Someone shot down one of Irma's airplanes, but who did it? They clearly weren't carrying anti-aircraft equipment, gazing at a ball of fire that was falling rapidly. The hearts of several people were all uneven. Solely they conferred and looked at each other. Communicate to the headquarters first. Thus, when the two colliding airplanes completely transformed into wreckage and crashed to the ground, Lu Qi also ejected the shells and retrieved his sniper rifle. The few people behind him, on the other hand, were looking at him with inhuman eyes. Levin Zach's throats rolled, and Maros felt his heart was about to jump out of his chest. He had known Lu Qi for the earliest time, and had previously felt that he wouldn't react too much to anything he did. As a result, he casually mentioned that he would take a flight down. The end of the Luchi really down the airplane? Take or a sniper rifle? This kind of thing. Forgive the baptized Moros. Also really give dry will not be. So that he once again refreshed the three views. What's wrong with this world? You guys evolved without me? Am I really the only primitive? How about this? Does this count as completing the mission? Luchi suddenly said to the live broadcast. Brother Mo, I feel like I'm mostly blind. And I'm actually seeing hallucinations. Bro, you're not blind. You should go see a brain doctor. I can't be cured by the brain department. I should go to the psychiatric department. I feel that the world is a huge hang-up. This is so tense. It's too much for an anti-Japanese drama, isn't it? The hand-tearing ghosts is not as exciting as this. The anchor really hit the plane with a gun, and he shot it down? Who said it was down? Two planes at once. Dull little sister looked at the live screen, slowly tilted her head, and her eyelids could not stop twitching. From this moment on, she finally understood why there were so many gamblers who bought cigarettes and didn't take the stairs or the elevator. She was truly convinced. Really can't gamble anymore. Look at what the other side has done. Used a sniper rifle and shot down an airplane? Oh no. Two at once. I'm convinced. I'm really convinced. After saying that, dull little sister also did not know where to pull out a white flag, holding it on one side and shaking it. The water friends saw this and clapped their hands. The old woman actually took the initiative to surrender. Rare. It's simply a historic moment of victory. The anchor will be recorded in history. Ha ha, I reckon that after today, the old woman will never want to see the anchor again. Agreed. As the water friends said, after today's passage, the dull little sister never want to see Lu Qi again. It's not that there's anything wrong with Lu Qi, it's just that she wants to be quiet. The first thing I want to do is to get out of the house and get out of the house. At this moment, when he saw two of his teammates crashed and died, the last remaining bomber was ready to leave without saying a word. He wasn't the kind of fool who had to go up and arm wrestle with others when he saw that they were powerful. But unfortunately, he had no chance to leave even if he wanted to, because the Great Mao Air Force had already arrived at the battlefield. And when he contacted his teammates, he realized that a few Great Mao fighters in front of him had already encircled over. No. Witnessing a plane fall in the sky, the threat was being gradually lifted. And the loss of Grace Heights meant that the defeat of the Irmo was irrevocable. And Avdiev would fall completely. Returning to their senses, Pushkin and Kirill finally approached Lu Qi. Seeing them disembark their tanks, Moros and the others lit up. Kirill, Pushkin, you guys came over as well? Several people quickly greeted them. Yeah, we just got here not long ago. After the two of them said a few words, Pushkin immediately looked at Lu Qi. Lu Qi, these battles you fought were really beautiful. I believe that after this battle, it won't take long for you to gain the honor of surpassing me, Pushkin said with incomparable certainty. Thank you for your appreciation. Lu enabled replied in fluent Russian. 
Both Sack and Lev were clear that it was thanks to Lu Qi that they had made it all the way here and accomplished these feats, and were even still alive. Without him, when they entered Grace Heights, it was impossible to say that a few of them would have turned into ashes. That's right I remembered. The old woman punishment hasn't been done yet. Didn't you say that if the anchor wins, he'll fulfill an arbitrary condition? Ha 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 ha. I can't do it. Brother Meng you all said to give me excited up. Anchor quickly mentioned the conditions, or the old woman to flash screen to run away. What do you mean? Do I look like the kind of person who would run away? Dull little sister pointed at herself and righteously said, but I'm a recoil fighter. Dancing definitely won't work anymore ah. I'll have to be locked up for a month if I jump into the small dark room again later. Hearing dull little sister speak like this, the water friends chimed in. What do you mean? How can an old woman still not be able to play? Said it was okay to ask for whatever you want. Why are you playing hard to get now? The child is really hungry ah. The old woman does not show down my brother how to do? Or the old woman can do a squat or something. It's okay to exercise. No. Dumb little sister bite dead. Not go also do not recognize. Anyway, just do not do physical action. At this time, Luchi leaned over to the screen. Don't 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 brothers. It's a bit much. Not dancing is actually fine. Ha. Huh? Hearing Lu Qi's words, not only dull little sister, even the live streaming water friends were shocked. When did Lu Qi become like this? The opportunity to casually make a request to dull little sister. Ah, once in a lifetime. He actually did not grasp it at all? Let's put it this way. How about we just play a random game? If you lose, you'll dance. And if you win, it'll be the end of the bet. Little Miss Dull sniffed, and for a moment wondered if Lu Qi really had a clear conscience. Or was there a fraud? A great opportunity, but actually being screwed over for her? What game? Dull little sister asked tentatively. Just I'll come up with a few questions. You answer them, and all correct answers count as success. Hearing this, dull little sister frowned. It seemed to sound pretty good. At least it was better than another dance. Alright then, she immediately agreed. Ha, huh, what kind of gray machine is the anchor doing? Didn't we agree to be black fans together? Why did the anchor turn against us on the verge of a fight? It's over. Now the good guy is really for the anchor. I become a clown. Traitor I traitor. Luchi did not pay attention. Just cleared his throat and began to ask questions. You listen well ah. Uh. The first question. What is the name of the statue that usually appears in the desert? Dull little sister was puzzled. Then said in a slow voice. It can't be called a sand sculpture. Right? Eh? Right answer. Isn't that a simple question? Dull little sister blinked her eyes. Not realizing that it was really called sand sculpture. The corners of her mouth rose slightly. Feeling as if the question wasn't that hard? Next question. A woman's beauty alone is called as? Self-beauty. Pretty. Keep it coming. A chick is on a horse. She would be. Chick horse. Snap. Awesome. So what do we always say? What is the general name for the interaction of people's hearts and minds? Heart to heart interactions. Dull little sister blurted out excitedly. Almost standing straight up. Oh, but at this moment, Luchi cocked his head and looked at her with a puzzled expression. Dull little sister froze for half a second, not yet reacting to what had gone wrong. But when she thought more carefully, a pair of pupils instantly dilated. Not Lu Chi. I fucking. You. Pro. The anchor's live content is suspected of vulgarity violation, is now being rectified. Then, dull little sister's live room was sealed again. I'm super yada 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 dash. What kind of talent is the yardstick anchor? I'm so fucking happy. I laughed at the whole thing. Ha ha ha. What is the interaction between the human mind? I can't help it. The anchor is the biggest fan of the girl. Really? I saw the calmness and composure of the old generation of artists in the anchor. This is great. The old woman's live room has been blocked for a month. Everyone here has a responsibility. A sentence. Let dull little sister live room sealed for a month. Water friends directly choose to hair epilepsy. He words in the background to see the situation. Also cannot help but laugh out loud. Luchi's live was really a whole lot of work. Can the dull little sister continuously dry broken defense three times? Only Lu Qi. Looking at his live room, the gifts were going crazy. But some people are happy and some people are sad. In an unknown place, perhaps at this moment there is a person in the wailing. After that, Lu Qi and the others rested at the central base. Not a moment later, they finally contacted the head of the group. Nikolai. Lu Qi. I've heard about everything. You guys did a great job this time. You guys just stay in Grace Heights. Avdiev Zermal army has been completely routed. There will be other people to take care of it. Someone has been sent from the rear to pick you up. They'll be here soon. During the conversation with Nikolai, he seemed especially excited, as if he couldn't wait to see Lu Qi immediately. However, Nikolai's excitement was not without a reason. 
The heaven-defying things that Lu Qi had done had already been reported from the rear strategic command center to the group commander. It could even be said that he was the biggest contributor to the Abdiya victory. When Nikolai first learned of this news, he couldn't mention how excited he was. He had no qualms about immediately reporting the news to the group commander. Perhaps by this time, that side had already received the news. Understood. Then I'll wait here first, Lu Qi replied. He also had to marvel at the organizer's intentions. Knowing that he was tired of playing, he just made a quick mention of it later on, letting him just rest where he was. Sure enough, this Da Mao trip was simply worth it. And as for Pushkin's side, he also received a message from his own leader. Pushkin, Abdiev was a great success, so stay in Grace Heights and rest for now. There will be a group of people coming to pick you up soon. You can just return directly. Pushkin nodded and affirmed. Understood. Head Elena. Elena sighed. She had already returned to the reserve strategy post at this moment, and also understood what had happened through the frontline battle report. Now, all she wanted to do was to meet the soldier named Lu Qi. Then the communication hung up, and the several waves of people all stayed in the center of Grey's Heights to recuperate and wait for Demao to pick up there. After Grey Heights was occupied, only a few places of Irmao's soldiers were left still struggling hard. As for the rear, Yak, the second group army chief who learned of the frontline battle report, had already begun to doubt life. What do you mean? That big hairy soldier called Lu Qi, with one sniper, just one snipe, just took down our 2160 bomber, or two of them together? The intelligence officer in front of him trembled, glancing up at Yak every now and then. That, yeah, legionnaire, the frontline battle report is true. The military base in Grace Heights could have been blown up. Who knows? That big hairy soldier named Lu Qi, used a sniper to shoot down two of our bombers, causing, causing the mission to fail. Yak's eyes widened and he tilted his head gently, an expression of do you see what I believe. He could understand one person wiping out several companies, and he could understand a tank drying out a tank company. But to take a broken sniper and bring down two bombers, what the hell does that mean? Yak was still saying that this was like the monkey king going to hell, tearing up the king of hell's book of life and death, and in the end giving the king of hell's own aunt and uncle a hundred years of life expectancy. Does that make sense? This fucking unreasonable ah. Yak didn't hold back at all and roared out directly at his subordinates. The intelligence officer shuddered and lifted his eyes and spoke in a low voice. That commander, this is still quite reasonable. After all, they are both primates, so they are considered relatives by a wide margin. Yak frowned, his breathing stuttering. A great victory on the Irmo front. As the officer of the second group army of Irmo, Yak was definitely not feeling well. But Kudri, who served as the chief of the first army group of the Great Mao, couldn't help but straighten his back after learning a series of news. The victory at Abdiev was a key point in the winning of the general strategy of the Great Mao. By taking this piece of land, a number of cities on the Irmo front would be encircled. This meant that once Abdiev was lost, more than just one city would be lost. As the commander-in-chief of the group army attacking the Abdiev area, Kudri was naturally very happy. At the same time, he received many communications from the group commanders, as well as an invitation letter from Nikolai. Awesome. Checking the battle reports sent from the front, Kudri could only dissolve into amazement. Multiple Irmao companies were completely wiped out. Grace Heights was killed and wounded by a single tank, and the entire M1A2 tank company was even killed in action. There were even two Irmao Su-160 bombers that were shot down by a sniper rifle. And the person who did all these things, or who led the crowd to do all these things, pointed to Lu Qi. This was a name that Kudri couldn't be more familiar with. He had thought that Lu Qi's last operation had been a thousand years in the making to the point where even those who came after him would not be able to surpass it. Unexpectedly, just after the full-scale attack on Avgiev, he had created a number of great achievements and unbreakable records. For example, a single gun pressure 10 riders, only one tank, the NATO proud of the M1A2 tank company wiped out. Another example, take a sniper rifle, hard one shot will be two bombers down, resulting in heavy losses of Irmao. In the process, Irmao's strategic plan was destroyed by him step by step and a large number of sacrifices were avoided by the Big Mao soldiers because of him. These are things that have most likely never been done before, and may not even have been done before. There were also many military geniuses in the Kudri army, such as Elena and Pushkin. They were all young enough to sit in high positions and create notable feats for Demao. But compared to what Lu Qi had done, it was like a morning star hitting an ancient star, or the earth touching a black hole. The difference was hard to estimate. Thinking of this, Kudri immediately picked up the communication phone next to him. Nikolai, yes, it's me, there's something I want to inform you about. That's right, I want to give him a lieutenant colonel rank, I think he deserves it. Kudri's words directly shocked Nikolai for a hundred years. Through the phone, 
His voice was trembling. Okay, I understand. Kudri nodded, then put down the phone with satisfaction. He felt that although it was still too early, the Luchi at this moment was definitely qualified enough. After all, with such excellent leadership skills, Kudri couldn't let it go to waste and had to be drilled up. On the other side, the Ermao army was defeated, and Yak had already announced a retreat. It was a foregone conclusion that the whole of Adiv would gradually come under the control of the Ermao. The Ermao army has retreated. The NATO soldiers have collapsed and fled. It's us who've won. We've taken Avgev. Ula. At once, the clamor resounded everywhere. There at the central base, Pushkin wanted to think about finding Luchi and the others. Lev. Luchi. Sag. In a moment, the people sent from the rear to pick me up will be arriving soon. Do you guys want to come with me? Ha. Huh? Lev. Who was sitting and resting raised his head with a surprised face. This, is it okay? As a senior veteran, Lev naturally knew well that officers had some privileges, especially heroic officers like Pushkin. For example, when the battle was over and everyone else was cleaning up the battlefield, he had a special car or plane to pick him up and drop him off. It's okay, and Moros, you all come along. I'll talk to the people picking me up. They won't refuse. At this time, Luchi and the others also paid attention. Pushkin. That's really appreciated, Zack spoke up. After entering the front line so many times, he had never experienced officer treatment before. Of course, Pushkin wasn't actually aimless. He recognized himself as inferior to Lu Qi, and was sure that the other party's future position would never be below his own. Now using the position to take him for a ride, he could also more or less have a friendship. Hoo hoo hoo. Just as a few people were chatting, a sudden sound of a propeller spinning resounded behind them. The crowd jerked back to look and a military armed straight aircraft was approaching this way. Oh, it's already here. Pushkin stepped forward and waved at the helicopter. Levzak and the others also got up quickly, but Luchi was still busy with his live broadcast. Brothers, today's live broadcast is almost over. Tomorrow live broadcast daily. Lifetime to watch the video. Temporarily to be determined. Anchor 886. Another long night. Anchor I'm leaving. From now on your world doesn't have me. Don't think about me. Anchor, Anchor, how can I live without you? Anchor I'm leaving for an underage refund. Lu Chi laughed, then smoothly turned off the live broadcast. In front of the big hair helicopter, has slowly parked in front of the leaning crowd, a man wearing a big hair uniform out of it. Not only Levzak, even Pushkin did not expect. The rear will actually send a helicopter to pick them up this time. I guess this great victory was significant and the commanders were in a good mood. Hello, my name is Pushkin. Seeing this, Pushkin quickly greeted the man and walked forward. These are my comrades. If it's convenient, bring them along. I, he said while extending his hand, just about to shake hands with the big hairy soldier who came up to him. Who would have thought that the other party would just walk right past him as if he didn't hear him? Pushkin immediately frowned. Lev and Zack and the others were equally filled with strangeness. Wasn't this the person that Big Mao came to pick them up? But immediately afterward, that Big Mao soldier walked all the way to Lu Chi's side as if he had already locked onto his target and revealed a smiling face. Lieutenant Lu Chi, how are you? Suddenly, he gave a standard corporal salute. I've come to take you back by order of the group army general commander. Please board the plane with us. In this instant, when this scene was revealed, the crowd was dumbfounded with small eyes. Lev looked at Lu Chi with a puzzled look. He seemed to have just heard some word right. Lieutenant, it was the fucking word right? But at this moment, Lu Chi looked at the helicopter and cocked his head again. He seemed to understand. Just as Moros had said, Real Life CS had to be perfectly reproduced in order to be immersive. The organizer was playing with Koss again, and for the sake of his real life experience as a tourist, a helicopter was driven and Luchi really cried to death. Lieutenant Luchi, the commander especially wants to meet you. Come with us. Yes, yes. Then can we bring them along as well? After thinking about it Luchi immediately snapped. The Irma soldier sniffed and looked back at Pushkin and the others. No problem, he replied with a smile. At this moment, the few people present were all confused. At the same time, only a whirring sound of an engine was heard. A big hairy armored car in the distance was approaching at an extremely fast speed. When he came to a complete stop and the big mouse soldiers inside stepped out, Pushkin instantly recognized an acquaintance. Company Commander Pushkin, Chief Elena asked me to pick you up. Get in. Obviously at this moment, Pushkin was completely understanding. That Wushu wasn't here to pick him up at all. This armored vehicle was, even worse, Luchi wasn't just an ordinary soldier. He had the rank of lieutenant, a higher rank than himself. Lev and Zack, both of them, were equally overwhelmed with horror, especially Lev. He now wanted to spit on Luchi. Why didn't you say earlier that you had the rank of lieutenant? After all this time, 
he wasn't a new recruit. His rank was even higher than Pushkin. Unfortunately, he didn't dare to open his mouth to spit. Because of his grandmother's previous and the troop carrier, he actually already scolded his own officer once. Is this logical? Luchi looked like a new recruit, with his boyish face and youthful demeanor. Who would have thought that was actually an officer? With such a high position, the key to move, he is really not weak at all ah. Along the way Lev really feel what is called terror. Next to Zack is also this feeling. He did not expect Lu Chi Young have such a high position. He didn't expect Lu Chi to be in such a high position at such a young age. So they all took the officer as a new recruit. The two thought about this and couldn't help but suck in a breath of cool air. They felt that this was the most shocking thing they had ever done in their lives. However, Moros and Kirill, who had known that Lu Chi had a military rank from the beginning, were slightly more calm. Moreover, they estimated that when they went back this time, there was a possibility that Lu Chi's position would rise a little bit more. Thanks, the two replied in fluent Russian. On the contrary, Pushkin looked at the Wuji and then at his armored vehicle. He was completely speechless from Lu Chi's astonishment. Forget it, you guys better go back. The big hairy soldier who drove here saw this and cocked his head in confusion. With that, the side door of the helicopter opened, and Lev and Zack, among several others, trembled as they followed Lu Chi inside. The helicopter flew all the way back to the rear, and Kudri wanted to find Lu Chi, but there was no rush. After all, he had just been involved in a battle, and rest was essential. Before returning to the base, Lu Chi casually took a picture on the helicopter with a text sent to Fire Voice. MVP settlement picture. The bottom provoked a lot of comments. Brothers, comment on not being glassy-eyed. Picture. JPG, helped you guys speed up zero. 13 have private laughter. He 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 he. Pick up or not pick up ah, and then do not pick up I have to be on the go. Yama, JPG, escape to here, there should be no village people, right? Facing the hanging wall, swinging is the right choice. After Luchi browsed through Fire Voice's private comments, he quickly turned to the live broadcast backstage. Taking a quick look, a live broadcast took in almost $30,000 in revenue. If he didn't remove half of what he gave to the platform, it could be said that there were 60, 000 gifts credited in a single day. As a matter of fact, Luchi felt that he still had to live live reality CS to get the job done, and the popularity of the live broadcast was cut down on a daily basis. Then, he quickly withdrew the money. Unconsciously, the number of people in Luchi's single live broadcast room had already broken 10,000, and his Fire Voices fans had also arrived in the hundreds of thousands, so maybe he would be able to bring in goods sometime? And after returning to the base, Nikolai quickly came to pick up a few people, Pushkin, as well as Zack and Lev all went back to their own regiments, and expressed to Luchi that they would see each other at the celebration banquet. As for Luchi and Moros Kirill, after returning to the base, they rested comfortably for the night, and there was a bathroom here, so taking a shower was very refreshing. After that, another few days passed in a row, and Luchi opened the broadcast live as usual. The news of Avdiev's great victory, on the other hand, was completely spread throughout the countries through the major media. Global Times, it was reported that a certain place had completely fallen, and had to turn defense into offense. Weibo, video from the area. A tank company was wiped out by AT-80, which is now a first-class exhibit. Military intelligence A-Ting, over Grace Heights. Two bombers were shot down, suspected to have been hit by sniper fire. Once the news appeared, other countries should sanction and condemn, but even the Eagle Sauce did not expect. Abdiv loss of speed will actually be so fast. To be clear, in order to hold this piece of land, NATO has sent a number of elite troops, but still said fall on the fall, even troops were also wiped out. At this time, however, multiple post-war videos were widely circulated in various countries. On the rabbit side, Song Shirling was on vacation for the past two days and happened to be back to accompany her own mother. Zhao Aksayan was brushing the video when she happened to see the media commentary. This is the front line scene here. We can tell from these track marks. In this area, there was a tank that had fought a fierce battle here and destroyed nearly a dozen or so tanks and armored vehicles comprising a heavily armored, synthesized company. The images in the video came into view, full of wreckage and deep track marks. Seeing this scene, Zhao Xian also had to sigh. Awesome ah, the front line is really capable. A sniper had come out before, and now there was another heroic convoy. And swiping further down, there was also a picture of the scene captured by a drone at high altitude. A loud bang could be seen and the bomber hovering in the sky caught fire and crashed down, and even hit a teammate next to it. If the angle of view was shifted downwards, it could be seen that it seemed to be a soldier using a sniper rifle to do so. Zhao Xian was once again shocked. What kind of concept is it for a sniper rifle to bring down an airplane? Having spent a long time with Song Table Ming, 
she naturally understood that this kind of thing only existed in theory. Just like the theory that a certain planet could be colonized. But could it really be done? Of course not. Only now. Someone had really done it right in front of their eyes. However, the shooting location was too high to see the soldier's proper face. Zhao Xian scrutinized it carefully. And even though she suspected it was an accident, she always felt that the person's back was a bit familiar. E Ling Ling come over here and take a look. What's wrong mom? Next to her, Song Shirling heard her own mother call out and move to the side. Look at the silhouette of this person's body. Isn't it a bit familiar? Song Shirling stared at the screen as the sniper rifle exploded the airplane in a stunning batch. But don't say it. This backdrop is really a bit familiar. It's a bit a. Seems like I've seen it somewhere before. Not only here. Even Song Zhuoming, who had already returned to the command headquarters, also learned about what happened over there the fastest. As a chief, he, along with a group of officers, was called to start a meeting, led by general level officers. On the big screen, the anticlimactic events that happened in Abdiev were being broadcast. A picture swept by, with clear track marks on the ground, and a circle of scrapped armored tank wreckage. This was followed by the scene of a soldier using a sniper to bring down two bombers in the sky. All of the school level officers present looked at it and all of them sucked in a breath of cold air, calling out that it was as horrible as it was. This is the real video footage that came back from the battlefield in Irmo two days ago. They've been authenticated, and it said that it was all done by one person. The general officer patted the big screen, his face deep in sorrow. Hearing this, the people present were equally horrified. What kind of person? Who could combine both tank driving and gunnery and be proficient in sniper shooting? Moreover, each of them could be practiced to the extreme. If they were to ask these officers, they would all dare to say that they would never be able to do it. This type of talent, however, was completely unheard of by them. The main reason for putting out this video is to make all of you understand. There are even younger military geniuses below us. If we can't recognize ourselves and seize the opportunity to improve, sooner or later, we will be surpassed by them. The commander's words were understood in the hearts of everyone present. Many of them were basically at the limit of their abilities when they reached their current positions. If they did not recognize themselves and continue to improve, then sooner or later they would be overtaken by those who came after them. Song Zhuoming stared at the scene of the screen and couldn't help but shake his head. He wanted to spit out what he had seen to his family. But for the time being, he was unable to get in touch with his family during the period of his ordination. However, the war in the outside world caused Song Zhuoming's insights to turn over. It was simply too shocking. He really should also hurry up and promote himself. It was best to reach lieutenant colonel within half a year and serve as a regimental commander. By then, he would try to practice a hand of sniper rifle, or tank driving. Not to say that it would be so amazing compared to the video, but at least he will. When one day son-in-law enlisted in the army he can also have time to personally teach it. Song Zhuoming has thought about it, then let Lu Qi as a tank soldier. He would teach him from the ground up, and he would definitely train him to be an excellent gunner. Of course, he has to be promoted to lieutenant colonel quickly now, or else how can he promote Lu Qi to lieutenant when he joins the army? Inside the base, Lu Qi also brushed up on De Mao's frontline battle report while he was in the car. What tank battle? What sniper rifle hit the airplane? See the thief with vigor. Eh? Lu Qi also suddenly realized that this video is a bit familiar. Sweeping a glance he suspected, is not someone put their own live screen screenshot, and then put on the video. When he clicked on the comment section, there was another trace of playing with the stunt. Solved the case. I admit it was all his doing at Lu Qi. Suggested to strictly investigate the three generations of ancestors. Seriously suspect this person at Lu Qi. Ha ha. It's horrible ha ha. The last time I saw him blasting away with a gun, I laughed my ass off. Upstairs. Don't you need to organize your words before you speak? Your brain and your mouth don't match. Lu Qi is now very panicked. He suspected that really want to give the water friends so get on with it. His own back to the country really have to be invited to drink tea cannot. But he also had to sigh. Big hair is really a good place. The front line is so critical. And he can still enjoy himself at the back without worrying about being bombarded by missiles. One word. Cool. Lu Qi. We're here. At this moment, Kirill's voice came to his ears. Looking out through the window, a modified bar, similar to a hotel, appeared. After the great victory of Avdiev, they, the soldiers who were at the front line, had the opportunity to take a temporary vacation. And right now, it was Luchi's vacation time. Holy shit, is this Big Mao's bar? Why does it look so high-end? But, is this really a tourist program? $800 and you get to play in such a luxurious bar. It's over. Look at the size of this bar. The anchor won't have to eat tonight, right? Anchor, I have a request. Remember to call out my name when you let me be a little involved. JPG, 
I'd like to suggest that you go to 91 and open an account for live broadcasting. Lucci saw the pop-ups and had to sigh that the fans were really wild now, and he was afraid that his live room would be blocked at any time. However, this was a reminder to Lucci. Brother, does this bar charge? When Moros heard this, he was filled with wonder. They had returned from the front line, but it was a return of honor, and items such as celebrations were naturally reimbursed by the military. Of course it's free. Everything is free today. It's okay brother. $800 to participate in the tour group. Lucci did not think there is a bar line, but also all free. How to say. He now also earned a lot. This money in the hand is really hot ah. And looking towards the entrance of the bar, Pushkin was already here to greet them in advance. Oh, you're all here. Come on in. Come on in. The regiments have basically arrived. Knowing that the bar did not charge, Lucci naturally did whatever he wanted. With that, Pushkin led the three of them, all the way into the interior of the bar. Inside, the lights were flamboyant, the scale was even bigger than a normal hotel, and it could be said that it was filled with Demao soldiers who had returned from the front line. Likewise, even Nikolai and Lada, had taken a slight vacation. After seeing Luchi's few people, Nikolai quickly pulled them over. Lu Chi, come sit over here, the wine is all ready. The few people were pulled by Nikola into a card seat, but apart from them, there was one more person here. She had a head of blonde hair, and wore a halter inside, a jacket outside, and underneath was a pair of shorts and high heels. Luchi somehow felt as if her eyes were staring at him. Luchi looked back at the crowd. Pushkin glanced at Elena and took the lead in explaining. Lu Chi, this is my regimental chief. She's been wanting to get to know you. Head of the regiment? Hearing this, Lu Chi immediately froze and looked at Moros once again. He was also nonchalant and extended a thumbs up over. Draw up a position and experience a real military bar career. After saying that, Lu Chi seemed to instantly understand the general. Just like over the mission CG well, he was understanding. He could only say that the plot of this trip was too tight. Even entering a bar was related to the mission plot. Introduce yourself. My name is Elena. It's the lieutenant colonel of the 333rd regiment and Pushkin's officer. Elena got up and extended her hand to Luchi. No way bro bud. For real ha? Huh? My god. This girl is beautiful. It's said that big hairy beauties have a short flowering period. But they're really pretty. This time I've really seen it. Damn it. How can the anchor take advantage of all the bargains and shake hands with a beautiful woman? I don't believe it, I don't believe it, this must be the mother of all biochemicals, it's not real, I'm just saying, why is the anchor really serious today, Luchi saw the situation, also stretched out his hand, but just a pinch and a grip of effort, as if it cannot be loosened, it's not that he can't get loose, but he's really holding on hard, this scene appeared in Pushkin's eyes, and he couldn't help but suck in a breath of cool air, he understood that his own officer's old problem was back, the people beside him and the others looked on, but they were also silent as if they didn't see it. Lu Chi frowned and drew his hand back after half a day. Uh, I'm Lu Chi. Nicholas then seized the opportunity to rush over to round up the conversation. That, the wine is open. Open. I'll pour you some first. He opened two bottles of vodka in a row, poured them for the nearest ones first, and pushed one of them in front of Lu Chi. However, Lu Chi now seriously suspected that this big hairy sister had thoughts about him. After all, he heard that foreign countries were all very messy. For example, the French sisterhood, it is not possible to recognize today, tomorrow that what that what. On the other hand, it seems that the other party did not take this matter to heart, picked up the wine glass and drank it naturally. In fact, today Elena came to Lu Chi also has a purpose. She had just met Lu Chi for the first time, and she had slightly sized him up. From all aspects, Lu Chi made her feel very good. The others were also not idle. A mouthful of vodka entrance, small flavor howdy duty came up. Then the crowd gathered together chatting about things on the battlefield, but also by the way to brag about Luchi a bit. Luchi originally did not want to drink, but the bird vodka he has not drunk, but really a little curious. So, he casually tasted it. But right after two glasses of wine were downed, Nicholas suddenly got up and spoke. That, I suddenly feel a bit uncomfortable. I have to go to the restroom first. Ah, you're not feeling well after only a few drinks. Why are you so pooped now? Lada saw this and opened his mouth to tease. Nikolai turned his head and glared at him, not sparingly, and with a single reach, he yanked Lada up as well. That, I still have some things to do here, so you can accompany me too. What? Saying that, before Lada could react, he was forcefully dragged away by Nicholas. The remaining few people looked at each other in disbelief, and Pushkin waited for two seconds and got up with them. Oh, I'll get two more bottles of wine as well. Moro Skiril, why don't you guys come with me? Eh? Moros and Kirill both looked at each other. 
and without waiting for them to make a decision, they were quickly pulled up by Pushkin. All right, all right. However, just as the three of them circled out of their seats, they happened to bump into an acquaintance. Eh, Pushkin, and Moros, Zack and Lev, who were passing by, recognized them at once, and both froze for a moment. What's wrong with you guys? What's the rush? Lev spoke up before gazing at the deck behind them. Right. We were looking for you guys. Want to come and have a few drinks? Pushkin sniffed and his face tightened as he immediately stepped forward to put his arms around the two men. Sure, but we're on our way to get some wine. Let's go together. Get the wine? That's good. Lev agreed as soon as he heard that, and Zack followed a few people away without comment. Now, Lucci and Elena were instantly left at the card table. Lucci felt more and more wrong, and after looking around, he silently brought his cell phone up. As a matter of fact, boys still need to protect themselves when they are out, and if something really happens, they must save the evidence in advance. On the other hand, Elena took a sip of the wine in her glass, and her eyes recklessly looked around again. After confirming that everyone had gone away, the corners of her mouth rose slightly and she stared straight at Luchi. Luchi felt bad, just wanted to dodge back, but unexpectedly the other party really stick up in the next second. I go, so close, but also too exciting it. No anchor quickly take away. I cannot hold it. Finished a beauty aeon, worthy of foreign girls, really open a. I can't stand it. I'm booking a flight today. I'm flying to demo. The cell phone dislike is too close. The live broadcast water friends for a time sensation. Elena, however, shook the wine glass in her hand and just stared at Luchi's eyes from close range. Oh, let me ask you a question. Luchi, are you interested in hanging out with me? Her bold moves were filled with an indulgent and unrestrained beauty. But under this kind of light, in this kind of environment, uttering such words, how could Luchi not misunderstand? He now kind of understood why he said that foreign girls were open. This is only the first time they meet. What do they say about mixing or not mixing? What do you mean? But Luchi still chose to open his mouth tentatively. Just the surface meaning ah. Uh, Elena slumped back. Your regimental commander Nikolai can't do it. So why don't you just transfer directly under my regiment? I'll promote you to company commander. And I'll even put all of Pushkin's men in charge of you. Although but, Luchi didn't understand how it played out. But he still refused. After all, he was a family man and couldn't screw around outside. I refuse. Hearing this, Elena quizzically raised her left eyebrow, bringing with her a hint of disbelief. But thinking about it, she drank the vodka in her hand in one go. Think about it, this is the only chance you'll get in life. I'm about to leave for Bakmu, which is known as a meat grinder, and won't be coming back this way. If you're willing, within six months, I'll make sure you reach the same rank as me. That's right. Elena had come to Luchi specifically because she wanted to pull him into her regiment. She was confident that her superior leadership skills, combined with Luchi's counterintuitive battle prowess, would definitely be able to score some impressive feats. With Luchi's current condition, it was impossible for the 1323rd Regiment to go to the front line anymore. So even if he was capable, it would be impossible for him to continue his streak of promotions. After all, this hadn't happened to De Mao yet. However, when Lu Qi heard this, he immediately grasped the point. Bak Mu, the other party was going to this place. Did that mean that his next stop on his tour was also this place? However, Lu Qi still chose to refuse. I refuse. Elena immediately frowned. She didn't understand what Lu Qi was thinking. You're really not coming? This is your only chance. You'll definitely regret it later if you don't come. Not coming, Lu Qi replied. My goodness. The opposite side's eyes are all drawn. What is the anchor wimpy about? I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. I'll come if the anchor doesn't come. Aya, uh, give the anchor the opportunity not to use ah. Fighting. Cool. Live water friends to see this scene. Anxious are almost jumping up. However, from the beginning to the end of the two actually did not chat to a channel to go. Elena felt that following the 1323rd regiment Luchi's future would be limited. Overall, Nicola was still not very good. In the end, because she didn't have a backstage. So, she threw out an olive branch to Lu Qi. Unfortunately, Lu Qi didn't seem very willing. Of course he's not willing. On a slightly more serious note, it wasn't as if the foreign country hadn't seen what happened to the National Service Mirror. Ugh, forget it. But I might really not come back once I go. Of course, if you regret it someday, you can also run to Bakmu to find me in ashes. I'll talk a little bit so that you can join the regiment directly. After Lu Qi refused, when Nikolai and the others returned, they found that Elena had already left. She was about to depart for Bakmu, and before she left, she was just looking for Lu Qi. Since Lu Qi was unwilling, there was naturally no reason for her to stay longer. And after Elena left, 
Pushkin didn't stay much longer, and after a while, he was also ready to go back. As a company commander under Elena, he of course had to follow Bachiru, but after the dispersal, Lu Qi, who was just about to return, was stuffed with a phone call from Nikolai. Lu Qi was initially puzzled until Nikolai explained to him that it was one of the highest commanders in the entire army who wanted to meet him. According to the pissy nature of the tour, Lu Qi guessed that it was most likely the organizer of this project. After all, the matter of his own live broadcast belonged to attracting traffic to them. It was possible that he had already been noticed by the upper echelons by messing with more tourists as a result. Solely picked up the phone. The end of the video instantly appeared on the screen. At a glance, the work desk, work chair, a simple with a little stayed room, like an office, and sitting behind the desk, the screen facing Lu Qi was a middle-aged man, about 50 years old. He also wore a big hairy military uniform and had a mustache. Commander, this is Lu Qi. I've made contact. Nicholas greeted from the side. Kudri nodded, then stared at Lu Qi within the screen and scanned up and down. Oh, Lu Qi, I know you, he said with a straight face. So, it's better for me to introduce myself first. My name is Kudri. For our first official meeting, I would like to thank you for your outstanding contribution to us. As he uttered these words, Kudri revealed an expression of appreciation. Surveying the middle-aged man and listening to what he said, Lu Qi could probably confirm that his guess was correct. It must have been because his own live broadcast had exploded and attracted a lot of traffic to this activity of Demao's, which was why the other party wanted to thank him. No need to be polite, we're all just benefiting each other as well. Lu Qi replied indifferently. Kudri sniffed and became even more optimistic about Lu Qi. Theoretically speaking, wouldn't a new recruit be respectful the first time they met their officer? But in Lu Qi's case, it seemed like business. Of course, this could also be interpreted as his mental strength, so to speak, not to be overbearing. Moreover, Kudri understands that Lu Qi, as an Asian, is fighting for Demao. Of course, he had his own purpose, and it was right to say that it was mutually beneficial. Good, that's good. Kudri was satisfied. Then next, I would like to ask you personally about your wishes. I assume you've heard of Bakmu. Would you be willing to make a trip there? Bakmu? Lu Qi recalled Elena's words earlier. This really could be the target of his next mission. Thanks to him listening carefully at that time. But without waiting for Lu Qi to speak, Kudri spoke again. Of course, Bakmu has the reputation of being a meat grinding ground. And whether it's equipment or armed forces, it's the largest one by far. There's no way I'm letting you go alone. So I'm going to help you get your position upgraded. With that said, Nikolai padded over to the side and nodded. With that, he then turned his attention to Lu Qi and extended his right hand. Hello, Commander Lu Qi. I think we can get reacquainted. Lu Qi hadn't reacted yet, but Kudri's next sentence made it clear. I'd like to give you the rank of Lieutenant Colonel straight away, and give you a regiment of men to manage in conjunction with your trip to Bakmu. Is that agreeable to you? The other party asked sincerely. And Lu Qi understood the meaning after only two seconds of thinking. Wasn't this talking to him about business cooperation? Opening up some new map to Lu Qi. Listening to him talk about his godly skills. What with the strongest equipment currently armed. In other words, airplanes and cannons were taking up all the ground. Providing Lu Qi with program effects. And likewise letting Lu Qi help them broadcast live. It also gave Lu Qi another regiment to manage directly. Which instantly made Lu Qi excited. It's kind of interesting. After I think about it. I should be fine, Lu Qi replied, being able to continue live streaming to earn rice, and also having a win-win cooperation, who would refuse, however, hearing that Lu Qi had agreed to this with alacrity, both Kudri and Nikolai did not expect it, you have to know, Bakmu that place, but currently the front line is the most dangerous place, fight no less than two or three months has not yet been down, the big hair soldiers who went to the front line, also was dead dead wounded, even many officers were sacrificed there. That is why it is known as the meat grinder. On the Ermao side, it was even more so that as soon as someone heard that they were going to Bakmu, they fled in fear. With such a recent situation, Lu Qi still agreed easily. Good, Nikolai. Kudri called out. Nicholas nodded solemnly and hurriedly took the two badges he was carrying with him, out of his pocket. Then congratulations to you Lu Qi, for another special merit, as well as a lieutenant colonel badge. Two badges, one with the same insignia as last time and one with a small star. Lu Qi froze slightly for a second when he saw this, but reacting to it, he took it as soon as he could without much politeness. At this moment, Lu Qi realized that the more levels he played, the more gifts the organizer sent, and it was getting more and more exquisite. Last time it was still one, but this time, there was actually another one? I'll be polite then. Lu Qi finished taking it, and Nicholas returned the smile. 
Who would have thought that the person who was his subordinate not long ago would have transformed into an officer with the same position as him? He had gone through a lot before he slowly climbed up to this position step by step. But what about Lu Qi? Such a young lieutenant colonel was unheard of in the country. He could even imagine what a horrible scene Lu Qi would be when he returned to his own country. Perhaps in a short while, when he saw him himself, he would have to address him as a sir, right? Heroes come out of the youth. After murmuring, Kudri grabbed his mouth. Lu Qi, now I officially appoint you as the leader of the 1314th regiment. Your regiment will arrive at Bamu one step ahead of you. At that time, I will arrange for a special airplane to send you to Bamu. Lu Qi nodded in understanding after hearing this. No problem. He was thinking that his influence had risen really fast during this period of time. For events like this, only big anchors could link up with the company. And he didn't think that Lu Qi would have a chance one day. So, after the discussion was over Kudri cut off the video, he took a deep breath, and was extremely happy that Lu Qi had agreed to travel to Bakmu. However, Kudri didn't fully count on Lu Qi. This time, the main reason for Lu Qi to go to Bakmu was to let him practice and learn more. After all, Bakmu was the scene of a long battle, and there were some of the best commanders in Great Mao Station there. Don't look at Nikolai, he was also a lieutenant colonel, but compared to the lieutenant colonels that came out of Bakmu, the gap was too big. Therefore, Kudri was trying to take this opportunity to train Lu Qi to learn more from his seniors. If you wanted to become an excellent commander, the precipitation of time was essential. Lu Qi was unavoidably impatient after receiving successive merits, and also had to sharpen his mind more, such as a defeat in a battle. As for the soldiers given to Lu Qi, they were actually not much of an elite. Generally speaking, the remnants of the army or the group of assassins together, mainly because the big hair side is really no source of soldiers. After that, Lu Qi followed Nikola back to the base. Although he hadn't broadcast live reality CS in the past few days, the heat in Lu Qi's live room was still high, thanks to the dumb little sister incident. Many marketing numbers or bloggers recorded and broadcasted the screen, causing Lu Qi to be known by more and more people. There was also the unfortunate nickname of Dull Little Sister Crusher, the enemy of a lifetime. The other most dramatic scene was that Dull Little Sister even personally posted a video in Fire Voice, ruthlessly trolling Lu Qi. You guys tell me is there such a person, who would do such a thing? One month, I was blocked for a whole month, you guys won't see me for a month, dull little sister roared. Great, finally a month off, a rare vacation day, no need to see the old woman's face pretending to be pure. Thank you for the gift of the anchor, thank you nature, thank you mother earth. Sometimes I wonder why old women can't just keep disappearing, originally quite good, but as a result of seeing the comments, dull little sister is even more angry, crazy spit Lu Chi. However, thanks to the diversion of dull little sister, Lu Qi's side of the income remains high. When a car arrived, he finally felt that it wasn't a dream. On his cell phone, Song Shirling sent a message. Wu when are you coming back from abroad? I miss you so much. I want you to accompany me to eat Hai Di Lao. I want you to take me to the arcade. In the end, it was accompanied by an emoticon of a donut lying on the ground. Lu Qi saw it and quickly replied. There's about two more months or so. When I come back I'll definitely be the first to find you. Seeing the message, a crying, rubbing his hands and arms donut emoticon popped up. I'm so bored without you. I don't even know where to play alone. I'm just bored at the institute every day. These things, Lu Qi was aware of. Song Shirling focused on academic things for four years in college. Therefore, she didn't have much socialization around her and basically didn't have any friends. Waiting for by was not to mention. There were none in school. How could there be when she entered the workplace? After all, the outside in the school is different. Even if there are really close friends, who is not busy in love, or busy making money, simply do not have time to take care of. Luchi thought about it and felt that he still had to actually show it. So, he opened the transfer interface. WeChat transfer 13140. Don't be bored. The boss is giving you a month's vacation. Go out and build whatever you want. At the end of the message, Luchi attached an OK emoticon. However, the other party blinked for a split second after seeing the money suspecting that he had misread it. Omega? Ha, huh? how is it that in less than a month's time, you're getting more and more money? You're not, by any chance, transferring all the ones you have on you to me, are you? Lu Qi was clear that the other party was worried about herself again. Song Shirling was busy working all day, so she didn't watch Lu Qi live much. And of course, she couldn't tell Lu Qi's recent situation even more. With that, Lu Qi gave her a screenshot of the balance in the background. There were a total of a dozen or so debuts upwards. And Song Shirling's mouth couldn't help but open wide at the sight. I live rise very quickly. So don't worry about me not enough. Big hair travel meals all inclusive. If you don't want to, to our mom is also okay. 
Lu Qi persuaded. Song Shirling stared at the screenshot, still feeling incredulous. It's only been a month since she's seen more than a dozen Dabuti. What had Lu Qi done? Then I, take this one, take it. Lu Qi replied, uh, I'm really taking it? Lu Qi didn't know what to say, making it look like an outsider. Don't worry about it, it's fine to give it to our mom. Only then did Song Shirling's finger finally slide to transfer the money. When the arrival prompt appeared, an inexplicable sweetness grew in her heart. Then, an emoticon of a white donut, kissing a brown donut was sent out, like you yo, and at the same time, on the other side of the Irmo strategic command post, this Abdiev's defeat also implicated Yak, who was directly leading the battle, the most, he swore that for the rest of his fucking life, he never wanted to see that soldier called Lu Qi again, it had become a nightmare, what about assassination, assassination, kill a ghost, what he wanted to do now was to find a place to get away from this plague, at this moment, Ermal Supreme Commander-in-Chief also contacted Yak because of the loss of Abdiev. As the Supreme Commander, Yak couldn't shirk his responsibility and could only bow his head to accept the communication from his superiors. Yak, the loss of Abdiev is an incomparably painful blow to our army. It will directly lead to our side being encircled in multiple places by Daimao, thus losing several places in a row. As the Commander-in-Chief of this Abdiev, your responsibility is too great to shirk. Listening to the man speaking on the video. Yak could only nod silently, his heart naturally knowing. The commander-in-chief, on the other hand, blushed badly, and then spoke faintly. Originally, I was supposed to remove you from your post and transfer you back to the headquarters. But barring that, considering that the battle on the front line is tight, the second group army that you lead still has some strength left. So, I decided to give you another chance. Saying this, Yak raised his head quizzically and looked at the Irma chief commander-in-chief. This is your only chance or your removal is inevitable, and it is Bakmu that I want you to go to, the Irmao chief commander said without question, when Yak heard this, he was instantly dumbfounded, Bakmu, known as the most tragic area in the great Mao Irmao contest, people sent to the meat grinder, it could be said that the soldiers who went there, only one out of ten could come back, and that was even a good life, I know Bakmu is dangerous, but you have no choice, we can't lose Bakmu, just like Shandong can't lose Chao County, after saying this, Yak nodded his head gently and pretended to be silent in thought. Only then did he slowly raise his eyes, his eyes growing more determined. I understand commander. Don't worry, I'll go. This time I definitely won't lose ground again. The Irmao commander-in-chief saw his firm eyes and suddenly had some approbation not knowing what to do with it, and was more able to feel a touch of tenacity. Good. Then the opportunity you grasp yourself. I will quickly as soon as possible to transfer you to Bakmu. The two sides agreed, and then casually hung up the video. And it was at this moment that Yak took a deep breath, and the look of fortitude on his face just now transformed into a smirk. Cool. He felt too good. Originally, when Avgiev had lost the battle, Yak had thought that he was going to be demoted. And what happened? It turned out that he was just transferred to Bakmu. All in all, that place was dangerous. But the good thing was that he didn't have to see that soldier called Lu Qi anymore. He'd been having nightmares for the past few days about whoever was on the news and what planes and tanks had been shot down by the other side making it completely impossible to sleep. Yak felt sure that if he stayed around any longer, he'd have to run into that plague again, and he couldn't afford to suffer that old sin, but to go to Bakmu, so far away can successfully avoid Lu Qi. Just when he was worried about how to solve this problem, didn't the opportunity present itself? Simply the best of both worlds, he was a fucking genius. Subsequently, in a blink of an eye, several more days passed. Full of confidence, Yak left Abgiev early and arrived in Bakmu to join the war. The others who should have left had also left, and were successively thrown into new battlefields, such as Zak and Lev. On Lu Qi's side, when the helicopter gunship docked, Nikolai did some explaining to him. For example, Kudri had already contacted that side, and there was some kind of Daimao second group army, called Oleg's commander to receive him, so that he could rest assured. In addition, Moros and Kirill, had gone to Bakma one step ahead of Lu Qi. This Lu Qi was well aware of. They seemed to have not low positions themselves and through the two great victories and continuously promoted, Maros has now become a lieutenant, Kirill has also been promoted to second lieutenant, and both have become Lu Qi's subordinates, he said that he would go there first, and he would help him to make some points first, Lu Qi is still looking forward to, want to see their own soldiers or what kind, playing a real life CS can still simulate being a commander, then he must take out all the tactics ah, immediately after, boarding the helicopter Lu Qi said goodbye to Nicholas, he skillfully put on his helmet, headphones, pulled down his goggles, and casually snapped a picture after the helicopter took flight. Brothers, turn to Bakmu, 
the blogger is getting ready to lead the troops, and this time, he will surely conquer my Dashu River and Mountain. Editing the copy, Luchi smoothly sent it to Fire Voice. All of a sudden, it caused many netizens to comment. The Prime Minister to be will lead 300, 000 troops and horses, and will depart on a certain day for the northern expedition of Ermao. Who is Ermao? This person is not worthy. If the anchor goes, both sides will suffer. With the anchor here, my Mao will prosper. Did I hear an elephant roaring? Oh, so it's me in the abstract. Luchi browsed through the comments and realized that his fans were about to break through a million in the past few days. This conversion ratio is simply immeasurable. Ding, congratulations, host, for successfully completing the second stage of the mission. Ding, congratulations to the host for obtaining two chances in the lottery. Suddenly, a series of sounds rang in Luchi's ears. He snapped his head up and a panel appeared in front of him. The second stage of the mission is complete? This is the VR system sending out rewards again? Luchi was unusually elated. Ding, congratulations to the host for obtaining the talent. Divine command. Ding, congratulations to the host for obtaining the talent. Global mastery. Instantly, when the two rewards were released, Luchi suddenly felt that his vision in front of him became clear. Relying on the effect of global mastery, he stayed in the helicopter and was even able to peer into the scenes on the ground. This included broken cliffs, small rivers and streams, and even soldiers in the middle of a firefight and so on. Coupled with Lu Qi's perception ability, he was now like having a red thermal imaging installed, able to lock onto almost anything in a second. Awesome, Lu Qi had to exclaim. Big Mao's technology was also getting higher and higher now, even making such an advanced VR and willing to give it to him to play with. Thermal imaging, it's not cheap. Gradually, the airplane flew for several hours and finally entered Bakmu airspace. The fighting here was fierce, and even from the high altitude of the fringe area, Luchi could still see the wreckage and dilapidation. Everywhere was filled with smoke, and the smell of blood was chilling. But at this moment, Luchi felt incredibly excited. This was the stage he wanted ah, this kind of environment, to build it up. The organizer was bound to have put in blood, just right for him to broadcast live. After secretly making up his mind, Luchi took another picture. On the other hand, as early as a day ago, a group of chiefs from all over Bamu who were participating in the battle, regardless of whether they were lieutenant colonels or colonels, all of them had received an order from the group's commander-in-chief to gather at the reserve command post. Other than some of the chiefs who were on standby at the command post, the rest of them were still quite surprised. Although the conflict between the two sides of the front line wasn't too big, it wasn't so bad that all of them had to come back, was it? Moreover, listening to the commander, it was because a lieutenant colonel had arrived in Bakhmu and was about to take up his post, so he asked them to come and meet him as well. Elena stayed at the frontline command post and was kinda interested to hear this news. She had arrived in Bakhmu about a week ago and had already led her troops into the battle. I didn't realize that the first time she went back was because of a new lieutenant colonel who was about to take up his post? Kind of interesting. She then contacted Sophia and Andrew, preparing to return with them. Then, she let the soldiers who were at the front line take a break and switch from attacking to defending for two days. Of course, not only here, the 1314th Regiment under Lu Qi also received orders that a new leader would be taking over them. To this, the soldiers didn't have much of a reaction. I heard that the leader who will be taking over us this time is very young. Ha, huh? our 1314th Regiment is like this. It's rare to actually have a regimental commander willing to take over. Alas, I hope that the chief who comes this time won't be a shirker like before. The crowd exchanged words and waited for the new leader to arrive. Lu Qi, on the other hand, didn't go to Oleg first after arriving at Bamu. Instead, he got in touch with Maros and Kirill and went to the rear military base first to check on his men. When the helicopter landed and in front of the base's main gate, Maros and Kirill were already the first to come and greet them. Seeing Lu Qi again, the other party had actually become their own officer, and they had been deployed under Lu Qi. For a moment, both Maros and Kirill didn't know what to say. Company commander of the 1314th Regiment's first company, reporting to the commander. Deputy Company Commander of the 1314th Regiment's First Company, reporting to the commander. The two men quickly stepped forward to meet them and made a standardized military salute. Lu Qi called out realistically when he saw this, and it almost made him doubt that he had really become a regimental commander. But besides having NPCs in his regiment, there might be real-life players as well, which Lu Qi had to pay attention to. Good, how's it going now? Are all the people in our troops still there? Lu Qi couldn't wait to inquire. Maros led Lu Qi towards the base and then opened his mouth to report. Everything is fine with the 1314th Regiment. The regiment has a total of 1. 440 men, divided into 12 companies. 
which is equipped with two artillery companies, two armor companies, and one tank company. It's also equipped with multiple D-30 towed howitzers, T-80 main battle tanks, and 82A armored vehicles. Hearing Moro's report, Luchi immediately brightened up. He didn't expect that the regiment Kudri gave himself could be so fat. On paper, it sounded like it was fatter than even Nicholas' regiment at the beginning. Thinking of this, Luchi accelerated his steps and arrived in front of the base gate. Behind the door, there were all the soldiers waiting for his review. However, the faces of Moros and Kirill, who were following on both sides, were a little less than favorable. In the next second, Luchi didn't dawdle much and reached out to push open the gate of the base. However, in just this instant, he was completely dumbfounded. Inside the base, counting from left to right, there were indeed just 12 companies, apart from Moros at his side. Each company had a company commander leading the group. But this group of people, right, didn't look like they were in very good shape. Some were missing arms, some had no eyes, and some had bandages on their heads. Scanning around, there were almost no two normal people, and it would not be an exaggeration to describe them as remnants of a defeated army. As for the equipment that Moro said, it was distributed on both sides and the back of the team, and it was slightly old, but Lu Chi didn't mind it. However, he now seriously wondered if the organizer was understaffed. So they moved the disabled welfare institution out? So perfunctory? On the contrary, the opposite side. The moment they saw Lu Chi enter, they also froze in unison. Young, simply too young. They knew that the newly appointed chief was young, but they didn't expect that he could actually be this young. Looking at him, he was only in his twenties, right? He was actually a lieutenant colonel? Out of all the previous chiefs, it was definitely the youngest they had ever seen. But at this time, perhaps because he was watching the two sides freeze, Moros quickly opened his mouth to round the stage. Good day, chief. This roar caused everyone present to react. Regiment. Good day regimental chief. Good day, regimental chief. A burst of shouts filled the training base. Seeing this situation, Luchi was still very satisfied. The orphanage is the orphanage. It's better than nothing. As the saying goes, a certain everyone once said before, there are no waste soldiers, only waste commanders. Hello comrades, my name is Lu Qi. In the upcoming time, I will be the commander of the 1314th Regiment, and will take you all on a Bachmu one-week tour. Our ultimate goal is to take Bakmu. After Lu Qi finished speaking, Moros quickly led the applause. The originally silent regiment heard the applause and followed suit. Lu Qi realized that his group of soldiers didn't have much passion ah. They looked a bit disheveled, presumably because of the disabled. I don't know how much money the organizer gave to be able to recruit the disabled as NPCS. Then while clapping, Moros introduced Lu Chi, one of the few normal people in the regiment. The second company commander, Peter. Lu Chi saw that he was not very old and seemed to be a bit younger than himself. The third company commander, Four, was a sniper. The interesting thing was that his two eyes were each long. In the troop, he had the title of dead card sniper. It had been calculated that he had even sniped 88 soldiers at once in a certain battle. The enemy was yet to be known. Luchi nodded silently and scanned the group of soldiers. The 1314th Regiment was now completely in a state of swinging. In fact, for the newly appointed leader, they themselves did not hold much hope. After all, the previous captains had been shirking their duties, throwing them onto the battlefield and pretty much leaving them alone. As a matter of fact, the 1314th Regiment was also a patchwork of things and was famously unmanaged in the army. Even if there was a regimental commander willing to take over, it was mostly because De Mao had no one left and could only be forced to serve for a period of time. Luchi didn't care that much, but at this time, Peter walked out, reporting commander. Seeing the other party come out, Luchi nodded his head to signal him to speak. Commander, my name is Peter, second company commander. Many of our 1314th regiment's commanders have all left within a few days of staying here. I would like to ask you, is it true that you said you took Bakmu? Moro sucked in a breath of cold air when he heard this. Luchi looked Peter up and down. This was one of the few sane people in his regiment. Ah, I guess it might not be an NPC recruited to fill up the ranks. Of course, Luchi replied. Bakmu, we are bound and determined. As the words fell, the soldiers underneath looked at each other with question marks written on their faces. On the contrary, Peter continued to speak loudly. Commander, if it's true, I'm willing to give my life for this. I come from a military family and my dream is to open up the border for my country and defend my homeland. With foreign enemies around, I will not turn back. Hearing these words, Luchi slightly frowned and looked at Moros beside him. The latter also scrambled forward and gave Luchi an open explanation. 
This Peter came from a military family and graduated from the Damao Military Academy. His father's position was not low, because he died in battle. Although he was very young after graduation, he directly inherited his father's position. Lu Chi heard, immediately bright eyes, this is not pure pure middle two teenagers, play a real life CS into the theater so deep, open mouth is to bet on life, he likes this kind of character ah, this on the battlefield program effect shall not explode, good, well said, Lu Chi reached out and applauded, that's the way it should be, even if there are millions of people, I will go, finally, Lu Chi organized himself and used the beauty of the Dasha language, the crowd was shocked at the words, however, most of them still harbored a half-hearted attitude towards the newly appointed commander. It wasn't as if the major commanders who had come before hadn't said such things. In the end, the best that could be done in the end was to be a shirker. The slightly worse commanding ability was low. And even more so, they caused a lot of casualties. There was no way. Who would take over the 1314th regiment with a truly strong commander? And immediately after, after inspecting everything here, Oleg sent someone to contact Lu Chi. Lieutenant Colonel Lu Chi. The commander has gathered everyone and is waiting for you. Lu Chi listened to the report and realized that it was time to make a trip to the headquarters. Solely after letting his soldiers disband, he sought to go to the rear command post with Maros and the others. At this time, within the rear command center, other than the head of the group who was completely unable to get away, all the others had already arrived. Inside the large central conference room, the chiefs sat in rows. In the large screen in the front, an aged face of Oleg presented itself. He was sitting in his office wearing a military uniform and a circle of white beard. The front line is currently in a tight battle, and our side is about to launch a large-scale counterattack. The chiefs of the regiments were recalled in the past two days, mainly to discuss the counterattack. Of course there's another thing you've all heard about. There's a newly appointed lieutenant colonel that will be joining the Bakhmu front. Oleg opened his mouth to speak, not much expression surfacing on his face. Bakhmu hadn't been taken for many months, and it had seriously slowed down the speed of Daimau's advance. That was why the chiefs were recalled. Also to discuss the matter of the next large-scale counterattack. Of course, the matter of Lu Chi was also crucial. The man his old friend had recommended to him, whose deeds he had heard of, was simply the best of the best, and deserved to be reused. On the contrary, many of the chiefs were fully focused and were equally interested in this person. There weren't many that could have this kind of treatment. They were also curious to know if it wasn't a relative of a certain big official. Then just what kind of person would it be? worthy of gathering them all together. With that, Oleg drew up his tone. I'm sure you're all wondering, but about him I'd like to say. This new lieutenant colonel is younger than any of those present, and has won two consecutive individual specialties. When these words came out, the entire crowd was surprised. The lieutenant colonels and colonels they were present with were basically already the strongest group of people in the same position in Demao. There was no lack of lieutenant colonels and colonels in their twenties, which could almost be called a gathering place of talent but this new lieutenant colonel this time, is actually younger than them? Most importantly, it would be fine if he came in through the back door. But Oleg said that the other side has won two consecutive special honors. Special merit can't be faked. That kind of thing is rare even in their group. It's been 11 years since anyone in the first army received this honor. The seniority of the oldest generation of lieutenant colonels and colonels present. There are at most people who have taken the special merit honor once, or escaped from death. So for a moment, Everyone couldn't help but feel horrified in their hearts. Two individual special merit honors, and younger than all of us present? Which group army did this come out of? And how did it come to Bakhmu? The heads of the group discussed. Elena was also incredulous. She did know a few friends in Bakhmu, but it was only when she personally arrived at this place that she realized that there were literally countless geniuses from all the military tracks. It was also because of this group of people that Bakhmu was held up as a meat grinder. She didn't expect that only a short while later. Another young lieutenant colonel would be transferred to the same post as her. In this regard, Elena could only sigh at the fact that there were people outside of people, and there was a sky outside of the sky. He he, but there's no need for all of you to be so excited. He came to Bakhmu, mainly to learn from you all. After all, you are all seniors, no matter what else. At least in terms of tactics and command, no one can compare to you guys. Oleg said soothingly. When the crowd heard this, some of them breathed a sigh of relief and lowered their heads with a smile. It was also, compared to personal honor, perhaps they weren't the strongest, but when it came to tactical command, they were definitely considered seniors. Oh, well, the newcomers seem to have arrived, so let's get to know each other first. Oleg glanced at the nearby communicator before opening his mouth to narrate. Hearing this, a look of anticipation instantly appeared on the faces of the crowd. Immediately, they followed Oleg's slight sideways glance and looked towards the gate on their right. Right at this moment, 
As the gate was pushed open by two great hair soldiers, they lowered their heads and hung their eyes. Behind the door, Maro stayed outside, while Luchi was in full costume, taking a step out and slowly walking into the conference room, gazing at Luchi's stance, the insignia on his chest surging and flashing, the great hairy heads present frowned, and at some point, Elena's movements became strange. She first blinked hard and then rubbed her eyelids hard with her hands. In the next second, when Lu Qi walked right in front of her and turned around, she was sure as well as certain that she hadn't misread it. Hiss. It was really Lu Qi? Elena sucked in a breath of cool air, feeling her brain turn blank for a moment. What do you mean? Lu Qi had come running to Bachmu and had even become the youngest lieutenant colonel in the entire army? Give everyone a formal introduction. Lu Qi, the current commander of the 1314th Regiment and the youngest lieutenant colonel in our army. Oleg waved his hand, and the entire room fell into silence. Lu Qi surveyed the crowd and didn't say anything either. And suddenly, a voice broke the atmosphere in the arena. Lu Qi? Elena heard Oleg's introduction and didn't hold back her shout. As a result, the eyes of the entire room shifted to Elena. It was good that Lu Qi saw her as well, sort of bumping into an acquaintance. HM, what's up Elena? You guys know each other? Oleg was puzzled. But on second thought, both of them seemed to have been transferred from the first group army, so it seemed like it was possible that they knew each other. On the contrary, Elena's entire body was now confused. What about the promised six months as a lieutenant colonel? What about saying that she'd come to Bakhmu to look for her in ashes? Oh yes, now Lu Qi did run over, but how did he directly become her colleague? This was only a lieutenant a week ago, right? And a week later he became a lieutenant colonel? Elena didn't understand. Was this how the positions in the military department were rising at the moment? Really just one step to heaven. Don't even want a process? And when she came back to her senses and realized that the people around her were gazing at her, Elena felt like a clown. Eh? That's right commander, she replied as she kept her composure. Lu Qi and I, both of whom used to belong to the first group army, have known each other before in the military. Hearing Elena's words, the heads of the group realized that Lu Qi had been transferred from the first group army. It had to be said that that place was also a place of crouching tigers and hidden dragons. Oleg nodded, then said, so that's how it is. That's also quite good. Why don't we leave Lu Qi to you for the time being? You take him to familiarize him and get to know each other as well. With that said, of course Elena couldn't possibly disagree. Lu Qi didn't think it was a big deal. What could happen in public? So, he walked up towards where Elena was sitting. As he passed by the leaders, no matter how old they were or how senior they were, Lu Qi's eyes were filled with a strong sense of envy. He was really young. At this age, at the Damao Military Academy, it is estimated that they have only just graduated. It can be said that others are just ready to climb up, but Lu Qi has already stood to the high point. The most crucial thing is that he has an Asian face, so there is no way he could have come in through the back door. This also directly confirmed his gold content. Good. Then next, it's up to me to talk briefly about the next Bakmo counterattack. This place has been delayed for a long time as a place of necessity. As Oleg was about to start speaking, Lu Qi also sat down next to Elena. At this moment, gazing at Lu Qi as he walked towards her, Elena was much better, although her heart was still palpitating. Immediately, she took a deep breath and didn't ask too many questions for the time being. Instead, she introduced Lu Qi to her partner over here first. Lu Qi, let me introduce you first this is Andrew, the leader of our second group army's 460th regiment. Looking in the direction Elena pointed, Andrew also came over. He was tall, had a hexagonal face, was around almost 30 years old, and had a ring of beard around his chin. Hello Lu Qi, get acquainted. My name is Andrew. We can learn more from each other when we are free in the future. Andrew reached out his hand and talked politely with Lu Qi, but learning from each other male sign or forget it, this Lu Qi was not comfortable with it. Hello. Immediately after that, Elena led Lu Qi to look at the right front seat. There was also a beautiful blonde woman in a military uniform, but compared to Elena, she appeared a bit more quiet, or perhaps it could be said that she was more aloof? That one is Sophia. We all met a long time ago during intensive training. She is currently in charge of the 404th Regiment, but she can hold a higher position than me. Hearing Elena calling out to her, Sophia slowly turned her head around. She had fair skin, an expressionless face, and a pair of treasure blue eyes that radiated a different kind of luster. Altered pupils? Luchi associated this with the first moment, but the other party merely glanced at the two before nodding and turning her head away again. Ha, looks like she doesn't want to care about you. Never mind. She's like that. Don't mind her. Elena teased and opened her mouth. Luchi felt that she was boring, so he ignored her. After a while, Oleg on the screen carefully analyzed the battle situation and gave a positive answer. 
since all of the people had returned, then organizing a big counterattack was definitely a must. Not only must we attack, but we must also seize Bakhmu. Any more time spent here would surely involve the other fronts. Soon after, the general attack guidelines have been determined. But unfortunately, Lu Qi did not listen at all. On the one hand, he couldn't understand, and on the other hand, it was his big brother, Andrew, who had been looking for him to chat. Awesome Lu Qi, how did you meet Elena? Let me tell you, she's a well-known. The chat was still gossip, which made Lu Qi not want to talk. So, that's the general strategic approach. Immediately everyone goes back. You can start making preparations. In the big screen, Oleg said with a straight face. The faces of the people present were grave as they nodded in unison and got up, also preparing to go back and do a strategic review. Oh yeah, there's something else to discuss with you guys. But as he was about to leave, Oleg suddenly called out to stop them. He turned his viewpoint to Lu Qi and added, Lu Qi is new to Bakhmu, so he shouldn't be very familiar with this place. When he goes to the front line, it will also be his first time leading a regiment into battle, so it's inevitable that problems will arise. So, is there anyone who is willing to be a master and give him more guidance when he goes to the front line? Talking about strategy was talking about strategy, but Oleg hadn't forgotten that Kudri had entrusted Lu Qi to learn from the regiment, learning command skills, but also learning how to be a better commander. However, after hearing this matter, the captains present couldn't help but be silent. They looked at me and I looked at you, all paying attention to each other's attitudes. On the contrary, Luchi was quite surprised that Kudri was quite good, and even arranged a personal tour guide for him when he went to the front line. But after waiting for half a minute, apparently no one present is willing to take the initiative to petition. No way. The front line command is already very tedious. If you bring another person will be more easily distracted. There really wasn't that much energy. And if something happened on the way forward, they would be held responsible. On the contrary, Oleg frowned slightly when he saw the atmosphere freeze. Commander, I just received contact from the front line. I still have a few things to take care of, so I might have to go back first. At that moment, Sophia suddenly spoke, and after a slight nod of her head, she turned around and left directly. In the process, the entirety of the people present were dumbfounded. Although many of them were not affiliated with the second army and were only temporarily deployed, were they really not giving face? Elena, on the other hand, laughed helplessly, then patted Lu Qi's shoulder. Do you count this as being looked down upon? Lu Qi looked back at her, not knowing what she was talking about, just being a tour guide, and Oleg took a deep breath, his expression not very good. Is there no one willing to take the initiative? At those words, the heads of the group present didn't know what to say. It seemed like Lu Qi was still leading the 1314th regiment. And in the military this regiment was standardly unattended. Even if they had the will, they didn't have enough strength. Scanning around, Elena saw that no one wanted to take Luchi inside softly. But just as she was about to stand up and petition, Andrew stepped forward before her. Commander Oleg, I think I'm fine with this one. It's Luchi's first time leading a team to the front line. So I'll be the mentor for this. As the words fell, the head's eyes were drawn over in unison. Andrew didn't talk nonsense and naturally hooked Luchi's shoulder. When Oleg heard this, a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth, and naturally there was nothing to disagree with. Good, good, then Luchi will leave it to you at the front line. Andrew nodded. Understood commander. Andrew stepping up to the plate satisfied Oleg. Kudri had given Luchi to him to learn from, not to lose his reputation. It was always good to have a leader. At the same time, it was also a relief to the heads present. Otherwise it felt like the commander was really going to get angry. And after that, the itinerary was confirmed and the meeting was dissolved. Andrew took Lu Qi out of the conference room. Lu Qi thought it was okay. Big brother Andrew was quite warm-hearted, but Elena was a bit uneasy. After all, she could tell that Kudri had put Lu Qi in Bakhmu to let him learn and practice. However, even if it is a learning experience, you can't lose too ugly. Otherwise it will be a joke and damage your reputation. Andrew was a standard big old man, and he might not be able to take care of Lu Qi in many ways. So Elena decided that when she really got to the front line, she would have to send some of her scouts to follow Luchi as he advanced. Once there were really any emergencies, she could still go there as fast as she could to support them, so that they wouldn't all be wiped out. Doing so was also a way of repaying Luchi for rescuing Pushkin. As for Andrew, the approach was very rough. It's alright Luchi, when we get to the front this time, our two regiments will act together. Let your regiment follow my regiment, so you don't have to do anything. Just watch me command from the side. Andrew grinned, with a look of patting his chest and guaranteeing it. Lu Qi smiled in agreement. Good. Oh yeah Lu Qi, have you gone to see your regiment yet? Andrew asked. Look over. 
All right, then go prepare to transfer troops. We'll also head to the front line as soon as possible. Without doing too much waiting, the troop carriers arrived at the entrance of the base in the afternoon. Luchi stood in front of the 1314th Regiment and counted the number of people. Report, the entire regiment should be here 1440 people. The actual number is 1440. It has been assembled. Prepare to depart. Ola. Before leaving, Luchi also casually shot a video to send out a fire tone. Brothers, the anchor is also ready to depart okay. Predict the live broadcast time. This time a big strategic map. Full view multi-screen live broadcast. And a new member to connect the mic. Sent successfully. Anchor, can I go be your soldier? Anchor, I can give speeches. And I can draw. So I wonder if I can apply for a chief of staff position? I wonder if I could apply for chief of staff. Upstairs doesn't feel like an act. I hope some kind soul will contact Uncle Hat. You're invincible kid. Now I'll have to follow you in. Cover your face. JPG. After Lu Chi looked through the comments, he also borrowed the cell phones of the company commanders of his companies. The crowd was dumbfounded and didn't know what the chief was going to do. What else could that be? Of course, Lu Chi had contacted he words before, and he had opened up a multi-screen live room featured program for Lu Chi. After the main live room is open, the sublive room can be connected. This way when the broadcast starts, all 12 companies will be able to see the screen clearly. And at this time, all of Big Mao's regimental commanders were actively preparing for battle. And some had already rushed to the front lines overnight. But on the side of Big Mao, the matter of the upcoming large-scale counteroffensive had also reached Irmao's reserve command post. As the current number 2 commander of Irmo in the Bakmo region, Yak was mixing it up. Don't look at the fact that his battle record in Avdiev was not good. It was because he had run into Lu Qi, the god of plagues. To be clear, Avdiev Daimao deployed three entire brigades, and he still managed to hold out for quite a while. Without Lu Qi's arrival, Avdiev wouldn't have been lost so quickly, and Yak wouldn't have fallen so far. But this time, after confirming that there was no Lu Qi, Yak felt energized all over. What? Big Mao's side is going to launch a large-scale counterattack? In front of him, the intelligence officer nodded. Yes commander, based on the current movement, the Damao forces are foolishly moving. It seems that a large number of soldiers are still being deployed to the front line. It shouldn't be wrong. Yak heard this and ran his hand through the beard on his chin. It's fine. I've already thought of a countermeasure. The front line is still defended as originally planned. If the enemy army breaks through the second defense line, the high wall of sand towers and the third defense line will trap them here. I have deployed troops on both flanks, ready to form an encirclement. Saying this, Yak clenched his fist fiercely. The Shada high wall, set up in the third line of defense, was easily defensible on top of the mountainside. Once the enemy army was blocked in this position, sustained attack could not be broken. The rear soldiers followed up to form a situation of encirclement. Yak was confident that without the plague god present, he would be able to make up for his mistakes after this battle. At the very least, it would be on par with commander number one. Understood commander. Meanwhile, inside the base, the two of them, Elena and Sophia, were preparing. The helicopter outside was already almost there, but Elena suddenly flirted and asked a question. He he, what did you think back then in the conference room? Why did you just say leave? Not giving the commander any face at all? Sophia put on her medals and gave her a flat look. Or do you think Lu Chi can't do it, so you don't look down on him? Elena said as she clasped her hands over her chest. Sophia sniffed and just casually shook her head. No, I just think it's too troublesome to bring someone along. HM, you're a colonel. Your position is higher than a lieutenant colonel. And you have skilled combat experience. Actually, you're best suited to lead the newcomers. I see the commander was thinking the same thing at first. Elena was right. Considering a problem, with the same position leading the same position, it was inevitable that someone would be disconcerted in their heart. If they were to switch to a higher position, then this problem would not exist. There's no need to be so troublesome. Sophia shook her head. Even without me taking him, he won't be in trouble. Oh, Elena looked puzzled. Think about it, as long as we take Bakmu down first, won't the soldiers who stay behind just not have to participate in the battle? At these words, Elena lowered her hands, and her person was stunned for a moment, taking down Bakmu in the first step. You really dare to think about it? The corners of Sophia's mouth gently rose as she glanced at her. You're only a week behind me in getting here, don't you think the same thing? Well, there really was no room for Elena to retort at this point. Let's just say that true to form. Sophia was very much the strong person she remembered from training camp. What about trying to protect someone? Follow him around or stay in constant contact with him? Neither. Wouldn't it be enough to just take the initiative and get rid of all the threats around him? That's quite an advanced idea you have. Sophia didn't deny it. 
but just walked out of the room. I'm leaving, I'll be in touch at the front line. Not long after, the helicopter's propellers sounded. Elena sighed and prepared to rush to the front line as well. At noon, He Xiang contacted Lu Qi. Lu Qi, Tong Tong is already in contact with you. Right, so we'll arrange for you to link up when the time comes. There is contact, Lu Qi replied. Then I'll let you know later ha. Huh? Letter. Chatting briefly for two sentences, Lu Qi turned off his cell phone. Ahead, the helicopter that had come to pick up Lu Qi he Andrews had docked in front of the two. Originally, the two could have gone to the strategic command center, but Andrew said that he could personally go to the front line and command the battle remotely. Lu Qi of course had no problem with this. Instead he felt that this was very good. The two of them quickly boarded the helicopter and as the helicopter flew high, the hatch opened up. Everything on the ground was in Lu Qi's eyes. Last night, the 1314th Regiment had already rushed to the front line overnight and met up with one of Andrew's troops. Lu Qi picked up his cell phone and switched the interface, directly choosing to start the broadcast. It's on, brothers. In an instant, the scene of the ground in shambles came into view. Everywhere was filled with flames, and scrapped vehicles could still be vaguely seen. Ha ha ha. Here it comes, brothers. Different time, different place, but still familiar to me. Front row seats. The anchor this time opening in the sky ah? I go. See the video did not feel. Live picture clear ah. The map is so big? Look at the ground ah. All the collapsed building ruins. And scrapped vehicles. Worthy of a large map realistic nah. Because of the presets in advance. Luchi's live broadcasting room is very fast. Immediately after. He suddenly picked up his communicator and contacted Moros and Peter and the others who were already at the front line. Company 12 of the 1314th Regiment. Prepare to advance in 12 groups. The artillery company is sitting at the rear, responsible for long-range support at all times. Andrew froze for a moment when he heard Luchi shouting, blinking, but think about it, it's okay. Anyway, let Luchi operate first. He'll go on if it doesn't work. Immediately, Andrew also contacted the company commanders under his command, telling them to follow the team forward and report back as soon as there was a situation. Roger, on Luchi's side. The company commanders of the 12 companies replied in unison. Subsequently, in the next second, the sublive room connected to the main live room, and the entire 12 images were presented. My god, a dozen more screens at once? Is this the multi-screen live broadcast that the main broadcaster was talking about? I seem to be able to switch live rooms at will. Look at the number one live room. Close up abandoned high rise ah. I'm super. All the trenches are here in no. Two, do I still see NPC corpses? There are 12 live rooms. Corresponding to each of Luchi's companies, the images are different. There are artillery companies in the rear filling up and preparing to fire. There were armored vehicles and tanks that were moving. And then there was Moros in Kirill's side. In the crumbling ruins of a high-rise building that was gray, the different scenes gave more novelty, and were what made the popularity of the live broadcasts rub off on them. First company of the 1314th Regiment at your service, we are preparing to enter the city district. At this moment, Moros led the group in shouting. Ola, in an instant, the fighting spirit of the entire first company of the 1314th Regiment was high, as Lu Qi's old comrades, Moros and Kirill, still very much trusted Lu Qi and understood what he was capable of, but not on Peter's side, he didn't quite understand the new regimental commander, so his face was filled with a grave look, because of this battle, anyone could be killed in action at any time, in the city, the sound of gunfire was filled everywhere, as well as the rolling sound of tank tracks, Moros led the way, moving quickly, and the company spread out across the city with precision. Andrew's few elites, on the other hand, moved at Moros' pace. Moros, pay attention to five meters directly in front of your feet. Throw mines. Luchi gave the signal. Moros was in a dilapidated neighborhood that had been bombarded and messy. When he heard Luchi's words, he immediately noticed a bush five meters in front of him. Stop. Moros sternly called out to stop the soldiers behind him. The crowd looked at each other in disbelief and one of the company commanders under Andrew didn't understand what was happening, only to see Morrow surveyed for two seconds, without hesitation, casually pulled out a mine from his waist and threw it over. In the next second, along with a rumbling explosion, fire splashed up three meters high. What? It's a mine? How could it be? How did the company commander find the mine? That's not right. We didn't bring any metal detectors either? Seeing this, the soldiers of the first company who followed Morrow's behind them had their eyes wide open. Even the regimental commander under Andrew revealed a look of surprise. All right, it's fine, Moros explained. He was absolutely in 100% trusting of everything Luchi said. But suddenly, another communication came from Luchi's side. Kirill, 
the building in the upper right diagonal corner. Give a shot at two o'clock. Kirill had just taken a few steps when he heard Lu Chi's voice his face instantly changed. Immediately afterward, Kirill similarly did not dawdle, quickly pulling the sniper rifle and fiercely aiming towards the two o'clock direction on the right. This sudden move of his caused the surrounding crowd to look sideways, not understanding what the deputy company commander was doing all of a sudden. But immediately afterward, Kirill pulled the trigger and the bullet penetrated out. Inside the tall building in the upper right corner, a dime a dozen sniper was pressed up against the window opening, changing bullets. Who would have guessed that when he looked up, a sniper bullet went straight through his skull. In its unconscious state, it fell straight down from a dozen story building. Splat! As a puddle of blood splattered open, the crowd of Big Mao soldiers who were watching were collectively dumbfounded. In the building in the distance, there was actually a sniper who was sniping at them prostrate. There was no detection at all, and they were pressurized as to how Kirill had discovered it. But likewise, Kirill himself was slightly shocked. He hadn't realized just now that the team had actually been ambushed, and that he had casually taken out the enemy with a single shot. One could only say that it was worthy of being Lu Chi. Ha ha, brothers are also on the trailer okay. Quickly come to the first live room. The anchor's hang has been upgraded again. The full picture penetration. Anchor standing on the plane command, but also every time accurate. This is already acting or not acting? This time, the anchor has become a compass satellite, informing the enemy's position in real time. On the other hand, Andrew, watching Luchi in the non-stop open mouth to say something, just gently a smile. It's good to be young and passionate. However, when you have passion, you can't be too reckless. Andrew took out his binoculars and roughly scanned the frontline battlefield. Although he couldn't see it very clearly, he could probably already visualize that Luchi was probably in some kind of trouble for shouting so anxiously. He could understand the inexperience of a newcomer commanding for the first time. Therefore, it was also time for him, the master, to show off. All companies of the 460th Regiment are under orders. Make sure to do your best to protect the safety of the companies of the 1314th Regiment. That's it. After saying that, Andrew put down his communicator. So he was relieved. He was still very clear about the fighting strength of those lads under his own hands. But the company commander of the 460th Regiment on the 1st Company side, after hearing Andrew's notification, was wooden for a moment. He was just about to ask something, but the communication had been hung up. He had no choice but to continue following the 1st Company's attack. And next, Lu Chi came directly to the doorway of the helicopter hatch. And as the gusty wind blew, his command began to speed up. Here in the 2nd Company of the 1314th Regiment, the people led by Peter were surrounded by two companies of Irmo. Hiding in the trenches, bullets kept drifting over their heads. There was no chance to get out and counterattack, and Peter didn't even know where the men were. Company commander, the neighborhood is too chaotic. There are enemies everywhere. Can't get out company commander? We're completely blocked off in the trenches. The soldier next to him said while he could only try to raise his gun above his head and fire. And just then, a voice came from Peter's headset. Peter, upper left 11 o'clock. Give a mine out. There are only two on your right at 1 o'clock. You can also just point them out. Peter instantly froze in place. He could hear that it was Lu Chi's voice. But obviously, apart from the first company, the other 11 companies from the company commander down to the members were all half-hearted towards Lu Chi. Peter was silent. But there was no way out of this situation now. He directly chose to believe the head of the group. Just like that, under the incomprehensible gazes of the crowd of big hairy soldiers, Peter didn't even look at them. A mine was thrown out by him vigorously. The opposite end of the Irmal soldiers who were stuck behind a truck and were struggling for output, heard something roll over. Nay, they had just realized that it was a thunder, and the dazzling fire had already exploded. Rumble dash. The truck's fuel tank was instantly ignited. The fire spread over, and nearly a dozen Irmal soldiers were also covered in fire. Wah! Fire! On fire! What's going on? Where did Ray come from? A few people were frantic when the truck was finally overwhelmed and suddenly toppled over to one side accompanied by several screams in succession. Peter's jaw dropped in shock. Really threw a hit? There could be no mistaking that scream. He didn't expect that the position pointed out by his own commander was not only not false, but also without any deviation? The company members around Peter, seeing that set of operations just now, were also filled with shock. But Peter couldn't care that much. The commander also spoke. Right? Peter fiercely end gun up, without hesitation on the right side of a burst. Sure enough the two big hairy soldiers who didn't react were pierced by the bullets pouring in the moment they revealed themselves. What? Brothers Mo, the second live broadcasting room has also begun. It's a bit chaotic. Guys, remember to take screenshots of the highlights. I want to see the replay of the kills. Okay, 
Number two has already gotten over a dozen kills, and the wall is spreading. It's so exciting. It's dazzling. Andrew here followed the company commander of the second company and was similarly pressed into the trenches. Bastard ah, actually fucking surrounded? I have rarely been so suffocated in my life. I, his face hardened and he just wanted to probe, but a few bullets glided past, scaring him into crouching down again. But the split second he tilted his head, this company commander saw Peter's operation just now. At that moment, his eyebrows furrowed and he was dumbfounded. On the contrary, Peter, who crouched down again after piercing two people in a row, was equally filled with shock. The commander had commanded all the correct positions twice. It wasn't even just the position. Even how many people were there he knew exactly? What kind of heaven-defying operation was this? As for the company commander on Andrew's side, he also blinked his eyes. He didn't understand how the other party did it just now. Could it be that he had installed some kind of sensing device? Immediately afterward, Lucci continued to open his mouth to command, and quite a few soldiers from the second company received a message. Second floor of the building at 10 o'clock. Give that side a shot. One of the soldiers of the second company heard the message and had a slight hesitation. But after only two seconds passed, he still chose to follow his superior's instructions and raise the RPG violently to hit the designated position. Unexpectedly, as the rocket exploded, the building collapsed from the second floor. During the process, there were bursts of wailing and screams, and several Irmau soldiers were also seen jumping downstairs with their bodies on fire. At this moment, the big hairy soldier was shocked. There were really Irmau soldiers hiding in the building, and there were quite a few of them. But what shocked him the most was that this commander of his own was able to spot them with pinpoint accuracy. Meanwhile elsewhere, Luchi was also doing remote mobilization. A sniper from the second company was trying to aim at an armored vehicle that was speeding past. His hands were shaking so badly that he had trouble pulling the trigger after locking on several times. Three centimeters to the left. One centimeter down. Direct fire. Luchi's voice rang out from the communicator in his ear. And the big hairy sniper, subconsciously, followed the reaction. The trigger was then pulled, and a sniper bullet penetrated straight out, only to see a bang sound. The bullet penetrated the tire of the armored vehicle, and the Irmau soldiers sitting on top were all confused. It's the tire that's been hit. A sniper? How is that possible? It's obviously traveling at high speed. It's impossible to hit it. It's going to crash. The armored car was traveling too fast, and for a moment the front tires burst, making it difficult to brake at all. Unsurprisingly, it crashed into the wall in front of the big hairy sniper's eyes and exploded violently. The sniper who had fired according to Luchi's instructions. On the other hand, after seeing this scene just now, his entire body went numb. He even made it a point to twist his head and look around the room to make sure that the commander wasn't just a short distance away. But he was wrong. Their leader was really commanding remotely this time. And it was a 100% precise command. Elsewhere, it was the same. There's one lying in the ruins on the right. Throw a mine over there. A mine was thrown. The Irmau soldier who had been in ambush for a long time in the ruins was just about to probe when he was hit hard by the grenade that exploded instantly. The big hairy soldier was shocked that the ruins actually did ambush someone. If it wasn't for the commander's timely warning, he would probably have been accounted for here. There were more places. Soldiers hiding underneath the cars. Soldiers going around and preparing for a sneak attack. All of them were eliminated one by one by the members of the second company under Luchi's command. Without a moment's effort. The situation was reversed. The two companies of Irma were getting fewer and fewer in number, and had no choice but to strategically retreat. The second company succeeded in breaking out, and even decided to ride the wave of victory. Andrew stayed behind with his elite troops and was just about to make a big move. As a result, when they saw the 1314th Regiment's second company's combat ability, they all froze in place. What have they done? Enfilade, counter enfilade, anticipation, and even infinitely close to perspective. What kind of unintelligible operation was this? To be clear, there was no one in Bakmu who didn't understand the 1314th Regiment. It can be said that this regiment's comprehensive combat power, in all regiments belonged to the bottom of the existence. After all, it was put together from the east and there were a bunch of old and sick people. But now, it is the old and sickly right. They also saw the missing arms and eyes. But you dare to imagine, Irma's side was actually a group of disabled people chasing after the picture? As for Erlian's side, after a flurry of command from Lu Qi, they had completely trusted Lu Qi's ability, even to the point of fanaticism and admiration, especially Peter, who was filled with admiration for Lu Qi after just this battle. That was something he could not do at all, leading the second company to complete the counterattack. But Lu Qi had done it, and led them in a great killing spree, seeing the second company of the 1314th Regiment launching a pursuit. The elites on Andrew's side, 
too, had no choice but to follow at a fast pace, but excluding the two groups of people. The scout that Elena had planted early on was following the large group less than a kilometer away. He used his binoculars to check out the situation over here, and was horrified in his heart, to the point of wondering if he might have followed the wrong regiment. Was this still the same 1314th regiment? So fierce? Thinking about this, the man quickened his pace to follow. On the other side, the helicopter was still slowly flying forward. Elsewhere, the battle situation was also more favorable. Elena's troops advanced in a straight line, tearing a hole through Ermao's defense. The tank company was leading the way, pressing the Ermao army to only retreat. It was even more so at Sophia's place. With her superior foresight, the overall advance of the entire regiment was extremely fast. The Ermao army wanted to defend, or wanted to carry out a sneak attack on her front. But every time they moved, they realized that they were one step behind the other side, and were instantly counterattacked. Bakmu, the last thing that is lacking is military talent. It could be said that those who were able to stand on this battlefield were all elites selected from countless elites, similar to Elena and Sophia and others, they were even more the elite of the elite, absolutely outstanding. Back here in Andrew, he wasn't too worried about the battle situation at the front line. With the veterans under him, he didn't need to do much commanding at all. So feeling bored, Andrew approached Lu Chi. Lu Chi, take a break once in a while. I know you're new to the battlefield and want to do something great to prove yourself. But I say, one still needs to take things slowly, one step at a time. Andrew patted Lu Chi's shoulder and spoke out to pacify him. At this time, Lu Chi had already moved his head back from outside the cabin. Not to mention, commanding for a small half day had really made him feel a bit tired. Here, have some water. Andrew handed over a bottle of drinking water. Then, he moved his sight to the rear cabin and opened his mouth to ask, Say, Lu Chi, do you know how to shoot snipers? Lu Chi received the drinking water. Then he tilted his head and gulped down two mouthfuls. This helicopter gunship was large and could normally carry 20 to 30 people, so it also had a rear cabin. Sniping? Yeah, Andrew nodded. This altitude of ours is just right for playing sniper. Quietly revealing to you, I was, back then, nicknamed the number one sniper in the eastern war zone. Do you want to try? Lu Chi heard this and became a bit more interested, but all of a sudden, his cell phone rang, and he picked it up to see the message from He Xiang. Lu Chi, get ready. Tong Tong's side is ready. I'll let you guys link up. Lu Chi was slightly stunned, so it was Tong Jinchang's side that was ready. So, Lu Chi returned to OK. OK. Then Lu Chi replied something to Andrew. Then wait, I'll go get two snipers. After saying that, he immediately got up and went to the back barn. Lu Chi, on the other hand, looked through his cell phone, found Tong Jinchang's contact information, and first spoke to him. Brothers, the anchor is getting ready to open the connection. Last time I participated in an event. The connect was an off-site anchor. This time I'm connecting an anchor from the same channel on this site. Lu Chi turned himself towards the camera and said towards the live broadcast. There are still masters? Ha ha, please invite the next victim. Same channel outdoor anchor. Could it be? Hiss. What teaching scene? Good guy quasi double line gun battle ha? Huh? Upstairs say clearly. What gun? Lu Chi finished. Then began to fiddle with the live broadcast. Tong Jinchang there. He is sitting on a Ferrari. Is also replying to Lu Chi message. Brother, I'm all set on my side. So I can get on the mic directly. Okay. Lu Chi saw this and replied with an okay. Afterward. Tong Jinchang reversed the camera to himself. Brothers brothers, get ready to connect a mic right away. It's that event that our platform is organizing. Connecting an anchor of the same channel to get to know each other. After Tong Jinchang finished speaking, he even made a point of stroking his hair. Ah, Tong is going to connect with someone. Male or female? The outdoor anchor on the same channel as Tiger's Teeth. Who else is on this channel? Wait brother Meng. I seem to think of a. I'm on a 2G network? Who else is there? I haven't been following Tiger's Tooth lately, and there's a new outdoor anchor? Could it be the return of my door sauce? Ha ha, brothers this I do not know. I purposely didn't go to see it just to keep a bit of mystery. But ah, uh, rumor has it. Rumor has it that it's a very hardcore anchor. Actually, what exactly was being broadcast live? Tong Jincheng didn't understand. But outdoor live broadcasting, probably just those things. What else does he need to know when he's an old pro? Eh, okay okay, brothers link sent over. I'm on the mic okay. Suddenly, Tong Jinchang saw the link, and went up and clicked over. With the cell phone screen split in two, the left side of the screen became black. Tong Jinchang waiting, but also by the way through the black screen image. Take a look at their own hair is not messed up. Today is still handsome handsome, but not two seconds later, the black screen suddenly showed the picture. 
A heavy sniper rifle in front of his eyes. Who who? What the hell? What the hell? The moment the image appeared, Tong Jincheng violently popped up and immediately took his hand to cover the left half of the screen. I'm super. What just flashed past? Wait, did I see a Bayubiu? Or is it a big guy? Just now that is really false. There is no brother to see clearly? What? The child is connected to where? Is not accidentally connected to the outside of the country to go? Tong Jincheng saw the situation. Is also rushed to open the mouth. Sorry our brother. Even the wrong, even the wrong. I'll back brother. Just ejecting the start is really a stress reaction. The live room to see by Yubiu is to be banned. However, he just finished. The opposite end of the Lu Chi poked his head out. This is connected, right? Can you hear me? Hearing Lu Chi's voice, Tong Jin Chang, who was just about to close the live broadcast, froze. He frowned slightly, then tentatively moved his hand away. There on the opposite side, Lu Chi gasped in his standard bulletproof vest, helmet, goggles and headphones and then looking through the lower left corner of the live broadcast, blue sky and white clouds, seem to be flying in the sky? Ah, brother, not brother, what are you doing? Tong Jincheng disliked his head all the way forward a little closer. Scanning around, he realized that Lu Chi had more than one live room here, and there were a whole bunch of live rooms resting below. Egu, the judgment is successful. Really my grandmaster? Epic linkage, the grandmaster has become the second victim? Ha ha ha, the grandmaster has blocked the broadcasting room. He's afraid of being blocked. Sometimes I feel like the anchor is so unbelievable. He hasn't been blocked once yet. Must be applauded. Luchi saw that it was really an ancestor. So he waved at the screen. It's me. It's me. The connection is right. I'm on an airplane here. Let me show you guys. Luchi carried a sniper and approached the cabin door. For a moment, hundreds of meters in the air, the gusts of wind whistled by, and the ground's dilapidated buildings and crippled vehicles came into view. Not only that, a large area of flames could also be seen burning continuously, and ash filled the air. I'll go. Brother don't mess with it. I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of heights. Tong Jin Chang immediately shrank back. Damn I guessed. Really this ah. What's upstairs? What's going on across the street? It's in a helicopter. Right. And the hatch is still open? No this is what live room. Bulletproof vest goggles. That is not by Ubiu ah. 2G net seeks to explain. I am not crossing. The following is the scene of the Second World War? Tong Jincheng was also particularly puzzled, so he put his eyes on the pop-up screen. Immediately, he saw a water user explaining that this was a live CS scene. However, he glanced at the other sub's live streams again, and dust was flying all over the place, and there seemed to be the sound of missiles exploding. This was telling him that it was live CS? Brother? Brother? Tong Jincheng called out twice in a row. What's going on underneath you? With so many live rooms? Luchi glanced downward with his line of sight and spoke flatly. Oh, below is the sublive room. Real life CS. I'm leading the team to advance it. Do you want to try to randomly point a live room to see? Ah, uh, Tong Jincheng was confused, then reached out and randomly clicked a live room. Who knew that just as he clicked in? A missile blew up head on in the screen, kicking up a cloud of dust. Rumble. I go. The missile blew up against his face. Is the other side in a war? Is this what you call real life CS? What kind of reality CS is so hardcore? With missiles, explosions and sound effects? This explosion gave Tong Jin Cheng a fright. He couldn't help but open his mouth wide in surprise. Switching to another live broadcast, here in the artillery company, the D-30 was being loaded with shells. Immediately afterward, with the company commander's order, the gun's muzzle fired one shell after another into the distance. Deafening tremors kept echoing in the live broadcast room. Ha! The Tong Jin Cheng people had been dumbfounded. Ha ha ha, screenshot of the brother Mang. I told you, the favorite phrase of the anchor's live broadcast room, huh? This child is also deep into the victim. Quietly tell you that this is not real CS. The anchor is participating in the war it. Maybe someday the grandmaster will recall this day. Or will be afraid of it. The two's back-to-back -back miking prompted a surge in traffic. As for he words in the background, the resurrection match had gone crazy. Leader, you believe me. This really has traffic. What? It's okay. That by Yubiu isn't real. What do we have to be afraid of? Don't worry. I'll take the blame for anything that happens. That thing can still be real? Lu Chi's live broadcast is indeed dangerous. But fortunately there is He Xiang. He is responsible for smoothing everything out. And at this time, Andrew also found Lu Chi. Lu Chi, what were you just underestimating there by yourself? I've brought over the sniper. Do we want to play one? Andrew fiddled with the sniper rifle and loaded the bullets with a click. Get ready to descend. Lower your position. Andrew called out to the helicopter pilot in front. Luchi thought about it and felt that there was no problem. Okay. And so, 
With a shake, the helicopter descended at an extremely fast speed. Tang Jincheng listened to the exchange between the two men, although he didn't understand what they were roughly saying, but judging from the movements of the two men's hands, it didn't seem to be a good thing, and as the helicopter descended, the clarity of the ground increased. It was even possible to see the big hairy soldiers that were traveling back and forth between the alleys. Ha, Lu Qi, then allow me to put on a little show, so you can watch. At this time, Andrew was already ready and took the lead to poke out of the cabin, aiming towards the window. Lu Qi's viewpoint was facing his direction, only to see that after two seconds had passed, Andrew fired a shot violently. The bullet passed through the barrel of the gun and flew straight towards a Ermal soldier underneath with a bang. The latter was hiding behind a sandbag, only exposing half of his head. But who knew that it was this little exposed part that was precisely hit by the bullet? Ah, seeing the enemy's head being blown off through the screen, he didn't take a moment to fall down on his side again, still bleeding plasma all over the place. Tong Jinchang and the water friends present in the live broadcast room were all still for a moment, saying hardcore, there is no need to be so hardcore, right? Can this be an outdoor anchor? Outdoor anchor, are not all about dating girls, or sing songs and so on? Why are you playing outdoors and exploding plasma? Brothers, is this plasma really fake? Why doesn't it look like it's staged? Not only is the plasma not staged, the whole map is so realistic that it explodes. Is that a Maoist next to the anchor? Is that a real person next to the anchor? I've heard that there's real life CS in Big Mao, but it's actually this realistic. After a shot, Andrew retrieved his sniper and hooked the corner of his mouth upwards. Aya, uh, after being a commander for so many years, it looks like I'm still a treasure now. What's up Lu Qi, do you want to try it too? Andrew looked back at Lu Qi and was about to show off his marksmanship to him. However, Lu Qi didn't talk too much, but quickly set up his gun to aim immediately afterward. Ha, huh? Andrew was puzzled and looked in the direction Lu Qi was aiming. There was a jeep at the end that was speeding, but before he could react, Lu Qi had already pulled the trigger, and with a bang the bullet flew out. Andrew's eyes widened as the speeding jeep was accurately pierced through the tires by the bullet in the next second. Then unsurprisingly, the entire jeep flung out and tumbled down heavily. Rumble dash. Ah, uh, an explosion rang out, and Andrew was violently startled. Even the expression on his face became slightly exaggerated. This, this is slightly, a bit powerful ah. Uh. He braced himself and stiffened his mouth, but the distance just now was extremely long. With the jeep speeding and the tire position, the accuracy caused him to wander for a moment. Andrew didn't know if today's himself could still do precisely the shot that Lu Qi had just fired, and looking at the distant jeep overturned and exploded. Tong Jincheng there is another wave of silence. Brother Meng, I just went to the opposite side to see, the pop-up screen directly to dry stop. Ha ha, I can't, it's not pure old granny drilling quilt to master whole laugh. I can't stand it any longer. Alas, the netizens of this generation are not psychologically strong. This has just been on the first wave of talent. Why don't you say anything? Tong Jincheng's throat rolled hard for a moment. Then, he took a deep breath. Taking a look at the live broadcast room, today's popularity was higher than previous days. Although he was still in disbelief, he had to calm down now. Brother, brother, you're in a foreign country, right? Is this real life CS? Tong Jincheng opened his mouth to confirm. Lu Qi came back to his senses and also turned his face to the live broadcast. Yes, Big Mao Country Real Life CS. Saying that, Lu Qi also gave a thumbs up. Ha, Tong Jinchang laughed awkwardly for two seconds. Brother you're this whole. I'm not even very adaptable brother. Then, let's discuss what to play. I heard that the last time you linked up. It seems like you made a few bets. Similar to the punishment mechanism. Lu Qi sniffed and affirmed. Right, that's fine. Then let's play it simple and come up with a similar one. How about one person puts out a mission? And if you don't complete it within the stipulated time, you accept the other party's punishment? Luchi of course had no problem with it, and directly compared it to an okay gesture. I don't have a problem with that. You come up with the topic first. Luchi said. Tong Jincheng nodded and thought a little. His line of sight wandered back and forth between Luchi's main live room and the sub live room. It was trying to think. What kind of mission could come out of a live CS? How about, should we specify a head count or something like that? Or, to specify what targets to destroy? Ha ha ha, this is a good one. Grandmaster I'm optimistic about you. This is it. Toughened brother Meng. Anchor dish to stingy. Ancestor master this is not difficult for the anchor? This afternoon. It's warming up my heart to hear my friends talk. It's all over. There's a bad guy in the crowd. Don't do it. Master Zhu. There's a scam going on. The last victim is still blocking the live broadcast. So stop it. Tong Jincheng's eyes suddenly glanced at the live broadcast, and the various different voices made him frown slightly. You guys, really? 
It seemed like he had heard that after dull little sister had finished connecting with Lu Qi, the live broadcast room had been blocked for a month. So after heavy thinking, Tong Jincheng felt no, there must be a fraud. But on second thought, he seemed to know what task to set for Lu Qi. Brother, I think I remember you saying that you were some kind of commander in this game, right? I looked at this substream of yours, and it seems like a few places, it's a bit of a war. Tong Jincheng changed to a flirtatious tone and said, how about this? You command remotely. One hour. Three. Flip three battles even if successful how about it? The corner of Tong Jincheng's mouth rose high as he finished speaking. And on the contrary, Lu Qi's live broadcast water friends. When they heard this, they boiled over. Can't stand it. I'm really not going to make it this time. Which talent suggested this? I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get a good look at this. But I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get a good look at this. This is the end of the game. The Grandmaster has become the Grandmaster. Next year, we'll bring more fruit. I'm ready for the talent show. Let the opposite side understand what is called the greatness of the hanging wall. Tong Jincheng felt that his idea was very good. After all, he knew that he could never listen to his water friends. No matter what the water friends said, he was firm in his stance. Otherwise, he would have to be pitched. Then, Lu Qi naturally had no problem at all. No problem, no problem. On your side, Lu Qi bowed his head and pondered for a while. Also an hour. Right. Want girls 3 WeChat oh no okay? Want girls WeChat? Tong Jincheng heard this and raised his eyebrows. Isn't this just bumping into his strong point? Not only okay. Simply too okay ah. Okay. Simply too okay. Tong Jincheng replied. It was just a matter of asking 3 girls for WeChat. He didn't even need to give his name. He could easily take it by virtue of his face value. Anyways, Tong Jincheng wasn't panicking at all right now and was even ready to lie down for a while to see what Lu Qi would do. He could see from the sub-live screen that the battle situation everywhere seemed to be not very good, and could not beat the opposite side at all. If according to the game inside, even if someone directs also have to Xian, after all, the players on the field to play the game, cannot beat the opposite side. The coach can also directly burst the point not? But Tong Jincheng this idea is obviously very superficial, because Lu Qi really can burst the point, when Andrew was still struggling with how to aim. Luchi had already opened the receiver again and contacted the frontline battlefield. Here in the third company, Thor led the team and was forced into a building. Downstairs were hordes of Irmo soldiers, completely blocking off the entire building and trying to go deeper and deeper in pursuit. The entire third company was trapped inside the building, and it was exceptionally difficult to counterattack, because as soon as someone poked out the window, several sniper bullets were shot continuously from different directions, listening to the thumping sound of bullets penetrating the walls. The people of the third company were scared to death. Thor used his eyes with twice the eyesight of others to look around, but he still didn't see any traces of the enemy snipers. The company commander of one of Andrew's elite companies next to him was even more filled with anxiety. How can this be? Where exactly is the other side sniper hiding? As soon as he raised his helmet, two bang bang sounds instantly came from the distance, and bullets all poured onto the helmet and the wall. Hiss. Seeing this, this company commander understood that he couldn't just sit back and wait for death anymore. But as he looked at the crowd of the 1314th Regiment's 3rd Company, he silently sighed again. He was clear that this group of people could not be counted on. None of them were at a high level on their own, so they still had to find a way on their own. However, at this moment, Tor, Luchi's voice suddenly rang within his ears. Thor, calling Thor, pay attention to the command. Thor was violently startled, although his eyes were a bit incapable. His ears were still normal. The commander's voice was clear as soon as he heard it. Listen up, 2 o'clock lower right, one shot in the ruins, 2 o'clock lower right, in the ruins? Thor heard the command, and for a moment was at a loss for words, but after contemplating for a moment, he made up his mind fiercely and was still prepared to follow Lu Qi's orders. Then, when he found the location, he quickly pulled the bolt and got up to take aim. The other members of the company saw the company commander's reaction and peered ahead with confused faces. Even the company commander of Androwa noticed a hint of something unusual. Only to see Thor get up that is to shoot. The bullet went through the chamber and flew to the left sandcastle at a very high speed. The Irma sniper who was crouching there saw someone probing and was about to shoot and snipe. Unexpectedly a bullet flew straight in and penetrated his brain. What? The soldiers of the third company who noticed the scene were shocked in unison. That company commander of Andrew also couldn't help but blink his eyes, crawling and rushing closer to the window. Meanwhile in the live broadcast, there were also water users who noticed the difference. Quickly, brothers Mo rushed to know. Three live room at fire speed. No. Three there is a fight. The anchor live command. A second through the head. I'm watching the battle. Call water friends for support. Call water friends for support. 
The sound in the live room attracted Tong Jincheng's attention. He was surprised to straighten his back, sliding the screen to change to the third live room here. At the end of the screen, there was indeed a Ermao soldier behind the sandcastle who fell down in response. Hit! Hit! Thor crouched down behind him and scrutinized the sniper rifle in his hand. He stared blankly, unable to believe that the sniper shot just now was fired by himself. Of course, it was also true that it was only him who fired the shot, and the one who was really directing behind the scenes was Lu Qi. For a moment, Thor's entire body was agitated, his blood boiling, this commander of his, so powerful. Thor, pay attention. Lu Qi continued to open his mouth to command. At this time, when Thor heard the voice, he had long since lost the distrust he had just felt and immediately raised his spirits. Upper left 11 o'clock direction, 6th floor of the building. Understood. Thor received the order and immediately stormed off. Watching his movements, the crowd once again opened their mouths wide. With that, a bang sound of a bullet shot out, and a sniper from the opposite right side of the chemical plant, who had just poked his head out, was pierced through by the bullet. Ah! A miserable scream emanated from the opposite side, and the crowd of the third company was dumbstruck. The company commander of the 460th regiment, who was following behind, was also at a loss for words? Immediately afterward, Thor grew more and more courageous under Lu Qi's command. 4. 3 o'clock residential building. 10 o'clock warehouse. 11 o'clock direction green field. Roger. Thor shouted, and then fired one shot after another, along with the bullets continuously shooting out. The three Ermo snipers in the abandoned hospital, factory, and amusement park fell down one after another. At this moment, looking at Thor's continuous operation, the mouth of that company commander under Andrew was wide open. He seriously suspected that he was too panicked, so he had hallucinations? What the hell is this? The 1314th Regiment's dead snipers standing guard with two eyes. How did they find out where the enemy was? How did he find out where the enemy was? And how did he manage to hit them with consecutive shots? Tong Jin Chang looked around behind the screen, although he did not understand what Lu Qi was talking about. However, he realized that every time Lu Qi seemed to open his mouth, the NPC in Live Room 3 was able to shoot and hit one person. This scene made Tong Jin Chang outright puzzled. However, the water friends saw the scene just now and realized something counterintuitive. I'm super awe. The anchor is in the atmosphere. Don't you guys realize? Anchor every pointing place is wrong, but every time can hit people? Ha ha ha. Genuine turtle office walk. Turtle not live in school awe. The third live NPC's eyes are crooked. The anchor predicted his prediction of prediction and adjusted the accuracy according to his crooked perspective. Yardsticks. Anchor this wave is simply heifer to the south pole bull batch to the extreme. No. This session of netizens is too talented. Sooner or later. I'm going to die laughing here. JPG. That's right. Thor has a problem with perspective. He can see left as right and right as left. So based on his perspective prediction, Luchi constantly reported locations that matched his. When he looks for residential buildings, Perhaps the location where he actually fires a shot is in a factory. And as the enemy snipers continued to die in battle, the battle began to reverse on both sides. Sensing the deaths of their companions in battle, Ermao's snipers took cover, sweating profusely, not daring to show their heads again. The company commander of the 460th regiment had his jaw dropped, and was so horrified that he didn't know how to speak. Only Thor was incredibly excited. With just a few shots, he could feel where this regimental commander of his own was capable of or should I say, to a point of near terror. It was as if the entire battlefield was in his sights. However, after losing the sniper blockade, or Mao's blockade there was a problem. In no time, many soldiers of the third company, received Lu Qi's signal. Throw mines at the bushes on the right, left roadblock, RPG ready to give a shot. One by one, the soldiers of the third company were initially puzzled, but when they realized that just now, the company commander was the one who received the leader's signal and killed multiple Irmo soldiers in a row. Instantly, the group all moved swiftly. One mine after another rocket flew away. The Irmo soldiers couldn't even realize it and were blown up. It's not right. How did they find us? Something's wrong. Let's retreat. Pull back. Report to the superiors. At this moment, the company under Andrew didn't need any help at all. The captain of the company, gazing at the fully charted third company, and the defeated Irmo soldiers, his throat rolled. They couldn't understand how the third company, which had been obedient one second, had become lawless the next. The commander of the third company was also a famous dead sniper. Two eyes long crooked people. Who can make him become as accurate as installed positioning? As for the scouts Elena sent to follow the third company, they were hiding in a building in the back. Witnessing the picture of a one-sided massacre in the distance, his eyes went straight. He couldn't understand what had just happened in a split second. Originally, 
he was ready to inform Elena to call for backup. He didn't expect that two seconds had passed, but the Irmo soldiers had collapsed. What made the situation flip so quickly? It was also not until now that Tong Jincheng suddenly reacted to the fact that he had been trapped, or had fallen into a big pit. But there was one thing he couldn't understand. How did Lu Qi know where the enemy was? He was also watching the third live broadcast, looking for half a day even a ghost of the sniper did not see. But Lu Qi was right on the money? Ha ha ha, mister. Krabs has discovered that things are not simple. Guys, Spongebob seems to have found something. Squidward is onto something. Laughing, even Patrick found out about it. And my dear grandmaster, you finally realized something's not right. Ugh, the ancestor won't listen to me. I told you that the anchor is a hanging wall. With a full map perspective, if you don't listen to me, you'll suffer until next year. Bury the grandmaster. Tong Jinchang looked at the live pop-ups. The real scalp numbness. Play a real life CS also open full map perspective? The first time I saw this, it was a very good time for me to go back to the office. While Lu Qi commanded the gap, Andrew finally fiddled with his sniper rifle. Seeing Lu Qi working so hard, he also shook his head rather helplessly, recalling back to his own time, when he first became a commander and knew nothing, it seemed to be the same scene, busy as hell. Aya, it's good to be young, it's all memories. On the contrary, on Lu Qi's side, in less than 20 minutes of work, he had helped the third company turn the tide of battle. The entire company was still skeptical of Lu Qi, but now it had all turned into fanaticism. The commander they had this time could no longer be described as powerful. One must know that the most powerful commanders on the battlefield were only making strategies and guiding their soldiers to fight. And this headmaster of theirs, could actually directly report where the other side was? It instantly turned into a clear card game. Subsequently, after dealing with this side of things, Lu Qi turned his viewpoint again, pulling it to the 10th live room here. Seeing this, the water friends also followed Lu Qi's actions. Even Tong Jincheng didn't fall behind. However, the 10th live room was different from the other live rooms, and this time, the screen appeared on top of a tank, reporting to the company commander, Radar Detection. A North Alliance tank company has been spotted ahead, reporting to the company commander, the other party is very close to us. They're traveling fast and seem to be chasing something. The 10th company tank company here, on the contrary, didn't encounter any trouble directly. But after hearing the briefing, the company commander was hesitant, because the Northern Alliance tank company was much stronger than them. If they were to run into them, there would probably be an accident. Unfortunately, Luchi had already noticed this side. If there was no dilemma, couldn't he create one himself? Calling the 10th tank company, please reply if you receive, please reply if you receive. Next, it will be me who will be in full command of your battle. Luchi's voice came out. The members of the 10th tank company, including the company commander, snapped to attention after hearing the leader's voice. The company commander hurriedly replied, 10th tank company in. Good. Then now travel at full speed to catch up with the North Alliance tank company ahead. Once Lu Qi said this, not only the tank company commander, but even the ordinary members had their mouths open. Full speed pursuit. Northern Alliance convoy? Captain. The Northern Alliance convoy is well equipped. We're no match. If we force a pursuit to meet up with it, it's likely to cause massive losses. The 10th company commander spoke firmly. In response, Lu Qi was unimpressed. Don't worry. I'll be in full command. You guys are only responsible for the operation. When everyone heard this, a look of gravity appeared on their faces, feeling that what the leader said was not very stable. However, the 10th company commander thought about it and decided to follow his superior's arrangements. Understood. Then, the entire company accelerate to catch up. Saying that, the entire tank company suddenly sped up. On the other side ahead, the fully equipped Northern Alliance convoy was chasing a group of big hair soldiers. I can't company commander. The other side is too fast. We're about to be caught up. Fire early. We're done with them. The big hairy soldiers who were running contacted the company commander and company members who were ambushed on both sides on the far side of the road. With their bazookas raised, they crouched and waited for the Northern Alliance tank company to arrive. But the tanks were traveling much faster than the men and had vaguely appeared behind the pursued group. And with machine guns drawn up, bullets began to pour in continuously. There's no way out? Damn it. There's still some distance to go. Time is running out. There's no way. In this situation, we can't let the Nordic convoy get in our faces. Then one could only sacrifice some of them and eliminate them from a distance. All on command. Prepare to aim. The company commander shouted. But just then, another sound of speeding tracks came from their ears. As if it was different from the Northern Alliance convoy? Eh? Tank 2 on command. Panning armor piercing rounds at 3 o'clock. Boom. At Luchi's command. The no. Two tanks gun barrel turned quickly. 
Then with a boom and armor-piercing round hit, drilling through the gaps in the building and smashing head-on into a Taipei Alliance tank. Rumble dash. What? The latter had no time to dodge and exploded the instant it was hit. At this moment, no matter if it was the members of the 10th Company's tank crew, or the 460th Regiment's elites who were driving jeeps and following behind, even the big hair soldiers who were creeping on both sides, waiting for the Northern Alliance convoy to pass by, were all shaken by the flurry of a cannon just now. Who's coming over? They immediately looked toward the location where the cannonball flew from. The water friends in the live broadcast room also held their breath. And even Tong Jincheng was attracted. Only to see that in the distance, the flag of the 1314th Regiment was waving. And a company of 10 T-80 tanks was heading this way at high speed. 1314th Regiments. Tank company? Why would they appear here? Noticing that it was really the 1314th Regiment, the big hairy company commander revealed a hint of puzzlement. But witnessing the rows and rows of old T-80s approaching, he became anxious in his heart. Originally, by making a handful of sacrifices on his side, he would have been able to take down this Northern Alliance company. But the sudden appearance of the 1314th Regiment's tank company had completely disrupted their plans and would have added casualties in vain. After all, this regiment is equipped with weak weapons because of the failure of the battle force, and the North Alliance is a world away. T-80 to fight the North Alliance full match into the tank company? How can this fight? On the contrary, the North Alliance company there, witnessed Lu Qi's tank company coming, slightly surprised, this chasing a big hairy army, how there are additional gains, company commander, the attack that the 4th tank encountered was done by that company in front of us, daring to attack us, they can't leave, no, 2 and no, 3 continue the pursuit, the rest of the crew turn their guns, at the Northern Alliance company commander's call, the tank company split into 2 teams, with 2 of the tanks continuing the pursuit, while following behind Lu Qi's tank company, seeing them hit the Northern Alliance full allocation convoy head-on, the company commander under Andrew was dumbfounded. Why did he mess with anyone but the Northern Alliance's tank company? The 1314th Regiment is as safe as possible. But in this situation they feel difficult to protect themselves. With what to protect each other? Should we run? At this moment, the only solution strategy the entire company thought of was this. The 1314th Regiment's tank company's head iron was looking for death and they weren't obligated to come along, were they? However, before all parties could react, Luchi had already given the call first. The entire company pay attention to dispersal. Vehicle number 4 or 5 rotate left, number 6 rotate right, number 1 raise the gun and fire at 3 centimeters and 1 o'clock position. With a command, the gunner of vehicle number 1 turned the gears, and the muzzle of the gun aimed and then slammed out an armor-piercing round, crossing the treetops on one side of the road. One of the Northern Alliance tanks was hit in response, exploding on the spot. At the same time, the other side also fired their cannons continuously towards the side. The four or five vehicles followed Lu Qi's orders. A left pirouette crashed directly into the residential building, leaning against the wall the shells all missed. The six cars also did the same thing, crashed into the roadside iron fence, immediately bounced back. The shells once again blew up empty. At this moment, all the members of the entire company were stunned. Every word Lu Qi had said was right on the money. No matter how they dodged, or where they fired from, there was no deviation. The 460th Regiment's elites, who saw the Northern Alliance's convoy at the back and were ready to leave, also stopped in their tracks. The North Alliance company even lost two vehicles, also extremely surprised. What's going on? It's not right? Why did the shells miss? The Northern Alliance company commander shouted. But unfortunately, Lu Qi wasn't allowed to give the other party much of a gap to think. He had already spoken out again. Vehicles 2 and 3 are crashing directly into it. Vehicle number 90 fire at 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock respectively. This time, the entire company had completely trusted Lu Qi. The Northern Alliance side was still in a daze. When they saw two of the T-80s crashing over in a straight line, the two Northern Alliance tanks that were just about to fire their cannons were knocked askew with a rumble. And the muzzle deflections were also knocked askew with them. 9 and 10 there, fired their cannons one after the other according to Lu Qi's orders. Instantly, two consecutive Northern Alliance tanks exploded, and the Northern Alliance commander was even more flustered. He wasn't sure which commander's tank company under which commander in Demao this was. The equipment was inferior, and it clearly looked disheveled and weak. So how did they fight so violently? It was already close to reducing them by more than half. On the other hand, the big Mao soldiers who were crouching on the sides, silently watching the battle, were also filled with strange faces. That big Mao company commander tried to recall the 1314th regiment he remembered. Was it like this? It wasn't right. How could it look like this? 
how could the 1314th Regiment, which used to be so unclear when it came to maneuvers, become so fierce all of a sudden? But all of a sudden, this big hairy company commander seemed to associate it with something. He remembered hearing from his superiors that a new lieutenant colonel had come to the military region, and it seemed that it was the 1314th Regiment that had taken over. In other words, could it be that someone was commanding the 1314th Regiment in battle, but with just the 1314th Regiment's equipment? How could they do that? As for the men under Andrew, they looked even more dumbfounded. Now you're telling him that these are the people who need protection? Who the hell is protecting Hua? It's over. It's over. Tong Tong is really hopeless this time. It's happening. It's that trick again. Tank drift has begun. I told you the wall wouldn't stop. It's only going to get worse. Why are you driving a car when you can just drive a car? It's like the whole team is already hung up. No, the whole team is really not taught. So hanging is also contagious. Tong Jinchang saw the situation. Feel the scene in front of him is very unreal. The first time I saw this, I felt that the scene in front of me was very unreal. He is completely out of luck. And the probability is that he will be able to absolutely complete the mission within an hour. On the other hand, on the helicopter, Andrew finished trying out his sniper rifle and turned his sight towards Lu Chi. Seeing how he kept talking and talking half the time, Andrew felt that it was necessary for him to contact the front line as well. Even though he wasn't very worried, he still had to be a bit responsible as a commander. Solely, the two men went their separate ways, looking for each other's company commanders under them. This is Andrew, reporting an update on how it's all going. I don't think anything happened, right? Andrew's voice carried over, but on the other end of the communicator, after two seconds of silence, a trembling voice came, report, report commander, we, we've had a bit of an accident here, ha, huh? Andrew immediately frowned, what's going on, has someone from the 1314th regiment been killed, or is it not well protected, Andrew had said that he would be the master to lead Lu Chi, even though if this regiment was completely wiped out, it was his own unfavorable command, but Andrew had a strong sense of responsibility and couldn't let go of that conscience, no, it's not, however, the opposite end denied it. Then what the hell happened? Andrew anxiously said. Commander, to be precise, it should be that something happened to us. I don't know why. 1314th company suddenly changed drastically in an instant. They even, even able to prejudge the point where the mines were planted. Reporting to the commander, the same thing has happened on my side. The 1314th regiment's second company has also become behaving strangely. It's as if they can see through walls and lock onto enemy positions at a glance the third company as well, that dead sniper has gone crazy with his kills, he's killed nearly a dozen opposing snipers in a single snipe in a row, in the headphones, the roars of his own people kept ringing out, after Andrew heard this, the corners of his eyes twitched, and his entire body couldn't help but freeze in place, even from the 10th company, unimaginable news came, the 1314th regiment's tank company, playing fucking drift, what was going on, you guys don't fuck with me, Andrew yelled, this time, the few people on the opposite side didn't dare to speak. However, the company commander who followed Lu Chi's tank company still had a trembling voice. Captain, we're not joking. The 10th company of the 1314th regiment has met a full complement tank company from northern Europe. Now, has now almost wiped out the opposite side. He looked at the battlefield gruffly. A northern alliance tank exploded one after another. That northern alliance's company commander panicked to the point of frenzy. His own teammates who were hiding on the sides were also looking jaw-dropped unable to believe the images in front of them. Hearing this, Andrew's pupils dilated, equally surprised. So many people under his command had said it in unison, so it should really not be able to run away. But he remembered that this 1314th regiment, wasn't it a disabled regiment? It couldn't even understand the military drill. What made them suddenly act like they were high on drugs? Wait, Andrew suddenly remembered something. He jerked his head around and looked at Lu Chi, who was standing across from him. Attention. Car number 5, left pirouette, Lu Chi was giving orders, hearing what he had just said, Andrew quickly turned back to confirm, wait a minute, pay attention to the briefing, the number 5 vehicle of the 1314th regiment's tank company, is it rotating left now, on the other end of the communication, the 460th regiment's company commander glanced at the situation and hurriedly nodded his head, that's right commander, it's swinging back left, then, Lu Chi continued to command, vehicle number 3, Fire in a straight line at 9 o'clock. Chief, car number 3 is firing. Car 8, prepare to fall back. Chief, car 8 is falling back. Listening to the incessant briefings coming from his subordinates, 
At this moment Andrew's mind became blank as if it had exploded. He furrowed his brows and looked at Lu Qi with an almost strange gaze. Originally, he thought that he was busy, but he didn't realize that he was really in command, and he was also tripping over himself, aiding multiple battlefields in a row. But Andrew couldn't figure out how Lu Qi could see the frontline battle clearly when he stayed in the helicopter. Did he use the holographic screen at all? And as a veteran commander himself for so many years, even if he used the holographic screen, he wouldn't necessarily be able to make such a precise command, or even give his own sniper's point locations and tell them where the enemy was? Quick, brief the entire regiment. Prepare the drones. I want to personally command the battlefield situation. Andrew was in a hurry. After he gave an order, he quickly ran to the rear cabin and took out the backpack he was carrying. Normally, a commander was only responsible for formulating engagement routes, or receiving intelligence to make judgments and so on. After all, a commander does not have that much energy to take care of every battlefield. Only in the event of a major event, or an important battle, would the drone be used to connect to the holographic screen, commanding the scene in real time. But now, Andrew felt the need. He wanted to see with his own eyes. How the hell did Lu Qi even command? How it was fought into that hell? As the viewpoint turned, the North Alliance here at the front line was almost completely wiped out. The only tank left in the Northern Alliance tank company was the one that the company commander was traveling in hiding behind a piece of rubble and letting Lu Qi bombard it. The two tanks that were chasing the friendly Sai turned around and realized that all of their teammates were dead. They were so scared for a moment that they stopped chasing and turned their heads over to scout the battle. Vehicles 1, 2, and 3 break through. The rest of the vehicles keep shelling. Rumble, rumble dash. At Lu Qi's call, shells kept hitting the ruins. The only tank left in the Northern Alliance had long been powerless to fight back. The company commander, on the other hand, scrambled to dial to the rear command post to report the situation here. Report, report. This is the commander of the North Alliance's 7th tank company. We've been attacked by an opposing tank company. We can't fight it off. Please pay attention to our superiors. Note, the ruins were still ruins after all, and under the rounds of artillery bombardment, they simply couldn't withstand it for long. Finally, the entirety of the ruins exploded, and an armor-piercing bullet flew from it, hitting the last tank of the Northern Alliance with precision. Only a loud rumble was heard, and before that company commander could finish his sentence, the tank exploded. The flames shot up several meters high, allowing everyone present to take in the scene. On the opposite side of the enemy command post, Yak listened to the receiver that suddenly turned beep beep beep, his face full of doubt. What's going on? What's being sent from the front line? He jerked his head and looked at the scout standing beside him. Report, report chief, something did happen at the front line. According to reports from our scouts, Multiple companies on the other side have risen out of nowhere, wiping out several of our companies one by one. So far, it is not yet known from which regiment. Hearing this briefing, Yak furrowed his brows and pondered carefully. Who could it be that had this kind of combat power on the battlefield? It's hard to believe that it's a soldier from the regiment of Woolly Bear Sophia. There were many famous officers within the Woolly Bear, especially in this part of Bakmu, but the strongest batch belonged to Sophia and the others. So, she impressed Yak. Oh dear. My god. Suddenly, just as Yak was torn between wondering what was going on, a voice came from behind him. Yak quickly turned around to look, and it was definitely a man wearing a military uniform with an eight-pointed beard who walked over. His waist and back were straight, and he looked very elegant in a well-mannered manner. Dear Commander Yak, actually, this is a small matter. You don't need to worry about it. The man stroked his eight-pointed beard and said. Yak looked at him and sighed deeply. This man's name was Jones, and he was a commander from the Northern Alliance there sent to support Bakmu. It was said that he was extremely capable and had personally participated in many large-scale battles, winning many battle victories. More so, in the previous years, in a battle with the furry bear, he personally led the army to suppress a city. As a result, the enemy army had not captured it for six whole months and suffered heavy losses, and sending him here, to help subdue Bakmu, was also a promise from the nations to their side. Colonel Jones, are you on to something? Yak inquired. Jones laughed lightly, not much importance in his eyes, Commander Yak, leave this matter to me, since I'm here, I won't do nothing, it's just a few companies, I'll handle it personally, you only need to report the location to me, Yak heard this and his brow relaxed, instantly feeling a brightening, when Jones came, he also brought some of the Northern Alliance's troops and equipment assistance, so he naturally had nothing to disagree with, good, then I'll give you the location here, I'll leave these matters to Colonel Jones, Jones nodded, then prepared to turn around and leave. Don't worry Commander Yak, God will bless us. On the other side, after seeing that the company commander had turned into a cloud of ash, 
the Northern Alliance tanks, of which there were only two left, turned around and prepared to run. In this situation, what's the point of chasing after big hairy soldiers, but Lu Qi wouldn't give them a chance, and immediately had his tanks aim and fire, adjust the muzzle down two centimeters, fire at ten o'clock and two o'clock. As it happened, at this time, the drones were rising, and Andrew was already able to get a good look at the scene. The two Northern Alliance tanks that were withdrawing at high speed were hit by successive shells coming from the rear. In an instant, they burst into flames and were reduced to scrap metal. Witnessing this scene, and then looking back at the scene of devastation, he couldn't help but open his mouth wide. Looking around, the flag of the 1314th Regiment was still flying, and the 10th Company had barely suffered any damage. But what about the Northern Alliance side? Total annihilation. If he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, Andrew wouldn't have believed that this was Lu Qi personally commanding out of the battlefield. What about the new commander? What about the one who said that he had just started off badly and still needed someone to lead him? Just then, he felt like his worldview had collapsed a bit, even seriously doubt that Oleg purely pit him, laughing to death. Brother Mo look at the back, that big hairy NPC's face has changed. Classic, just too classic. Every time I see this kind of image, I still feel very happy. We're not the only ones who think it's outrageous, but so do the people on Big Hair's side. Summarizing all the problems of the anchor, the Grandmaster really nailed it this time. After seeing this, Tong Jincheng laughed at himself. He went to the reclining chair to lie down. The whole person has fallen into a state of decadence. He was in a state of disillusionment. However, suddenly a water user button pop-up reminder. Tong Tong look at the time. If you don't hurry up it will be too late. Seeing this, Tong Jincheng realized the time. As a result, after scanning, there were still more than 20 minutes left. Eh, it's really too late? Brothers, then I'm also ready to go on the stage alright. Tong Jincheng greeted the camera and reversed it to the opposite side, preparing to get off. More than 20 minutes. For others there might not be a chance, but for him it wasn't a breeze? Although he couldn't win against Lu Qi, at least he couldn't lose, right? On the other hand, on the side of the 10th company, seeing that they had finished dealing with the Northern Alliance, a group of big hair soldiers looked at each other, and all of them chose to climb out. Go! The big hairy company commander, moved to lead the entire company closer to the 10th company, who also slowly lowered their speed. Greetings, I am the commander of the 3rd company of the 89th regiment. You're the 1314th regiment's tank company, aren't you? Thank you for your help just now. He shouted his greetings as he arrived in front of a group of TADS. In the commander's position, Lu Qi's 10th company commander stood up. Greetings, but no need to thank us for our help. Everything we did was out of our commander's will. Hearing this, the people of the 89th regiment also felt horror in their hearts. Sure enough, they had guessed right. Lu Qi's tank company didn't stay much longer. And after saying these words, they gathered and prepared to leave, heading back to the next battlefield. As for this company commander of the 89th regiment, he watched the crowd leave and silently passed a message to his superiors. On the other side, he was still very happy to hear that his company had been saved. But when he heard that it was the 1314th Regiment's tank company that had come to their aid, he was instantly puzzled. HM, are you sure it's the 1314th Regiment? Very much confirmed. It was the commander of the 1314th Regiment that aided us. Receiving an affirmative reply, the 89th Regiment's commander frowned. Commander, I can transmit the live image to you. After saying that, the 89th Regiment's commander received the battle report from the scene. When the images of the mess all over the ground came into his eyes, the first thing he felt was amazement. Or rather, he couldn't understand it at all. Wasn't the current commander of the 1314th Regiment Lu Qi? Wasn't he the one who led the tank company and wiped out the Northern Alliance convoy? But it didn't make sense. He didn't look like a veteran before. How could he have such a strong commanding ability? In fact, it wasn't just here. The first, second, and third companies under Lu Qi had assisted a lot of their big hairy teammates during their advance. This also made the names of the 1314th Regiment and Lu Qi quickly circulate in the army. The head of the regiment that was at the front line was directly shot, and even the head of the regiment that was at the rear had heard a little about it. As for Lu Qi's side, after dealing with the 10th tank company, he also relaxed. With more than 20 minutes left, he was in no hurry for the last mission, so he directed his sight towards Tong Jincheng. At this time, Tong Jincheng had already slipped out of the car and walked outside the mall. It was now afternoon, and it was getting late in the day. Many of the young ladies who came out to eat were wearing very cool clothes. With a glance, there were those wearing small suspenders, hot pants, and wraparound skirts with black silk. Tong Jincheng was full of confidence, and after scanning the circle, 
he directly selected a young lady wearing black silk. Brothers, how about this one? This is the one, right? Baird, this one doesn't poke ah. I child quickly on. By the way, help me also want a WeChat. Here's your cell phone. Let me know when you're ready to get married. Seeing that the netizens were very satisfied, Tong Jinchang also did not wait, and walked up quickly. Eh, that, that young lady. The girl who was playing with her cell phone with her head down, once she heard someone calling her, she hurriedly looked up. Tong Jinchang waved and quickly approached. How are you? Miss, I see you're alone. There's something I want to trouble you with. As the girl was puzzled, Tong Jinchang pulled out his cell phone and fluently switched to WeChat. It's just that I want. I want to add you to WeChat. He didn't hide it either. Lu Qi then came together in front of the screen, and together they watched the Grandmaster in actual combat. But on the contrary, the sister, after Tong Jinchang came closer carefully sized him up, then frowned, and purposely waved her hand to take two steps backward. That, sorry, sorry, I don't use WeChat. Ah, what's this? Ancestor Master was rejected? Not the Grandmaster how to pull ah, open the door black ah, directly rejected? Finished ah, the Grandmaster will not be old, right? Seeing the other side dodge, Tong Jinchang also a moment of stupidity. He originally thought that as long as he opened his mouth a little, he could just complete the task, but he didn't expect that it would actually be a bit difficult this time? No no, that young lady look at me, maybe it's a bit dark now, how do you see me looking? He continued to take two steps forward, getting closer to the other party, and also inverted his cell phone so that the light of the live broadcast room shone on himself. Is it possible to see clearly now? In the next second, that girl really didn't hide anymore, but her eyebrows stretched. Eh, it seems, indeed, quite handsome. Ha ha ha. Ancestor smiled coyly. Who knew that just as he was about to mention the matter of adding WeChat again, the other party was the first to speak. That hello? Are you live streaming? I want to ask. That little brother across from your live broadcast is a bit handsome. Can you trouble you? Help me ask him for a WeChat? Looking at the girl sincere, and even a little bit of anticipation expression, Tong Jin Chang was momentarily speechless, and a series of question marks appeared on his head. Ha ha ha, fucking laugh me to death. Directly stormed ah, this contrast I love it okay? One second I do not have WeChat, the next second cannot add a WeChat. How did my child turn into a clown? I've been hurt 100 million times this time. Palatizing, I suddenly thought of a phrase. Little friend, do you have a lot of question marks? Hearing someone talking about himself, Lu Qi also waved at the screen. Hello miss. Wow, what are you wearing? Cosplay? That, can I ask you for a WeChat? Said, she took out her cell phone, quickly flipped to the WeChat interface. But at this moment, Tong Jinchang pursed his lips and chose to turn away at the saddest time. Eh, eh, the young sister hadn't reacted yet. I can't. The ancestor's back is so vicissitude when he walks away. He turned around and left. As if he made some sort of determination? I never thought that my child would have a day to be a clown too. You're the busiest in the circus, the king of poker, the guard at McDonald's, and the craziest in Gotham City. What the hell is this, man? When Tong Jinchang left, it was embarrassing to the extreme. But the water users went crazy with joy. The popularity of the game is growing, and Lu Chi's side is brushing gifts furiously. The backstage data was exploding, and he words was also happy to see it. Afterwards, Tong Jinchang had to continue to find his next target, and Lu Qi was ready to complete his last mission. He slightly searched the sublive room and suddenly realized that the fourth company seemed to be in a bit of trouble. The entire company was trapped on a short slope, and there was the sound of armored vehicles whizzing by in the distance. From the perspective of the fourth company's commander, dense bullets were pouring down on the short slope's mountain walls, making it difficult for them to raise their heads. At the same time, Andrew also noticed this place. He desperately wanted to show his strength, but the scene in front of him, surrounded, really made it difficult for him to start. Solely, Andrew contacted his elite company first, then turned his gaze towards Lu Qi. Lu Qi, your fourth company is surrounded in this place. It's not easy to handle alone. There are quite a few armored vehicles outside, and I guess even the tanks are heading this way. We have to join forces and break out together. The situation was rather tricky. And in this current situation, only two people could cooperate to complete the breakout. However, Luchi was a bit tired from commanding two rounds and thought that there was no need to be so troublesome this time. So he chose directly to contact his artillery company. There's no need to be that troublesome. Ha! Huh? Andrew frowned at his words. Calling, artillery company 1 and company 2 receive please reply. The people of artillery company 1 and 2 who stayed in different positions received Luchi's order at the same time. Immediately you guys get ready to fire at the position I specified. 
The artillery company's crowd looked at each other when they heard this. Received, received commander, the artillery company commander stammered in reply. Immediately afterward, Lucci began to continuously report the points, and the target was precisely near the fourth company. There, both sides were in the middle of a fierce firefight, and the fourth company commander was busy sweating profusely. Outside the short slope this time, the encirclement of their army was not quite the same as it had been in the past. A lieutenant colonel leader of Vermal personally led the team, blocking off both the inner and outer layers, and there were also armored vehicles circling outside, blocking the way out completely. Chief, as long as they keep on consuming, sooner or later they will run out of ammunition. The Ermal commander smiled and nodded. I told you that the command post side was too cautious. Commander Big Harry isn't as godly as they brag about. Wouldn't he still be trapped by us when he gets to the front line? Now that the opposite side is getting tired, it's time for us to charge. As he spoke eloquently, he stood up and with a confident look was ready to lead the army in a surprise attack. But for some reason, there was suddenly a gust of wind in his ears. On the other side at Lucci's call, the two artillery companies had already operated their howitzers and started to bombard the designated location. Andrew at his side was still making plans, but after hearing Lucci contacting the artillery companies, he hurriedly turned back. He was just about to say something when the artillery shells had already appeared in the screen. Wait, regiment, regimental commander. It seems, it seems like an enemy artillery shell is coming over. Discovering the abnormal situation, the soldiers on Irmau's side shouted. The Irmau regiment commander, who had just stood up, raised his head violently. And sure enough, a volley of artillery shells crashed over head on in the sky. He kept widening his pupils and his expression became surprised. Incorrect. Why? Would the artillery shell suddenly appear here with precision? Is it De Mao's artillery company? Could it be that we've been counted by the opposite commander? Rumble dash. In the next second, when the first artillery shell landed, a huge explosion accompanied by a cloud of flames rose. We've been ambushed. This is a trap by the enemy commander. Retreat. Retreat quickly. Seeing the shells keep coming, several companies on Irmau's side hurriedly retreated. But it was too late to withdraw now. An armored car turned around and wanted to run. But before he could run for long, a shell landed precisely on his head. Ah, rumble, an explosion rang out, and the entire armored car was instantly turned into a pile of wreckage. Seeing the shells coming, the men of the fourth company and Andrew on the short slope got down and shivered, but without any surprise, none of the shells blew up on their heads. Instead, all around them, armored vehicles were detonated, tanks were shattered, and the Irmau soldiers were blown right out of the air. That Ermau commander raised his head and lost his mind for a moment as he looked at such a precise trajectory. He couldn't understand just how precise the command ability had to be to make the artillery attack hit them 100%, but he no longer had time to think about it in detail. As a shell fell, also enveloping him and the soldiers around him, all in ashes, caught off guard, the entire Ermau army was in complete disarray, far away from the artillery company here. Hearing the bursts of screams ringing out from the bombing ground, the company's crowd was also collectively staggered. Actually, it really hit? Unbelievably, the position commanded by their regimental commander was actually so precise? On the contrary, Andrew there, staring at the holographic screen, was also astonished. He had initially wanted to say that Lu Qi should not bombard, because the frontline bombing was very unstable. The probability was that it would kill his teammates as well, and it belonged to the category of killing a thousand enemies at the expense of 800. However, as Lu Qi continued to command, the landing point of each shell was incredibly accurate. He even predicted the direction of the armored vehicles and some tanks. As a result, after several rounds of bombardment, there were no casualties among his own soldiers. Andrew did not understand, because he was sure that he could not do such a thing, which artillery bombardment is not given a position. Just let them fall freely? Lu Qi, however, engaged in precise positioning, humanoid GPS ah, this is not beaver ah? I've got a tart just, how did this blow up? So precise, there's something wrong, there's definitely something wrong, it's not a missile, it can't be locked on precisely, I'm going to report the other side of the game for cheating and bullying my boy, ha ha ha, it's not like the anchor has been hanging for a day or two, why are all the newbies making such a fuss now, it's not just a rocket that shrinks your head, is it, you haven't even seen the anchor's armor piercing vision yet, after seeing a few companies get wiped out by Lu Qi's rounds of bombardment, the fans couldn't sit still, Tong Jinchang had just been chatting with a girl, and was instantly drawn to the scene. When he came back to his senses after the bombardment ended, the girl was long gone. It's over brothers, it's over brothers. Looking down at the time, there was still a little less than 10 minutes left. Tong Jinchang lowered his head to report on the battle. This time it's a real disgrace our brothers. 
originally thought that by virtue of their own face value, three Weishin Han to take the pinch, but to get to the end of it, found that there are still two short? No way. Tong Jinchang now can only choose to brighten the identity, can barely make up three, and when everything is over, back to the car, he seems to complete the task to reach a draw. In fact, the loss is through the bottom. However, Tong Jinchang felt very humiliated, so he pondered for a while, and felt that he still had to get back his honor. Brother, this game is a draw. Should we play another game? At least we haven't decided the winner yet. Tong Jincheng stroked his hair and disliked his face close to the screen. Lu Qi sniffed without hesitation and directly gave an okay gesture. Okay, okay, I'm totally fine with it. What did he have to be afraid of? Another round would continue to increase the flow. One more game? Good, good, good. My boy listens to me this time. Let the anchor go down. Support upstairs. Let the anchor go down. This time the anchor will definitely lose. That's right, the anchor is just talking on paper. Let the anchor go down. Boy, I've been a master for a long time. I'm not going to screw up my master? Hearing that the two were going to have another go, the pop-up area again had opinions. After his own misjudgment, this time Tong Jinchang had learned his lesson, and he was ready to listen to the netizen's suggestions. Going down right? All right, all right, I'll trust the brothers all right. Tong Jinchang immediately voiced out. Ancestor actually believes me. I'm really crying. I'm not afraid of Tong. We won't lie to you this time. The anchor is a real dish. He can't even fire a sniper. He can't even fly a tank. What do you think this is not a dish? I'm so touched. My child trusts me so much. I'm definitely going to live up to your expectations. Oh 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 oh. For a moment, Tong Jincheng suddenly felt that this group of friends was not very reliable. But anyway, the words had been said here. So if you want to die, you can die. Brother, let's gamble again then. You go down to the live broadcast. Tong Jincheng pointed to the ground. I'll think about the mission. How about that high wall? Suddenly, Tong Jincheng noticed a corner of the high wall in the distance that was shrouded in mist from Lu Qi's perspective. Although he wasn't sure what it was, it shouldn't be anything good to approach. How about you just go down there and promise not to die for a day after reaching the high wall? Tong Jincheng was also aware that since it was a real life CS, even the commander would have a blood bar. Even if Lu Qi's commanding ability was excellent, as long as he went down and got blown up by a random shell, wouldn't he win? Of course, Tong Jincheng didn't just give Lu Qi a pit, he gave himself a pit as well. Brothers, I won't bet on this one. I'll come straight to the punishment mechanism. If the mission is completed, I'll directly, directly go be a girl's dog. Ha, ha, ah. A sentence came out of his mouth, and the pop-up screen crazily brushed upwards. Ah, 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 ah. Against all odds, I'm a child. Seriously? How can my child be a dog for a girl? Don't, Tong Tong, if you want to be a dog, you can only be a dog for me. I can't let you go. Don't worry, Tong, we won't lie to you this time. Don't worry, we'll punish you boldly. Damn, why so many little black fans? You guys are really concerned about my child? Whoa whoa, Luchi did not think that the Grandmaster also began to abstract up. However, he just gave an okay gesture again. No problem, that's it. If I don't reach my goal, then you can just make a random request. All right, brother. Tong Jincheng replied cheerfully. According to his idea, at high altitude Lu Qi could overview the whole situation, dominate the battlefield, and even report the position to his subordinates. But what if he went down? Then it wouldn't be as simple as reporting the location. He would also have to lead the command and coordinate the strategy. If he was slightly inadvertently besieged, he would most likely be blown up by the chaotic cannons. Brother, it's almost nighttime now. So I'll just hang up my live broadcast for now. Let's start tomorrow. I'll just go directly to the live room then. Lu Qi nodded to Tong Jincheng. All right, then I'll hang up too. And start tomorrow morning. After clearing out almost $20,000 in gift earnings today, Lu Qi said goodbye to Tong Jincheng. With Tong Jincheng beckoning, his side of the screen also slowly blacked out. Ugh, it makes me feel quite guilty that I actually cheated Tong Tong. I'm sorry, Tong Tong. I didn't mean it. Just punish yourself for 20. 000 hours. The penalty is good. In the future, not to be punished again, or people heartache pain. As soon as Tong Jincheng left, Lu Qi's live streaming friends instantly stopped pretending. Perhaps they all understood that this would be the last peaceful night for the Grandmaster. On the other hand, Lu Qi was ready to contact the front line to get his nearest company ready to assemble and be commanded by him tomorrow morning. Originally, Lu Qi wanted to go to Andrew and ask for his opinion on whether or not to go down to command. But before Lu Qi could open his mouth, Andrew had already taken the lead in looking for him. Lu Qi, I have something to discuss with you. The front line is now easily defensible. 
I think it's necessary for us to speed up our advancement, and we have to go down to command the field personally. Actually, Andrew did this for reasons that were not exactly the same as what he said. Most of all, he felt that if he stayed in this shitty place any longer, sooner or later he would be rolled to his death by Lu Qi. Anyways, he was also a lieutenant colonel commander, and he was actually meticulously following behind Lu Qi. How could this be? He had to prove himself. On the contrary, Lu Qi naturally did not refuse after hearing this. Immediately, the two of them agreed to gather the company first and urgently assemble in the morning, and at the same time, in several other battlefields. The armored regiment here in Sofia had already run over the corpses of a bunch of Ermau soldiers. Even a Ermo lieutenant colonel had died tragically under her artillery fire. It could be said that looking at the whole situation, Sofia's advancement speed here was definitely considered one of the best. As for Elena's side, she unfortunately ran into a bit of trouble. She was entangled by several companies of the Northern Alliance, causing her to only be able to continuously defend against stalemates. At this moment, Jones had already arrived not far from the front line. Unfortunately, the Northern Alliance troops led by him were in front of Elena's 333rd Regiment. The two groups had become the site of firefights all the way from the city to the mountains. Everywhere was filled with the sound of artillery fire, as well as the vibrating sound of bullets being fired. The battle was exceptionally scorching. Originally, tonight, Elena should have been able to press through this urban area and arrive at the next target location, only to run into the main force of the Northern Alliance led by Jones. Previously, when they were at the headquarters, Oleg had told them that it seemed that the Northern Alliance had sent a commander to assist Irmo. I didn't expect that it would actually be so tricky when they really faced each other. The quality of Elena's army is not low, and there are even officers like Pushkin who have made brilliant achievements. But no matter whether it's an alleyway battle or an open field tank hedge or not, they can't get the advantage. Instead, they were either blown up by mines or lured into an ambush, leading to the possibility that a company would have to be lost there. Regimental Commander our second company was ambushed and has been reduced by more than half, and is now trapped in the Citadel. Regimental Commander, 80% of the 10th Armored Company's vehicles have been scrapped. We need urgent assistance. Captain, 2nd Lieutenant Pushkin has led his team deep into the Suzerain Heights. The current battle situation is unknown. Listening to the battle reports that kept ringing in her ears, Elena couldn't help but furrow her brows. Jones, this person, Elena herself had also had an understanding. One could only say that he was indeed capable and even she felt difficult to deal with. Now being blockaded in this urban area, Elena could only let Pushkin go deep behind the enemy lines to see if she could find a breakthrough. Helplessly, the others didn't have this ability, and these tasks could only be given to Pushkin. But immediately afterward, in a series of battle reports, Elena received a very different battle report about Luchi's side. Commander, over there. Something has happened over there. The chief scout, who was responsible for tracking Luchi's side communicated to Elena in a fiery rage. Hearing this news, Elena's frown deepened. One thing hadn't calmed down yet, another thing had risen. While her side was being beaten back by the opposite side, something happened on Luchi's side, and trouble came one by one. But suddenly, Elena seemed to have thought of something. If something happened to Luchi, she might be able to withdraw her troops and lean on Luchi's side first. If she was asked, she would consider it as aiding her teammates. And when she assisted Luchi, she could then bring him over to join forces to fight the main force on Joan's side. Wouldn't that be fine? Wait, you're saying something happened to Lu Qi in the 1314th regiment side? Quickly, what happened? Thinking of this, Elena desperately wanted to know what happened to Lu Qi and was ready to immediately withdraw her troops to render assistance. However, the scout on the other end of the communicator took a deep breath. 1314th regiment on all fronts. Elena was filled with anticipation. A great victory. The scout's sentence came out of her mouth, and Elena froze for a second. The look of anticipation on her face disappeared, and she turned to cock her head, wondering if she had heard correctly. Ha! Huh? At the same time, she suspected that the other woman had stuttered and had misspoken her speech. But next, the scout summarized the battle situation in multiple locations, informing Elena one by one. It included precise demoning, 100% hits, precise washing of missiles, and so on. All of this was something that the soldiers could not do on their own. There must be a commander at the back to give strategy and command. At the end of the day, when Elena heard that Lu Qi was leading the 1314th Regiment, which had already surpassed her battle line, she couldn't hold her breath at all. It was like listening to a fairy tale. What quality was the 1314th Regiment, and what quality was her 333rd Regiment? Lu Qi could bring a disabled group and overtake her battle line? Even if she was currently being pestered by Jones, 
that was only two hours ago. The other party wasn't that fast, was they? Are you serious? Elena confirmed repeatedly. The scout's tone was grave, and he came out to explain. Chief, the bombardment of the artillery company has to be controlled by the commander. There's also the marching route, the enemy's orientation. It's impossible for the company at the scene to know. Elena couldn't help but freeze in place when she heard this. The other party was right. Shelling points or not, firefight routes or not, soldiers were unable to estimate it on their own. There had to be a commander to maneuver it personally. And everything that the scout had just said was enough to prove Lu Chi's terror. What is the concept of precision shelling? Even if a large number of algorithms were utilized, there was no way to be accurate to that point in the battlefield, right? But Elena couldn't figure out how someone who hadn't studied strategy and command could do that so easily? How old was Lu Chi? Even if he said genius, he didn't deserve what he did. Perhaps if we really want to talk about it, we should say that he was born as if he was born for this battlefield. At this moment, Elena somewhat understood how Pushkin felt at that time. There was not a single thing that he could bring out in his best field. Well, now her plan to support Lu Chi was out of the question. Scout company is still operating as usual. Report back first thing over there as soon as anything happens. After saying that, Elena directed her sights towards the battlefield again. She still had to deal with the troubles over here. Soon after, the next morning, Lu Chi and Andrew organized their equipment and prepared to leave as promised. As commanders, they both brought a lot of big guys with them this time, such as RPG rocket launchers. And when the live broadcast was reopened, the black screen on the other side was restored. Tong Jincheng has already organized the dress code. This time is sitting at home in front of the computer screen. Come on brother Meng, today my child must win okay, must support my child. Today's high and low have to tool opposite. Plus three, I bet today the anchor absolutely overturned. Open the door kneeling. Upstairs has the ambition ah. The last one so said is still upside down to show Ali give it. Not for a while, the live broadcast room is alive and well. Lu Chi here also showed the screen, reappeared in the helicopter. Brothers, then we are also ready to go all right. Lu Chi said, and the helicopter began to accelerate forward, running towards the target location. For this rally, Lu Chi had gathered a total of five companies, companies one through four, plus a tank company. Apart from the artillery company, the other five companies were far enough apart that they could converge while moving forward. Currently, unsurprisingly, his side and Andrew's side had already converged successfully. However, after not being in contact for a night, Lu Chi was just about to contact that end when Andrew approached him. It's no good Lu Chi, there's a problem at the rendezvous point. Lu Chi turned his head and looked at him with a confused expression. Just then, Lu Chi's communicator also rang with a sound, and after answering it, Peter's voice came from the opposite side, reporting to the commander. We were at the rendezvous point and were attacked by the Northern Alliance forces. Now we are trapped within the community. The scene is chaotic. If you land now, you are likely to be caught in a fire set and have an accident. Saying that, Lu Chi also heard the intense exchange of fire from Peter's place. The entire community was blockaded by a regiment of the Northern Alliance. And despite Lu Chi and Andrew's allied forces being quite large, they just couldn't beat each other. Peter felt that people were flesh and blood after all. Even Lu Chi, if he let the head of the regiment come over now, it was likely that they would be trapped together and die in the community and they would even be set on fire when they arrived. If one was not careful, then they would really be accidentally lost. At times like this, Andrew likewise understood this, so he looked at Lu Chi, but when Lu Chi heard it, he came to his senses instead. This is how our middle-aged teenagers are like, when others meet the enemy, they first fight bravely against them. He meets the enemy, first informs himself of a wave, then a possible loss of life or something like that? Simply a born actor, feel already in battlefield people occasions one, Therefore, Lu Chi also gave him a whole paragraph back. Don't worry, we'll be there soon. Remember what I said before, even if there are millions of people, I will go. A sentence came out of his mouth, and Peter instantly froze in place. Even Andrew, who was next to him, couldn't help but open his mouth wide. Moved. That's right, this was the only thought that Peter was currently giving birth to. Just this one sentence made a blazing fire ignite within him. Gradually, he realized that he was worshipping this commander of his more and more. Understood sir. Peter answered back in a neutral tone before hanging up the communication. Next to him, Andrew stared at Lu Chi. His heart was also very shocked. Even though there are millions of people, I'm going to do it? The moment this sentence was uttered, it all gave him a backbone to say it? He was surrounded by the Northern Alliance? What are you afraid of? Directly dry. Lu Chi, I don't have a problem. I can go over directly. Andrew nodded towards Lu Chi. In fact, the location where the two were was not far from the community, 
and the helicopter's speed was very fast. It was almost there at the moment, so they couldn't even think of not going. Brothers, the anchor's company is wrapped up. The anchor is getting ready to carry out the rescue right away. Subsequently, Lucci also notified the live broadcast room. So fast today? Anchor just started broadcasting and is going to start? Good. I like the startup session the most. The anchor must jump G-port this time. What's the point of standing up there and directing? Just go down and shoot. Ha ha ha. Brother Mo has also played with legal night running software. Tong Jin Chang whole breakfast in the morning, while eating while watching Lu Chi operation, as if watching a movie. But within a few minutes passed, the helicopter had already arrived at the destination. The community area in front of them came into view, filled with dilapidated buildings and still cluttered streets. If one looked closely, one could even see batches of Northern Alliance soldiers interspersed, and even tanks being wrapped forward. Tong Jin Chang, who was eating, stopped for a moment. Before, when he watched it through the sublive broadcasting room, he still thought that it might be a special effect. Now through Luchi's main live broadcasting room, the scene became more realistic, and one could even see the plasma flowing on the ground. I'm going to go no. This scene is getting more and more real. And, the difficulty is so high this time? There are so many enemy NPCs. I'm laughing my ass off. The anchor won't fall to the ground. Right? Abstracted. If the anchor lands in a box, won't my kid win? Anchor pay attention. Don't get seconded while parachuting ha ha ha. Noticing the scene in the community, the water friends flirted. But just now, Andrew had taken the lead in organizing his equipment. He had a sniper rifle in one hand, an RPG in the other, and a parachute bag on his back. Get ready to accelerate. Head for the community center. Andrew yelled at the pilot. So then Andrew loaded his rounds and started aiming at the lower head. The helicopter flew forward. After entering the community zone, the Northern Alliance soldiers on the ground jerked their heads up when they heard the sound of a propeller ringing in their ears. What? Helicopters. Look guys, there's a helicopter flying over us. It's Big Mouse Helicopter. He pointed his finger high in the air and was just about to say that he was ready to fire when he didn't realize that Andrew had already fired a shot first. Boom dash. Unsurprisingly, the Northern Alliance soldier who had shouted out fell down after the loud bang. Lu Chi, there's still some distance to go before we reach the community center. Pay attention to the surroundings and be careful not to get shot down by them. This was something Lu Chi naturally understood. Good. Soothingly, he picked up a nearby sniper in his hand and fired a shot right below. Andrew opened his eyes and a Northern Alliance soldier who was about to raise his head was directly pierced through his head by this shot. Ha! Huh? Andrew froze. He clearly saw that just now. Luchi didn't seem to be aiming and just casually gave a shot? Don't worry. I'm fine. Luchi returned a smile. Andrew was still in a daze as he wondered if Luchi had just gotten lucky and that was why he just happened to hit someone casually? But the next thing he knew, Luchi was again not aiming and pulled the trigger at a random spot. An injured Demao soldier was lying on the ground, and another Northern Alliance soldier was getting closer. Only a bang sound rang out, and that Northern Alliance was instantly pierced through the head. Seeing this horrifying scene again, Andrew's eyes widened as waves rippled through his heart. There was really no need to aim? He had watched Lu Chi snipe once before and had only marveled at the accuracy, but now it seemed a bit magical? However, Andrew felt that this was the fun part. If he couldn't beat Lu Chi in command, and if he couldn't beat Lu Chi in sniping, wouldn't he have lived all these years for nothing? Andrew had graduated from the military academy a long time ago, and was still known as the number one sniper in the east. Thinking of this, he pulled the sniper rifle again and started shooting at the ground. The helicopter was slicing through the air at a high altitude, and quite a few members of the Northern Alliance on the ground, noticed it above. Attention, there are enemy helicopters, breaking into our blockade line. Contact the artillery company, aim and fire. The company commander of the Northern Alliance on the ground shouted, not expecting to be pierced in the head by Lu Chi in the next second, but the artillery company in the distance, still received the signal. Suddenly, the sound of a vehicle rang out, and an anti-aircraft gun mounted on a vehicle traveled over here. It's no good Lu Chi, we might have alerted the Northern Alliance's artillery company. Andrew spat viciously, this time the Northern Alliance had really put in the blood this time out. Even something like anti-aircraft guns had been incorporated into the regiment. Grab Lu Chi. 3 o'clock. Take care of the opposing gunners first. We'll jump at the first sign of trouble. Andrew shouted, saying that he had already raised his sniper rifle and started shooting. When Lu Chi saw this, he shook his head calmly. Don't worry. Make it in time. Andrew finished firing two shots in a row and looked at Lu Chi suspiciously, only to see that he smoothly lifted another sniper rifle, forming a dual wielding state, giving Andrew's entire being a dumbfounded look. I'm super. Dual wielding? Kawa anchor, dual wielding, the world is unrivaled. 
I'm really going to thank you for cosplaying Master Kiryu live. No way. Anchor, sniper rifle as a double rifle. Absolutely number one. Seeing this scene, Tong Jincheng people are also numb off. Chopsticks directly are not moving. The first thing you need to do is to get your hands on a sniper's rifle. The sniper rifle can still be played like this? Andrew was also confused. Just see Lu Chi heart not panic hand not shake. No need to aim, bullets pouring out. He had already pressed the trigger in succession and began to sweep the gun. Boom, boom, boom. The sound of the sniper rifle firing continuously echoed in his ears. Andrew looked in the direction of the bullet firing, and the North Alliance soldiers on the self-propelled anti-aircraft vehicle, who were manning the anti-aircraft guns, were instantly shot dead. There were also soldiers who were driving the anti-aircraft guns vehicle. They were also shot in the head and fell off their seats one by one. For a time, even the opposite commander was dumbfounded. Looking at the sniper bullets that kept flying from a hundred meters away in the sky, he could only scramble to dodge them. Was this something a human being could do? If he was in a helicopter at the moment, he could understand if it was machine gun bullets that were flying. But why was it a sniper bullet? How could a sniper rifle shoot so fast? Is it hard to have two guns for one person? Similarly next to him, Andrew looked at Lu Chi's dual-wielded continuous fire and forgot that he was going to shoot. The scene in front of him completely broke his perception of snipers, belonging to the collapse of the worldview. Which sniper would dual-wield a sniper rifle? Rifles don't even do this, right? He also shot his head off. At this moment, he seemed to finally understand how Lu Chi's two previous special class honors came to be. If he is so manipulative, not to mention the two special honors, it is not strange to get a few more times. This was no longer a collision between a serious sniper and a sniper. Andrew now felt that the one standing beside him was not human. Looking at the anti-aircraft guns that didn't even have a chance to activate, the Northern Alliance soldiers that wanted to get closer fell under Lu Chi's guns. This operation by Lu Chi left Tong Jincheng's water friends there and himself dumbfounded for a while. No, iron tie guys, open in the open are not blocked? The good guy sniper rifle dual wielded? It's not just a matter of dual wielding. It's a fucking headlock ah, quiet on the other side. You look like you've never seen the world, JPG. Anchor, I'm not hanging. I've told you many times. Tell them the slogan of our studio. If you're a vegetable, practice more. Don't scream if you don't have the strength, JPG. The pop-up screen was brushed down, giving Tong Jincheng a blank stare. But suddenly, he found something from the screen, and immediately had a bright light in his eyes. Eh, brothers brothers, look at the upper left corner, Tong Jincheng reminded, shifting his sight to the upper left corner. An anti-aircraft vehicle actually slowly drove into the screen. Not good Lu Chi. Look to the left. We still have the missed anti-aircraft vehicle. Andrew also noticed the anomaly and shouted towards Lu Chi. It was an activated anti-aircraft gun. Aimed at them from the left. And without waiting for Lu Chi to turn around. The anti-aircraft gun had already adjusted its angle and started firing. Whoosh 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 dash. A series of shells interspersed with flashbangs shot high into the sky. And the helicopter pilot yanked the lever violently. No good. All at once the entire helicopter picked up speed and tilted over to the left because of the high speed movement. Because the hatch was left open. Andrew almost fell without standing still. I'm super excited. What roller coaster. The anchor is locked by the anti-aircraft gun. This time he's really going to fall into a box. Ha 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 ha. The anchor is ready to parachute in. I'm looking forward to what the anchor will look like when he's captured on the ground. Anchor, direct paratrooper 1. Lu Chi, ready. At this moment. Even the big hairy pilot who was maneuvering the helicopter shouted out. Sir, the flak range is too dense. It's going to be impossible to dodge. Looking at the dense artillery shells, they were chasing after the helicopter's rear, and could be hit at any time. On the other side, having lost Lu Chi and Andrew's blockade, many Northern Alliance soldiers rushed onto the two anti-aircraft vehicles. But in a moment's time, the two anti-aircraft guns were also aiming at the helicopter in unison. Ready to fire. There's no way out. Luchi put the parachute on. We're ready to jump. Watching this scenario, Andrew was feeling that if he didn't jump, he wouldn't have a chance. But if he jumped, then he would be captured. That would be a disgrace. How can he still get along if the other commanders see him? However, it was better than staying here and getting blown up. But when he looked at Luchi, the other party did not make any movements. Luchi? Luchi shook his head and didn't pay any attention to Andrew. Instead, he turned his gaze, Towards the big hairy pilot who was also preparing to jump. No need to jump. Listen to my command next. Prepare to rise in altitude plus turn left. Upon hearing this, Andrew stared at Lu Chi with a face full of confusion. Thinking that he was going to say something, he didn't realize that he was commanding the pilot to operate. On the contrary, that big hairy pilot, after hearing Lu Chi's words, 
did not know what to do for a while. Rise in altitude, turn left, can it work? But after two seconds of silence, he still resolutely chose to listen to Lu Qi's words. Roger sir. In an instant, the helicopter, which was several hundred meters high, was quickly pulled up. The three anti-aircraft guns on the ground were in a triangular pattern, constantly focusing their fire and following closely behind the helicopter. Andrew trembled in fear at the sight, afraid that the helicopter would be hit in the next second. However, this was not the case. Right pirouette, Lu Qi shouted. The pilot followed suit and maneuvered the pull stick, and the helicopter made a sharp turn and began to rotate right. The anti-aircraft guns coming from below didn't pay attention and all of them hit and twisted together, blooming into a brilliant spark. Andrew realized that something was wrong, so he shuddered and looked out of the cabin. Continue to ascend, and watch out for the left and right swings. Under Lu Qi's maneuvering, the helicopter was pulled up to an altitude of eight or nine hundred meters. The shells were still following closely, but they couldn't hit anything. When Andrew saw this, his pupils continued to dilate. An S-shaped walk? His entire body was stunned. This was what Lu Qi had instructed out verbally, and immediately afterward, seeing that the flak was about to catch up, Lu Qi immediately ordered a dive again. Descend. Unsurprisingly, all the shells collided together again, but the helicopter did not suffer any damage. The pilot was shocked and uncertain, while Andrew was even more dumbfounded by the effort of going up and down. Lu Qi, you can still fly a helicopter? Andrew said in surprise. When Lu Qi heard this, he just turned around and casually said, I've learned it in a textbook before. Textbook? Andrew frowned tactically before returning a shocked look to the other party. Look at this talk about a human being? A human being, an actual human being, would say this kind of shit? Textbook schooled airplane piloting. Being able to weave freely through a bunch of anti-aircraft shells with ease. And S positioning? Without more than 10 years of driving experience, it was impossible to do so. The key is that Lu Qi seems to not only know how to drive, but also lead, snipe, and command? So many skills, have you been practicing since the Warring States period? But next, something even more shocking to Andrew appeared. The helicopter swooped down sharply, and a wild storm blew into the helicopter, making him only hold on to the seat for dear life, barely able to support himself. And because of the descent, rows of anti-aircraft guns kept passing in front of his eyes, as if they were the difference between life and death. I'm super. Andrew let out a shout. On the contrary, Lu Qi was unperturbed and continued to let the pilot accelerate. Just as he approached a hundred meters lower, the helicopter swept over the top of the anti-aircraft vehicles, and Lu Qi fired a rocket directly. Instantly, one of the anti-aircraft guns exploded with the vehicle. It was scattered into a pile of parts, still burning with fire. At this moment, not only Andrew, all the live streamers were shocked. Super awe, really give me to see the music. Not Brother Meng, this what heavenly anchor. Helicopter as bomber use? Ha 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 laughed me to death. Goddamn helicopter as a bomber. Dive type manual bombing. Right? This is not human. How can I play? I feel the fear of being dominated. Today, a picture of water friends boiling over. To be honest, Tong Jincheng now can feel. Just before the opening of the pop-up screen is what it means. It was simply outrageous. Is this called having no real battle experience and being stingy with vegetables? Brothers, this, Real Life CS is so play? Tong Jincheng issued a soul torture. Even the breakfast in his hand does not smell good. On the contrary, Lu Qi was still operating within the screen. After one anti-aircraft vehicle was blown up, he set his sights on another one. Right dive, Lu Qi called out to the pilot, making the helicopter pull up against the many shelling. Immediately afterward, it swooped down again, skimming over the head of an anti-aircraft vehicle. Lu Qi was also unambiguous. The RPG loaded with a single shot and another anti-aircraft vehicle exploded in response. Next to him, Andrew was already incoherent, just watching Lu Qi commanding while firing from a high point. He marveled at Lu Qi's driving ability and admired his accuracy. It was true that anyone who could shoot a sniper rifle well was a pervert. Even the RPG was just as accurate. To know, this wind speed, this height, even he didn't do it at all. However, Lu Qi was just able to hit a hundred shots. At this moment, Andrew felt that he, the former number one sniper in the east, was simply weak to the point of explosion in front of Lu Qi. Where was he like a number one? He was simply like a junior soldier following the commander. Gradually, there was only one anti-aircraft vehicle left, and both the gunner and the driver panicked when they saw what had just happened, even gave birth to the idea of wanting to abandon the vehicle and run away, because they simply couldn't hit it. It wasn't that the crowd didn't know how to anticipate, but every time they did, the helicopters would precisely turn around. It was as if, the other side predicted their side's prediction, 
Attention, the helicopter is pulling up again, Lu Qi called out. Under his command, the helicopter once again rose to several hundred meters, several hundred meters, and gazing at the shells that kept coming from the lower head, Lu Qi suddenly had an idea. With one hand holding up the RPG and one hand manipulating the screen of his cell phone, he sent out a wish list. Brothers, get ready for some small gifts. Anchor will give you guys some flower work. Hearing Lu Qi's words, pop-ups appeared in the live broadcast room at once. What? Flower work time? Okay, give me a brush. Where's the boss? Where's the management? Come out. I want to see the anchor perform. It's not like I'm just begging the bosses. What's the anchor doing now? A one-handed RPG? I can't do it anymore. I still remember the one-handed sniping from before. Let's do it. Airplanes asterisk 3. Sports car asterisk 5. Carnival asterisk 1. Suddenly, a carnival burst out, and the process animation directly filled the full screen. The three big words carnival were also stuck in the center of the live broadcast, which was even clearer. I'm going. Carnival is drying out? The boss is confused. The boss is confused. Confused ah. The live broadcast room is a whale. Next to the Tong Jinsheng saw also paused for a moment. This is drying out the carnival? On the contrary, Lu Qi, after seeing the carnival, his eyes also instantly lit up. Thank you boss, thanks for giving out one carnival. In fact, the task he had set was 100, 000, 000 coins, which meant that he would just reach a thousand. But he didn't expect that just as soon as he sent it out, he swiped it and made a whole carnival out of it. Carnival ah, 3000 oceans, Lu Qi are the first time to receive. This time, it's really impossible not to rush. Good. Then prepare for a dive and force landing. Lu Qi shouted. Andrew gazed at him, just now although he didn't know what Lu Qi was talking about. But he could feel as if the other party was about to do something even more counterintuitive. With that, at Lu Qi's call, the helicopter arrived at the highest point and then launched a force landing as fast as it could. The wild air currents all drilled out of the cabin. And Andrew was blown so much that he couldn't even stand up. I'm super. This is too fast. Andrew yelled his face turning upwards. At this moment, not only the live broadcast water friends, even Tong Jincheng quickly approached the screen, unable to take his eyes off the screen, and below, on the anti-aircraft vehicle, looking at the helicopter was swooping towards their side, the gunner pilots and even the commander were sweating profusely, fire the guns, fire on me, shoot them down, the anti-aircraft guns fired faster and faster, constantly cutting through the sides of the helicopters, gradually, the distance between the two was getting closer and closer. Lu Qi was holding a rocket launcher, and finally the helicopter had arrived at a low altitude of a hundred meters, skimming straight over the head of the anti-aircraft vehicle. Seeing the shadow descends, the North Alliance there, the crowd, all feel already dead to the end ready to close their eyes, but as a result, Lu Qi raised his head fiercely, and aimed the RPG barrel into the sky, and shot out a cannon. The white trailing gas held the cannonball, with extremely fast speed up into the clouds. Andrew next to him looked dumbfounded, and even Tong Jincheng in the live broadcast room frowned, what was Lu Qi doing, and on the contrary, the Northern Alliance soldiers who thought it was going to be over, after waiting quietly for two seconds, they were surprised to find that they didn't die, they opened their eyes in confusion and looked at each other the moment they saw Lu Qi hitting the crooked side, after determining that the helicopter had really gone far away, the faces of all of them instantly overflowed with joy, this is, hit, miss, they, hit against the sky, Ha ha, ha ha ha, yes, the opposite side can't do it either. Actually the hand shakes and misses? Good chance ah, quickly, quickly, fire, keep firing for me. All of a sudden, the morale of all the soldiers on the Northern Alliance side increased greatly, and they were ready to operate the anti-aircraft guns again to pursue the attack. But suddenly, a gust of wind descended from the sky. Feeling strange, a Northern Alliance commander frowned and glanced overhead. Who knew that just this glance alone caused his face to go into a trance? He he, he laughed strangely twice. The cannonball that had just been shot up into the sky by Luchi fell down with precision. Rumble dash. At the same time, the helicopter was pulled up at high speed. Luchi leaned against the hatch with his RPG in hand, facing the wind. Behind him was the scene of the anti-aircraft vehicle exploding, setting off a brilliant firework. Real men, never look back to see the explosion. In an instant, Andrew, who turned back and saw the explosion scene, was petrified and stagnant. Tong Jincheng in front of the screen, chopsticks also fell from his hands, he couldn't believe his eyes, the water friends in the live broadcast room were even more so, the first time I saw this, it was a big deal, I super anchor this work whole handsome awe, real men, never look back at the explosion, damn, I cannot give my child or looking stupid, child this medical expenses must be broadcast, 
what did I say? I'll always remember this day. Where's the opposite black guy? Quickly come in to accept the torture. To see if the face hurts. Lu Chi this wave of the whole finished. Gifts come in waves. Earn a pot full of money. He words in the background to see this scene. Is also surprised to have to clap his hands. Although the dry is not personnel. But isn't it people that matter? Lu Chi this wave of whole finished. He this year commission is absolutely stable ah. A fierce operation down. When the helicopter again lifted off. The driver remaining only gasp. He was already scared out of his wits. But he was also very excited. Extreme operation. Escape from death. At this moment. He couldn't help but admire that the commander was simply hanging on for dear life. Andrew. Who was next to him. Couldn't even imagine what he had just experienced. We are in a war. Right? This is a battlefield. Your family fights like this? The Qi Lu Chi whole live. But also his whole success? Really to this kid loaded to. Andrew now feels that his mentor is a bit ashamed. Think about what I said before. Now it seems that who follows who is still not certain. On the contrary, Tong Jin Chang revealed a puzzled expression as he picked up his chopsticks. Ah, brothers? Anchors don't go to school much. Isn't this a bit? Not conforming to the laws of physics? The cannonball that hit the sky. Why can it still fall down again? Makes sense. What my child said makes too much sense. If Newton saw this, he probably wouldn't be able to hold down his coffin. What does this have to do with Newton? Did you go to school upstairs? That's right. It's the Darley Park effect. What are you talking about? The Darley Park effect? Do you know the Pythagorean theorem? It has nothing to do with this. Ha ha ha. The water buddies are all talented. But isn't this just good karma? As the saying goes, the opponent's adversity is certainly scary. But the water friend's flirting is even more disturbing. Tong Jin Cheng seemed to understand a little bit why dull little sister had become that way after finishing the mic with Lu Chilian. He was now a bit worried that he would also become that way. And wouldn't really be looking for a girl to be his dog. Right? As for Lu Chi, who destroyed three anti-aircraft vehicles in a row. The road ahead was already unobstructed. Although this regiment of the Northern Alliance is well equipped. It is impossible to move so many anti-aircraft vehicles at once. Not to mention that there are not so many airplanes. Let's just say that this thing is very valuable. Moving so much if it is damaged is not good. As for the snipers of the Northern Alliance here. It is even more impossible to rely on sniper rifles to kill Luchi and others. Luchi acted extremely fast and was able to accurately lock onto the group's position every time. Boom 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 dash. In his dual wielding state. He even managed to take care of both sides with one person. A shot on the left. A shot on the right. Hitting the opposite side without the slightest bit of resistance. Andrew had wanted to help. But seeing Lu Chi like this. He didn't know whether to do it or not. If you do this. You'll make me look like a fool. Solely he gritted his teeth and decided that he didn't care. Let's contact the soldiers trapped in the center of the community first. This is 460th Regiment Commander Andrew. Please report when you receive it. Report. What's the situation now? Andrew voiced out while at the end of the holographic screen. It was blurry in there, but an electromagnetic tone soon came through. The blurry black screen also revealed the face of a big hairy company commander. Report, report chief, we can receive. He was speaking poorly and gasping for air, seeing that he had just been through a big battle. Chief, our neighborhood is now full of Northern Alliance personnel, and it's been completely blocked off, so the drones can't fly up there. They'll be shot down any time, he reported. From the holographic screen, Andrew looked at the scene of a mess in the vicinity and also looked grave. With that, he turned his gaze to Lu Chi. Lu Chi, contact the people on your side as well. Let's mobilize our soldiers to break out and meet us on our side, so that the rendezvous can be speeded up. When Lu Chi heard this, he also turned his head and affirmed. Okay, no problem. After saying that, he took a sniper in one hand to casually point and shoot, while picking up his cell phone and switching to the substream. There, Moro's Peter and the others, too, had converged early calling the 1314th Regiment's Presence Company. Please reply if you receive. Now, join up with the 460th Regiment and prepare to break out at my command. Lu Chi transmitted his voice to the regiment. Hearing Lu Chi's voice through the receiver, Moros and Peter and the others all brightened up. Copy that, Regimental Commander. Thus, after receiving Lu Chi's dispatch, all the remaining members of the five companies, once they joined up with the people on Andrew's side, they prepared to break out in the direction Luchi's two men were coming from. Andrew, at this moment, was also showing his clinical ability as a commander. Line up according to the original formation. Split a few platoons to spread out on both sides. Pay attention not to be sneak attacked. Under Andrew's command, the originally scattered army began to straighten up. And observing the movements of the two regiments, the Northern Alliance soldiers also pressed up at once. 
relying on the alley fighting method to blockade their regiments. At this time, the main force was walking within the streets, and Andrew was thinking about how to formulate a strategy when he saw this. At this time, Lucci had already preemptively opened his mouth. Moros pay attention to the apartment building on the left. Throw incendiary bombs over there. Moros was carrying his gun and was leading the team slowly forward. But after hearing Lucci's voice, he nodded fiercely and pulled out an incendiary bomb without hesitation. Roger that. Andrew was staring intently at the screen, and the company commander under him was right behind the group, only to see Moros directly throw an incendiary bomb over, and in an instant the first floor of the apartment burst into flames. What? Incendiary bomb? Wow. No good it's on fire. It's an incendiary bomb. It's hot. Run. 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 It's hot. There were pig-like cries from the apartment, and after the incendiary bomb was thrown, a group of Northern League soldiers tumbled out covered in fire. Seeing the scene with his own eyes, Andrew's pupils dilated in disbelief. He looked at Lu Chi again, completely confused as to how he knew there were people nearby. Quick, fire, and seeing the crowd rushing out, the head of the 460th Regiment and the others also reacted from their shock. A series of beep 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 sounds rang out, and bullets poured out from the guns. In less than two seconds, all of the Northern Alliance soldiers who had jumped out of the apartment fell to the ground. It's not a brother bud. That said, is this really a beaver? We don't even know what's inside that apartment when we look at it from a straight line perspective. How can the anchor know there's an ambush? This my family child still play a set of trade off? This game doesn't count if the opposite side of the field is open. Hey, why can't the other side afford to play? I told you, the anchor can't predict? Do you want to see what you're talking about upstairs? This is called prejudgment. The water friends argued, pointing straight at the live broadcast. Continuing on, Lucci and Andrew's two regiments encountered an ambush by enemy snipers. The intricate streets, inside the buildings, it was impossible to get the direction. The people had to rely on cover to hide. So many snipers, alley warfare is really troublesome. Seeing this, Andrew also felt tricky. That's why he quickly had the remaining snipers in the regiment press on, similarly preparing to shoot each other, at least to ensure that they didn't lose in terms of aura. But what about Lu Chi's side? He immediately opened his mouth, and his words traveled into the ears of Kirill and Thor. Kirill, 12 o'clock on the ninth floor of the building. 4, 2 o'clock glass balcony. Fire. Boom boom dash. Two bullets were fired in succession. From the position marked by Lu Chi, two Northern Alliance snipers were shot and fell down from the tall building one after another. Seeing this scene, the 460th Regiment snipers who were just about to strike were inevitably surprised. Almost in an instant, two enemy snipers had actually fallen. Andrew, who was next to him, was also incredibly shocked when he saw Lu Chi commanding like this. Previously, when he heard his subordinates say that, he was still just a bit incredulous, even with a little doubt. Until this moment, personally stood beside Lu Chi, saw him commanding his subordinates to instantly second the Northern Alliance soldiers. Andrew was really stupid. So many intricate buildings, Lu Chi in the end how to find out where the enemy snipers? The key is, he can also command two hits? And next, there was no need for him to make a move at all. Lu Chi's command speed was accelerating non-stop. Two o'clock. 5th floor, 12 o'clock green turf. Maros and Thor were continuously switching bullets and firing under Lucci's mobilization. There were occasional screams from the neighborhood, and puddles of plasma could be seen bursting out in various places. Placed beside the two, Andrew's sniper here. The whole stayed in place not knowing what to do. Even Andrew himself, also forgot to command. Boom! As the last shot fell, Lucci watched and was quite satisfied. Alright, almost cleaned up. Andrew slowed down from his shock and scanned the room. The vibration of the sniper rifle had definitely stopped. Another incredible scene. There was no holding back. It was actually happening right in front of Andrew's eyes. All the snipers ambushed in the alleyway were really all cleared out by Lu Chi. Oh, well, he replied woodenly. May open two degrees of Brother Meng. What is the second degree of Mei Kai? Obviously is not open two degrees. Upstairs we'll talk just say more. Iting, Houting, where's the guy who said the anchor was dead? I'm not sure if you're a good sport, but I'm a good sport. Anchor, win, 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 win. The child Jincheng, who has already finished his meal, now packs the lunchbox and throws it away, sitting on the seat to watch the live broadcast. Good. Lu Chi is once again killing madness. Unexpected. But it also made Tong Jincheng's mind explode. How long has this day been on the air? If he was to fight like this, there was no enemy army on the road that could stop him. If you let Lu Chi reach that high wall in less than half a day, won't you really become a clown? However, what Tong Jincheng was worried about was of course what the Northern Alliance was worried about here. Unsurprisingly, 
After the main force had advanced all the way through, the Northern Alliance's heavy equipment arrived, reporting to the commander. We're close, still about three kilometers or so to go, Peter shouted into the receiver. Staying in the helicopter, Lucci also understood that the two sides were very close, just about three kilometers away. But suddenly at Peter's place, a track mixing sound rang out. What kind of movement? Moros realized what was going on and his vision urgently scanned the surrounding area. In the park, suddenly from the trees in the front, came a tank surrounded by many soldiers of the Northern Alliance. No, even Peter sensed it. The sound of tracks appeared not only from the tank coming from the distance, but also from the streets on both sides, and even near the wigwam. It's the Northern Alliance's tanks coming. Take cover, Moro shouted, and all the soldiers of the 1314th Regiment followed and scattered. Immediately after that, sure enough, a high explosive bomb nine shot over, causing a large explosion at the center point. At Andrew's place, some of the soldiers who didn't react were instantly blown away. Northern Alliance Tank Company? Andrew saw the situation within the screen, and his eyes came closer. Scanning around, fortunately the company commander who had communicated with him was fine, but after this bombardment, the surrounding area was already in a mess. Damn it, it's clear that flanking units have been released to attract attention. Why does the Northern Alliance's tank company still know that our main force is over here? Andrew couldn't figure it out and had to order his subordinates. Go inward. Pay attention to find spacious houses to hide in. The armored company will be able to pack over soon. Pay attention to detouring. Andrew's tank company wasn't nearby, so he gathered with Lu Chi and only sent a team of armored companies, needing to escort the main force forward. The armored company had been deployed to the sides again by Andrew, and now they could only grab and move back. However, he didn't have a tank company. Lu Chi did. Don't worry, our support has arrived. After Lu Chi said that, Andrew frowned with a puzzled look on his face. But suddenly, he seemed to remember something and hurriedly looked at the screen. Sure enough, after the Northern Alliance tank company moved out, there was another sound of tracks, the next second, accompanied by a boom of a cannon. The Northern Alliance tank at their front exploded instantly. Andrew quickly rotated his screen just in time to see a cloud of dust rising in the distance, and the Tai Tai T-80 was heading this way at high speed. He was dumbfounded at once. Vehicle 3, fire at 4 o'clock. Car number 1, 12 o'clock position directly ahead. Without the slightest trace of abrasion, Lucci began maneuvering the battlefield the moment the T-80 tank company arrived. Roger Commander, sitting on top of the tank, the company commander of the tank company shouted out. Immediately, several tanks quickly turned their gun barrels to fire continuously according to the direction indicated by Lucci. The Northern Alliance tank company had already formed an encirclement. Unexpectedly, when they were just getting complacent, they realized that a group of tanks had suddenly emerged from their rear, and they were being counter-encircled. Rumble. Uninterrupted explosions resounded all around. Vehicle number two. Accelerate forward and crash directly into it. Lucci shouted out in a loud voice once again. Hearing this, Andrew directly turned his head to look at him. Is this how tanks are used? Can people listen to you? However, after receiving Lucci's order, the second vehicle did not hesitate for a second to push the lever and ram straight towards a Taipei Allied tank in front of it. Only hearing a rumble, the Northern Alliance tank was quickly flipped over. Seeing this, Andrew couldn't even help but open his mouth wide. The soldiers of the two regiments, at this time, had also taken refuge behind their bunkers to witness Lucci's single-handedly counter-enveloping massacre situation. Of course, after understanding what was going on, Kirill and Thor didn't forget to shoot in support and help clean up the ordinary Northern Alliance soldiers, but these images fell into Andrew's eyes, and he was simply god-awful. Tanks can still play like this? When a bumper car crashes through, what's the point of having its gun? Andrew's operation by Sister Lu Chi was completely only, as if it had torn apart his worldview. But just at this time, the distance suddenly sounded a burst of tires speeding sound. Andrew frowned, the sound seemed familiar, so he looked violently to the side through the holographic screen. Ha! Huh? Andrew instantly lit up. Sure enough, it was his armored company coming through. But immediately after, he seemed to realize that something was wrong. The company commander in one of the armored vehicles poked his head out as if he was waving and calling out something. Andrew couldn't hear. The distance was too great. Nay gradually, as the distance grew closer, it was no longer necessary to hear what he was shouting, because following behind the group of armored vehicles, there was a line of speeding Northern Alliance tanks, and self-propelled artillery vehicles. What? Tanks? Self-propelled artillery? Andrew opened his mouth wide, marveling at how the armored company under his command had lured the North Alliance tanks and self-propelled artillery vehicles over. And at that moment, he also received a message from over there through his communicator. Report leader. Report leader. 
Our convoy is halfway. Attacked by the North Alliance's synthesized company, requesting immediate assistance. As he spoke, the tanks in the rear of the Northern Alliance opened fire and another speeding armored vehicle exploded. Andrew, on the other hand, let out a TSK with an ugly face. They met an ambush halfway. Wouldn't they have informed in time and made a detour to go somewhere else? Instead, without any judgment at all, they rushed over here towards the main force. They were originally told to come to support, but as a result, they were now once again being encircled. Look, it's our reinforcements arriving. De Mao's side is encircled by us again. Ha ha ha. Fire the cannons and match the assault with the outlying troops. And upon seeing the reinforcements arrive, the few remaining Taipei Alliance tanks and the crowd of soldiers all of a sudden braved up as well. They picked up their weapons again and began to cooperate with the outer circle from the inside. At the same time, when they sensed the arrival of a new round of enemy troops, Luchi and Andrew, the members of both regiments, felt that it was particularly tricky. The North Alliance tank company that had just arrived was now joined by two armored composite companies. On the other side, the commander of this North Alliance regiment was looking into the distance with binoculars. He was satisfied with his masterpiece, and sure enough being patient was the right thing to do. If he hadn't waited any longer and directly attacked Andrew's armored company, how could he come over and take the enemy's main force all at once? This time, this army of big hair is not going to be able to fly. Putting down his binoculars, that commander of the Northern Alliance muttered being sandwiched by several packs, what else could they do to break out? On the contrary, on Lu Qi and Andrew's side, Lu Qi also gave a quick order. Attention all troops, split up in squads, be careful not to concentrate together, so as not to be completely annihilated by artillery fire. Roger that. At the time of emergency, the entire regiment moved at a rapid pace. Under Lu Qi's call to action, the entire regiment disintegrated at once. Utilizing the advantages of alley warfare and spreading out to ambush at various locations. Even Lu Qi's tank company chose to find a nearby bunker to hide in after seeing the enemy encirclement. Andrew looked at his own side of the armored company. There were not many people left. Basically only a wreckage. Only the company commander with two vehicles managed to hide behind a bunker. This isn't the way to go. Sooner or later we're going to get wiped out here. Andrew explained. When Lu Qi saw this, he shook his head with a relaxed expression. Not so much. Besides, aren't we almost at the scene? After saying that, he then picked up the sniper rifle in his hand again. The waterbenders at the scene saw the scene and quickly expressed their shock. So many tanks? And what's that? A gun carriage? I'm a bit panicked. The live broadcast room is full of dust. I can't even see the screen. I'm a little worried about whether the anchor will be shot down in the past. This gun carriage can shoot up to the height of a helicopter, right? Although ordinary gun trucks are not as good as anti-aircraft guns. It is definitely not a problem to reach the height of helicopters. Seeing this, Tong Jinchang also immediately put his head together. However, Lu Qi didn't panic a bit after seeing the image in the distance. He just skillfully loaded the sniper rifle before he started raising it for aiming. Boom dash, a shot was fired, which impartially hit into the barrel of a self-propelled artillery vehicle, exploding the instant the shell was fired. The hot flames caused Andrew, who was beside him, to freeze for a second. Lu Qi, on the other hand, told the driver to move closer to the side of his several company commanders. Gradually, the distance between the two sides became closer and closer. Arriving near Moros and Kirill, they were forced into a building. A tank was guarding the bottom, pushing the group into a corner. Moros and Kirill were guarding the second floor, watching the high explosives continue to fire from the tank's gun barrels, but they were unable to counterattack. There were rifles set up all over the outside, and as soon as they poked their heads in, the Northern Alliance soldiers would start strafing. Just then, however, a dark shadow swept across the sky, and in the process a rocket landed, in front of Moro's and Kirill's eyes. The rocket hit the tank's fuel tank, instantly triggering an explosion that ignited a huge fire. Rumble dash. The Northern Alliance soldiers were blown away by the explosion without realizing it. Those who didn't die were covered in flames and were running desperately. It's burning. I'm super. It's burning up. There's an enemy attack. Watching this scene unfold, Moro's and Kirill looked up in unison and both saw Lu Qi on the helicopter, waving to them. For a moment, both of them were shocked, and immediately waved as if to tell Lu Qi that this side was fine. Then, without waiting for Lu Qi's command, the two men led the big hair soldiers and began to shoot to clear the downstairs. The helicopter swept past and soon flew over Thor. Seeing that he was surrounded by a group of soldiers from the Northern Alliance, Lu Qi chose the dual gun mode and fired a burst of shots at the ground. Thor had no idea what to do, but in a fierce blink of an eye, after a dozen consecutive gunshots, the North Alliance soldiers in front of him fell to the ground in response. He immediately stared wide-eyed to make sure he hadn't misread the situation. 
but the truth was true. In just a single breath, all the Northern Alliance soldiers surrounding him had all fallen. Thor subconsciously raised his head to watch and spotted Luchi standing at the hatchway, holding dual guns, witnessing his series of operations. What remained in Tor's heart today was only incredulity. He had begun to think that Lu Qi was very powerful. After all, under Lu Qi's command, he had reached the miracle of gunshot headshots. But now, Thor felt that he had thought wrong, simply very wrong. Lu Qi wasn't powerful at all. He was heaven defying. As a sniper, Tor understood the difficulty of sniping. But Lu Qi actually do not have to aim in the case, but also dual wielding sniper rifle? It was the first time since the beginning of time. Seeing the helicopters of the two men fly by, Thor could not calm down for a long time. In the end, the only thing left for Luchi to find was Peter. As he looked around during the traveling process, he locked onto an abandoned park with a single glance. At this moment, Peter was leading a squad that was relying on cover to hide around in the park. Directly in front of them, there was a North Alliance tank, protected by North Alliance soldiers advancing forward. There were also self-propelled artillery guns all around, which were bombing the park indiscriminately. Peter was looking unusually hard up here, his minds having run out earlier in the rush. The members under his command, who also had no minds on them, had incendiary bombs at best. In this way, there was no way to break the tank armor with just incendiary bombs or bullets. Company commander, we're almost out of the park. If we go further back, there will be a vacuum with no cover. The big hairy soldier beside Peter said anxiously. He understood what it meant. If they were pushed back further by the enemy and waited until there was a vacuum without cover they would be lambs to the slaughter. A random cannon shot would kill them all. However, if they stayed where they were and didn't move, waiting for the opposite side to break through sooner or later wasn't an option. Then, a counterattack must be prepared. Peter thought about this and turned his eyes to the backpack on his side. There were no grenades, but he still had an emergency pack of explosives on him. As long as the explosive pack was thrown over and the explosion was activated, it would be able to cause some damage to the tank. The only difference was that the explosive pack was not like a grenade. This distance was too far, there was no way to accurately throw it near the tank, and it might even be kicked back by the other side. So Peter made a decision and prepared to bring the explosive packets there himself. Company commander, this is, an explosive packet? Similarly, as Peter took out the explosive packet, a group of big hairy soldiers also noticed it. Company commander, you shouldn't be? Seeing Peter's attitude, they seemed to understand what Peter was going to do, and Peter didn't hide it and nodded frankly. I'll transport the explosive packages. When you guys see that I'm almost there, you can just detonate it. At those words, although the people present had expected it, they couldn't help but be surprised in their hearts. At this moment, Luchi and Andrew's helicopter had already flown into the sky not far away. While listening to their conversation and watching Peter's actions, Luchi was directly good guy. This acting skill was really high? If he wasn't a local player with himself, then Luchi really had to admire the other party. There was nothing to say about professionalism. Just take a three or four thousand dollars monthly salary. Actually still so dedicated. I don't know. I really thought I saw the scene of heroes sacrificing their lives. Then looking at Peter's teammates. When they heard he was going to do it. Their acting skills also soared. No way company commander. Not to say whether we can run to it or not. Even if we do. There's no chance to come back after that detonation. Yes company commander. We can still call for backup. Lucci looked on and had to marvel at these lads. They really got into the swing of things in a second. I don't know how they were able to hold it in and not laugh in this situation. It was worthy of being a real-life CS organized by Demao. The quality of NPC was just high. However, Luchi thought about it and let it go. It's better to hurry up and settle this side for them to stop acting. We're surrounded. The others can't rush over it this time. We can only rely on ourselves to solve it. Peter said gruffly. He only had one thought right now. Even if there are millions of people, I will go. But honestly, in Lu Qi's eyes, this was simply his middle-aged soul burning. I'm going. With a word, Peter picked up the explosive bag and prepared to get up. Unexpectedly, he had only just stood up when a rocket fell in the distance, accurately smashing at the tank's fuel tank. Not good. Rocket. Dodge. The Northern Alliance soldiers shouted at the sight, but they were still a step too slow. Only an explosion rang out, and the powerful shockwave blew everyone out. Unsurprisingly, the tank also exploded right in front of Peter's eyes turning into a pile of scrap metal. He was instantly confused and stood still for a moment. In the next second, the Northern Alliance soldiers who were not seriously injured climbed up and quickly picked up their guns in preparation for a counterattack. Peter realized and was about to reach for his gun. Who knew that several more sniper bullets were flying from the sky? Boom boom boom. Accompanied by the continuous sound of firing, 
The only remaining Northern Alliance soldiers were also swept away. Peter, full of surprise, looked in the direction of the shots and recognized Lucci at a glance. Not only had he come over with support, he was also holding dual guns. Obviously, the series of operations just now were all done by Lucci. Peter was in deep shock, and even the explosive packet in his hand dropped involuntarily. The teammates around him saw him not moving and heard the explosion also immediately got up. However, the scene in front of him caused the crowd to follow and freeze. Peter had never envisioned that his commander was not only strong in command, but also ridiculously strong in single combat? What was he doing just now? Holding two sniper rifles in his hands and strafing the ground? No need to aim? HM, what's that sound? Suddenly, Peter heard another noise of speeding tires. When he recalled what it was, it was already too late. Rumble dash. Two self-propelled artillery vehicles rushed to the scene and fired continuously at the helicopters high in the sky. It's self-propelled anti-aircraft vehicles. Duck. Peter opened his mouth and just wanted to contact Lu Chi through his communicator. Who would have thought that Lu Chi was faster? And under his mobilization, the helicopter had already pulled up first. The two shells unsurprisingly hit crookedly and even crashed into the friendly area, inadvertently causing casualties on their side. Lu Chi, on the other hand, did not hesitate to fire his twin guns continuously the moment the helicopter pulled up. The Northern Alliance soldier on the ground who was responsible for driving the self-propelled gun carriage was accurately pierced by a bullet. The gunner who was trying to fire his gun also lost his chance and fell down after a few consecutive shots. Peter just stared at this scene, his entire lip trembling. As for the remaining self-propelled gun carriage, Lu Chi also loaded a bazooka in the right direction and immediately shattered it with a single shot. From start to finish, Lu Chi showed a relaxed look. It was as if it wasn't like a life and death encounter, but merely a game. Andrew, who had followed Lu Chi around and watched his various anticlimactic operations, had almost become numb. This was the end result that everyone who stayed by Lu Chi's side would experience. Peter, on the other hand, who was seeing it for the first time, was just scared out of his wits. He had reminded Lu Chi not to come over at that time because he was afraid that Lu Chi would meet with an accident. But now, it seemed that he had overthought it. Lu Chi's single combat ability was definitely stronger than his command ability. Alas, my heart aches for my child. The dream of victory has gone down the drain again. As the saying goes, the greater the expectation, the greater the disappointment. I'd better forget about it, my child. In fact, it's not bad for the grandmaster to be a girl's dog. Earn money, don't be shy. Tong Jinchang saw the pop-up screen, are about to dry to the red temperature. I'm not sure if that's a problem, but I'm not sure if it's a problem. It's a matter of being a dog. Why don't you guys try to be one? At this moment, Tong Jinchang somewhat regretted boasting at that time. He promised that as long as Lu Chi arrived at the high wall and survived for one day, he would become a dog. Nowadays, it seemed that the dog could not even be a dog without being a dog. And after finally finding Peter, Lu Chi began to organize a counterattack. With the help of several talents, he could see where almost every enemy on the scene was. Even with the huge gap in equipment, he still had the ability to fight. Soldiers of the entire regiment, listen to the order. Immediately follow the route I have set and prepare for a counterattack. As soon as Lu Chi spoke, multiple announcements came from below. Roger. However, Andrew did not understand what Lu Chi was up to, so he looked at him with a puzzled expression. Unbeknownst to him, the next thing Andrew would personally see was a strategic advance that would completely subvert his perception. Lu Chi first divided the entire regiment into three groups. One group with half of the tank company closing in on the right side to break through. The enemy commander was observing the battlefield, and noticing Lu Chi's course of action, he thoughtfully deployed his troops to intercept them, but the moment the two sides met, the other two groups temporarily fused and launched an onslaught on the weakened area. It was just like what was written in the books, one of the 36 stratagems, sounding out the east and striking the west, reporting to the chief, it's bad, our left battlefield is under heavy enemy attack, chief, it's bad. The left battlefield is hard to resist and has been torn apart. Just as the two armies on the right met, the head of the Northern Alliance that received a message from his subordinates asking for help, learning that the right side hadn't even started the battle yet, but the left side was suddenly attacked, he was confused for a moment. Could it be that the main force of the Allied forces on the right was just a decoy? What the opponent really wanted to attack was the left side? Reporting a leader, the enemy's main force did not launch a general attack. After they approached us, they started slowly retreating and detouring again. At this time, a piece of news came again. The Northern Alliance leader's brows furrowed at the news, and he was suddenly more convinced of his thoughts. It was the decoy. The main force on the right was just a decoy sent by Big Mouse side. Their real target was on the left side. At my command, the entire army mobilizes to the left. 
we must stop the other side. Roger. With his order, the Northern Alliance's main force stopped chasing after them and instead turned around and moved over towards the left. Here on the left side of the battlefield, the Northern Alliance army that had lost its main force was simply unable to compete with Lu Qi and the others, and was beaten back. Andrew stood by the side, watching Lu Qi operate with immense exhilaration. Awesome. Fighting in multiple fronts appeared to be distracting the enemy's attention, allowing the main force to break out. In fact, the main force was the one used for distraction, while all the scattered soldiers were the real main force. Caught off guard, the North Alliance can't hold off the left side of the battlefield at all. It would still be a while before the reinforcements from the right side could make it over, allowing them to consume quite a few of the Northern Alliance troops in the community. However, just as Andrew was sighing at Lu Qi's reversal of fortune, he felt something once again. It's possible. All troops on the left battlefield, prepare for a strategic retreat to the right side. Allied forces on the right side move forward and attack the enemy rear at all costs. As soon as Lu Qi spoke, a burst of sound came from behind the communicator. However, when Andrew next to him saw Lu Qi's set of operations, he was once again confused. The situation on the left was great, so why did he withdraw his troops to the right again? However, he did not ask, because slowly when the Northern Alliance soldiers turned to the left, he understood why. Unsurprisingly, the main force of the Northern Alliance directly swooped in, and as for the retreating main force on the right, they took advantage of this gap to advance in a wave. It was important to realize that the right half of the community was where the heavy firepower of the entire Northern Alliance regiment was located. Most of the self-propelled artillery was in this location, and it was also the key spot used to blockade the community. Not seeing that the left side was torn open with a rift, the Northern Alliance commander wouldn't send his main force to support the left side, and this move by land enable was simple, lure the tiger away from the mountain, with the main force all lured away, the heavy equipment was left unprotected, under Andrew's horrified gaze, the right side of the army drove straight into the enemy's rear, a series of attacks, straight to the enemy's many heavy weapons, there were even northern alliance soldiers who immediately abandoned their vehicles and fled when they learned that the enemy was attacking from their front, Andrew couldn't believe it, Luchi could actually be one step ahead and anticipate the other side's movements, he was also able to react accurately. On the other hand, the Northern Alliance commander there, once again informed of the frontline battle report. Even his expression was at a loss for a moment. You, what did you say? The enemy's forces on the left side of the battlefield have all withdrawn? And then, their main force repatriated again and hit the rear of our army? The Northern Alliance commander's pupils were constantly contracting and the scout who was in front of him to pass on the message also had an ugly look on his face at this moment. Also, and commander, most of our army's heavy equipment, has been destroyed or captured by the enemy. Learning this news once again, that commander of the Northern Alliance's eyes reddened and he almost didn't pass out from anger. Blockading the Demao soldiers in the community relied on these heavy equipment. Without them, there was no absolute dominance. How else could the blockade be enforced? Why? Would this group of big hairy soldiers suddenly have a surge in combat power? The Northern Alliance commander roared. Then, he felt that he couldn't go on like this. The most taboo thing in battlefield gaming was to be led by the nose by the enemy army. He had to get his rhythm back. Solely, the Northern Alliance commander ordered the army to spread out flat and blockade every place. Once which side was attacked, the entire army would encircle and completely encircle part of Luchi's army. As for the other side, it was better to completely let it go first or else they wouldn't be able to get the initiative at the moment. On Lu Qi's side, he obviously saw the other side's intentions as well. However, he still chose to send 70% of his army to attack at a random location in order to scare the snakes. The remaining 30% of the military force, just like what the other party said, drove straight in with almost no Northern Alliance soldiers to stop them. Andrew, as the commander, could only watch the battle at the moment with a confused look on his face. That's right he realized that he had absolutely no idea where to intervene. The water friends in the live broadcast room were also excited by Luchi's string of operations. I'm going to go. The anchor even used the 36 stratagems. Good ah good ah. Beauty plan must be arranged for me. The current anchor is really rolled ah. Play a real CS also engaged in the history board. Even the 36 stratagems are up to the hole. Ha 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 ha. With the anchor in, Shu Han will prosper ah. I am directly ordered by the sky. Both life eternal. Looking around, Lu Qi here is still very calm. The North Alliance side is completely killed red eye. After learning that 70% of Lu Qi's troops are attacking a point, the rest of the Northern Alliance soldiers spread out all over the place have gathered. They attacked towards Lu Qi's main force in an encircling circle. Andrew was panicking as he watched from the side, but gradually he realized that something was not right. Lu Qi didn't choose to clash hard with the opposite side, but
but instead started to retreat by relying on the huge size of the community and the advantage of alley warfare. The opposite side initially pursued ferociously, but the deeper he went, the more he realized that it was difficult. Lu Qi utilized the knowledge of his predecessors and ruthlessly showed them a wave of flower grower charm. To wait for the laborers, darkness, throwing bricks to attract jade, cicada shells, under a series of operations by the main force, no matter how the Northern Alliance army encircled and chased them, they could never take down Lu Qi's main force. Andrew at the side has long watched stupid, this is all he has not seen the means, even he is sure that the books taught, but also absolutely not as fierce as Lu Qi's method of fighting, relying on the advantage of alley fighting. The main force of the Northern Alliance was almost dragged down by him. During the process, there was a Northern Alliance company commander who had contacted the rear, asking for a temporary withdrawal of the blockade. Unfortunately, the North Alliance leader has long been red warm, and the other side are released. Now withdraw again will also lose more. How can he withdraw? As a result, went deep into the center. But instead the main force of the Northern Alliance was trapped. In such a situation, both armies were in a stalemate. But the head of the Northern Alliance forgot one thing. That was that the 30% of the army that he had let go, after attacking the rear, did not continue forward. They gave up the chance to destroy the heavy weapons and instead began to repatriate under Lu Qi's mobilization, to catch a turtle in a jar. Meanwhile, when the Northern Alliance commander noticed the repatriation of the remaining troops, it was already too late. The remaining 30% of De Mao's soldiers raided from the enemy's rear, utilizing all types of heavy weapons to completely block off the path of retreat. The trapped Northern Alliance troops realized that something was wrong, but the connection with the rear had been completely cut off. At Lu Qi's command, the main force, which was still retreating, blew the horn for a general attack. Noticing that the distant artillery fire was coming continuously and more and more Damao soldiers were launching raids, the Northern Alliance side was really panicking. They walked into a trap. From being the encircling party at the beginning, they have step by step become the anti-surrounded party. In an instant, the helicopters swept by, and even Lucci took action and fired a few shots. Andrew followed Lucci's side, still not moving a muscle. He watched Lucci step by step, from a disadvantage, in an almost unbelievable way, encircle the enemy army. Until now, he had completely gained control. Andrew couldn't believe his eyes. He was sure that even if the most senior commander of Big Mao came over, he would be as incredibly exasperated as he was. Because the person who can do this thing is still unheard of. What the hell? This is a turnaround? It's too easy. Can the anchor do more work? I'm bored. What's the point of the main characters killing? I've filled up my coins. And if I don't do some more work, I'll just have to give them to the other side. Lu Qi live room. Water friends a piece of habitual appearance. Let Tong Jin Chang is a headache. They really do not feel outrageous at all? This kind of can be given to play overturned. The opposite side of the water. Right. Tong Jin Chang how to feel. The opposite side in accordance with the meaning of Lu Qi to come? But in fact, he did not feel wrong. It's just that the other side wasn't following Lu Qi, but rather Lu Qi knew their course of action and struck early every time, thus creating an illusion. On the other hand, on the other side, in the Northern Alliance commander, when he learned about the news from the battlefield he had his head exploded even more. What are you telling me? Because some of the enemy troops repatriated. Our army was counter-encircled? The intelligence soldier in charge of the briefing didn't speak, only nodding slightly. Didn't I tell you guys to watch? They repatriated. Why don't I have any news here? The Northern Alliance commander's eyes widened. Upon hearing this, that Northern Alliance intelligence soldier could only speak tremblingly. Commander, we did keep an eye on it. But the scouts who were responsible for passing on the message, all, all of them have been wiped out. As the words came out of his mouth, the Northern Alliance commander tilted his head and gazed at him with an incredulous look. Wiped out? What the hell does that mean? If you were to say that a main battle army had been completely wiped out, he could more or less understand. But that was a scout. Ah, it was a tracking and scouting mission, not even needing to make a move. Why would they be wiped out? Reporting to the commander. That is indeed the case. And we just received a briefing from our main force. Our army's damage has exceeded half, and we're about to be routed. It's being, in the process of requesting support from us. When these words came out, that commander of the Northern Alliance, almost fell to the ground without standing still. Still, the intelligence officer beside him rushed forward to help him. The latter was unable to accept this fact. Originally, the perfect encirclement could have wiped out nearly a regiment of Dim Mao soldiers. And yet, it ended up diffusing into this? But what he didn't know was that Lu Qi possessed the ability to control the entire scene. It was true that the scouts were hidden. Usually even the soldiers on the scene could not be detected, not to mention the commander. However, in Lu Qi's eyes, 
they were simply like having a thermal imager on, with every move within view. As long as Lu Qi casually said something, he could have his subordinates solve them all, without receiving intelligence. It was naturally impossible for the Northern Alliance to take emergency measures. At this moment, the Northern Alliance commander had already forced himself to calm down. He understood that trying to reinforce the trap troops was not an option, as he currently had no more usable soldiers on hand. Calling for support from other regiments was just a thought. So he was ruthless, since he was going to lose. He couldn't at least let the opposite side win. Now there was only one way left, and that was to bombard that location indiscriminately while De Mao was besieging his men's army. Normally, the two armies would not bomb during the course of battle, just for fear of bombing their own people. Nay special times, special practices, he felt that he could at least save a bit of face by doing so. Go, at my command command down, get all artillery companies ready, to the target location, conduct indiscriminate bombardment. As the words fell, beside the Northern Alliance commander, the intelligence officer froze on the spot. Commander, conduct, indiscriminate bombing, just listen to my order indiscriminate bombing, his voice was decisive, leaving no room for doubt in the side, the intelligence officer nodded with a two-second hesitation and had no choice but to do as he was told, understood, in an instant, a rocket launcher, and howitzer spread out on the edge of the neighborhood was set up, the gunners turned the barrels in unison, aiming all the guns in a parabolic manner at the center of the community, there was a brutal firefight going on here, but there was no doubt that the northern alliance was being overwhelmed one way or the other, Seeing that nearly half of the Northern Alliance soldiers had been killed in action, before they could wait for support, they all developed the will to surrender. Lu Qi, on the other hand, was flirting with the live broadcast water friends. Seeing them say it's no fun to live the whole Lu Qi pondered a little for a moment. Brothers, all want to see the whole live right? Anchor thought of how to get, immediately give you a big one. Lu Qi narrated. As soon as he opened his mouth, the live broadcast room brushed up pop-ups, and even Tong Jincheng couldn't sit still. Really want a whole life, and a big one? Anchor quietly tell me, how big? I'm the emperor, why can't I have a royal accent everywhere? I'm the emperor, why can't I talk like an emperor? I'm the emperor, why can't I have an emperor's accent? That's a good point, the emperor should brush his gifts, how can he perform without gifts? After saying that, Lu Qi's live broadcast room floated up a series of gifts. Tong Jincheng blinked his eyes and stared at the screen. The whole big live? How big? But right at this moment. Before the water friends could react, or even the Northern Alliance soldiers could surrender. At the edge of the sky, a sudden sound of a missile launch breaking through the air rang out. What's going on? The sound of a missile launch breaking through the air. How could there be such a sound? Hearing the untimely sound ring out, the soldiers here in the Northern Alliance chose to turn their heads to look. Not only them, even a group of big hair soldiers briefly stopped. Andrew naturally needless to say, standing high up in the sky this burst of sound he heard the most truly and it was still going on and on, the scene instantly all went quite quiet, only Lu Qi pulled out his communicator, he contacted the rear artillery company without hesitation in front of Andrew, attention first and second artillery company, please reply if you receive, please reply if you receive, now, prepare to bombard the area I have designated, indiscriminately, until I call a halt, as the words fell, there was not the slightest hesitation from the artillery company there, and bursts of receive came out, Andrew listened to Lu Qi wanting to indiscriminate bombardment again and looked back at him with confused eyes. Before, it was fine if his side was inside the building, but now that the two armies were so close to each other, if they were to bombard, would they still be able to control the distance accurately? However, he thought wrongly, Lu Qi was not preparing to bombard the enemy army at all. He was thinking of, going toe to toe with the opposite side's rockets and howitzers. Whom, suddenly, Andrew realized something and hurriedly turned his head towards the heights ahead accompanied by gusts of air-breaking sounds, first a little spark lit up, gradually, there were more and more sparks, nearly covering the entire sky, rockets, and, artillery shells, after Andrew noticed what it was, his pupils instantly contracted, rows of rockets and artillery shells flew in a wide range, almost covering the entire center of the community, even the helicopter they were riding in was among them, Andrew instantly panicked, he didn't understand what kind of madness the opposite commander had gone through, there were obviously still his own soldiers here, he actually engaged in carpet bombing, at the same time, the big hair and northern alliance soldiers at the bottom, when they realized that rockets and artillery shells were flying over their heads, they were also all terrified, rockets, and artillery shells, how could so many of them suddenly fly in, it was fired from our side, did the commander sell us out, how can that be, we still have so many people here, the northern alliance soldiers couldn't believe it, 
they were sold out just like that? This distance, this range, there was no possibility of escape, including the Damao soldiers at the scene. They were also astonished when they saw the rockets and artillery shells coming. The opposite side really didn't even care about the deaths of their own people? No, it's too late. Hurry up and accelerate. Get out of the bombing zone. Andrew reacted quickly and immediately called out to the pilot. The latter's hands were shaking badly, and after hearing Andrew's call, he hurriedly nodded his head and pulled the lever. I'm super. What's the situation? Missile wash? Brother Meng. This scene is so realistic. Those who don't know would think they are watching some epic movie. Oh my god. There are too many missiles. Won't give the anchor a wave of dry to the whole army, right? I feel like the anchor can't even run away by himself. The coverage area is really quite big. Standing in Lu Qi's position, the water friends can see the scene is also the most real. The scene of rockets falling from the sky, as if it were a natural disaster, was extremely realistic. Tong Jinchang was tempted to flirt a bit. After all, he felt that there was a real possibility that Lu Qi would have to mail it. However, he still held back. Past experience told him that he could not open the champagne at half time. And in fact, Lu Qi really wasn't ready to leave. Seeing that Andrew was ready to bolt, Lu Qi just pacified him not to panic yet. They can carpet bum. So can we. Listening to Lu Qi's words, Andrew looked like he suddenly remembered something and jerked his head back. Unsurprisingly, the sky on the other side also resounded with uninterrupted air breaking sounds. While wild winds swept through, Bromo look behind you. Is there something flying over behind you as well? It's true, there are rockets and artillery shells. This is a fucking anchor. Oh my god. Rockets? That's what the anchor is doing. In Lu Qi's perspective, the water users were the first to realize that there were rockets and artillery shells flying in, immediately followed by Tong Jincheng and Andrew. When they saw their side's artillery shells also bombarded, they immediately understood. Finally, Lu Qi gave an order to take cover, which went straight into the ears of the entire army. Pay attention to finding nearby shelters to take cover and try to get into the low houses, witnessing the artillery shells from both sides firing in unison. The soldiers who received the order could not think twice before they started to scatter for shelter. Retreat quickly. The shelling is coming. Grab onto the low houses and take cover. While the mouse side moved quickly, the Northern Alliance's soldiers were still frozen in place. With a wave of shelling, the Northern Alliance commander felt that victory was assured. After all, the range was so wide that the two sides in the middle of a firefight couldn't retreat first the end result would just be, being buried in the rubble altogether, but it wasn't until he picked up his binoculars and looked high above the bombing point that his entire body went numb, what, how could this happen, that's right, the rockets and artillery shells flying from behind Lu Qi, at the high altitude of the point where the two armies exchanged fire, they collided with another wave of artillery bombardment from their place, the rockets kept crashing into the rockets, and the artillery shells kept crashing into the artillery shells, all at once creating a chain of explosions that bloomed into a burst of fireworks high in the sky. Scattered sparks and debris showered the earth, and the great Mao soldiers who were watching the scene from the ground had their jaws dropped. The scene was spectacular. However, although most of the rockets and shells were shot down by Lu Qi, however, there were still quite a few sparks left, and some leftover shells that crashed into the ground. The Northern Alliance soldiers who didn't dodge in time weren't so lucky, as the flames ignited the lawn trees and the fires came out. As for Andrew or Tong Jincheng, they were simply staring at each other with small eyes. Tong Jinchang now understood what Lu Qi meant by fireworks. As for Andrew, who was literally incoherent, it turned out that Lu Qi had not called the artillery company first in order to bombard. On the contrary, he had sensed that the enemy artillery bombardment was about to arrive first, so he had bombarded with it. Under Lu Qi's wave of divine foresight, only a few artillery shells, or sparks, fell to the ground. The two groups of big hair didn't suffer any damage because they dodged well. Hanging on anchor, the magic counter bombardment was really not expected. I'm also great at intercepting shells in midair. Ha ha, ha ha, only magic can defeat magic. I can't, I'm just whoring myself out to an epic movie. I declare this wave. The anchor operation is full of dizziness. While enjoying the arrival of the gifts, the rockets and shells continued to fire. The two sides kept firing at each other, hitting the Northern Alliance artillery company almost running out of ammunition. The Northern Alliance officer stood at the rear with a look of uncertainty. How could this be possible? Who on earth came up with this strategy? It's fine if you intercepted the missiles, but he's got rockets and artillery shells here. How could they be intercepted? Using the same rockets and artillery shells? Reporting to the commander. Several of our company commanders on the inside have been completely lost. I'm afraid we've lost all of our dead and wounded. Commander, let's prepare for a strategic retreat. The intelligence officer beside him reported and gave excellent options. 
The Northern Alliance commander gritted his teeth fiercely upon hearing this, although his heart was not willing to do so, he could only withdraw his troops in this current situation. Go, inform Commander Beggs that our army failed the ambush here. Request his reinforcements. Yes, after saying that, the intelligence officers hurriedly withdrew. Unfortunately, Lucci wasn't prepared to let them go, and this commander of the Northern Alliance was just about to drive away. Suddenly he sensed something, and in the effort of turning back suddenly, a shell came head on. Cannonball? The two words just came out of his mouth, and he had no chance to react at all. A rumbling vibration rang out, and the shell exploded as it landed on the ground in response, and that Northern Alliance commander, too, was permanently submerged in the dust, and with the passage of time, the artillery company of the Northern Alliance here, finally sort of ran out of the last artillery shell, seeing that the artillery shells were exhausted, they didn't get the commander's next instruction, so they had to wait for orders, on the other side of the battlefield, seeing the opposite side's bombardment stop, Luchi here naturally chose to stop as well, but looking at the entire field, it had long been devastated, half of the neighborhood had been completely destroyed, and there was also a huge fire that stretched out to surround the area, luckily, the damage on the mouse side was not too great, and when they poked their heads out one after another, they realized that not only had the bombing stopped, even the people on the opposite side had all disappeared, this also meant that the northern alliance side had most likely been completely wiped out, the enemy army has disappeared, the bombing has also stopped, we won, yes, we won, our regiment is victorious, the commander is great, all thanks to the commander, all of a sudden, after sensing that the entire enemy army had collapsed, the Daimao soldiers present raised their guns in ecstasy, trapped in the large community, the entire regiment was originally in a state of near death, who knew that once Lu Qi came, he not only managed to break out, but also wiped out an enemy regiment in one fell swoop in the community, who would believe this performance, there was also that rocket barrage, if Andrew hadn't been right there and seen it with his own eyes, I'm afraid he would never have believed it in his life, an artillery company that can actually play like that? And the entire round played like this seemed to have only just satisfied Lu Qi's mind. Tong Jincheng knew that it was true that he couldn't open the champagne halfway through the game, or else he would easily be punched in the face. As a matter of fact, there were quite a few water users who were silenced by the dry right now, the opposite side of the rocket fire. That kind of picture is like a natural disaster. Should be a wave of group destruction is right ah. But what about Lu Qi? He also swept a wave of rockets over, not sweeping the opposite enemy troops, but sweeping the opposite rockets. Is this a human idea? Brain circuits are new. Subsequently, after spending three to four hours to end the battle, Luchi was also preparing to take Andrew for a forced landing. All companies present in the 1314th Regiment, all those who are still able to move, gather. After a headcount, we are about to disengage from the community. Before that, he was also prepared to slightly straighten out his team. And at the same time, Sikhs also received a communication from this commander of the Northern Alliance. It was just that it was fine at first, but as a result, not two minutes later, the communication was cut off along with an explosion. With suspicion, he had his scouts go and explore the situation. In the end, the results took him by surprise. Reporting to Colonel Seeks, one of our lieutenant colonels, autonomously ambushed two regiments cobbled together by Daimao soldiers. Originally, everything was going well and we had already surrounded them, and we were about to succeed. But, Listening to the subordinate intelligence officer's report, Beggs touched his eight-character beard. No need to be shy, just say it, he said in a deep voice. Then he saw, the intelligence officer handed over a personnel intelligence. Seeker looked over the intelligence, and what was composed on it was clearly Lu Qi's character information. But then, a helicopter entered the engagement site. Initially, these two cobbled together regiments should have originally belonged to the 1314th regiment as well as Demao's 460th regiment. Among them, the 1314th Regiment has the largest number of men, and their overall commander should be this person. Seeker listened to his subordinate's explanation while carefully scanning Lu Qi's information, finally learning that the entire regiment of the Northern Alliance had been completely wiped out, including the leader, Lieutenant Colonel, who had been sacrificed. Seek's hand gave a rare pause. Surrounded at first, the subsequent helicopters entered and reversed the battle. Without a doubt, it should be the opposite commander's credit. Seekers instantly felt interesting, the commander who could single-handedly reverse the battle situation, he had never seen it before, so Seeks put away the information and thought a little, this big hairy commander called Lu Qi is very interesting, just as well, I'm pretty much done with this place, since we have new prey, let's prepare to change the battlefield, here in Elena, almost a day and a night has passed since he blocked them, 
and it can be said that half of the battle force has been drained. Even if they withdrew now, there wouldn't be any more threats. Understood, the intelligence officer replied. After saying that, Beggs touched the cross on his chest. He felt it was time to give these soldiers of Daimo some shock from the elite. As a truly powerful commander, he believed that his pious self would be invincible in battle. And with the withdrawal of Beg's order, Elena on the opposite side also found a hint of something wrong. She had been in this urban area, fighting with Beg's for almost a day and a night, and all her soldiers were already exhausted. It could be said that if she waited for some more time, she herself would even be ready to strategically retreat. However, she suddenly realized that the army of Chus did not choose to make a general attack, but instead chose to withdraw? This made her especially puzzled. Could it be that something had gone wrong elsewhere? Solely, Elena quickly looked for an intelligence officer to inquire. Apart from Elena here, all the other fronts of Great Mao were in good condition. This news was sent back to the command post in the rear of Big Mao, and Oleg was in an unusually happy mood. In the three months since Bakhmu, this general attack is considered the most efficient and furious advance, and I don't know why, but there is no need to think so much, as long as the final result is good. On the contrary, Oleg is a little worried about Lu Qi. I do not know how he is doing, whether he has properly followed Andrew to sharpen. Overall, Oleg still valued Lu Qi. Even if he was still in the learning stage, Lu Qi would be a great help in the battles to come. Alas, the high walls of Shada are easy to defend and hard to attack. The third blockade isn't that easy to take down. So I guess we'll have to fall into a protracted battle this time. Then, it's up to you guys. Thinking of the end, Oleg sighed. And when the viewpoint switched back to Lu Qi's side, he had already disembarked from the helicopter once and organized the entire regiment. With that, the 1314th and 460th regiments joined forces, and Lucci and Andrew were in charge of piloting the helicopter, staying behind the entire regiment to take command. Although the mission requirement was to go down, wasn't the helicopter pulling down also going down? Besides, it was impossible to let Lucci, a commander, run the map. In addition, when the main force was advancing, Lucci's other five companies were not idle. Even when breaking out of the Northern Alliance blockade, he had taken the time to command a few other companies. When a certain commander of his side was in distress, Lucci's armored company rushed straight over and took down the enemy with a set of flowing operations. This kind of thing had happened more than once in a few hours. So there were already quite a few commanders who recognized Lucci, shocked and at the same time expressing their gratitude to him. Take for example the left side of the battlefield. As the Irma tanks drove by and surrounded a small piece of the city center. The few Big Mao soldiers were forced to spread out in the city and engage in an alley battle with the Irmao soldiers. The Big Mao leader was in the rear, anxiously directing the battle across the front line. However, the gap in equipment was too great, and due to the lack of heavy weapons, his side was trapped inside the city, making it difficult to launch a counterattack, and while being constantly consumed, Luchi's armored company arrived at the scene, noticing that there was a regiment under siege here. The entire armored company disintegrated according to the order and intervened from different positions in groups of two vehicles. Under Lu Qi's operation, they were able to avoid almost all long-range artillery strikes. When they met the Ermao tanks, they even stopped even dodging. Lu Qi commanded the machine gunners and gunners to hit the tank's fuel tank directly, not giving the opposite side a chance to counterattack at all, and blew up the fuel tank at once. The soldiers here in Demao, including the commander in the rear, noticed this scene and froze for a moment. At first, when the Luchi armored car support came over, the commander here was still thinking about letting it bring the message out, and then looking for a large force to come over to support it. As a result, it didn't even need to be used. A company of armored vehicles, and it opened up a large area blocked by Ermao. What's more, they directly swept the tanks with machine guns, and hardened the Ermao tanks to explode. That is to say, although the Ermao tanks are not strong, but high and low is also considered a tank off, which regiment of people? can just use machine guns to sweep the tank, immediately after, under Lu Qi's outrageous operation, in less than half an hour, half of Irmao's regiment was forced back one after another, the soldiers of Irmao realized that they seized the opportunity and cooperated with Lu Qi's armored company for a counterattack, it didn't take long for them to stand out and beat the enemy back, when the entire armored company rallied, various shocking operations shook the entire regiment of soldiers, one of the company commanders, just as the regimental commander ordered, picked up the receiver and found the company commander of Luchi's armored company. Thank you for your company's support. I am the leader of the 25th regiment. I don't know which regiment you are attached to. I would like to say thank you to your regimental commander. Luchi's company commander listened to the voice on the receiver and said in a proud tone, Hello, we are attached to the 1314th regiment. Unsurprisingly, when he said this, 
The opposite commander including many soldiers froze, can they not recognize the 1314th regiment? The 25th regiment commander was even more familiar, he had been back to the rear command post before, and the 1314th regiment was not precisely the regiment led by Lu Qi. Immediately, he hurriedly opened his mouth to ask, and wanted to talk to Lu Qi. Lu Qi on the other end of the receiver naturally did not have anything to refuse. Just like that, the two conversed across the receiver. Hello, thank you for the 1314th regiment's assistance to my regiment. The leader of the 25th regiment tentatively asked. Excuse me, are you Lu Qi, the leader of the 1314th regiment? Lu Qi smiled and spoke very plainly. No need to thank me. My armored company also happened to be nearby, so I came over to take a look. Then, I am Lu Qi, the leader of the 1314th Regiment. Lu Qi was the one who had spoken at the rear command post before, so as soon as he opened his mouth, the other party could probably hear it. The voice was really Lu Qi. The commander of the 25th Regiment opened his mouth wide through the communicator, and his voice even directly disappeared. Are you still there? Lu Qi inquired. The commander of the 25th Regiment didn't know what to say. Although it was normal to run into Lu Qi on the battlefield, but the problem was, wasn't he the promised newcomer, coming over to Bak Mu to learn? And was he the one who commanded the armored company to come and support them? When did he have this kind of command ability? Where was Oleg's newbie who lied to the devil? Sorry, sorry. Realizing that he had lost his temper, the leader of the 25th regiment hastily opened his mouth to defend himself. He had wondered if it was possible that Andrew had taught him, after all. At the rear command post Andrew had said that he would take Lu Qi, however, it was unlikely because he knew Andrew's ability well, even he couldn't have done such a thing. In the end, after the 25th regiment's commander said a fiery thank you, he hung up his communication and prepared to go contact the other commanders to confirm. Not only that, he would also have to report this matter to the rear command post and question Oleg properly. At the same time, in addition to Lu Qi's bunch of street sneak companies, he was everywhere on the scene getting support. His artillery company wasn't idle after the breakout of the large force, because Lu Qi possessed the talent global control. A large portion of the nearby area was within his field of vision. It could be said that Lu Qi was standing in God's perspective overlooking the entire field. No different from God. With such an ability, he could then operate the artillery company at any time and have them bombard different places. To the north, some big hairy soldiers were blocked on the hilltop, making it difficult for them to break out and descend the hill. Without saying a word. Lu Qi had the artillery company bombard in that direction. The Damao soldiers, who were still struggling to wait for support, witnessed rockets and artillery shells coming from afar, and all of them were filled with horror. Rockets, and artillery shells, so many rockets are bombarding over. Could it be that the enemy army has launched a general attack? Damn it, this is to drive them to extinction. One by one, the soldiers' faces were abhorrent, but the truth was not what they thought. All the rocket shells bombarded a circle to the bottom of the mountain before their eyes, sticking to the mountain wall, causing a large number of Ermao soldiers to scatter. In the process, not a single shell hit the mountain, which stunned all the Ermao soldiers. Even the commander commanding the army at the rear couldn't help but stop shouting. Is this, artillery support from our side? But where is it coming from? It's actually this accurate? The Daimao soldiers muttered. The commander came back to his senses, while he quickly contacted the other chiefs wanting to know who had called in the support. Surprisingly, a wave of them had helped him successfully break the siege. And elsewhere, the same situation was happening. On the flat ground, the two large armies were utilizing heavy weapons and fighting interchangeably. Originally, judging from the battle, Big Hair was bound to suffer heavy losses. As a result, a series of rockets and artillery shells flew in from nowhere. A large number of Ermao's tanks, armored vehicles, self-propelled artillery vehicles, and even jeeps were hit. The various explosions that occurred at the Ermal position in front of them brought to a halt the various companies of the Big Mao that were preparing to charge in the distance. They didn't remember that the rear command post had notified them that there would be bombers coming to support them. Right? Could it be that the artillery support came from another regiment? Even the commanding officer in the rear, who was fighting with the regiment, couldn't help sucking in a breath of cold air when he saw the situation. The scene was so chaotic that it was impossible to tell where the support was coming from. However, that didn't stop them from saluting and greeting the distant direction after a round of bombardment. And after this, the commander also grabbed and went to contact the rear command post, reporting what happened here and asking for clarification on where the support was coming from. Slowly, as the Land Start Artillery Company continued to do their work, Oleg's place received many unusual battle reports from the front line. According to the front line, they were all supported by Allied artillery. Not only that, 
the shelling was also very accurate, almost like a missile-like targeted bombardment. While this intrigued Oleg, it also made him wonder. So he picked up his communicator and prepared to go to the front line to inquire about who did these things. And as Luchi kept advancing, he got closer and closer to the high walls of Shada, and also gathered two companies again. During the process, the Northern Alliance had suffered great losses there, with several regiments losing contact one after another. As the highest commander sent by the Northern Alliance to Urmo, Beggs was of course directly connected to the heads of the Northern Alliance everywhere. Their loss of connection was something that Beggs was concerned about every moment. Reporting to the commander, according to so far, the regiments that our army sent to the Urmo position, if we go by the number of people, there have been, there have been at least more than three regiments completely wiped out. Listening to his subordinates coming to report every now and then, Beggs felt a bit surprised. The total number of people exceeded three regiments, which meant that there had to be several, if not ten, regiments that had been attacked. However, the person who attacked them was no one else but Lu Qi, the 1314th regiment, who had long rushed to the front line of the entire army. That's right. What Lu Qi didn't know too well was that he was already a long way ahead of the other regimental leaders. Even Elena and Sophia there were left behind by him. Seeker was getting more and more amused, but soon he received another piece of bad news. The perspective shifted, and Sophia's place, due to the rapid advancement of her soldiers, drew a lot of attention from Yak. Within the city, Yak put all of his focus. He mobilized a large number of Urmao soldiers to come and block the way, and the tanks also deployed three companies at once as well as a number of armored car jeeps, facing the small steel torrent, the 404th regiment, which lacked equipment, was never able to break through this urban area, even up to this point in the fight, there was already a clear disadvantage, hold this place, we can't lose this high building, or the advance routes on both sides will be interrupted, tut tut tut, in a row of buildings with less than 10 floors, there was a company of more than 404th regiment soldiers stationed here, below them lay the Urmao soldiers, coordinating with the infantry and tanks to follow a tank's advance. It was launching wave after wave of steel-like onslaughts against several tall buildings, surrounded on the upper floors. The Urmao soldiers of the 404th Regiment fired frantically. Nay, as they fought, the building was already shaking, with gaps made by shells everywhere. From time to time, there would be teammates around them who would suddenly fall down, bullet holes appearing in their foreheads, having been ambushed by enemy snipers. Sophia operated the multilateral battlefield in a row, so busy that she had furrowed her brows. It couldn't be helped. The gun was out of place. She went too far ahead and was met with the combined resistance of the Urmao army. With the lack of backup supplies and air support, it was hard to gain an advantage against the enemy's massive pile of heavy weapons. Now, for example, the other two lines were routed and were resting in preparation for a counterattack. The middle line was left, which had also been strongly attacked by the enemy and was faltering. Sophia's order was that she had to hold this place until the other two lines succeeded in their general attack before she could let go. Otherwise, if this front also collapsed, then the hope of a general attack was completely gone. But according to the current situation, we can't hold it for half an hour. Ermal had gathered more and more troops, and under the heavily equipped artillery, it was difficult to move an inch. Rumble dash, with an explosion ringing out, a building on one side completely collapsed. A platoon of Daimao soldiers were either vaporized by the explosion or fell down after the building. Damn it, can't hold it, it can't be done. Report company commander this building is collapsing. That's right company commander. Quickly report to the regimental commander. We won't have a chance if we don't leave. The remaining soldiers opened their mouths one after another. There was no use for them to die here. The battle situation here couldn't be changed anymore. No way. The regimental commander hasn't given the order yet so we must defend until the last moment, a company commander of the 404th regiment insisted, seeing the Urmao soldiers swarming here, the crowd of 404th regiment soldiers guarding the area suddenly heard something moving, wait company commander, is there a breaking sound, I heard it too, no, you guys, quick, look in the sky, there are rockets flying over, the words of a big hairy soldier caused the people present to look up one after another, the originally blue sky actually lit up with sparks at a certain moment, the sparks then continued to enlarge until the outlines of rockets and artillery shells were revealed. It's artillery bombardment. Did all of Urmao's reserve artillery companies hit us? No good. We can't get away. The proximity of the rockets and various artillery shells no longer gave them time to escape. However, the crowd of Urmao soldiers also ran out of time to escape when they realized the rockets and artillery shells, and it also shocked them especially. Wait, why are there rockets flying behind us? I didn't receive orders from my superiors to have an artillery company conduct a bombardment, besides we're still over here, no good, 
It's hard to believe that it's Big Mao's long-range support. The moment they realized it, it was already too late. Accompanied by the swoosh swoosh sound rockets landed one after another, and in an instant dust rose from the ground as warm flames continued to ignite from everywhere. Even the tanks that stayed in place were reduced to scrap metal after being hit by the shells. The shockwaves from several consecutive waves of explosions collided with the tall building, making it look more like a candle in the wind. The 404th Regiment's Daimao soldiers also thought it was going to be the end, but after waiting for a while, they realized that the point of bombardment wasn't on them. Rather, it was at a group of Ermao soldiers? Meanwhile, Sophia, behind the screen, naturally observed the battle over here. Under the large-scale bombardment, the Ermao soldiers were being blown away and collapsed. Countless tanks, armored vehicles, as well as popularity exploded in front of their eyes, and even bounced off a piece of Ermao soldiers. Waiting for a few moments, the distant rockets finished flying, the scene became a mess. However, nearly 70% of the soldiers disappeared, and the rest retreated in a hurry, no longer daring to approach the place. On the contrary, the building did not collapse, but only kept falling stone chips. Seeing this scene, all the 404th Regiment Big Hair soldiers present were shocked. Even Sophia, who stayed behind the screen, could not help but sigh in her heart. She didn't understand where the rockets were flying from, but it should be friendly support. Only, this support was a bit too fierce, wasn't it? The miniature version of the Ermao Army's steel torrent was directly repulsed. Also, she was currently at the front line of the battlefield. The fact that the friendly artillery could support here proved that the advancement of his battle line was definitely no worse than her own. The most crucial thing was that the bombing distance was controlled so accurately. In such a scale, he hadn't hurt his own soldiers at all. So he was definitely a veteran commander. Although Sophia had never been an artilleryman, she had received professional training. The difficulty could be imagined. With a burst of brainstorming, she suddenly wondered which commander had backed up nearby. And just after the bombardment here in Sophia, the news was synchronized on the beg side. Report commander, just now. Just now another regiment on our side suffered major losses. The sense of anticipation on Sikh's face intensified as he listened to the intelligence officer's explanation. The rear command post had sent troops to intercept them, only to have half of them killed by a whole series of bombardments, and the rest had all retreated. This set of operations, the same as what happened there in the Northern Alliance before, was sufficient proof that it was the work of the same person. Unsurprisingly, it was this person he had information on, Lu Qi. At this moment, the troops under Chu's were moving extremely fast and had already crossed over a large area, about to arrive directly in front of Lu Qi and the others. There will be the third blockade line of the Irmo Bakmu. Breaking through there, the rear is the high wall of Shada. It could be said that this place was Irmo Bakmu's last front. If he captured it, then the Shadow Wall would be directly exposed. At that time, if they were set on fire, it basically signaled the loss of Bakmu. Seekers judged that there was an urban area there that stretched out into the flatlands that could be used as an effective ambush site. He would be there, completely finishing off the opponent's strongest main force. And the news of Urmu's main force's route soon reached back to the rear command post. When Yak learned that the wave of small steel torrents he had assembled was lost to carpet bombing, his entire being was bad. Damn it, why? I measured that it was obviously fine before. So why did Big Hair suddenly turn violent? He clutched the intelligence in his hand and could only rage impotently. In the previous few rounds of fighting with Big Mao, Yak had used his own strength to force the Big Mao army back in succession. At most, they had only attacked the second blockade line, without even seeing the shadow of the third blockade line. But what's going on this time? Why the hell were there inexplicable rockets bombarding everywhere? It seemed that there was also the Big Mao army that had broken into the third blockade line. Check, check hard. I want to find out what's going on. Where are the rockets coming from? Not only do they have stealth bombers, do they have stealth rockets? Why is the whole map bombing everywhere? The intelligence officers who followed Yak's work were used to the commander breaking his defenses, but the fact that he broke defense, mostly because of a single person, gave the intelligence officer a bit of a bad feeling. Understood commander. With that he left. Back on Lu Qi's side, the army traveled all the way through the city, the green forest, and the mountains, etc., and finally entered the third blockade line. No, let's just say, how many did the anchor do along the way? I told you. It's a good thing I didn't choose how many people I'd let the anchor do, or I'd have mailed them even faster. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to do, but I'm sure I'm going to be able to do it, and I'm going to be able to do it, and I'm going to be able to do it. Poor ancestor master, being toyed with by a woman, Luchi has now annihilated countless enemies, and the 1314th regiment under him has also annihilated countless enemies. Tong Jincheng sat behind the screen and started broadcasting his lunch again. 
Now he felt that he should be thankful that he didn't let Lu Qi have a kill count or team kill count at that time. Otherwise, just a few waves ago, he would probably have had to go out and woof. Only nowadays, it didn't seem to be any better. Tong Jinchang is ready to eat lunch. Go out and sneak around. Wait for Lu Qi to finish drying maybe the scene can be a dog. After all, early death early life. However, following Lu Qi forward, Andrew suddenly found something bright in front of his eyes. Lu Qi, we've entered the third blockade. He pointed ahead. Looking ahead, there was a spacious flatland, and further ahead, one could vaguely see the dilapidated city center. Lu Qi had also heard from Oleg before that there were three blockade lines in front of Ermao, and the third blockade line was the last one. Looking from this position, one could even detect the outer appearance of the high walls of Shada in the distance. Lu Qi was clear that as long as he crossed this urban area, he would be able to reach the bottom of the Shada high wall. However, he was equally clear that this urban area was not as simple as it appeared to be and it seemed that the Northern Alliance's army had already arrived ahead of schedule. All troops, prepare to cross the plains and head to the urban area. However, since he wanted to complete his mission, Lu Qi naturally still had to head inside. In addition, following one kilometer behind Lu Qi's army, the scouts that Elena had arranged had already reported all the things they had done to Elena. Seeing the various outrageous operations with their own eyes, these scouts' worldviews were shattered. Head Elena, the 1314th Regiment has already attacked the 3rd blockade line, we tracked them the entire way, and they are within a neighborhood. The intelligence officer revealed a lot of details to Elena, not only the prospective command from before, but also various strategies, sounding out the east, waiting for the west, tuning out the tiger, golden cicadas, and so on, including the last and most wonderful magic mutual bombardment. Elena listened with a look of incredulity. She felt that her own worldview had once again suffered a shock along with it. Being surrounded by a fully equipped regiment of the Northern Alliance. Surrounded in a neighborhood. The opposite side even moved out their anti-aircraft guns. The result was not only a breakout, but also a total annihilation for the opposite side. Even after the battle, even the North Alliance's lieutenant colonel commander was lost. This string of words, so niche, Elena really did not understand a bit. Lu Qi was a new recruit before. Who knew that his command ability to this level? really inappropriate people? At the beginning, Elena wanted him to come to her regiment to follow her. As a result, she felt inexplicably ashamed. And next, the scouts that Elena had sent to follow begs that regiment, also finally came with news, reporting to the commander. That colonel from the Northern Alliance called Sikhs has arrived at the third blockade line leading his troops. He said the words briefly, and after hearing them Elena completely understood what was going on. It turned out that at that time, Sikhs had withdrawn his troops not because of anything else, but because of Lu Qi. He went ahead of the entire army and took the lead in entering the third blockade line, so Begums could only mobilize his troops to stop him. However, Elena knew the terrifying nature of this person begs. The Northern Alliance regiment that he led was better equipped and stronger in battle than all of the big hairy regiments present. If Lu Qi met with it head-on, with those old and sickly men of his, he was afraid that there would be an accident. How about it? Does Lieutenant Colonel Lu Qi know about this matter? Yes. The intelligence officer nodded. However, Lieutenant Colonel Lu Qi still led his troops into the third blockade line. Bad. Elena frowned, a look of worry on her face. This person, Seekers, was the best at laying traps in advance. It wasn't just the apparent traps here, but the schemes. Sometimes once one fell into his trap, it was possible to see through it and have no way to make a countermeasure. After Beggs withdrew, Elena stayed put for the time being and did not follow. But now that she thought about it, she felt that she had to go and support Lu Qi. It could be said that with Beg's ability, there was no commander in the back of Big Mao that could win against him in single combat. The only thing that stood a chance was a group fight. So Lu Qi couldn't solve it alone. Even if Elena didn't go, he might be in danger. Thinking of this, Elena quickly mobilized her troops and prepared to go support Lu Qi. But at the same time, she received intelligence from her subordinates. Pushkin had originally gone to lead a breakout. But it turned out that Beggs retreated in a big way when they were deep behind the enemy lines. Now they didn't know where they had gone. As if they had completely disappeared, they couldn't be contacted at all. Elena thought about it. Pushkin was with the entire tank company, so even if he ran into something, it wouldn't be an accident. So she decided to go to Lu Qi's place first, and contact Pushkin later when she had time. After all, the situation at Lu Qi's side was more urgent. The viewpoint shifted to the urban area where Lu Qi was. The soldiers under him and Andrew had all entered the engagement zone and quickly ran into a blockade from the Northern Alliance forces. Throughout the field, large-scale conflicts arose everywhere. Andrew took his binoculars and scanned the area for a while before turning pale. This third blockade, 
the intensity could actually be this great? Both of our combined regiments are blocked at the edge of the city? The current situation was not optimistic, despite Andrew's guesses. When they entered the third blockade line, Irmo and the Northern Alliance would surely put in their best efforts to defend. After all, behind them was the high wall of Shada, but he didn't expect that the defense would be so strong. The two men's joint regiment was blocked at the edge of the city, and was no match for the enemy. Obviously there were more people than the other party, but the difference in battle power was huge. This kind of scene, let Andrew produce a trace of suspicion. The opposite North Alliance regiment he seemed to have seen somewhere? And during the time without Lu Qi's command, the battle power of the two regiments was obviously greatly reduced. Even the Northern Alliance didn't use any heavy weapons to jam them out. In response, when Mauritius saw this scene, it frowned with great dissatisfaction. Are you sure that the Great Mao army that wiped out your regiment is this regiment? He turned back towards one of the Northern Alliance intelligence soldiers who had only survived the last battle. That intelligence soldier was also holding binoculars, and after noticing the familiar face, he nodded his head fiercely. Absolutely right. It was this regiment that wiped us out. Upon hearing this, Beggs couldn't help but have doubts. Judging from the current battle situation of the first encounter, the opposite side had too much water, right? Not to say it was incompetent, it was simply a mess. This made Seekers wonder if he was looking for the wrong team, or if he was too strong and the other Northern Alliance regiments were too weak? Forget it, since the opposite side is so slow, let's speed up the action a little. Heavy weapons are ready to debut, if the other side really doesn't have much to offer a wave will take them away, Seeker commanded, his idea was simple, he could speed up sending some heavy weapons over, if the other party had strength, then it would just be a wave to test the waters without smashing everything there, if the other side didn't have the strength, then it was pretty straightforward, it would be a wave, at the location of the front line, Andrew took up the role of the chief commander and was taking charge of the battle situation everywhere, nay, his command was not too effective, and the disadvantage remained a disadvantage, until during the engagement, Andrew suddenly observed something unusual in multiple places, accompanied by a rumbling explosion. A company on the left had come under artillery fire. There were many other places where the roar of heavy machine guns rang out one after another, and the big hairy soldiers were knocked back one after another. Andrew's eyes widened as he carefully scanned every spot across the field. Heavy weapons? There was no doubt that in just ten short minutes, a series of heavy weapons had entered the front line. Even Andrew felt that there were artillery shells being continuously fired this way. This number of heavy weapons isn't quite right. It's more than double that of a normal regiment. Wait, that's... Suddenly, he perceived the model of the tank. M1A2 main battle tank. As he spoke Andrew looked at Lu Qi. Lu Qi was not very understanding, but Andrew understood what it meant. The M1A2 main battle tanks supported by Eagle Sauce were very rare. Even if there was, it was only organized into elite regiments and in so many days in Bakhmu, he had never seen any regiment from the Northern Alliance or Irma that had M1A2 main battle tanks. The only one that he had heard of having one was the ace commander that the Northern Alliance had sent to support Irma. Begs, thinking about this for a moment, it was as if Andrew understood who the enemy he was dealing with was. Rumble dash, as the M1A2s opened fire and burst forward, another company under his command suffered. It's not good Luchi, we should be bumping into, the Northern Alliance is supporting this time. The first Northern Alliance regiment now, he gruffly said to Lu Qi. Lu Qi turned back over and listened to Andrew's narration. As an old commander who had long been mixed up in Bakhmu, Andrew knew the situation here best. Moreover, this man, Sikhs, was famous for more than just the recent battles. A long time ago, his fierce reputation had already spread throughout Bachmu. For this reason, on the day he arrived in Bakhmu, Oleg had specially gathered a number of commanders and gave everyone a hard time. In a nutshell, if you didn't want the regiment to be destroyed, you should bolt the moment you saw him. It was also simple to deal with this man. Group beating, it was the only way to crush him. Currently just exchanging hands, Andrew felt like he was at a disadvantage. On top of the various heavy weapons that appeared on the opposite side, even if there wasn't that rumor just now, he probably wouldn't have chosen to fight it head on. Lu Qi, the equipment of the 1st Northern Alliance Regiment is too good. We have to withdraw first. The rear is a plane where our army's speed advantage can be realized. After narrating everything, Andrew was already preparing to withdraw his troops. However, coming here had taken a lot of time, and when Lu Qi looked at the time left, there was less than half of it left. He needed to cross this urban area to reach the bottom of the high walls of the Shada, and he also needed to ensure that he didn't die upon arrival. So without a doubt, taking down the high wall of the sand tower was a must. Withdrawing now, then would obviously slow down the battle and would be very unfriendly to accomplishing the mission. Furthermore, 
Seeing the opposite side grinding away, Luchi had only failed to launch his forces. Now that he had finally brought out the heavy weapons, it was time for him to get practical. No need. Just watch me operate everything next. Anchor's words are crazy. Watch me carry this one. There's one thing to say. The equipment gap is a bit big. Can the anchor take a flyer this time? Ha ha. I don't want to talk about anything else. I just believe in the anchor. It's time to show them the shock of our Chija army. Receiving Lu Chi's reply, Andrew still blinked subconsciously. However, without waiting for him to retort, Lu Chi had already turned around and started commanding on this live battle situation. It could be said that the opposite side started to be really too meticulous, not taking out anything good, so Lu Chi had no choice but to human touch. But now, it is obvious that the opposite side cannot wait. First move out heavy weapons, now this fight, in order to cause maximum damage to the enemy. 